to do in here? They got lost my mind. Loose screw in here, then I walk out sight. And everybody looking at me while I got them all in my sights. Picking them off, taking them out, looking like daylight in the night. And I'm killing so many if they really want to get involved. And everybody fall off in the elevator. Now I'm Bray Rice in this. It's like I'm rice and take a bite. It's nice and I have a nice time with it. By the time that it finds the way to the right side of him, not even a high nigga save him. I select the finger to you imbeciles. Tell me what's been getting into you. Envy will kill you. She said I'm a gentleman. I'll admit a lot of women set up on my item in. I don't give a damn like an auto with no time to kill. I've been feeling like the opposite of work. It's a work and I've never been a purpose that came to me. I just do what I love and it works for me. So I'm freaking every check and put the money in the push and be gunning to the finish and the kidding of a little bit. Everybody know I'm working in the sea. I do it differently. So only time will give me everything that I deserve. My it. Ed. I just bought a new whip, spent a couple thousand just to cruise it. Shawty said she loved me, but it's fresh and never prove it. I never tell her, but I put it in the music. Well, that's okay. All I wanna do is make the best of my whole day. Thank the Lord up above, get the cream on the side, make you have to know it. That's the stuff that I love, la, la, da, da, da. We can be friends if you wanna. We can just talk if you wanna. Get on hands if you wanna Hey, tell me what you wanna do We could just laugh if you wanna Late nights on the stars if you wanna We could just kiss if you wanna Hey, tell me what you wanna do It's like the story of my life Best friend, but we rocking all the same things Say you need me, but you really trying to change lanes Well, I don't even care in my life, I don't battle with no fear. Fighting dragons, always been a real one. Hate you saying you're showing love, you a real chameleon. Get the facts freaking straight, always on repeat. Like, we could be friends if you wanna. We could just talk if you wanna. We could hold hands if you wanna. Hey, tell me what you wanna do. We could just laugh if you wanna. Late nights on the stars if you wanna. And a teacher, if I'm speaking, it's a lesson and it's completed. Infinite evidence placed within a grace that is measured. Let's measure by what could never be met away. They say we gotta see it. Take a hike, never buy what they peddle. And you can keep it plenty. Uh, 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 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the FIBA Esport Open 2. We are excited and delighted to have you here for day number two of weekend number three. I am your host, Chris Simpson, and with me, the amazing co-host. <laughs> great to have him back on the desk. Artis also. Artis, welcome. Oh, it's great to be here. Day number two, feeling as much hyped as yesterday. Had some close games, had some stomps, had some, you know, uh, the first overtime. First uh, that I've seen, and uh, you know, uh, I'm waiting for more overtimes, for more close games, and you know, finally to see who is going into the grand finals. After get to sleep because the action was amazing. Checking social media, um, of course, uh, this is being simultaneously streamed uh, across uh, Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. Uh, Twitter is on fire as well, so make sure you're representing out there. It falls upon me to thank both FIBA and NBA 2K for coming FIBA there. And actually, it's increased in size from 17 in FIBA Esport Open number one to now 36 participating countries. 36 across six different conferences. And of course, every single continent on the entire planet now represented here as well. Incredibly exciting stuff. And, and these, are, these are national teams playing for national pride these are e-athletes who are wearing the literally in some cases the actual national jersey but definitely the digital national jersey it's a big deal artist it is a big deal and i just you know it's love to see that all these players are actually taking this super seriously but still having fun yeah that was something that came through in all of the yeah. interviews uh yesterday really really exciting stuff um and of course they're not just playing for national pride uh the actual uh, teams who do end up winning their conference will be taking home a trophy. Now, this is um, obviously a digital yeah. representation here. Uh, no, it's real, and we have it levitating between us, uh, special effects. But um, obviously, a real trophy will be sent to uh, the winning uh, basketball federation of each particular conference. Um, I don't know where it's going to go. I don't know, is it going to go into the trophy cabinet? My personal hope is that it maybe does a tour of each of the players' houses, you know, gets disinfected. Once a week, once a week, everyone gets it once a week. Once. Get, get to, you know, take photos with the family, that type of thing. Uh, very, very exciting stuff, though. But it's great to know that there is actually silverware heading to a, a trophy cabinet somewhere and and therefore a lot of national pride on the line but that's not it as well you've got some news there is going to be an mvp for each conference yeah every uh, from each conference there will be an mvp which uh, you know we're gonna choose it we have the we have the opportunity to do that and they will be getting a tissot watch uh, to wear on his or her wrist because we do have a lady in team usa we saw that's her play right. yesterday that's uh, right. And you know, she was pretty good. Absolutely. The the very first uh, uh, female uh, participant as well in the FIBA eSport Open. So that is absolutely magnificent. More groundbreaking stuff. Not just not just 19 more uh, countries participating, but now um, uh, all genders, which is brilliant as well. Um, and, of course, uh, we're going to be able to show you now these different conferences. You can see the whole uh, planet is literally represented now, which is uh, great in terms of continents anyway. Obviously, we have a lot more countries, uh, but, but hopefully participating in the future. But maybe just explain why we're grouped like this. Yeah, since, you know, internet travels at different speed, you know, not everyone has the same connection. And if we were to play from Australia and uh, to Canada, you know, the internet speed would be unfair to some players. So to make it all fair, they're separated in six different conferences. You can see Europe, Middle East, Southeast Asia, Africa, South America. America, North and Central America. Absolutely. And and again, I, I think it's great. 2K has servers everywhere, players all over the world playing basketball and 2K. And yeah, just in the interest of fairness, I think the great example you gave there, yeah, Australian team maybe playing Canada, there will be an unfair advantage one way or the other, depending on the host nation there. And, and that's exactly why we... We have uh, split geographically into conferences, but of course, um, uh, this weekend we're looking at North and Central uh, uh, American Conference uh, and, and the South American, but we've already had some conferences that have played and we already have some winners, uh, starting here uh, with the African Conference and the first time, that was back on the 14th and 15th of November. I can't believe that that was over a month ago. That literally <laughs> feels like yesterday, but we had Gabon and Ivory Coast playing there. Uh, and, and of course, uh, uh, 
Ivory Coast ended up, as you can see, with the little trophy symbol there, getting the win. So they are the inaugural winners of the uh, Africa Conference there. Uh, but maybe just uh, 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 kind of getting excited about that there. Maybe just go into the format. You know, uh, they played a seven-game series, and the game, the, the team that got actually the most wins are crowned uh, champions, which is Ivory Coast in, the, in this choice, you know. And I hope that next year, whenever we do have the, maybe the next FIBA Esports, there will be yeah. more African teams competing and, you know, and so on, so on, Look, until we, get, uh, you know, get all of the countries involved. Definitely, and I believe they, they, that it will be growing, and <laughs> it's going to be fantastic. Tons of opportunity there. Now, we also had the Middle East Conference, uh, uh, and we had Lebanon taking on uh, uh, Saudi Arabia there. And um, again, just briefly explaining the format there, as, as you can see, Saudi Arabia were the champions Two-time champions, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. They were the two-time champions. They won in the first one and, and now in the second FIBA Esports. But the format was the same as in the Africa Conference. They played seven games in total. And, you know, the team with the most uh, victories, which was at least four, um, were crowned champions. And that was Saudi Arabia. Good good for them. And I hope to see next uh, next year even more. Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to take a moment to mention uh, Lebanon. I, I saw a, like really marked improvement from FIBA Esports Open 1 to FIBA Esports Open 2. Um, and, and that that's why, as well, it's important that they played all seven games, irrespective of the um, uh, of whether or not uh, Saudi Arabia got the, the four wins early on. Um, it's it's really important for the development. But then, uh, of course, we also had uh, the Southeast Asia and Oceania conference, which was a merging of two previously separate conferences with exactly the same names. <laughs> the Southeast Asia and Oceania were separate conferences now merged, which brought two former champions together in Australia and the Philippines. And as I like to kind of joke, Indonesia, who are great in their own right and played really well, stuck between a rock and a hard place, particularly on that graphic right there. But Australia managed to get the win, uh, and, and that was a big win for them because technically now they're two-time champs as well. And I know that format was a little bit different, obviously. Yeah, they played a triple round robin, you know, or in other words, teams played against each other three times. And afterwards, the two best teams went into the grand finals where they played the best of three. Uh, that means, you know, the, the team that won two games were the victorious, were the champions. That's right. In this case, the Aussies uh, winning the silverware there. And, and even as an Australian, um, I had to pick against them, you know, because we need to remain <laughs> professional. So I had Philippines winning, but the Aussies won. I'm no longer welcome in my own country. I'm joking, of course. And that was on the 14th and 15th of November. And then last weekend, we had the behemoth of the conferences right here, the European Conference, which had 17 participating teams broken into four groups. It was absolutely an amazing two days of action, 24 hours of stream, just like this weekend. It was great. Uh, in Group A, we had Bosnia, Germany, Latvia, Russia, and Ukraine. Then in Group B, we had uh, Austria, Cyprus, Ireland, and Turkey. And in Group C, we had Croatia, Great Britain, Italy, Lithuania. And in, finishing off in Group D, we had Czech Republic, Portugal, Spain, and Switzerland. That's right. Now, as you can see, the eagle-eyed uh, fans, or anybody that was watching as well, anybody who's Turkish in, in the chat um, will notice that Turkey ended up taking home the silverware in a brilliant brilliant final now now i know with so many teams the format was a bit different artist yeah they all had their own separate groups where they played each other one time and afterwards the two best teams from each group went into the playoffs you know playoffs are going down going down and the grand finals there the most important thing was where turkey played against uh, germany in the finals you know, Turkey just uh, took the dump in the best of three. They did in the best of three there. It was absolutely phenomenal. So many people tuned in. And even after the fact, I have it. I, I've seen it with my own eyes. The replay of the Spain-Great Britain quarterfinal game. The replay has three had 320,000 views the last time I checked. That is phenomenal so this is these are uh, amazing international e-basketball games that are taking place again FIBA and 2k partnering to make all of this possible but but also the the national basketball federations themselves the players participating all of you watching at home as well make this possible it's absolutely brilliant but now let's talk about what's going on this weekend starting with the North and Central America uh, conference right here and it has been an action-packed Saturday, and now Sunday is going to be phenomenal as we crown our champions and we see the final pool stages. Participating in North and Central America, we have Canada, Costa Rica, Dominican Republic, Guatemala, Honduras, Puerto Rico, and USA. And their format was, uh, you know, we're still seeing it, how they're playing it out. They, uh, it's a single-round robin where they play each other one time. Afterwards, the two best teams, which we still do not 
not know who are the two best teams, they are going into a best of three again. Uh, the team that gets two wins is crowned the champions of this conference right. for, uh, for the first time. For the first time, and it's crunch time because every game matters. You only get one game against each opponent, and only two of the seven teams go through to the grand final. So a lot of action still to be played here today. It's getting pretty exciting. Let's have a look then at the other conference we're seeing this weekend, which is our South American uh, conference. Just going to be coming up on the screen any moment right there in our participating teams, Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Uruguay, and Venezuela. And this is actually an expanded conference uh, from last time we had Argentina and Brazil. But now we have Bolivia, Uruguay, and Venezuela uh, to the mix. And they've all been playing incredibly well here. Uh, and, and maybe you just, again, could explain the format because I know it's very similar. Yeah, it's the, all, the same as the North and Central America, only there's five teams. They play each other once, and afterwards the two best teams go into the Grand Finals for another best of three. And I want to point out that Argentina was the one that won the previous yes. tournament, the first FIBA Esports Open in the South America Conference. So let's see, you know, they're yeah. in a good spot so far. They won two games but and uh, lost zero. So those were very tight games uh, initially between uh, in FIBA Esports Open one. It was Argentina and Brazil, very very tight games. Uh, great to see Bolivia, Uruguay, and Venezuela involved this time. Again, not a massive point differential in any of these games. It's such a tight conference. It's been really exciting uh, to call. And uh, now we can have a look at the action that we have ahead of us here today. And I love, I love Fieber and our scheduling department, I have to say, <laughs> because they always give us, all of the games are important. And all of, I, do, I, cannot, I cannot say that enough. Obviously, every game matters. But they always give us a firecracker for a first game, Otis. We've got Uruguay versus Brazil. We're then going to be seeing Argentina versus Venezuela, Bolivia versus Brazil. And then afterwards, Venezuela versus Uruguay, then Bolivia versus Argentina. And then we have our South America Grand Finals. That's right. And, and as we go then to just the next page here, uh, I'll just explain. The local times, the, your local time for your country is what you're seeing on the outside right there, which means you can go and you can set your alarm, you can set your watch, do whatever you got to do. It's a Sunday. Everybody should be chillaxing and watching <laughs> the Fever Esport Open too anyway. But if you've got some chores to do or you just want to time your meals and your snack breaks or walk the dog, do whatever you got to do, uh, then absolutely uh, that, is, that is for your eyes to see the local time on the outside. So we're going to have our three. We've got them all up there, the three finals there. Uh, uh, are going to be played. But then we move back to Central and North America as we have uh, Puerto Rico and Honduras. And there's something I know you want to point out about that particular game. Yeah, that game is going to be played off stream. So we're not going to show it. We're not going to watch it. But we are going to talk about the score once it's finished. Yeah. But continuing on, we, uh, the games that are going to be streamed, you'll be able to see us commentating it, is going to be Canada and Dominican Republic, then United States and Costa Rica, and in Canada and Honduras. Absolutely. And some really crucial games going to be played there. Then the final stretch. I'll take you through these again. Local time. Set your watches, guys. Costa Rica versus Puerto Rico. Guatemala versus the Dominican Republic. And then our best of three grand final for North and Central America will begin, Artis. We are greedy. The viewers at home are greedy. We don't want a two and done. We want a best of three. We want to see a, <laughs> we want to see a tied series after two games so we can be on the desk and be shout casting and, until our lungs come out. And, and that's exactly what we're hoping for there. Best of three finals, which are going to be amazing. But of course, um, a lot of action before that. Let's have a look then at because uh, this is going to be the first uh, slate of games here south american conference standings right yeah. here and as you can see it's about as tight as it gets every team has played twice and leading the way at the moment undefeated at the top there is argentina uh and just uh, note the point differential is really not that crazy and then you have uruguay at the moment in second position there they've won one they've lost one they have three table points and then the next three teams. Yeah, Bolivia, Brazil, and Venezuela. You know, Bolivia and Brazil, very in a similar situation as Uruguay. This will be a, a really important game that we're going to see Uruguay versus Brazil because, you know, one oh, yeah. of them is actually going to get that second win and, you know, maybe put the other team a little bit lower down on the table. Yep. But Venezuela so far with zero wins, you know, they still have two more games to play. Yeah. I, I bet they can get get them. Look, I just want to give uh, Venezuela a, a shout-out there. Um, and, and, of course, uh, they... 
they have one of the cutest mascots you'll ever see there in 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 the captain's uh, uh, pet dog who is oh. <laughs> super cute and 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 watches every single game. We even got to meet him on the interview yesterday there. Uh, and, and um, but look, they they have playing a really entertaining brand of basketball. As far as I'm concerned, um, Venezuela are playing very differently to everybody else. Yes, they're on two right now, but it's been a, a treat and a pleasure to watch artists because uh, their passing might be some of the best in all of uh, FIBA Esports Open, uh, both one and part two, uh, but also uh, their cuts to the lane and the dunks that they're making, phenomenal stuff. And we've seen passing be a super crucial uh, thing in these basketballs because a lot of them are intercepted, you know? Yep. Few games were actually lost because how many times they got intercepted midway with these passes. So the better you do that, the less chance of, an, of a fast breakaway happening, you know? Yeah. Yeah, gotta be careful. Absolutely. And they are threading the needle. Um, so that like look, Venezuela anyway, everybody loves a little bit of an underdog, okay, and a dog dog as well. And they have a very cute <laughs> mascot. So so Owen oh 2, nothing to be ashamed of there. They're playing great, great basketball. But of course, we start to focus on the first game, as you can see right beneath me here. Uh Brazil, Uruguay, in ultimately, you know, five five team conference. Everybody plays everybody once. That means four games. That means every game is really, really critical. It's kind of at that stage now. Winning, winning you're in, losing you go home. It doesn't look like anybody's going to be able to get to Argentina. I feel as though they're probably going to go undefeated in the pool stages only because they've already taken care of both Brazil and Uruguay, who are both very talented teams. Now it, it falls upon this game. Really kind of a battle right here, right now for a spot in the grand final. Well, we've seen... Uruguay create a big score difference against yep. Bolivia. So they yep. had about 113, 117, 117 points was the exact. That's a lot. Actually, we had a bigger bigger score yeah. yesterday with Canada, 151. So it, still amazing. Canada, just I want to give the Canadians their, their, uh, their, their dues here, okay? The respect they deserve. They set a FIBA eSport Open scoring record for a single game with 151 points. I don't know what that's all about. But that's pretty good, eh? So really good stuff. That's my really bad Canadian accent. I'm very uh, sorry. Continuing on for this game, we can go into the lineup screen where we see Uruguay versus Brazil. On the Uruguay side, we have certified Juanma. He was amazing yesterday. Just got to point that out. Then we have Rubinho, Nicolas Fernand, Santi Falero, and Ico Digo. That's right. Uh, Ico Digo, great from the corner. And as you can see, they're wearing the actual kind of national jerseys there. Uh, and then on the Brazilian side, uh, Kalu Bassam, the captain, Big man leads by example. Uh, Lewis Clamps, Esquilo, great point guard, likes to drop in the threes. Great on the great on the stick skills. Icy Martins, ice cold in the veins, shooting from beyond the arc, phenomenal. And then uh, Alan uh, uh, Mafra, who really loves, really loves, actually, believe it or not, his dunks as well. So they use him in the small forward position uh, to to work the paint, which is something special. These are two very talented teams this is going to be i think a really really tight matchup um remembering that uh, brazil and argentina were the two only teams in the south american conference in fiba esport open number one and they really pushed each other all the way uh that you know brazil actually uh, won a, a game there as well so it was um very very tight very tightly matched i'm i'm expecting a high caliber of basketball right here yeah this will be a close game but what i want to point out is that in this tournament so far we've seen a lot of teams going without the centers so far unlike brazil team we can see two point forwards playing and no center which is you know what do you think about that tactic we don't well, you, we don't want those dunks or what i look i i'm a big man a former big man myself okay you you know this all right yeah. and a former basketball player and and so I'm a, obviously I'm a fan of the big man and you know, the bigger and the thicker, the better. Okay. However, however, I also love some free flowing basketball and I also love to be surprised and entertained. And, and I believe that the folks watching at home um, are participating in the polls right now as to predicting a winner for this one as well. They want to be entertained. They want champagne flowing basketball out there and i think that's what we're gonna get it's gonna be very very exciting as the teams are basically in the virtual tunnel right now getting ready to come out and and entertain us um so look i i don't hate the lack of a big man 
uh, like, you know, part of my soul is crying a little bit, but at the same time, for what we're about to watch and, and the spectacle, I think it's a good thing. I will, you know, sometimes it just doesn't matter. You know, if yeah. you have a, if you have really good three pointers, why why even bother with the and, with the layups? And we've seen the we've seen enough uh, massive dunks from tiny oh, yeah. tiny point guards in this in this uh, FIBA Esport Open too as well. Little men shouldn't be able to jump like that. Okay, it's very very discerning. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but we've seen that enough already that I think. We're going to have our share of high-flying antics as well. It's going to be absolutely entertaining. Um, and so, look, now is the part of the game. As, as the teams are in the tunnel getting ready, now is the part of the time where you have our permission, okay, as casters. You have our permission to spam the chat, give our mods a hard time. We want to see country flags. We want to see the names. 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 Names, names. names of your favorite players, okay. Copy pasta. Copy paste. <laughs> spam away we want we want our mods to just you know fall asleep tonight and all they can see are country flags flying through their minds get excited chat we're very very close to tip off here uruguay brazil getting excited um we're not supposed to make predictions we're meant to uh remain impartial artists however i will say this i'm predicting a cracker of a game <laughs> well, that is a Firecracker. that is a non-partial predicament. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think this will be a stump from any side. This will be a super close game, a nail biter, if you might. Yep. But what I wanted to say is we've seen a lot of uh, raining happening, you know. But this is the season. I think <laughs> we should change off. You know, you know the uh, the saying, "Rain man," you know, and raining baskets. I think this is the season to say. S make it snow. Make it snow. Absolutely. And 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 look. Uh, if, if you can shoot a three-pointer, you can throw a snowball. That is absolutely for sure. We are just moments away here, guys. We're waiting to be told in our headsets that we're going into the game. Um, and, and look, from, from the breathtaking views of Christ the Redeemer statue and to the, the hustle and the buzz of her capital, Brasilia, I know Brazil is getting fired up to cheer on their players here. And likewise, Uruguay... Come on, I, I, we, need to, we need to get an update from chat on the poll, who they think is going to be winning. But I hope that we're seeing a lot of Uruguay flags being spammed in the chat there as well. Because uh, they've looked really impressive so far on this tournament. You know, You know the carnival in Rio, right? Of Imagine the carnival after they win these series. Carnival, <laughs> right? But socially distanced. Carnival, yeah, socially distant in, uh, in their homes. You know, with a Zoom call ready. <laughs> Have to be safe. And look, um, maybe this is uh, just like a... a a, a good opportunity just while we're waiting for tip up here uh, to just remind everybody at home that uh, these are uh, this is e-basketball and yeah, these the are e -basketball. certainly national e-athletes representing their uh, uh, their countries here um, and so that's why occasionally there is just a little bit of a delay like this uh, they're playing online they are playing from uh, uh, you know, the safety and security and comfort of their own homes. But With their pets right next to them. Right, absolutely. You know, as mascots. But, but we, have all, we have all been there. You know, sometimes the Wi-Fi just gives out. So spare a moment. And this is why we have grouped together uh, uh, conferences as well, geographically, to really make sure that the internet speed when these games are played is as high and as, as fast as possible and in the interest of fairness and, and good competitive nature as well. But spare a moment, uh, spare a thought for these e-athletes because when you show up to a real-life basketball tournament, um, you don't have to worry after you arrive at the gym with your team about, you know, about uh, somehow mysteriously kind of being yanked out of the gym and waking up in your living room. So uh, that doesn't happen when you're at a real basketball tournament. But that's exactly what could happen when you're playing, uh, you know, a, a virtual one. It's an added element of pressure and stress that these e-athletes have to deal with. And I think they're doing brilliantly. You know, the Puerto Rico captain yesterday talked about this. Uh, he said, Yamar, actually, he said that, uh, you know, his home family is giving up to internet yeah. so he can play some basketball. And that, you know, I know these problems. I know how <laughs> Wi-Fi works and sometimes actually doesn't. I know more about how it doesn't work than rather it does. Absolutely. Sometimes it is just bad. And some, you don't have any other opportunities just, you know, you're being the only one who actually uses it. So, you know, sometimes somebody wants to watch a movie, but you got to play in an international tournament. You that's know? it. And you got to choose. That's fair enough, okay? Family has to maybe not watch Netflix while you're representing your country. And, and what's great is as well, in every single interview, we, we do ask the same question, you know, what does it mean to represent your country? And you can tell it means an awful lot. And, and it's brilliant. And, and I think um, the reaction that, that I see in, in a lot of the captain's eyes is exactly the same one, I think, that is very relatable to all of us. And that would be, that would be that, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of something you might not have dreamed about even 10 years ago, that you would represent your country um, in, in an eSport. And I think it's absolutely 
phenomenal. I know I've been on the desk and I've said it a few times and I'll keep saying it, trying to will it into existence. Olympic Committee, I hope you're watching. <laughs> I hope that within a decade uh, we have 2K at the Olympics and we have e-athletes representing uh, countries. Uh, but for now, we have 36 countries across six conferences. Geographically, every single continent on the world is represented, which is absolutely brilliant as well. And now, oh, just while we're waiting here, we have our our first poll prediction. Wow. So, it, you, you, Uruguay. I, I read it. I read it. Uruguay predicted by 74% of chat to win. Brazil not very well represented in chat at the moment, or maybe uh, just you know not very confident Brazilian fans out there. Only twenty six percent of the vote. It I might be early in the morning, you know. They they might not have already woken up to actually do the poll. They're just gonna watch yep. the game and they're uh, watching keep and relaxing. Their fingers in and hoping. <laughs> maybe potentially. Look, I learned long ago at the FIBA Esport Open uh, to 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 not go against chat though. So I'm going to honor chat's uh, uh, poll results right here. But I got to tell you, I think it's going to be a lot closer than that. Yeah, yesterday we had some wrong ones as well, where yeah. the USA had 73%, but in the end, Puerto Rico actually got that game. So, But chat, we're, we're not saying chat was wrong. Though. Of course, no, no, no. Chat is uh, right in their own minds. You know, you're actually going to still vote for your own country, although, you know, in the end, they might lose, they might win. You don't know. You're predicting and you're hoping, and that's what we're doing here as well while we're waiting for this game to We start. are, we are. And I know in our interview uh, there with Kalu Bassam, the captain of the Brazil, I also, because his fun fact about himself was that he's in he's a fan of of almost every nba team and so i i tried to get out of him you know which one he didn't like and he was really reluctant actually so he just see like uh uh kalu bazam just seems like a very a fun-loving individual and a great guy um but ultimately we got him to admit that he doesn't like the box so there we go so that was actually that, uh, fair enough. And I think you, you're allowed to have one nemesis, though. You don't have to go for everybody, right? I mean, even every country has their own, like, sort of sparring partner uh, when you when you want to play. The yeah. same was with, uh, I think, Puerto Rico versus Dominican Republic or a different one. I could have maybe messed it up a little bit. But th every country already has a sparring partner. But, <gasps> but we have the game. We're ready to take you in. Let's get into the action. And here we go. So we are, we're going to be tipping off here. Uruguay wearing the, oh, I like that. The sky blue uniforms looking very, very cool. And let's have a look down at Brazil. Oh. Gone with the, oh, with the pinstripes. Look at this. This is phenomenal stuff. Okay, so straight away, it's like a fashion walk off here. But now we're getting into the nitty gritty action. Brazil versus Uruguay opening tip off. I'm excited, Otis. Let's oh, I see. am as well. Let's see is uh, is is chat right as Uruguay win the tip here. Yeah, Juanma with the ball. Already, is he gonna show his first three pointers? No, there's actually a fast reach in foul. Just want to test the waters, you know, maybe uh, get him off their uh, gra gravity, you know, their uh, fence right now. But Juanma again with the ball is gonna actually go through for a layup, but doesn't actually get it. So now it's only gonna be a shooting foul. First shooting foul, nine, nine seconds in. Yeah, I think it's a slightly kind of cagey opening there. We know the Brazil like to try and uh, like to try and force their hand with the steals as well. I do enjoy seeing that. There's nothing wrong with that. And uh, look, uh, certified knocks them both in. So now uh, Uruguay with the early advantage here. Esquillo, he's been so good toting the rock. He really has. They're working the pick and roll game right there. Uh, drops it off to Kalu Bassam. He's probably just going to hand it back here. Esquillo can stroke it from, from deep here. Great pick and roll. Huge Ooh. dunk. Our first big one-handed dunk of the day. I said it in the interview. He is a lovely, a lovely young man, a fine gentleman. But I tell you, you don't want to get between him and the rim in the in the paint there. He's a he's a massive dunker. You know, I don't think anyone would ever want to go between a center <laughs> and a net while he's dunking. That that sounds like a yeah, a one-way ticket to the medical tent right there. All right, so here we go. Working the pick and roll game, uh, Esquillo. We're knotted up at two apiece right here. Just trying to get open. Oh, just try to give a pass, but still yeah. Kalu actually gets the ball back. None of the Urugu Uruguay players uh, managed to rebound that. I see Martins with the ball, uh, trying to get, gives a pass actually to Clumps, and he gets the three-pointer in. Lewis Clamps is 
absolutely perfect from the corner. It's five to two. And uh, here come Uruguay now, driving on their own. It's in and out, but he gets his own board. Rubino, but a steal here. And quick transition, uh, break right here from Brazil. Open man, not quite. Icy Martins just had a defender there behind him. Now, Icy Martins can drain the three. He pulls up, yeah, he doesn't. misses, clangs out right there. And Uruguay trying to get a transition bucket of their own. But look at the defenders scrambling back and doing a good job getting a hand in the passing lane. So far, so good for Brazil. They've yeah, got to be good feeling defense, good. defense, good rebounds as yeah. well. You always have to get these rebounds. That's what we talked about yesterday. Rebounds are probably one of the most important things to do in defense. As long as, you know, you're securing your player, but after he takes the shot somehow, uh, you got to get that ball back to not give him the second chance, and that's what exactly what they're doing. But gives a beautiful pass to Rubinho now, and he gets Boom. two more points in. Absolutely lovely dunk right there. Juanma was going in, but there's a... Clear path, foul. Oh. So he's going to take one shot and still keep the oh, ball. Oh no, that's a flagrant foul. That might be. That might be two. Oh, yeah. two and. Uh, yep. Look, that's okay. You know, I mean, he was trying to stop the fast break bucket, but he ends up giving up two points anyway and the possession. So let's see. Potentially can, five. Yeah, exactly. Can Uruguay punish here as they pull up? Certified and drops in. That is a magnificent three-pointer right there. Already up to 11 points. Yeah, Uruguay, I tell you what, Brazil started well. Now they've got to get back on track. That's a good, good cut to the basket there. And I tell you what, if they can take that every single possession, they will um, just, just staying on track with your score. That's all you've got to do. Okay, now Uruguay trying to work their magic here. Certified, toting the rock, just getting open. Good defense. Ooh, nice oh, he's block, got Rubino. But he gets the ball. That's a little bit fortunate for Uruguay, a little bit unlucky there for Brazil. Some good defense from Brazil, but but nobody collapsed onto the onto the key there when the shot went up. Um, that's what you need to see. But then again, you got to stay at home on your defensive assignment as well. You know, just a little unlucky. Esquillo trying to work it open. I thought he had an opportunity there. Seven to shoot. Nice finger roll. It's going to miss, though. Good defense from Uruguay. Quick transition down the court. Good turnover. Back for Brazil. Trying to work their own fast break right here. Sort of stopping down, slowing, and giving the ball to Esquillo back. Actually had an opportunity to shoot. If this was a different player, he would have taken the shot because it was uh, clear 100% there, but still so keeping the ball to Icy Martins. That's a good-looking shot right there. You've got to knock that in. Big rebound from the captain, though. That is a captain's board if ever I saw one. I tell you what, what they're doing is uh, Brazil are definitely, they have a tactic. They have a strategy. alley -oop dunk Ooh. on the baseline. We spoke about Allen's dunks. It's great to see him showing up early in this one. Brazil have a very clear strategy that they want to control the clock. It's very clear. They're not taking the early threes. They're working the clock. They're trying to keep this a low-scoring affair. As we see a nice drive right there. Good dunk. And that is very interesting. And I, I think that's a good tactic. You're playing a team that we know can just pour in the points in Uruguay. If you get in a shootout with them and you don't match them, it's panic stations, okay? So if you're Brazil and you're you're playing the, the game at your own pace, just like this. I oh, roll, but great. gets the block out. That is nice from now, Uruguay. I see Martins needed to give that ball about a second earlier, and it's a quick two. They've just got to perfect that a little bit. But I like the strategy here because Uruguay, like I said, can shoot the lights out as we're seeing. They, they could be automatic from beyond the arc every possession. Yeah, pretty much every player on Uruguay's team can yeah. get a three if they're open, 100%. If they're covered, about 50%. I'll give them 50%. You know, you can't oversell them, can't undersell them. But now Escudo still with the ball. Allen tried to get it, but he takes the shot himself. That was a hard shot to take from a hard position. That's it. End of the first quarter here. Brazil are going to get the ball right back. They just do need to stay in touch here. They do need a bucket just so that, uh, you know, they're, they're in touching distance of Uruguay here who seem to be, there you go, that's more like it. Easy open to nearly a three-second violation, though. So they've got to get these passes done a little bit quicker. Um, just, you know, just execute a little better there. But um, Uruguay are, they're early on, they're in the zone here in this one. The shooting has been great. And look at Certified's already activated his takeover. He is literally on fire, pulling up for deep threes and stroking them in. And just like that, they're into the 20s here, Uruguay. And uh, Brazil have already a bit of a mountain to climb. They don't want this lead to get much bigger. And Skillo with the ball, tries to go for a three himself, doesn't actually get it. And now it's Uruguay's ball with the bad rebound. And there, 
Uh, Yuama again with the ball, maybe giving a three. No, just gives an easy two. So a dunk in, and there's a timeout from Brazil. And this is a mercy timeout. This is basically, you know, at 23 to 11, this is let's slow down the tempo here, uh, slow the momentum of Uruguay a little bit, and just try to get back into this one. Uh, this is a Loses. really dominant performance from Uruguay early on as we see a huge dunk with authority right there. Now up 25 to 11, and I got to tell you, this game is already pulling away from Brazil. They need some, they need some buckets and they need some stops here in the remainder of the second quarter, um, or else it could be a bridge too far in the second half. Yeah, 14 point difference. Now, oh. now a 12 point difference is still a big difference already to have in the second quarter, especially between these super close teams. Now Rubinho again with the ball actually takes it himself and goes in for this and gets two more points. Uh, you know, widening the gap back to 14 points. Yeah, Caleb Usam will be, he'll be, he'll be filthy with himself there because he knows that he's got to defend that big man. Trying to find Icy Martins who, oh, he can hit those. That was a good look for him. That was opened by his own high standards. And now certified one, Wanma is going to bring the ball back up the court here. Um, looking good so far if you're Uruguay. Great corner three in. Beautiful. However, um, one thing I, I would say if you're, uh, if you're Brazil is what you've got to try and work now is not the clock, but the quick, the quick buckets. That's a good look in the corner there. Allen showing that he's not just a dunk machine. He could stroke the threes as well. Very nicely done. Now Nicholas with the ball gives it to Rubino. And a beautiful dunk from him as well to continue on with 32 points. Uh, they're not at, you know, 16-point difference. It's already becoming quite big. Yeah, it's... Look, what you would like to see from Brazil here is is just quick buckets in the paint, just like that right there. A good cut, a high percentage shot, but great defense as well, it has to be said, from Uruguay. Those passes, if they come just a fraction earlier, are, are, are quicker buckets, basically. That's kind of what Brazil uh, needs here. Not necessarily threes. Take them if you're open. Big dunk in the lane! over the Brazilian captain. Oh my word, artist. That might be one of the biggest dunks we've had at the FIBA Esport Open too. Yeah, Massive. Ur Uruguay definitely has that communication down and Brazil didn't give the easy pass there when he goes in. You know, they need to work on the communication with these fast two-pointers. So uh, before they actually managed to do that, you know, Uruguay is doing it perfectly, but now he just goes himself and there gets these two points back and now what i want to see here in the last kind of 90 seconds or so of the first half is i want to see Esquillo recognize how easy that was i want to see him go okay we're going to play good defense here we're going to see what happens but every time we get the ball we're coming away with two points why not as a good timeout smart cranial good play heads up play there timeout from uruguay nearly losing the rock i want to see Esquillo come down the court and drive the lane exactly like we just saw because if those two points are on offer You've just got to take him, and you just need to start pouring in some points of your own and hoping that defensively you can stop this juggernaut, which is the Uruguayan offense as we see another pick and roll. The timing on these passes are, are just to perfection. Fantastic. Yeah. Let's see if Esquilo recognizes that he has two points whenever he wants it, just from toting the rock and driving. Yeah, he just needs to go through, go. but gives it to Kalu Basam, and now a beautiful duck by Robinho. Uh, he's been doing great, getting these blocks, getting these two points, and uh, now a far pass to Nicholas in the sides there. No one's quite open unless the left side there, but, uh, you know, a lot of people in the same spot. Gives it to Nicholas there, but now Iko Digo is just free to take these three points and drive them home. That was a masterful, masterful uh, a series of play right there. Just a great sequence defensively from Uruguay. You can see them try to force the issue, come down for a quick, you know, a quick change of possession basket and then work it to the open man. Brazil just not rotating well enough on defense, couldn't quite recover and, and giving up the easy bucket here. And there's a big dunk, though. That's what I like to see. A little bit more of that. You're not out of this yet, Brazil, you know, but you've got to pour in a few points here. Even if you can just get a stop here, have the final say in the first half, that's going to do wonders for your confidence as well. Yeah, 19 point difference isn't that unbeatable, especially since you have at least one more half in the game. But Rubinho with the ball, you got to be careful. That's why maybe they made the shooting foul. Uh, you know, yeah. the center shouldn't be the best in getting, yep. these, uh, getting these three throws, but we'll see. We'll yep. see. Let's see. He's going to try and knock them both in and, and take a 21 point lead if he can. 
into the half. We got one last possession here. There we go. It's a 20 point lead. What can Brazil do? Trying to get the cherry pick. Working the open man. It's green. Beautiful. It's good. Nine seconds remaining here in the first half. That's a good three, a good way to finish. If it ends like that for Brazil, they just need to defend here for five more seconds. Open man. Oh, hey, it's good. One second remaining here. Will they get a catch and shoot? We'll see. No steal. So, 23 to 40 at the half. Absolutely phenomenal. So, excuse me, 23 to 43 at the half. Phenomenal stuff here. And uh, I tell you what, Uruguay are pulling away with this one. Um, if you're Brazil now, you've got a mountain to climb, which means one play at a time. You've got to get buckets with pretty much every possession. So it doesn't mean you've got to be perfect. It just means you have to work high percentage shots like that. I like that, but you've got to execute. Yeah, sometimes execution is not the easiest thing to do. But now just John goes himself and gets these easy two points as well. You know, he has no problems with execution. The only the only positive, you know, that you can, you can kind of say if you're Brazil there is that that is very easily. As we see a Squello stroke at green, beautiful shot there. Um, is that it's fixable. You've just got to switch on defensively. You've got to communicate. You've got to hand off. You've got to rotate properly. There we go. You can see them just, you can already see the improvement, but you can't leave the corner shooters open for Uruguay. They will punish you every single time. Really, the defense just needs to get a, a lot better for Brazil here. Yeah, sometimes the defense is the hardest part to uh, increase, especially against the team of Uruguay who can do threes with almost any player and then these fast passes for, uh, you know, for Rubinho to finish off. But now a lot of t uh, turnovers there yeah. in the middle. And Rubinho finishes off and Ru makes him go into the 50 points. There you go, Rubinho basically, basically saying enough of these steals and these quick turnovers. I'm just going to slam this home. Corner three, Lewis Clamps misses. Great. Oh, you could see the Uruguay player there, Rubino, trying to get a timeout before he falls out of bounds. But it's going to be Brazil's inbound here uh, and, and a reset of the shot clock as well. Um, but really, yeah, they, they, need a, they need a bucket every possession now, and then they need some, some much better kind of adjustment on defense as well. It has to be said, they're still in this game, but you want to chip away right here in the third. Yeah, and now we're reaching foul coming out from Uruguay. I got to say, the Brazil is actually not as small, you know, making the gap smaller. It's only growing and growing now a 24-point difference. But good, good back, back to 22. Yeah, <laughs> great back to a cut there as well. That was nice. That was nice. They just need a little bit more of that. You know, um, the one thing that is really difficult to do in 2K is defend your man off the ball, especially if they're slippery and they're moving around back there along the baseline. But the help defense from Brazil you can see that they start to move in, but it's got to be so much quicker. Now, I know what you're doing then is you're leaving your corner shooter wide open, but you got to protect the uh, rim. A nice alley-oop right there from Esquillo to the captain, Kalu Bassam. Beautiful. Climbing the ladder and dropping it in. More of that. The good news is here, Brazil has a couple of possessions and a couple of scores in a row now. They're putting some points on the board. They just need to adjust defensively. I'm like a broken record. I'll stop saying it. But I want to see it happen. I want to see a, a tighter finish here from Brazil. Yeah, they have to think about it because, you know, two and a half minutes left and leaving a player like this wide open is not the way to go. Remember, you need to make defense as good as you can and you got to get every shot in. Yeah. Every shot counts from now on. Well, actually, in the whole game, you know, it counts anyway, but this is beautiful. Good job. There you go. Esquillo, again, offensively now, you can see they, look, they're fighting through the screens, the pick and roll, right? They're trying to get over the screen and, and play the defense well here. Good, much better movement there as we saw the man uh, cutting for the rim and the, the help defense was there. This is already better from Brazil. They are communicating. Great hand in the pass lane there, nearly a steal. This is a much better defensive performance from Brazil. Fantastic stuff. They need this bucket at the other end, and it's good. That might be their best defensive stand of the game so far. Rinse, repeat. You can already see getting those defenses now lowering to 20 points. Now, if they can even get this, I think they might be on a roll. 
Just have to be careful so Yuama can't shoot that three. Uh, a foul coming in. Got to be careful. You're soon going to go into the bonus where it's going to go through the free throws. Yeah, but I... Look, I like the cheeky, I like the cheeky point guard trying to pick the pocket there as we see another massive dunk in the big dunk animation coming up on your screens there. I love to see it. Great work from our graphics department right there. Esquillo has been good this quarter offensively. Nice pick and roll, easy dunk, just more of that needed. Now back on defense. Back on defense. Uruguay trying to pull away with this as we come up on one minute left in the third quarter here. What a beautiful dump there with a windmill. Thing, it's a thing of beauty right there. It's a little bit too easy if you're Uruguay, though. I don't know what to tell you, Brazil. They, I really thought as though they played a good couple of minutes there as we see. Oh, what a block! Excellent Rubinho rejection. Rubinho doing everything he can to secure that they don't get any points, and he gets every single two-pointer, every dunk that he's been trying to do. And now a clear three coming out as well. Uruguay definitely showing themselves, and, and these two players showing that they have such a good chemistry. Absolutely, and you could see there, you could see they were trying. Nice drive from Esquillo. They were trying to rotate, but they both took the pick and roll, man, and they left the, the sharpshooter certified wide open. And now look at that duo, look at that tandem. They're both activated, they're both on fire. And he goes in. Another three from the corner. Uruguay pulling away with this one. And Brazil, you know, left to pick up the pieces really. And, and hopefully just try and keep scoring themselves. Point differential is going to play a massive role in this uh, final determination as to who actually gets into the grand final. And that's a good pass right there. Trying to draw the, uh, the contact. Quick outlet pass, end of the third. One quarter to go in this one, 65 to 39. A lot closer in that quarter right there, only 22 to 16. But my goodness, they've got a, they've got a mountain to climb here. Brazil, Uruguay trying to... Try to book themselves a seat in that grand final. Yeah, well, those far threes are definitely going to be uh, an easy ticket to there while getting it up to 68 points. And, and, and in my case, Brazil, you have to do miracles now to even try to lower the gap. Yeah, it's it's really a big ask. A squillo. That is a good miracle. Yeah, there you go. You know, small miracles, one step at a time. Uh, Rome wasn't building a day, right? They're just trying to kind of work their way back into this. Um, Esquillo has been good. He's shown his class right there. We know this is a, a talented Brazilian team. The corner shots are open, though. Good help defense. It's so hard. You've, you've really got to have great stick work defensively to keep everybody covered as we get another corner three uh, for Uruguay. They have shot the lights out here. They've really taken every opportunity that's been presented to them. Um, and, and look, that's easier said than done as Esquillo drops in. Another beautiful three. And look. He's making a statement as one of the, the better point guards in all of the FIBA eSport Open 2. Um, however, one man cannot beat an entire team when they're operating to peak efficiency like that. Yeah, definitely. And we can see that, uh, you know, Uruguay, they have these two star players, you know, Rubinho and Juan playing, playing around, getting the most points. But whenever they don't have the opportunity, they just give it to someone else and they always score. They get these three pointers in uh, anyway. So it, it is really hard to play against them. You have to think about what kind of a defense can you go one on one. And uh, if you do go that way, you can't let a person be free for even a half a second. Yeah, it all comes down to that stick skill, really. Um, obviously, strategy needs to be, you know, right there and perfect because the Squillo works himself open for another easy two there. Um, it's really, really hard. So you're, you're basically talking about having um, phenomenal reflexes uh, as well as kind of outthinking your opponent. Uh, it, it's easier said than done, and then you need to be switched on for the entire game. Absolutely there. And that level of concentration is difficult to maintain. Well, they are professionals. They are one of the best or, you know, the best in their country. So... Uh, while that is happening, Esquito still tries to get some of these points back, but Kalu makes it dunk and gets it to 49 points. Nice double pump, two-handed reverse dunk right there. He's putting on a show, Kalu Busam. He's had a lot of dunks so far this tournament, really enjoying his gameplay. Uruguay, two minutes and 25 seconds, 26 seconds left in this one, just pulling away trying to pour in as many points as they can. Likewise, Brazil on the other side of things. 
point differential artist going to play a massive role in those final table results. Well, Uruguay winning this is probably going to be the biggest difference that they can make against Brazil at this point because they will be having these two victories now and they tried to go for a shot, but that is a shot clock violation actually. So uh, the ball goes to Brazil. Good defensive stand right there. That third quarter was promising for Brazil. Um, that was a lot closer, um, but you know, trying to finish strong here, Esquillo with the stick work, really good defense. So look at that, sticking Just to him like glue. Trying to work an open shot. They're playing 100% ISO. And Icy Martins. Yeah, talking about ISO, Icy Martin gets a two-pointer for himself. There we go. Nicely worked shot right there. And look at that, Icy Martins, only seven points on the day. Um, normally, normally such a, a, a prolific point scorer. So a little bit, a little bit quiet from him today. It's been the Uruguay show, that's for sure. Certified working the clock and trying to work an open shot. Good board from the captain. Look at the defense, though, from Uruguay. They're straight back down the court. I love how much passion and enthusiasm they're playing with right to the last minute here. Now, very, very impressive. Actually, Uruguay hasn't gotten a, a good shot in recently now, only staying at 77 points. So, uh, you know, Brazil slowly actually getting closer to them, but not missing these shots is not going to help them at all. With only one minute left, it seems to be an impossible mission, while Rubinho fakes it out and just does an easy layup. That's good. Just pour in the points. Just add a couple right there. Got to finish strong here for Brazil. National pride on the line. Look at Rubinho with 25 points, eight boards, a nice alley-oop dunk right there from the captain, Galo Bassam. I tell you what, it's been a pleasure watching his dunks this tournament. That is uh, completely true. And, you know, 25 points for uh, talking for Uruguay side, Rubinho. It's it's a hard task to do as a center. Yeah. You don't get any three-pointers. You get these from only two points in. So, But Brazil, 26-point difference. That will be probably game for them. But uh, it's okay. Focus on the next one and focus on everything else that you did wrong this game and do better next one. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's teachable moments, um, I think, uh, as we see. He could have um, taken the shot. Amazing stick skills. Just working the clock, though. Then working the open quarter shot. Uruguay have been just a class ahead as we see flexing going on here. A little bit of salt in the wound there. No love loss between these two nations here, of course. And now it's going to be a foul. Going to get some free throws. Looks as though we had... Uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure what that was. It's a kind of... Uh, he was standing there trying to do uh, the screen, but he moved, so... There we go. Interesting. Um, okay, so... Uh, and, and just reaching in here. It's finishing a little bit scrappy. We're into the bonus. Into the bonus here. The Every fault counts, but I don't yeah. think they can get in 20 seconds back so much points. No. It's, it's going to be impossible. No. But, you know, getting it slowly back up is still good for them. To focus on the next games, you know, finishing off maybe on a nicer note than before. Definitely, absolutely, and and look, I think um, full credit to Uruguay here. We we were expecting fireworks, and and once again, Artis, chat was right. Yeah, I was expecting a closer game, but chat was definitely, uh, you know, in a better mindset than I was. Huh? You know, they're the predictors in the end. We can't do that that good. Otherwise, we make it a cursed as we say, but now uh, Nicholas with the ball finishing off and it uh, doesn't get those two points. There we go, 82 to 56, the final score line here. And uh, that was a really comprehensive victory for Uruguay. Congratulations uh, to, to Uruguay. Congratulations to the fans. Commiserations, uh, Brazil. And I got to tell you, Artis, I feel like they lost that game in the first quarter. Yeah, they did. They they let Uruguay play their own game, and the defense that they put up wasn't enough to stop Uruguay. And while on the other side, Uruguay just, you know, they didn't allow any space for Esquito, es ex ex Esico. And, you know, it's going to be a hard task to fight against them for Uruguay. Like, they're, they're showing themselves as uh, one of the best, or, you know, maybe Definitely. even the best. And, and I think what was really telling from that game is, and, and I want to bring up a, a kind of another team as well, uh, uh, Costa Rica have a fantastic sharpshooter in uh, Bandit. And look, you really got to play both sides of the ball. You've got to play defense as well. The only great thing to take away from this, and I think the positive is, you know, you're testing your medal there against a, a fantastic international opponent in Uruguay. And there are very teachable moments. And you can 
you can go you can go back and now in between your games you can you can even practice in between your games your defense and and those transitions um give the ball to Esquillo basically and say yeah. okay listen you be you be certified in this one and you you uh punish us here and and defensively you can rotate honestly it just felt as though the help defense from the corners which is so it's so much easier said than done i'm not throwing shade is is uh just needs to get a little bit better for brazil and then they could be an absolute top tier team now having a look at the standings and and what that means though as you can see Uruguay now, uh, with, with a, you know, a game in hand over Argentina, have now uh, snuck into the top position. Uh, but, of course, Argentina versus Venezuela is going to be coming up. So Argentina will be saying, oh, just, you know, keep, keep our seat warm for us. We'll be right there in number one. Yeah, they want to get that uh, th third win in a row and while Venezuela, you know, of course, they're not giving up easy. They're going to try to get this one win. And if they get it against Argentina, which better team? Who do you get it against uh, than the previous champions? Oh, yeah. This is an opportunity for Venezuela, um, uh, who, uh, by their kind of own admission, uh, very new to the scene. Um, yeah. Still working on team chemistry, still working on tactics. But um, the fact that they are even speaking about these things and have this mindset is really a, a really, um, I would say, impressive thing. And, and taking a, a page from uh, a Cyprus's book from last weekend as well, uh, once you start to put those building blocks in place, then you can change your strategy on the fly and you can take down massive opponents. You can maybe make it through the final. So Venezuela with a, a, a really good building block on this tournament and now get to test themselves against arguably the best South American conference team as well. Um, so you can see uh, the games that we have uh, coming up a, a little bit later today. Very exciting uh, first match there between Uruguay and Brazil. A little bit more lopsided than we thought. We're about to see Venezuela take on Argentina. Argentina heavily the favorites in this one. We haven't seen the poll from chat yet, but we know this already. They're undefeated. Okay, they look like the favorites. Venezuela have a lot of potential, though. We're then going to be having a look at Bolivia versus uh, uh, Brazil. And then after that, Venezuela versus Uruguay. And then Bolivia versus Argentina. And then we'll be moving into our grand final. We're only two of these five South American conference teams are going to make it through to the grand final, which will be best of three and be pretty exciting stuff. Last four games here, you know, uh, a lot of excitement to be put out. Whew. Everyone's almost like a few teams last chance to actually prove themselves on the big stage, you know. Oh, yeah. And you got always got to remember, even though you might lose a game, take that experience, watch that replay. Although how hard it could be, you know, like watching a replay where you lost, especially close games. Yeah, it's harder. Yep. In my opinion, you know, for me at least. Yep. Maybe for Canada, you Canada, USA game comes to mind. Yeah. Absolutely. But look, in, uh, mistakes are the greatest uh, teachers, and and sometimes you don't make any mistakes. You play a perfect game. There's just better. But the other team plays an even more perfect game, so it can just happen that way at times. But I um look, what am I excited about in the next game? Venezuela have a very unique style of 2K. Uh, their their dribbling and their passing style very run and gun. Uh, very, very kind of street bowl, I want to say as well. You know, you might see down on Venice Beach or, or you know, uh, on your local court in your neighborhood. I really enjoy it, but but really great timing on those passes. So so clearly the stick skill, um, the reflexes, you can see the talent is there. A lot of hard and, and fast cuts to the rim uh, off the ball as well. And then great passes. You put those two together, you got big dunks. And that's what we've seen from Venezuela so far. I mean, focus on the passes and get those dunks. It's a good thing. You, you don't always have to try for the three-pointers. A lot of teams actually try to focus the three-pointers more because, you know, obviously they give more points. But what's more of a 100% shot, a, th a block three-pointer or a free open two? Listen, you got to take the high percentage points. you got to take the points that are on offer. If the opponent's going to leave them out there, then absolutely grab them. I'm a, a big advocate of... of having as as few empty possessions as you can so if you're getting something if you're getting a, a bucket on every single offensive possession you're doing something right you're staying in touch with these opponents if you need to work a desperation three then or a few of them in a row in the fourth quarter then by all means but it's better to be within touching distance and have a shot at that title than uh than not at all so we are just waiting for the argentinian venezuelan players now they are in the digital, the virtual tunnel, they're getting ready.
getting excited. Tying their shoes. And uh, I, I do just want to kind of take a moment uh, to uh, talk about uh, El Kiko, um, the captain from Venezuela, who we had the pleasure of interviewing there yesterday. And the mascot that you might have heard me uh, alluding to in the opening segment, uh, his dog, Woody, who says lives with him and is always on the couch with him or on the bed right next to the couch playing all of his 2K games with him. So he, Woody the dog, who we got to see very a very brief glimpse of on the camera. You can us, watch it yesterday he, while they had the interview. He is the unofficial, official uh, mascot, as far as I'm concerned, of Venezuelan international e-basketball. I think that's fantastic. I want to see, like, uh, 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 Woody T-shirts and stuffed animals, you know, being held up at arena events in the future for the Venezuelan national e-basketball team. Um, and I asked him what his favorite snack was. And he says he has a special kind of, like, a special cookie that he buys him. And, uh, and look... Uh, like, it's probably one of those cookies that also I, helps their teeth. Yeah, absolutely. I I hope that I hope that he's like feeding him a lot of them for the good vibes and the goodwill. Um, and and then uh, likewise, of course, um, over over on the Argentinian side of things, um, uh, Ramiro, uh, we're we're going to be having an interview, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, just just towards the end of the segment with him, we have some great kind of questions uh, lined up for him. Very serious team, very serious individual. Uh, studying chemical engineering, so I have a funny question lined up for that. Uh, we'll also have our serious questions, don't worry. Obviously, they are heavy hitters when it comes to South American e-basketball. Um, reigning champions uh, from the FIBA eSport Open number one. Now undefeated in FIBA eSport Open two. Uh, it's going to be, uh, I think, potentially a lopsided affair, but I'm still excited by this game. You know, something serious this way comes. You could say something wicked, but I don't. I don't want to sound depressing like that. You know, it's more exciting rather than dull or or, or bad. So uh, you know, while we're thinking about a serious games, let's go into the lineup screen. On the Argentina side, we have Itzar Miro, I'm Bujo, Lamog, dribbling too much, and X Diggs. There we go. And for Venezuela, there is El Kiko, the captain. Super Beats, IBG, Jack Russell, and the Pega. And we are just getting ready. The players coming out of that virtual tunnel. And we're ready for our game. Let's jump in. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Venezuela will be wearing the dark and the red jerseys right here. And it uh, looks like um, the other team is going to be bringing white. There we go. Argentina yeah. with the white. Uh, and they do actually get the ball first. So truly numb with the ball. I've heard him yesterday being completely numb and getting these two points. And wow, the percentages on the pole is... Just insane. Argentina with the 93% versus Venezuela, 7%. 93% of chat are riding off Venezuela in this game. If I'm Venezuela, I am taking that enormous chip and putting it on my shoulder. And if you're at home, now you want chips and dips. I'm sorry I made you hungry. I just made myself hungry. We're not allowed to eat yeah. on the desk here. Now I want chips and dips. But uh, Venezuela working a good three. Um, look for the iconic, bold-headed player there, Avatar of Peg. He is phenomenal with the rock. And look for him to be slicing and dicing his way up the field. White chocolate working in those miraculous passes in those dunks. And he can also stroke the three. But truly numb is more than likely... Uh, probably one of, if not the best player uh, in the South American Conference. And it could be true, but now we finally see Pega with the ball, with the rock, as you say, being an absolute uh, menace, but actually missing that pass and giving it to Truly Numb while he actually loses the ball again as well. So the Pega is trying to go uh, and uh, giving the pass to KTA, trying to make a shot. That was a hard one, and now Argentina gets the ball again. It's far past the truly numb, and he's he will be trying to uh, give a shot, but misses as well. The rebound's good. I am go. He still keeps the ball. I'm Bujo with it as well, and looks like that will be a foul there. So that was a shooting foul. Okay, and it looks as though uh, dribble too much. By the way, we just have been informed of a sub is not going to be playing. Uh, for Argentina. Um, so we have a sub in there. We'll, we'll get the name in a moment. We'll probably be able to spot it. Now, uh, 
Okay, uh, uh, Truly numb, Truly is, the numb one. is the sub. My apologies. Yes, so he was going to be taking as the Argentina drop in another three. They have a two to eight lead now. And you can see this full court pressure from Argentina is cruel and indifferent, but they do not care. Truly numb with a rare miss right there. It is going to be really difficult for Venezuela to break that press. This is where real well basketball tactics come into play, Artisan. Breaking full court presses like that um, quite often teams find themselves shell-shocked and down by 20 points before they realize how to beat the press and what's going on. So you got to be careful. Yeah, sometimes people with actual experience in basketball could have the upper hand while getting these tactics while it's Ramiro tries to go for a dunk but actually misses that. Yep, good defense here from Venezuela. Take your easy and a nice two dunk. points. Reverse two-handed power dunk with three Argentinian defenders draped off of him there. Poster dunk moment right there. And you can see Venezuela actually working a kind of full court pressure of their own. And and right now, I'm just impressed with what they're doing. I wanted to say, so we see a really good alley-oop dunk. It's Ramiro. Look, they're going to take that as often as you let them. So uh, here comes the full court pressure here. Watch for the trap come over. Yeah, good work from Pega. The way... The way you can avoid that trap is by changing direction the way he did there, okay? And kind of just faking the defenders out. And now they're kind of doing well. Watch for KTA and Pega to, to combine on a couple of really quick dunks, though. Yeah. And, and that's what they've been great at in the tournament so far. Good handoff, good drive, hard drive, misses the points. And now a so, far pass. Yeah, so far so good, though. Um, Venezuela, look, putting up a good fight here, but Argentina already up 12-4. to 4. You can see them trying to work that trap. Two people there, Great but pass. actually it's, it now gives a free space for them to work on, but uh, the Argentinian defenders all already there. You have to work a little bit faster. Well, Kiko now Beautiful takes the three. three-pointer yeah, there. Yeah, gets it in. There you go, the captain dropping the three. Now, the way they found the open man down the court there, that's how you beat a full court press. It's scary. It's risky. They've got to start to get a hand up on that alley-oop, by the way. As I said, Argentina are now just really testing the defenses of Venezuela, saying, okay, listen, could you can stop the alley-oop dunks. You have to time yeah. the defensive jump perfectly, though. They're going to keep taking it until you stop them. Nearly through. Oh. That would have been a good pass, but yeah. it gets intercepted. And now Imbujo is going to be with the ball. And almost looks like he was standing there a little bit too long. Could have uh, Ramiro. Could have uh, violated the three-second shot, but now truly, truly numb. numb. The is thing numb is, to other people. Oh, <laughs> just absolutely. Gets it absolutely, mind-numbing shots. With truly numb, you've got to stick with him the entire time. You see, Pega give a beautiful little pass. That's how you find the open man. Oh, Jack Russell misses the shot. You got to drop that in. You got to punish your opponent for leaving you open in the corner like that. I have been impressed with the way Venezuela have very quickly, yes, they're down by 10, but very quickly broken that full court press. Truly numb drops in another three. They have to be, this is where it's so difficult. And this is why, you know, these games are, are, are sweaties because you've got to concentrate the entire time. Oh, and here's a free player. They're actually baiting these passes yeah. while the biggest player on their team, Ramiro, just stands there and waiting. He just needs to pick up his hand. He doesn't even need to jump yeah. and he's going to get those passes. So you got to be a little bit more careful. Maybe go onto the sides, but again, another interception. Truly yeah. Numb steals it and gets two more points for Argentina. They are definitely being dominant. Yeah, they are. They're pulling away with it here. Truly Numb with 18 points already in this one in the first quarter. He's on track for a potential Potentially an 80-point performance. Um, and look, 80-point. Uh, you, yeah, you've got to you've got to do exactly what you said there, which is find the open man on the sideline. That's the the best way to kind of work down the court. As Pega just takes the shot himself. He had an icicle next to him, and he had a man in his face, and he was able to stroke a green, showing that they definitely have the skills to pay the bills. They belong here at the FIBA Esport Open too. Um, Ooh, have to defend him a little bit better. You give him an open space, he's gonna get that three. And that's been a, what it was been happening a lot of the times. You know, these point guards, they're so scary in that side. But now El Kiko oh. guys to go for a jump, but Ramiro blocks it. Just as the quarter ends, nearly gets the quick two points. They are breaking the press as well as they can. It's impressive to see. However, Argentina... Ooh, nice footwork. Yeah, Pegger's great with the skills. Look at that. There's K... Oh, it wasn't... Excuse me, it wasn't KTA cutting. But, um, look, they, they've got the skills. They definitely do. It's really just the tactics, and they're working on them on the fly and, and actually doing impressive things. But this Getting is it. Getting that rebound. No matter what is happening on the court, no matter whether it's a shot in the air and a rebound, 
wherever truly numb is you have to find him and you have to defend him yeah just keep one player on him at all times and Great. that's gonna secure it at least a little bit better than you know just leaving him open again he's gonna run in uh, and it, now it just gives a pass to Imbujo and he actually shoots it in as well. Argentina definitely showing up a lot of trouble for uh, Venezuela with the 19-point lead. Yeah, but Venezuela are knocking in some of their shots as well. Jack Russell did miss one. What a turnover there. Great hustle. And they will punish you. Look, what you're seeing is just insane skills from Argentina. You got to call the police on that one. That was illegal. <laughs> he was uh, he's, he's like a thief in the night. He just took the ball there. Fantastic stuff. And look, Try to go for a shot. Now, yeah. now you got to be careful of these ones. You have the highest or tallest player yeah. against you, so uh, don't I think, risk like that. I think that looked like a little bit of a misclick there. I feel like he could have been. He was trying to work a, a dunk there and a power dunk. However, just it, it, you know, sometimes look, I'm a bit of a noob when it comes to 2K. I've done that plenty of times, thinking I'm going to go up for a dunk. I end up trying, you know, a, a layup, an air ball. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. But good, good defense here. Um, I've I've seen plenty. Remember, Argentina are a world, world-class team. I've seen plenty of impressive stuff here from Venezuela early on. This is one of those performances that you can definitely call a building block. You can hang your hat on. Look at this quick transition bucket and another alley-oop dunk. Oh, my God. That was phenomenal stuff there. This is, if you're, if you're Venezuela, you know you've got a tough task ahead of you even before the game. So you're just looking for positives to take away. Truly numb, though needs a, a minder uh, talking about him every time you're gonna see him steal a ball remember that he's training to be a police officer oh my word breaking the rules and, and you know <laughs> stealing while actually trying to become the police himself but uh well, it's, looking a, it's at the a good a good thing that stealing in basketball is actually encouraged Legal. yeah it's, it's good as absolutely. long as you don't touch the touch but, the hands but i get it i like it listen i <laughs> Pretty phenomenal, and uh, and that is a nice long three. No, I'm seeing plenty of good ball movement from Venezuela. You know what we've got here? I don't care what the scoreboard says. We've got some really good free-flowing skill basketball. Yeah, just showing off the best they can actually give yeah. us. And you know, you love to see that. Yeah. Uh, either team wins, either team uh, loses. It's good to see that they at least have the motivation and have the skills to show us, and we just love to enjoy it. El Kiko now with the a captain. two. Dropping it in again. I bet Woody the dog is happy with that one. I'm telling you. Woof. I'm feeling woof. There we go. I'm, I'm feeling either potentially like a Netflix uh, Ooh, series. That was a nice block, actually. And Boho should have gone in and should have had an easy shot there. But Pegan now has the ball. Goes oh. for the alley up and gets stolen midair. That was a really nice rejection. P pinning it off the, the glass there. Very good. But like, as I was saying, I'm feeling a Netflix series uh, or potentially a kind of Disney Plus series with uh, with El Kiko and Woody the dog. I don't know. I'm, I, I definitely feel like there's something in the works there for the, the 2K marketing department. Yeah. Who would be the protagonist, the dog or the player? Oh, I mean, come on. It has to be Woody. <laughs> uh, but continuing on, Pega trying to show the best of his footwork. Gives it to Jack Russell. Back to the captain himself. Now KTA with the ball. Goes through the whole field. Gives it back to Pega. He always open and gets a three in as beautiful. well. Beautiful. Beautiful plays. Beautiful runaways. And, you know, all we're missing is the runaway bride. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Um, Get the... Get the, the Nikes and the uh, the dress on. Uh, look, it's been entertaining. You can see off the ball as well. Venezuela are moving really, really nicely. Look at the cuts here as KTA, who has had phenomenal dunks the entire tournament. He has been cutting like crazy. And you know that they're on the comms in each other's ears. One thing that I definitely want to... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but, but giving the props here to Venezuela, they are saying and they're communicating really clearly because I, in IRL, in real time, um, over the uh, uh, VoIP, right? He'll be saying, I'm making my cut. Here comes the pass. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and while that's happening... The other three players need to know, I'm not going to speak over the top of this, and, and then whoever has the rock needs to be completely clued in to who's talking as well. So it's really important stuff, but you're also just seeing phenomenal, uh, phenomenal strat from Argentina, a incredible strategy, incredible skills as well, um, and, and then just, you know, amazing um, individual skills here. You know, Ambujo, look at this, fade away. <laughs> that, that was a little maybe too far stretch, but uh, Argentina, <laughs> Argentina in the rest of it has, you know, wasted the time, not wasted, you know, picked their shots correctly, uh, finally gets the free spot and takes it. Yeah. They don't need to rush. They have the look. time on their hands. Now they just want to take these 100% shots, increasing their stats. 
Yeah, right now Argentina are on course to break 100 in this game, you know, just based on on a game of two halves and the fact they're over 50 already and a nice transition bucket right there and a good solid dunk at the other end. However, Venezuela are also on track to drop in 50 over Argentina. Yeah. Risky pass there. I yeah, I saw what the, I could see what they were trying to do. I, the man had to stop it about halfway though, not move down to the three uh three point line. 10 seconds to half right here. Bujo pulls up. That's green. That's magnificent. 56 first half points for Argentina. Likewise, I'm impressed with the 26. If Argentina end up scoring 50 here, I'll be hugely impressed. End of the first. Going into the second half, Argentina 56, <laughs> Venezuela 26. Actually, the three point difference. Look at the three pointers 80%. Yeah. 80%, but that also is 60 good for Venezuela. Also, oh, absolutely. Um, truly numb has more points on his own than Venezuela has as a team. That should just show you the level of player that he is. And I mean that in no disrespect to Venezuela. I have loved the way they've played here. Uh, they have moved the ball really well. Um, the execution only lacking a couple of times. Look at the movement off the ball. Ah, just misses it. But the, the fact that they work an open shot like that against a world-class team like Argentina with a big alley-oop dunk at the other end, this is very, very promising and i gotta tell you argentina will be coming away from this going yeah okay we need to watch out for them in the next tournament because yeah. uh this is venezuela's first tournament as we see green again there beautiful only two pointer but really lovely shot uh venezuela's first tournament they've only been practicing a few weeks still coming together and i i think they've done a phenomenal job what i'm impressed with is uh the strategy the communication the execution just needs a bit more work they need to recognize when you're playing an, a phenomenal talent like Truly Numb that you cannot leave him alone ever. Like, even when he goes over to the bench for a timeout, just follow him. Just just be his shadow. <laughs> Dev, I completely agree with you there. But, um, you know, talking about Venezuela's experience, they actually have very little. Only a few players have played in different tournaments. Yeah. I, I, even... It, even in NBA 2K. So a lot of players like uh, the Pega hasn't even played in any other yeah. tournaments, although he's been playing NBA 2K since 2011. And that just proves that, you know, although you can try too much, but, you know, you need to get this huge international stage experience for you to get better, you understand the yeah. stress levels. And then afterwards, next year, hopefully when when we if we have a FIBA Esports 3, uh, they can come back in with the same players and say, hey, this time we're twice and thrice as strong, oh. and now a beautiful alley you there. Sorry to go over the top of you there, Artis, but that was phenomenal, mate. He just threw that from the three-point line over two defenders, one-handed dunk. My goodness, we, we promised you some fireworks here today, early fireworks. You know, New Year's Eve is a, a, you know, week, a little ways a, away. A week and a half away. We still got Christmas in between. Oh, I can't wait, actually. Now, now you got me excited <laughs> for that. But we uh, don't need to wait, mate. We've got all the fireworks we need right here. Phenomenal stuff. And it was a really great point you bring up about Pega having played since 2K11. It shows, doesn't it? With the way he is yeah. so fluid, just bringing the rock up. Look at Dude, him. He just takes it. He doesn't care. There's a player right in front of him looking him in the eyes. He jumps up and swish. It ain't nothing but a thing. Pega dropping it in. And I made the reference with the bold head. You know I love my holiday Christmas movies. No better movie than Die Hard. He looks like Bruce Willis out there, and I think it's it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> Maybe a little smaller and a skinnier Bruce Willis, but definitely better at well, basketball. Come on, the camera adds ten pounds. You know that. Even, even oh yeah. Even our, our families at home say we've been eating too much when they see us on the casting desk. Now, um, great attempted alley oop there again. Was there a deflection? Yeah, Venezuela's going to get the ball here. I tell you what, I I don't care. There's a thirty point difference. I'm going to say it again. Repeat myself from the first half. This has been entertaining end to end basketball. This is. Uh, these are the types of games that you wake up dreaming to cast about. Very fun stuff. Yeah, even though the game has been mostly one-sided for Argentina, Venezuela is putting up a good fight, and seemingly as the first tournament, you know, it's just it, it's fun to watch. Yeah, fun. it can be fun basketball while one team is still dominating over the other one. Yeah, absolutely. You can't prove me. You you can try to prove me wrong, but you <laughs> you can't. Absolutely. Six seconds to shoot here, trying to work something with another nice alley dunk there. This is awesome stuff to watch. You just need to remember, folks at home, 
that Argentina are the reigning champions. This is, until someone else gets the title, Ambujo misses that, but a nice board there from Ramiro, who's activated his takeover. He is literally on fire. Nice steal there midair. Gives the further pass, but actually gets intercepted. Still keep <laughs> the ball. Good for them, but there's a timeout oh, for Venezuela. And that's a captain's timeout. Yeah, that's, they that's shouldn't fine. have taken a timeout right. there. Look, that was, that was a panic timeout, but it's okay. But I tell you what, though, just to rem remind at home, this is the best team in South America, Argentina, until someone takes that title. And there's Jack Russell stroking it green. And Venezuela are basically just saying, you know what? We're not intimidated. We're going to oh, play our no. game. Yeah, they're down 25, but a lot of things to write home about They've here. actually lowered the amount now back to 25. They, they actually might still have a shot at this if they try good enough. Get these sort of passes going, and uh, these interceptions are not what you're looking for, and this is going to be two easy points for uh, Argentina there. I but get still it. Still good. So still good. It's hard. They're playing their own style, though. And so, look, their own style is those loose and fast passes. Um, certainly kind of across the paint, trying to thread the needle. Um, it's it's tough to do IRL. It's tough to do in 2K. Which El Kiko is, with the beautiful three again. Sorry, you can continue. No, you're, you're right. That was gorgeous. It's tough to do, but stay true to yourself. You know what I mean? That is their identity. They're saying they want to be wheeling, dealing. They want to play this style. And so far, they've able – I said I said at halftime, they, they've, they've actually managed to drop in here um, uh, 18 points in the third quarter. I said at halftime, if they put up 50 on Argentina, the best team in their conference, in their on their continent. That should have gone in a little bit too early. It's a great sign of things to come anyway. And yeah, absolutely. You just got to take your own. We see a huge, we see a flying tiger right there. It's like a kung fu film. This is awesome. He just yells now and that's it. He gets the two pointers in. Oh but my now God. Peggy's going to be free. Actually, J IBG is Still with the ball, could have tried to take the shot himself, but he's the big man. He can't take these oh. far three pointers and actually losing the ball there. Teachable moment right there for yeah. all the kids at home watching. Stay there. Yeah. Well, follow your shot. That is one of the cardinal sins of basketball. Whenever you take a shot, you follow your shot. Of course, sometimes you're a cool guy who turns around and doesn't look at the explosion when you know it's going in. But otherwise, follow your shot. Yeah, you gotta you gotta see that at the top if it's gonna be uh, <laughs> early or it's not. Is it good? Is it green? And now actually doesn't get the green, but they still keep the ball. It's from Miro, runs around and tries to go in a layup himself. Actually doesn't get it. Now it's Venezuela's time to shine. And uh, that will be uh, the end of the uh, third quarter. Yeah. And I just want to point out that I'm pretty sure Venezuela outscored Argentina 18 to 14 in that quarter. We'll find out at the end of the game. Uh, my math is not fantastic. As I say that, they fall asleep right there on defense. But still, that is really impressive from Venezuela. Yeah, they were uh, under 33 points before, but now they've shortened it down uh, to 28, and uh, it was even to 24 at one point, and that's pretty good for them. Big now trying to take the shot, a little contested, Ooh. so it didn't really go in, but now a far pass to Aimbujo, and he uh, goes in and gets these two points almost yeah. with a shooting foul. Yeah, that was a nice layup. That's uh, really hard to pull off when you got a, a defender draped, uh, draped all over you right there. Uh, Aimbujo with 30 points, four assists, Half, and two almost. steals. Yeah, phenomenal stuff. Truly numb is the other big scorer. And uh, that's a good-looking three, and he rattles it home. A little oh. early, but still gets it in. El Kiko oh. is definitely in his element. He's been doing great, and he's been showing what the captain I must tell do. You, I tell you what, I, if, if Woody gets a treat for every three-pointer he hits, then Woody is going to be a happy a happy doggo today. And uh, Tiggs just pulling up there. A little a closer. He didn't want to take yeah. the three-pointer. He missed one beforehand. He just wanted to get this in, so he gets these two points yeah, as absolutely. well. Yeah, Look at the dribble on, on Pega there. Fantastic stuff. Risky passes, but that is their game, Venezuela. It's beautiful green. El Kiko knocking it in again. As I say, it's champagne free flowing basketball. The Venezuelan style of this NBA 2K FIBA Esport Open 2 basketball has me very entertained artists. And they are on the precipice of dropping 50 against the best team in their conference on their continent and a sign of things to come. They have literally just uh, put the entire conference on warning for future tournaments, in my humble opinion. Definitely. And if you think about points, look at that. Venezuela is 49 against 78, while 
Uh, previously, yesterday, we saw Uruguay beating with 113 points against Bolivia. And you know, you'd like to say that Venezuela and Bolivia are the same level, the same as Argentina and Uruguay. So that means they're doing very good in this game while Argentina actually gets the three-pointer back in. And at this quarter, is not looking so good for them. They're not getting these points that they want. But now a beautiful cross there, and it gets two points. Uh, gets it over 51 and back to 30-point difference, which is still, it's not that bad. We've seen worse games. Yeah, KTA is so deadly off the ball. One of those just nightmare players to try and guard off the ball. He makes phenomenal cuts. Great alley-oop dunk. You can see Venezuela working on the timing there on the alley-oop defending, though. Um, long ball down the court to KTA. Kicks it back. Another oh, pass. Pega could have shot, uh, taken the shot there. Actually passing it still around. I can't believe it's still 13 seconds in the shot clock. Actually <laughs> finds an opening and gets the two points in. They pass so fast that the they time do. doesn't even fly by. They do. It's so phenomenal to watch. I love it. It's it's great. And um, I, I can't believe it. Yeah, two minutes left in the fourth. This has been probably one of the more entertaining games of the of the FIBA Esport Open 2. They're all entertaining, but I got to tell you, this one has flown. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah, and this is a comes. definitely fun game. I, I believe Venezuelans are also playing with a, you know, with a smile on their face. Yeah. Although they're losing, but they're playing against one of the best team, the best team in South America so far. Yep. So losing by 30 points isn't that bad. No, not at all. Not at all. Really, really good stuff. And uh, I think a, a lot of promising um, things for Venezuela from this game, from the tournament as well, as we see a really nice alley-oop, well-worked play there for Argentina. 85 points. Argentina uh, will be undefeated then. So they'll be 3-0 and at top of the table in the South American Conference. Pretty and much I think that means that they go into yeah. the Grand Finals. Guar I, I, guaranteeing, solidifying yeah. a position in the Grand Final as well for them, which is great. Um, and then obviously Uruguay uh, will get the updated uh, standings after the game. But if I'm not mistaken, Uruguay will be in second position. And uh, I'll tell you what, though, it has been... Very, very entertaining. We still have we still have uh, three fantastic games: uh, Bolivia, Brazil, Venezuela, Uruguay, Bolivia, Argentina to come up as well. Venezuela rattle home another three, fifty six points against the the reigning champions of the of the continent. That's good. That's good. But now I am off. Just gets the three pointer in. Finally gets his uh, you know place to talk. <laughs> Actually, he doesn't do much talking. He just shoots and gets it in. Pega now with the ball with He's, one uh, minute left. There is a foul, and that there. is going to be a shooting foul already. A oh. reaching foul, but goes into the free throws. Yeah, they're in the bonus now. He uh, listen. He, uh, Imo had the mom get the camera moment. Okay, he got his mom. nice three. Nice three from the corner right there. The Pega will probably rattle both of these home. One goes in, the second one. Uh, I'm not looking, it goes in. Of course. It is. Of, of course. course. There you go. Impressive stuff, I have to say. Again, still keeping the 30-point difference. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, so, they're showing if they played like this in the start, you yep. know, keeping this, it would pretty much mean that they were equal. It's just that at the start, they kind of let it go too fast. They let uh, Argentina play their game, and now they're showing off, hey, we, oh. can, we can play a great game ourselves. Pega with the ball, tries to take the three. Actually, uh, their own players oh, yeah. were in, in, his, in front there. In his space there, yeah, a little bit difficult. Look, I think the box score is going to show uh, uh, that Venezuela did uh, pretty impressive things here. Um, when it comes to uh, the second half in particular, really, really impressed with the performance. Um, obviously, it, the game broke down a little bit, and it's been uh, quite kind of free. I would say not a, not a lot of defense has been played by either no. side in the second half. However, uh, you cannot take away from Venezuela how, how um, efficient they've been offensively uh, right here in, and that's going to be bonus again, in yep. the second half. Getting um, to 60, hopefully. Yeah. 60 for more than likely. A uh, very good free throw shooter is Pega. He's probably going to drop this in, um, a.k.a. Bruce Willis. And uh, listen, it's been a very, very promising performance from Venezuela. They can hold their heads pry, uh, nice. high and with a lot of pride. So 60 to 90 uh, with uh, the fourth quarter ending and the game ending soon. It's a good score. I love to see it. And Venezuela, if they started to play the same as they're playing right now, they would have been even closer. But yep. now Imbujo has, the, Imbujo has the chance to get a free throws for himself. So it's probably going to go to 92. Yeah, more than likely right here. And then, again, just uh, uh, reminding everybody, Argentina are going to be undefeated uh, in the conference as well, which means uh, they're definitely top of the table. Uh, and then it will be... Um, 
Uh, it'll be Uruguay in second place. We'll get the standings in a minute. Good defense here to the last here. 12 seconds left. Truly numb, dropping in another three. They're going to try and break the hunch here. The the 100 burger. But They're not going to be able to. Venezuela is going to keep the ball. Pega is going to try to go for a three, I hope. Three seconds, two seconds, one, and you have to shoot. Just keeps it off. You know, maybe sometimes you don't want to end the game with a missed shot. I like it. I like what I saw right there, though. That was good. There is a lot of pride in that Venezuelan team. The, the, the brand of basketball that they play there is incredibly entertaining to watch. Great to cast on as well. I have to tell you, that game just whizzed by. Yeah, I, I couldn't even uh, tell because now it's been uh, already 20 minutes by. We've <laughs> seen the best we can see from Venezuela and Argentina in that game. But, uh, of course, you know, the point is, I think Venezuela would have done better if they started to play how they started to play at the third quarter. They did perfectly. They, they yeah. even outscored Argentina in that one. And, uh, you know, if they hadn't let them go in the first and second quarter, they would have done uh, even better. Maybe Absolutely. even would have been super close to actually get this, uh, get this done. Look, you make a really good point there, and, and I circled a little bit earlier. Um, look, uh, first of all, let's give Argentina, who got the win, their, their Jews, okay? Uh, like, Truly Numb was, oh, as always, phenomenal. I'm Boho as well. Amazing. The two main players, yeah. I think, who got the scores there. Their full-court trap and their full-court press also did enough damage early on that they really got the buffer and the, the lead that they needed. However, Venezuela started to break that press. There were a lot of steals there. Argentina showing that they can execute flawlessly offensively and defensively. That's why they're the reigning champs. That's why they are the uh, current favorites and also back on top of the table. However, Venezuela did outscore Argentina in that third quarter. You just raised that point again. Yeah. And that is something you hang your hat on. I don't care that Venezuela are 0-3 at the bottom of the table there. As far as I'm concerned, um, they are one of the more promising teams uh, to watch definitely in the future as well. So now, now uh, all teams are going to play uh, uh, four times. So really, um, one of the games that we're going to be looking at, Bolivia and Brazil are going to be up next, okay? Now, Brazil must win. Yeah. They just have to get game. the win if they want to have any chance of actually getting through. And, you know, they have to hope that Uruguay loses. Right. So we're going to see that same electrifying Venezuelan team after that game, right? So Bolivia and Brazil next. Okay, just, just beneath me there. However, Venezuela playing Uruguay uh, after that. Could we have an upset on our hands? Because if I'm Venezuela... I'm kind of walking out of that game there saying, oh, we just dropped 60 points on the best team on, on our conference, uh, in, in our, our, on our continent, in our conference. So I'm telling you what, Brazil will be cheering on Venezuela in our final game, Bolivia versus Argentina. These are the games uh, that are coming up right there. So very, very exciting. Um, our, our next game, though, uh, focusing here, uh, Bolivia versus Brazil must win for Brazil. And Bolivia, though, have shown that they can get a win. And um, they're definitely... They can also, if they both win, if they win both of these games, it could be a, a game breaker for them. You know, they could actually have a chance to get to the grand finals. Of course, the last game they have is probably the hardest one. But let's, uh, let's not discuss anymore. Let's jump into the versus screen and look at the players. From Bolivia's side, we have Small Dona Doc, DJ Pedro Ball, Adrian Pedragosa, Sebastius, and Pask Seniz. And of course, the Brazilian team that we're all too familiar with now, Kalu Basam. Uh, Thea Green is a sub in there. Esquillo, who we've seen masterfully working the top of the key and dropping in those threes. I see Martins, who likes his three pointers as well. And then Lillard, who's also going to be back in to the rotation and trying to hit those corner threes. Uh, pretty impressive teams. Bolivia, uh, uh, small Donadoc, captain, big man, likes his dunks, likes the pick and roll, works the paint really, really well. Uh, Adrian and, and DJ like to pull the trigger. Uh, uh, this is for Bolivia from the top of the key as well. Uh, Sebastius likes his uh, corners and, and also, um, also has actually been cutting to the basket quite a bit. Um, and then, look, uh, uh, Faz, uh, Fazanis is kind of like a little bit of an unknown factor. Hasn't necessarily made too many statement plays for himself. He has an opportunity here to do the same. Brazil, though. See, Bolivia can kind of relax a little bit. It, when you're the underdog, 
you can relax. You can play your game. You don't have to worry yeah. about, you know, uh, the uh, the team that played in a previous tournament is going to, you know, beat you or not. You're still going to want to win. Now, it's still going to be stressful. But we saw this, though. You don't want to be the team that has to play uh, uh, an angry and talented team next. Okay, so Brazil just got their hat handed to them pretty comprehensively by Uruguay. Okay, and now, now Bolivia step onto the court in front of them. And uh, you have to say, Bolivia, solid team, but they're definitely not Uruguay. They're definitely not Argentina. So be careful, Bolivia, because Brazil might be coming out here with a point to prove. Um, let's see. They're going to have to have a lot of mental fortitude, though, okay? Uh, they're really going to have to come out and play um, a, a technically very sound and perfect game if you're Brazil. So you want to score as many points as you can. But you don't want to force it as well, and then and then not execute. It's going to be really, really interesting. To it's for me, it's all down to like Brazil's mental fortitude and Bolivia trying to slow the game down and play their game. And as you say, Bolivia technically could still win out and make them make their way into the uh, final as well. Uruguay will be watching from the sidelines with interest in this one. A Bolivian, a Bolivian win, and. And they've got to be feeling very good, Uruguay. But then a, a really great game after this one as well. I tell you, South American uh, Conference, it's getting down to crunch time now, Artis. It's it's warming up. Yeah, it's tight. It's super tight. Uh, I think it's even more uh, tight than the, uh, the North and Central America. Because yep. here, almost every team has a chance yep. all, right now, except Venezuela. Yep. I think yep. everyone else can still kind of get into the grand finals. I'm not. I'm not sure on on the math there. Uh, probably someone else is doing it better than I can. But uh, well, no, you're right, absolutely. But look, um, Venezuela can still spoil the party for Uruguay, as it were. Yeah. And and I love, I love the uh, narratives and the storylines that begin to kind of rear their heads out of uh, out of the FIBA eSport Open too because what we're creating here is a legacy as well. You know, we're creating some history between these international e-basketball squads and these basketball federations and these players representing their nations, national pride on the line. You know, uh, I, I, I guarantee you, Venezuela, um, you know, marked everybody's card in that last game, dropping over 60 on Argentina. And Argentina will be a bit embarrassed by that, I think, you know. I think so as, as well, because, you know, there's a newcomer in the grounds and, wow, they got so many points. New kid on Why? the block. New kid on the block. But we have our game. Let's jump straight into it. And now going into the game, we see Bolivia with the white shirts and Brazil with the shirts we've saw before, the pinstripes, the oh. green and yellow. You know, I'm surprised they stuck with those because whenever those I lose, yeah, ones. whenever I play a game in a jersey and I lose, I always want to change it up psychologically. They're feeling confident though here. I love the mustache from uh, <laughs> uh, from the Bolivian captain there. Okay, and here we go, though. Bolivia toting the rock first. They win the opening tip off. Good defense from Brazil. DJ working the ball to the corner. Good passing. Not a lot of movement off the ball. Trying to work in a shot. Good defense from Brazil, though. Got his own rebound. Five to shoot, though. Did not hit the rim. Needs to pull the trigger here. Two to shoot. Shot. Missed. Good offensive board, though, but Brazil will come away. KG affairs to start the game here. Bolivia kind of, like, moving the ball willy-nilly there over Brazil. And here comes uh, Esquillo. We know he is an incredibly talented player. Bolivia's number one mission here will be to slow him down. I absolutely agree with you. He, you have to be watching out for him as he does do, He does have that three-pointer. And sometimes, you know, he even drives himself in as well. So let's see. He gives a pass and a beautiful dunk in as well. Now, look, if Kalu Bassam can score 100 points on the day uh, uh, just doing that, they'll be happy. It's that simple. If, if you're going to give them that massive lane, they should take it. Uh, good opening bucket there for Brazil. Bolivia, though, Working the ball well. Uh, Brazil, I, I think, are kind of trying to feel them out. They're not quite sure what to expect. A good pull-up and a good two-pointer right there. 
Um, again, a little bit unconventional. You don't normally see the point guard dribble down to a, a baseline jump shot like that. Um, so Brazil just kind of feeling them out. And you can see, I personally like that tactic. I think, okay, so Esquilo, you know, can single-handedly win the game. He can, he can, so, although he needs a little bit of help from Kalu Basam, you know. Yeah, a little, he can do it solo but, completely now, as you can see here. He actually takes it, he gives the pass there, and he dunks it in. And now Bolivia has to uh, go up against, and now gives it to TJ Pedro. Um, Pedro has, he's good with his ball as well, but uh, you got to see if he, they have the same communication as Brazil. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if what you do is you pressure and foul and try to get a, a steal, on Esquillo every time he has the ball at the top of the key like that, um, it really just breaks the momentum, breaks the flow. You gotta ask yourself this, would I rather kind of great big man move by the way, great power hook in the low post there. That was phenomenal work from Bolivia. Would you rather uh, uh, Esquillo dropping in threes or, or shooting free throws? You can't fall Giving asleep. Giving alley-oops. Yeah. Giving alley That's what I want. I want him to give alley-oops <laughs> and keeping them on their toes. But now there's a reach and foul coming out. And, uh, you know, so far it's been a pretty close game. Two minutes have gone by and it's yeah. been 6-4. to four. Only 6-4. to four. Let's see what Bolivia have. They are playing the game at their pace, though. And that's good. And that was a good baseline cut. Open three. Doesn't get it in quite. Oh, it rimmed in and out there. That was unlucky. Big dunk at the other end, though. Brazil punishing them with a the really quick fast break transition bucket right there. I tell you what, there was an open man cutting the baseline for Bolivia in an easy, quick two points, and they missed it. The communication just needs to get a tiny bit better. Big man working it in. Double move. Oh, gets blocked by the captain of the Brazilian team now. He still keeps the ball and oh, finally ho, ho. manages to put it in as he should. We got ourselves a clash of two big men in the, in the low post right here. I'm digging it. You know, if I'm Bolivia, what I like about that is it doesn't matter what your strategy is um, Brazilian for the Brazilian team defensively. You cannot stop a one-on-one -on -one big man move working his magic in the post. Yeah, so it's going to be Kalu Bassam versus the small Donut Duck. You know, who's yep. going to be the biggest um, man there? Although, you know, bigger in size, it's small Donut Duck. But, uh, you know, who's better with dunking and blocking? You yeah. You got to find that out. And right there, um, Brazil just kind of getting frustrated a little bit here. That was an offensive three-second violation, Artis, and, and an uncharacteristic mistake from them. Good pickpocket from Esquillo here. Oh, excuse me, it wasn't Esquillo. It was uh, Icy Martins who pulls up on the three and misses it. Good offensive board right there. And uh, just trying to work their magic a little bit here, the Brazilians. But they're down to six seconds to shoot here. Esquillo is going to have to pull up a three. They leave him open. It's great. And he does. And he drops it in. This is why I like those fouls. I would much rather be seeing Esquillo get frustrated and, and constantly try to pick his pocket than getting easy three-pointers like that. Nice high, uh, hard drive here from Small Donald Duck. As we're about to find out, I don't think I've seen him shoot a free throw. Yeah, he, me neither. That is an enormous avatar. Look at him. He's taking up the entire key there. But, but he's, he's good. Three. He's not like Shaq. He's much better in the free throw line. And he gets oh, one of them, although it's an 82% chance, that looked but perfect. he still doesn't get it. I mean, that's what, that's what you get for being the center. Yeah, I like, though, that straight away... Uh, the cherry-picking uh, offensive player for Brazil is already down the court waiting for a quick and easy bucket. Bolivia just need to get a little bit hip to that, a little bit wise. The big man thought about driving right there. DJ, there's a, oh, he's got a seal on the inside. The pass didn't come. There it is, a little bit late. He's going to work his magic here. Small gets it in, and it doesn't, it doesn't actually get it in another, another shooting foul. But while he is taking the shootings, we can see who uh, is, um, you know, in the chat, who is voting for who. Bolivia, 24%. So the least, uh, you know, favorites there, the, the smaller favorites. But Brazil coming out with 76%. Well, yeah, they've got a lot of, they've got a lot of people cheering them on. Well, I, I get it. I mean, uh, the scoreline, pretty tight at this stage. We're nearly at the end of the first. The one thing I like about Bolivia uh, strategically in terms of what they're doing right now is they are making the, the Brazilians play at their pace. And by that, I mean, look, at we see a massive, wow, we're going to get the shooting foul. Okay, so they did well right there. Um, that is a good good drive if you do get the foul anyway. Definitely. I thought that was going to be a good defensive stand. But uh, what I mean by that is if you're going to work the ball into the low post, unless you're going to drop down and maybe double team and run the risk of, uh, of a foul, 
Um, it's going to eat up a lot of clock. You're probably going to draw a shooting foul or get yourself a bucket if you've got a talented uh, big man like Small Donaduck, right? Um, and what it does is it, it eats up the entire 24 seconds on the play clock as well, which means a low scoring affair, which means you're within touching distance. Small Donaduck is going to put that in beautifully. And now look at the score line. The, the first quarter is about to end. They need good defense here from Bolivia. Brazil want a bucket likewise at the other end themselves. I even like the idea of a foul here just to kill yeah, the don't momentum. Don't give them space. Don't give him space. He had enough space. Yeah. And he's going to take that and going to put it in. With only 2.5 seconds left, all the Bolivia needs to do in the next quarter is going to, you know, actually try to slow, lower get the gap. Actually, they gets the bucket. I is believe it going to count? Is it going to count? It doesn't no, count. It's a little it didn't. bit too late. But I will say this. There's a big difference between 15 to 11 at the end of the first and 18 to 11. And I'm a bit disappointed that they pulled up on their tactic there, Bolivia. I think fouling, because you're going to give this guy space. Esquillo is going to drop it in on you. He's that good. He's got two straight three-pointers. He's a phenomenal player. Um, and honestly, I think you get up in his grill, I would rather see him on the free-throw line than hitting those threes. Which and are now a bad pass. Yeah, they're just momentum killers as well. Yeah, it gives a fire pass to I.C. Martin, if I'm not mistaken. And now Esquillo, or this, uh, this is I.C. Martin, yeah. Um, uh, probably. Yeah, now keeping the ball to himself and looking... Looking for another free open spot. He gets that in and beautiful dunk and alley you performed by these two players with the uh, similar haircuts, I want to say. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now what you have is eight straight points for Brazil and just pulling away with the game ever so slightly. If you're Bolivia, get it back to playing at your pace. Do not try and do that. Yeah, force the issue. Do not try and play. Great, great. Play there, but it's, uh, it oh, still it? goes I in. It, it was goes a block. in. My no. goodness, waiting for the camera to catch up there. A good um, try, but it still goes in. Yeah, absolutely. So now, now Bolivia have to uh, play it a little bit at Brazil's pace. They need to try and and work buckets, but a little bit quicker. And Brazil will like that faster tempo because a faster tempo means uh, more mistakes defensively, and their players will punish you. And uh, here we go, Adrian trying to drive in, work a shot. Five to shoot right here. A good pick right there. Got to pull up. Got to pull the trigger. Good sh good looking shot. That Rattles was a good it. shot. You can take these ones and good that they got the rebound back anyway. Now small Donald Dog is trying to get oh. the point in back, but that's a bad pass. And now uh, it's going to be a fast break away for the Brazilian team. But a beautiful block there. It's all clean. It's good. Now give the pass to Sebastian. He's in front. He's going to take the shot. He gets it. Boom. There you go. They needed that bucket. They had given up uh, two minutes without any. Yeah, 10 straight points. So that was much needed. But you've got to wake up defensively now. You can't leave Esquillo open like that. You can't leave Icy Martins open. You've got to wake up defensively. And it's hard to be concentrated for, for four quarters. It is. Great dunk there. And nice. Peter just goes in. You know, the point guard sometimes has to take the ball in his own hands and uh and get these two points if there's an open highway for him to run into. Now, again, you have to be careful of this player. Small Donut that actually lets go of the uh, smallest player, you know, <laughs> go through. I guess that's what speed is all about. You know, right. you can just outrun him. I mean, look at Esquillo. He's perfect on the day. Uh, five of five plus three assists. He's having a really good game already. Um, I think Bolivia will be... Uh, encouraged by the fact that this isn't a complete blowout as we see another dunk. It's been end-to-end -end dunks here. I'm loving it. It hasn't been a complete blowout at this stage. They're still within touching distance. Nearly 13 points. Not insurmountable. But a How squillow. does that go even go in? These far threes... I've been, uh, you know, surprised every time when actually one of these goes in. Peter has a free space to go in, but now the three players from the Brazilian team go in as well. Now Sebastian with the ball, passes it to Small Donadog. Beautiful play out to get these two points in the end as well. And probably putting Brazilians on a little shock there. How did they manage to do that? But Esquilo still with the ball, still the unbeatable demon that he is. And he gets <laughs> the three-pointer again. What a devil. Yeah, he is not... Yeah, El Diablo, he has not missed today. Uh, excuse me, in this game right here, Esquillo has been absolutely phenomenal. I got to tell you, I'm liking a double team. I'm liking a foul on him. You know, try and, and get him out of his comfort zone. As we see Green, beautiful shot from the corner right there. I missed the name on the player. My sincere apologies. Uh, good play by Fass. There you go. Fass doing his thing. Um, and actually, yeah, that, we mentioned him pregame that this is an opportunity for him to step up. A rare miss from Esquillo. He's in the zone, though. Good and turnover. And the ball gets a Calo just, you know, steals it away from hey. the, small, the big, small big man. And he puts it back in himself. Big, 
one-handed dunk there. He wound that one back, back behind the head and drove it home with authority. That was pretty. And uh, here we go, Bolivia. Pita. Still in this one. Another good corner look. Does he get it? No, nope, but Small gets it back, and he's going to try to put him in himself. Gives the pass, but that's bad again. You yeah. have to be more careful with these passes. Can't give them uh, so unprecedented because the game is not over yet. It's only 18-point difference, 19 points. Sorry, yeah. that was a uh, three-pointer. Uh, yeah. Looks like a two. And I see Martin just making it look easy. Yeah, he kind of telegraphed it a tiny bit. Look, Small Donadoc has played a great game. He hustled to get that offensive board. Let's not hold it against him too much, but in the same right... Uh, you do gotta, you do gotta have your wits about you. Bolivia still great defense oh, right there. Kalu, you know, just he, he's the big man there. He's gonna take it off. Although he's not the center, but he can still uh, jump up pretty high. And now, oh, Small just steals the ball while he's trying to go for the dunk. He does not allow anything. Now with <laughs> only seven seconds leading off into this halftime, Pita with the ball, actually a foul, so it's gonna. You know, uh, st uh, slow it down a little bit. It looks like they're already in the bonus, so two free points. Let's hope. Absolutely. Let's, let's hope they're going to get this. They have to use every chance they have. One goes in, one is good, and the other one hopefully as well. And then Brazil is going to be left off with uh, uh, four seconds to finish off. There you go. Can they work something here, Brazil? Got to play some good defense. Quick three. No good. And the FIBA eSport Open 2 obviously being broadcast across multiple channels, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. But if you're not subbed to that YouTube channel, you got rocks in your head, okay? Because that FIBA YouTube channel has so much live basketball on it. Nearly 24-7 high-octane stuff from all over the world. I love it. I'm always tuning in. I love looking at the different countries playing, the different clubs playing. But, of course, the FIBA Esport Open 2, you know, must-watch TV. And they even have uh, different live streams going on at the same time. They had a 3x3 championship there. But continuing on our e-basketball that we have, Adrian with the ball trying to maneuver out uh, the Brazilian players. You know, it doesn't have a lot of space. Gives it to Small. He's going to go in himself and put it. You know, you know what? What it, are you going to do against that? You can't do anything. That's the problem. Now, the game has gotten away from them, so they can't control the tempo and do that, you know, another 30 times in this game. However, if they can do that and maybe just work it a little quicker, as we see Esquillo just doing his own post moves there, um, then, then that's going to be massive. Look at that. He's got one miss and 24 points. Yeah, small Donna Duck is a little bit too slow. Uh, to catch up with Esquilos there, but that's what you get for picking a big avatar. He's good for <laughs> dunking, but not good for faking out and trying to get these fast plays. Now, Kaz, uh, Kaz actually gets the rebound, gets a far pass, and gets the ball to back to himself and puts it in. Actually doesn't put it in, but the rebound's good, loses the ball up air, and now it's going to be a traveling violation. Uh, the first traveling violation I've seen. There you go. We actually, we, we had one yesterday. So if we're playing 2K Bingo, we've got another one today right here. Let's stamp it in. Stamp it in. And eventually someone will get to claim Bingo. Um, I want to see them just work it into small Donna Doc uh, as much as they can. And uh, just out of bounds. Ah, fast. Yeah, driving the, the baseline. Um, listen, I, my offensive scheme right now, if I'm Bolivia, would be this. Feed the ball into Small Donadoc in the low post and let him get a quick move. And try to do that within about 10 seconds. Yeah, and so all the time, just keep, keep repeating. Rinse Once repeat. they put all the defense on there, you can start thinking about the three-pointers. Oh. But now, a beautiful alley-oop, and he just goes behind the back lines there. And Peter already with the ball, not wasting any time, any breathers there. Just uh, going in and looking for the free opportunity to run go. through like that with three players behind him. Beautiful. I'm sorry I'm too fast for you, he says as he runs away back to his court side. Absolutely. Beautiful dunk right there. And now uh, Squiller just trying to control this game. You can see they're just trying to stop that pick and roll. It's a little bit difficult. Small Donadoc, as you said, his avatar is very cumbersome. It's a big, a big body. That's a thick boy right there trying to keep up with that defensive uh, uh, pick and roll uh, responsibility. However, I want to see him use that big frame offensively as well. Yeah, you know, just standing there himself gives a far pass. But again, don't take these passes. They're too risky. Yeah, I, 
There are a wow, just phenomenal <laughs> stuff from Brazil. There are other open players on the court. They just need to find the right player. It's that simple. I like the notion is correct. The strategy is correct, but find the open man. That's what you got to do. Yeah, get it a to good pass, look. and he's going to take an easy three. Now, you see, just, yeah. just do that. Just listen listen to Chris, everybody, and I think your lives are going to be a little bit easier. Well, I don't know about that. I appreciate it, though, Otis. You know, uh, obviously, they got to back their own strategy as well. It's a lot easier from the casting booth, right? A lot easier for us to, to sit here and point and say what to do. But Esquillo with 29 points now pulling away in this game, Brazil. As we see a drive against... None other than four Brazilian defenders. Now, the thing to remember there with four defenders around the key is that, guess what? That means there's uh, there's there's three open men somewhere for Bolivia. Calu so, just so slam dunks it. Now, this is what we call not just a dunk. It's a slam. Yeah, dunk. absolutely. Abusing the rim right there. Fantastic stuff. We had our Space Jam moments yesterday, without a doubt. I want to see a little bit more of that from Galubasan, the captain for Brazil. Okay, and here come Bolivia. This is this is playing into Brazil's hands now with how long they're taking here. They need to go tempo, tempo, tempo if they want a chance. And those passes, look, it's it's actually making making the defense look very, very easy. It's not. You have to time that interception. You don't just stand there. You have to actually get a really good button press. But I think what I'd like to see maybe is some back. Oh, nice, nice interception there. This is what you need to do. Pita gets the ball fast, but they needed to take the fast uh, pass as well. Now he actually loses it. The same player who caught the ball loses the ball, and that's a that's a. Oh, uh, how do you, how, I forgot the name of it. Double-handed windmill <laughs> yeah, dunk windmill. right there. Beautiful stuff right there. We got more windmills than the than the Dutch countryside out here today. It's looking pretty. Oh, but yeah, I, I need to see the baseline players here maybe make a cut to the to the hoop. Right now, um, oh, and that's a bad pass. It's yeah. going to go out of bounds, and Brazil is going to have another attack and just a chance to increase increase the play. Now, we can see by the score lines, you can, you can see 56 to 30, uh, not a really high score game. Yep. But uh, Kalu says, uh, you want to see? <laughs> <laughs> you want to see be high score? I can do it. Um, so it's two more. Yeah, yeah exactly. 20 to a, 28 point difference, kind of similar to what we saw previous game. Yeah, and look, I, I just feel as though um, their plan to begin the game was definitely to work the clock and, and work uh, the big man, okay? Since then, they've just been a tiny, a little bit rudderless, I think. And, and what they need to kind of develop, as we see the uh, third quarter end right there, uh, what they need to develop is, you know, a plan B and a plan C, a strategy that they can switch it up to on the fly. Uh, the important thing is Bolivia, their first time participating in the FIBA eSport Open uh, 2, obviously part of the South American Conference here. Um, they're playing against the... Uh, the team that has already been here and, and nearly was champions. Adrian Solo goes great through. Great dunk. Great dunk right there. Um, they're, they're playing against a really good opponent in Brazil, so don't take anything away from Brazil and, and also this Bolivian performance. As they, as they failed out here, but he got the ball back. Yeah. There we Somehow go. the smallest man between five <laughs> giants gets the ball back, and now small Donadok actually is keeping the ball, but that's not, not the best player to go into the fight, and that's a bad pass as well you know losing these balls midway back to back right now giving it to fast and he gets it in fast there you go that's what you want so uh, look they've just got to strategically develop their game a little bit better as well you can just see that okay we're down big we're down by 24 what do we do now they don't really have an answer and um i think that's the first shot Esquilo Esquilos misses there's a go uh, oh, yeah only a couple of misses, but he's been on fire today as they find another open corner three right there. So you've just got to say, like, as a team, okay, guys, now we're down big. We're switching it up to this tactic. Yeah. You know, and, and that definitely tactic um, needs to be uh, quick buckets and, and quick possessions as quick as you can get. You get a nice baseline drive there and um, from Foz. But, look, that's just the way it needs to be, and they're not quite doing that right now. And you know that all comes down to experience as well. As we talked about, they don't have any experience in any other NBA 2K tournaments. None of the players on the Bolivian team. So it's good to see that at least, you know, here they're going to get that experience. They're yep. going to understand how they should work. Because a lot of these oh, yeah. players aren't real basketball players. They're 2K players, you know. And it differs and it changes up a lot. But Adrian says, oh, no, what a block there. Just takes the ball away. Adrian thought it was in the bag, but it actually wasn't. 
There we go. And I've only got five seconds to shoot here. Small Dial Dog's going to try and work another epic post move. You know, what you're looking for, um, if it's your first tournament, is you're looking for building blocks. You're looking for positives to take away from the games, um, negatives that you can try and improve upon. But anything you can kind of hang your hat on is really, really good. Small Donadoc's post moves have been really great this game against a high caliber Brazilian opponent. So that tells you that that should be a signal, uh, like a signal to you that, OK, if we can do that against Brazil, we can do it against basically anybody. Let's make that a staple of our game. Let's make the, the post moves a massive part of our game. And one thing that they did early, if you recall, it really should have ended 15-11 at the end of the first quarter. They, Brazil Absolutely. got a, a nice three, worked, it, worked the court well for a nice three. Why was that? Because every time a Squillow, their star player, caught the ball, they got up on him, they defended, they fouled him, or they got a steal. It was that simple. And I really like that kind of mentality. I really love the mentality uh, that, you know, we're either going to get a steal or we're going to get a foul. Yeah, but you are not shooting an easy open three because you are the star player for this Brazilian team. So we see a last second three rattles in and out. Good offensive board. Good defense there, though, from the captain, Kalu Bassam, defending the key, defending the honor for his country, Brazil. A minute 45 left in this one. It is a 31-point differential here between Brazil and Bolivia. Brazil definitely the more, I would say, uh, technically and tactically sound team here. Definitely more experienced. Esquillo has been lights out as he gets green again. I tell you what, he, uh, if I had as many green lights as, as Esquillo has threes right there, I could, I could get to the studios here in about 15 minutes from my house. <laughs> this is phenomenal stuff. And here we go. But Bolivia, plenty. Oh, as he draws a foul, plenty of positives uh, to take away. DJ driving the lane hard there going to try and earn his two points from the free throw line here plenty of positives to take away exactly like in my humble opinion uh the venezuela game uh so i i think building blocks something to hang your hat on yeah and continuing on your point there in the worst case scenario if they do foul them and you go into the free throws the worst thing they get two points not three absolutely I, I, of course if he's not shooting afterwards you, then you get the three points so, but uh any any even it could be less uh, at that point. So uh, if there is one player you're afraid of, you know, it's, you just do the fouls. Yeah, absolutely. Now, obviously, <laughs> or, you know, do obviously, the steals. obviously, if you foul out, uh, that's it. It's going to be four on five. I get it. It's it's a tactic that you can skirt with to a certain a little kinda, bit at the start. Yeah, not, not the whole game, of course. I think it's something that you've got to use. Um, uh, you've got to use kind of uh, first of all, you got to just get better defensive. That, that might be the alley-oop of the tournament there. Oh, my God. Kalu as not being the, the center, he's been, I think, the point forward there. Yeah. He's been uh, showing off to be a better center than, uh, than a few ones we've seen. That, like a more a more concentrated rebounder and getting yeah. these dunks, alley-oops, and, uh, you know, a whole team player as the captain should be. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you're dead right. Team player leading by example there. His stat line always has a little bit of a combination of rebounds, points, assists, steals. My personally, I love those types of performances. Those are the role players um, who, you know, the unspoken of role players that I'm definitely going to speak on whenever I have a moment on the casting desk to say, you know, they're the guys that are the difference in games. They're the guys who win you the games. 34 seconds left in this one. 76 Brazil, Bolivia 42. It has uh, probably, you know, it's been a hard fought game. Good steal here. Bolivia finishing strong. Um, small Donna Doc trying to. Maybe work some magic Could have go, here. given the pass to Adrian there and actually got it. But now they've got a fast breakaway and he gets the two points in. And good from the Brazilian side. Now only 15 seconds left in this game. Let's see if Bolivia can uh, end it off with a beautiful three or a two-pointer. You'd love to see which one. Seven seconds, but there's a six, eight-second violation. He didn't pass over fast enough. Yep. He had to get over halfway before the eight seconds is up. And now point differential being as big as it is, Esquilio is probably going to try and drop in one last three. And a three-pointer three misses. Well, a uh, good game indeed. Uh, was. It, yeah, was. it was. It was. Look, Bolivia, hold your heads high. There's plenty of positives to take away from there. Uh, Don Donadoc did a really, really great job working the low post for me, those high percentage shots. They tried to come out with a very clear tactic at the beginning, which was harass Esquilio. I like that. I think they should have stuck with that. You don't obviously want to foul out, but we are in agreement that I would rather see, you know, a foul than, than you know, in that case, nearly 40 points 
and and he had 10 assists to go with that so he was the entire offense I like to see uh, these emerging nations, their first time in the tournament, coming in with a tactic saying, we're going to try and take away your favorite toy. We're going to try and take away your best player. Need to see a little bit better execution from Bolivia. They didn't necessarily have a plan B to fall back on when plan A didn't work. That is the sign of a team that's in the works, a team in development that is getting better. And you know what happens if you sort of do these fouls, you make you play, you mess with their play style. Yep. You slowly start to break uh, their main player's uh, mindset. Absolutely. You know he's getting fouled. He wants to try to take a shot. He gets fouled. He wants to go somewhere else. He gets fouled or he gets stolen the ball. And afterwards, you're like, "Hey, I'm done. Like, can can they stop?" You start to make him a little angry, a little frustrated. And that is that is good in this sense that you you can play a little bit freely then. So let's have a look at the table then. Argentina undefeated at the moment. They have six points and the plus fifty eight. And that's it. They played all games. Uh, uh, well, uh, they'll have one more game. No, uh, Brazil doesn't have oh, any more games. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, Argentina though. We're oh, talking oh, about. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. So Brazil then in second place, uh, as as you just aptly pointed out, though they've won two, lost two. Their games are over. Plus fifty three, six points uh, right now on the table. Uruguay in their game against Venezuela, which we are going to be going to next, as you can see just beneath me here. This is going to be the deciding game for who gets to go through a win here for Uruguay will actually take them to the top yeah, of the table. It. They'll take it to the top of the table there. Argentina still have the next game against Bolivia after that, which you would fully expect Argentina to be winning. I'm sorry, Bolivia. However, and Uruguay, heavy favorites. I can't wait to see the poll over here against Venezuela. However, Venezuela have a chance now uh, to really cement their legendary status. I think their, their, their gameplay, their style has been awesome i love the passing i love the cuts i love the dunks this is an opportunity this game right here right now for venezuela to really announce they've already announced i put their play style but really announce and, and put the rest of this conference on notice for future tournaments i completely agree with you and uruguay if they win this game that's it. Let's go into the lineup. Where is our screen and see who's playing who? Venezuela, El Kiko, Supra Beats, IBG, Jack Russell, and the Pega. All right. And then for Uruguay, we've got Certified. We've got Rabinho. We've got uh, Santa Falero, a new player right there. Uh, Ico Digo and Urul Shavox, another new player. So they're mixing up their roster yeah. a little bit. Santa Falero has played in different games before, and he's been shown uh, pretty good from the sidelines. But let's go and jump into the game. Okay, here we go. Venezuela is going to try and be playing upset. We're already into the game. We're plus the tip off right here. And uh, we're just going to get the, uh, the teams... Um, I would say it looks as though uh, Uruguay are, yep, I can recognize Pega. Uruguay are wearing the blue right there, and uh, and that means the white of Venezuela. Let's see what Pega does uh, so far. We need to get these fast two points. Actually had a chance to shoot their IBG, but Pega is still back with the ball. He's going to be trying to maybe take a shot for himself. You leave him wide open. Oh, he actually doesn't get it, but IBG gets the ball back. And a block beautifully done from Rubino. Absolutely. You called it Pega working that shot. Not bad at all. Uruguay then with the quick transition bucket, trying to work some quick points here for themselves. They get a miss, though. Good defensive rebound from KTA. And likewise, three players for Venezuela straight up the court and a big three and an early lead for the underdogs. Yeah, good for Venezuela, but now Uruguay is going to come back and maybe Juan is going to find uh, try to find one of his signature three-pointers, and he does. Gets the points to five. He says, anything you can do, I can do better. I like that we're seeing good transition here. Uruguay with only one man on the high pressure, trying to work the trap. Pega was ready for it. IBG was his outlet there, his safety valve. Good defense. That's, that is exactly kind of what the doctor ordered if you're Uruguay. You want the big man making bad passes, right? So really what they've got to recognize there, uh, Venezuela, is be the safety valve, get the ball, then wait, get over halfway maybe, just dribble it over halfway, let Pega come and take the ball back off you and work your magic. A and what in hell are you, Rubino? He just takes the big one hook and dunk 
in and uh, you know you what are you gonna do against that you can't do anything all you need to do is try to get the ball either mid-air or you know you don't allow the pass to go through now pega with the ball he's gonna be going through driving it himself giving the pass uh, but back to Jack Russell, and he's gonna actually get these two points in, which nice. is again what we say get these two points in, yeah. chip away. Absolutely, that was a tremendous alley oop. Uh, and again, one of the teachable moments from Venezuela's previous game is try to try to stop those alley oops. Okay, Argentina kept doing it against them, they couldn't quite work on it. Hopefully, we see an improvement right here. Rubinho turning the ball over, Pega picking his pocket. Working the quick bucket here, but good defense. Oh, three players on one. That's nasty. You don't uh, you don't love to see that. But now a fast break of a sign for Lero. Oh, very slowly gets the ball in, and Uruguay's up by nine. Just did the lap of honor and yeah. then dropped in. I like <laughs> it. But look, nine to five. Got to be feeling uh, uh, pretty good here. Nine to five and working well. And that's a good backdoor cut. Oh. What a dunk from him. I caught it go, you know, a block. I'm sorry, yeah. in my excitement, it seemed like it was a dunk, but now a beautiful three away, you know, you get the block, you get the three-pointer. What else do you want from me? I'm the best. He's doing everything, right? Yeah, give me a Gatorade now. I need a, <laughs> I need a breather. Great cut, KTA. And a nice dunk in there. You know, fast plays, you get a That's free open it. man, and you dunk it in, and no time tomorrow, you do it tonight. Now, these Venezuelan kind of like eight, nine, ten-second buckets, just like that are phenomenal when they get rolling like that when they get the ball up the court and there's a quick cut and kta is getting a quick two points that's how you stay in touch with the uh, powerhouses like uruguay who let's face it are the heavy favorites in this one and uh pulling up here is uru and he Ooh, rattles it nice. home we've already got two activated players for uruguay venezuela if they didn't know it they're in an epic title fight right here so they've really got to bring their a game pega working the ball up the court Again, we saw that cut though. You saw KTA off the ball. Quick steal. Ooh. Nice steal from Juan, and he doesn't even look. He just takes a three pointer, and cool guys don't look at explosions. They do not. That was very action movie esque right there. Fantastic stuff. Uruguay really came to play in this one. But you know what? I feel like they're rising to the occasion of Venezuela, who are bringing their A game themselves as well. Look at this ball movement as Jack Russell strokes it green. The pass across the baseline was epic. Pega working his magic. Jack Russell, nothing but green from the corner. And Venezuela still within touching distance. And you know, for Uruguay, this is a must-win game. They win, they go into the grand finals. They don't, it's going to be hard. You have to look at it. I'm not sure how it turns out there, but what a beautiful dunk coming out. Rivers double-handed, and he went and swept the floor. Absolutely phenomenal. He was in traffic as well. Two defenders draped off of him. Reverse two-handed double pump. I'm holding up my scorecard. It says 10. And certified. Just strokes it green. This is what you're up against if you're Venezuela. You are up against just superior execution here. Fantastic skilled players from Uruguay. But I got to tell you, don't abandon your game style. Don't abandon your gameplay because it's incredible to watch and you're still within touching distance. And Chris, guess what? The first corner is almost over. Corner oh is almost God. over. It's yeah, so, it's, it's so fast and end up with a alley. It's too you quick. beautiful. Twenty-one it's against fourteen. Split. Venezuela is not giving up and they're keeping close. They are not. Let's see, can they finish strong here in, at the end of the first? As Uruguay going to try and work one last shot, easy bucket here for Rubinho. Ooh, even does like a sort of turn away around and and then just I was waiting for a dunk there, but we, uh, we might have to ask Fieber permission. Can can the Venezuelan games go for ten minute quarters because they're, just, <laughs> they're going too quickly here? And now a beautiful steal away from Juan Maeni. He's going to give the three. How can he take that in? There was a player right in front of his face. Right. I just, I'm never going to get this. It, yeah. It's impossible. It's skills. It really, really is. And you can see Uruguay's tactic is to wait until one of the weaker ball handlers has the ball, then trap them. Great pass. Jack Russell just has to pull the trigger on that, though. That's got to be a catch and shoot. you got to back your ability to hit that three, even if you've got a defender flying in your face. you got to make that. Uh, but I tell you what, Uruguay showing, like, some real kind of strategic genius here. IBG with the ball gives it to Pega. Oh, You're going to try to make something do, uh, happen. KTA with the ball, and that's another bad pass. But they still keep the ball as uh, it goes out of bounds. Five seconds to shoot, though. You're going to maybe get one or two dribble moves here if you don't get an open man cutting to the rim. Inbounder should be the cutter. That is the way they work it. It didn't quite work, though. Uruguay a little too long in the tooth for that, a little too wise. Santi from the corner. 
Cri Ooh. Christmas coming early there. Santi yeah. with a, <laughs> a gift of three points. And just like that, look, you touched upon it. How, how does Uruguay, they've just got superior skill, um, amazing uh, technique. And just like that, they're able to just pour in some threes and pull away from a, an opponent. But if you're Venezuela, don't stop, guys. Keep playing your game the way you're playing it because it's awesome. And there's a foul coming out. I think that was a completely good foul. Easy two points or, you know, make make them uh, make them work for it. Yeah, absolutely. And here we go. The blue afros always have me thinking of Smurfs. IPG at the line. It rattles in and out. That I, will be a big Smurf. That's a big Smurf. And... Oh, there we go. And Juan Mo with the ball is probably going to try to take himself. Hey, there's actually a clear player there, Santi. You know, still giving us some Christmas presents left over. Yep, yep. absolutely. We've been, we've, the chat, the viewers, we've been well behaved. Haven't been, haven't been, uh, we've been nice, not naughty, great defense there. You can see Rubinho reading that like an open book. Oh, trying to work the open three again here. You can see, uh, oh, he can't leave the shooter open though. Can't Don't leave him. The only rock that's going to go in this Christmas day is in the hoop. <laughs> exactly. I love it. There we go. Quick transition bucket. KTA. Ooh, nice work defensively yeah. there. Gives a foul pass now to KTA. Aiko Digo, I'm sorry. Uh, but there's going to be a foul there, a personal one. And uh, Uruguay still keeps the ball with 19 seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, definitely. You can just see rotationally. Oh, it's so sweet. They are putting on a shooting display here. What I like is that Uruguay know that Venezuela are coming in fearless and with a bit of swagger about them in terms of the way they play and showing zero fear. Uruguay really rising to the occasion. So for me, what that signifies is a team that has um, a lot of situational awareness as well as uh, a lot of mental fortitude, right? So the focus is there. You can see Uruguay executing at such a high level here against an opponent that might, it might have, if they were on a bad day, might have had a chance at upsetting them. And I really, really like that and what that says about their chances in the finals as Akiko drops it in from the corner, the captain with the three. Just mark my words, a team that's switched on like that will go places in the grand final. I completely agree with you there. And uh, you love to see that, you know, Uruguay is playing their best and Venezuela is still keeping up with them. Of course, there's a 21, uh, 21 point difference, but we've seen Uruguay completely wipe the floor with 117 points in different games. And yeah. now there's a beautiful defense from Rubino. And I got to say that offense is so good, but Rubino in the defense with so many blocks has yeah. shown just absolute insane skills while also working the two points with the dunks. And look, it's a teachable kind of moment. It's something that you can actually change, maybe even in just a 30-second 30 30 halftime chat. Uh, Venezuela just need to do a slightly better job of rotating defensively. And not but, losing ball. Yeah, fair enough. Look, they, they're going to play their game with the passes, though. That is going to happen, and Uruguay are going to punish them. But at the same time, defensively, the rotation does need to improve. It's as though there's just... Um, ooh, actually, a missed alley. You didn't quite get it in. I sort of touched it, yeah, but ooh... Also, another breakaway interception. It, I was, he wasn't even looking. He sort of put his hand up, and that's it. Absolutely. And now a dive in to try to get the ball. Uruguay, do, do keep it. Phenomenal stuff there. But look, the communication, I feel, maybe might just be the missing piece for Venezuela defensively. You can see they're actually making sound rotational moves physically, but then they're sending two players to, to one, unfortunately, because the communication is breaking down. So... Just got to talk a little bit more. And a nice three-pointer from Juanma. Oh, it's always going to be tough. It's always going to be tough against a player with that level of skill who can just stroke it from, from just about anywhere. Um, you got to try and fight through the screens. Good move here from Pega. They needed a bucket there. The game is getting away from them. Just a steady, calm hand there from the veteran. And uh, look, Venezuela though, still playing entertaining basketball. Great oh, drive. Oh, goes through. He doesn't even let it. But let's talk about the polls for a little bit. And uh, I don't think there's a surprise here. Uruguay with 91% and Venezuela with 9%. I want to commend the brave 9% from chat. Thumbs up from myself and Artis on the desk for backing Venezuela in the potential uh, upset. However... I think even at halftime, the result here is going to be written in stone, especially if they're going to keep leaving certified this wide open. Technically, 
I've liked what they've done offensively, Venezuela. Again, they're scoring points. However, defensively, they've just got to get on the same the same page. Yeah, sometimes it's just about experience. And once you get enough of it, yeah, you can see the offense is great, but there's a shooting foul. So two, uh, two free throws for uh, IBG for the big, uh, big Smurf, as you say before. Is that really what you see? An IBG. Under oh, he hit one. I was about to say, the moment I called him a Smurf, he clanked two free throws, but this time... He He's, got good. Him. He's that, good. That's why I'm the one seeing there it this you go. time. No there you offense, go. of course. It's just a hair color there. He's playing definitely amazing. But oh, wow. wow. It melts me. Wow. Is Phenomenal. there a fireplace in here? Because I'm melting. Yeah, unbelievable. These threes here from Uruguay. And again, I just want to commend the mental fortitude of Uruguay here because this is a trap game in the classic sense of the term. A trap game where if you don't focus and you don't lock in, then potentially Venezuela could get an offset. They are doing what needs to be done here, taking care of business. 26 seconds left in the first half. They're up big, and you want to see him finish strong here. 28-point lead. You just want to see him uh, improve it even more if you're Uruguay. But don't stop entertaining us, please. Oh, oh and they don't. They get these alley-oops. Well, don't. I didn't even see the player. Where was Rubino behind that? Probably IBG was in front, and he just jumped over him. Phenomenal alley-oop there, and we're into the bonus here. 14 seconds left in the first half. Uh, Venezuela, plenty of positives as well. Defensively, just need to rotate and get an improvement going. Yeah, Pega now just waiting on for the free throws. Probably both are going to go in, and that's going to uh, give Venezuela a two-point lead, hopefully. One is good, and the second one, I assume, is going to be exactly the same. as he. I don't think he's ever missed one, and I don't think a point guard should ever miss a free throw. There we go. Good I mean, stuff. in the end, it's, it is a free throw. Absolutely. A skilled player like him, no doubt. Full court pressure here. Tends to shoot. Corner shot. Rattles out. Good board from Rubino. Loses it. Five seconds left here. Working some magic. We're going to see a shot. Is it good? Fifty-three twenty-five. Uruguay definitely showing how it's uh, played, and you know, looking at the three-pointer percentage again, Venezuela a little bit worse than in the previous game, but still very good, especially at the sixty-point line. It's still nice to see. Well, look, I mean, Venezuela were able to put uh, sixty up on um, a very good, great drive right there. KTA, we need to see a bit more of that. He's been a bit quiet in this one. That's their bread and butter. You know, Pega to KTA on the on the really hard, fast cuts to the basket, getting those dunks. Um, this is a, a Venezuelan team that definitely is one to watch for the future and on the rise, in my humble opinion. Uh, but obviously, Uruguay continue to execute at an elite international level. I, I can't not, not agree with you. Like, you're going to see it if there is, will be a tournament. I, I want to see them on, like, smaller tournaments as well. Coming in from this big experience, they're going to show up great. Maybe they just need to practice a little bit more, get some chemistry going on. Uh, when we talked about them in the previous interviews, of course, you know, it, it's training, and you do a lot of training, and sometimes it's kind of difficult, maybe the internet. But uh, one thing to coming out from this is that they've showed uh, that offense – they don't really have any problems in offense. Yeah, and it's an exciting brand of offense as well. Like, as we say, we want we want just permission from FIBA for there to be 10-minute quarters in the Venezuelan games because it goes too quickly. It's very entertaining. And I do just want to mention again um, El Kiko, the captain uh, for Venezuela, and the unofficial mascot of Venezuelan e-basketball, his dog Woody, who sits on the couch with him and watches him play every game. I love that. We got to see him in the interview as well. Phenomenal stuff. So, um, you know, if you're in chat there, please spam your dog emotes. We want doggo emotes. Um, and, and we want to hear all about, uh, you know, Woody's progression to international uh, basketball mascot in now, the future. What do you think? If there's going to be a LAN, is he going to go with him? Of course! Wherever El Kiko goes, Woody goes. All right, it's a Disney movie. Um, here we go. Big alley -oop. Oh, it actually misses it. It's a it jumps up a little bit too fast, and that will be a missed shot from them. The IBG at the net there get passes it through. Should have been taking the shot, 
faster than actually going in. I don't know what happened there. Maybe maybe just doesn't have the, uh, doesn't back his ability there to drop in the three. I'm kind of with you though. And again, Uruguay working the green three, open, stroking it. They are trying to get the point differential now as well. And uh, if they win, which it looks like they will in this game, I'm sorry, I, I can't see even Venezuela, as magnificent as their offensive style is, I can't see them getting back in this one. Oh, great shot again from Uruguay. They don't Uruguay, waste any time. Yeah, Uruguay are going to be top of the table for one more game, and then our final, final South American Conference game, Bolivia-Argentina, where Bolivia are definitely the underdogs. Argentina, the heavy favorites in that one. It's looking like it is going to be a Uruguay-Argentina final, which will be coming up a little bit later today. Another nice three from Venezuela. And uh, I tell you what, I've been mightily impressed with all teams and also the style of uh, e-basketball that we're seeing here. And Johama just finds an open space. Actually, you know, makes himself an open space, and he takes the yeah. three, no time wasted. And... Um, he, he has absolute confidence of what you should have if you're a point guard, if you're the best shooter in your team. Yeah, right. And, and look, he's backing, this, backing himself uh, and the skills to actually make those shots, uh, taking it on his shoulders to hit those. Uh, wide, obviously, you just see the defensive uh, alignments a little bit misaligned, I should say. And there's a three-second violation. Okay. All, all, although it seemed like he stepped off, I guess it still counts a little bit. You know, right. the whistle blows a little later. Get out of the paint. Run. Run. There we go. There's, there's Pega working. He's just, he's such a good dribbler of the ball. Is Pega, uh, the point guard here for Venezuela, really been a joy to watch in this tournament. Uh, it is their final game. We were maybe earmarking this as a trap game and potential upset. It hasn't been the case. El Kiko from the corner. And doesn't quite get it, but Robinho gets the rebound back. Juama with the ball, you know, keeping it safe a distance and passing it to Saint. And Rubinho just puts it back in with the big dog. There we go. Rubinho has so many alley-oop dunks. You're right. Earlier was like his first miss, actually. But look at the stat line. 12 points, 9 boards three blocks that is the type of team performance that helps you get the dub and uh is really just phenomenal go like the unsung heroes pega pulling the trigger normally knocks those in that was a bit unfortunate for him and here comes how he had two players next to him he still manages to take that three and from what distance that is what we call the phone booth shot right like literally shooting from the phone booth surrounded by people drops it in certified has had one absolute hell of a game out here Phenomenal stuff. Yeah, but uh, Venezuela doesn't give up since there's still 30 seconds left in this quarter and five more minutes afterwards. Now out of bounds, but still going to keep for Venezuela. And let's see if they can get another shot in. IBG is currently with the ball, trying to find an open spot. Gives it to Pega, actually takes the shot himself, Great. and that's going to be an easy 200% shots. He takes these. Beautiful, really good shot selection right there. Pega has uh, only eight points, but five assists, and obviously... He is the goon when he's toting the rock. Really, really good stuff. A reach and foul there. Uh, good to stop the defense. Although the ball was with Rubinho, maybe they probably wanted to uh, find that easy steal. But now a three-pointer from a certified drum. You know, he, he never stops shooting. And I want to see the score point, uh, score point <laughs> there. Actually, a little bit of a uh, back and forth action there. Yeah, definitely. He's just been pouring it in. Right now, the rim is as wide as the ocean for him, pouring in the buckets. 76 points we got seven seconds left in the third quarter what can venezuela do trying to work a shot Kiko misses board and that's going to be all she wrote in the third now the final quarter right here you know if you're venezuela you got to set yourself a goal let's get 50 against uruguay let's, at least yeah we're 60 they they can still draw the 60 if yeah. they really want it and let's try not to oh Sarah fox knocks that in let's try not to uh not to let them get actually um uh, uh, Shabox, I should say, knocking that in. Not let maybe Uruguay break 100 on us because they actually managed to keep Argentina to 95 points. So there's pride on the line. There's a goal. There's an objective every single quarter which can be achieved, and that's what you got to see yourself going for. 36 points for certified. Yeah, he probably has the... He has never heard of the word miss. <laughs> 
Just occasionally. Just in, occasionally in a bad once dream. in a while. <laughs> in a, in, when, when he gets nightmares, it's the miss. But uh, he, he doesn't have a lot of those as Uruguay take the ball back. Rubino, you know, just puts it back in. And he's been just a pleasure to watch. I can't wait for uh, to see him in the finals as well afterwards. Well, where you and uh, Renners are going to be uh, casting, uh, commentating. But I'll be watching from the sidelines looking at Rubinho and uh, his, <laughs> his big dunks. Nice steal here from Uruguay. Breakaway, good defense, but a quick dunk. The skills on full display right here. Venezuela do not have a bucket so far. A minute and 10 seconds gone by in the fourth quarter. And Uruguay, uh, excuse me, Venezuela don't. And Uruguay really working this pressure defensively as well. They are trying to pour on the points, make a statement game. The mental fortitude from Uruguay to perform the way they have in this game really has impressed me. They are ready for the finals, guys. So far, it looks like Venezuela is having a harder time in Uruguay rather than Argentina. Yeah, right. You know, with a 40 point, uh, a 50 point difference rather than the 30 that they still kept in the previous game there. So uh, it makes us wonder, how is Uruguay going to keep up with Ar Argentina in the finals there? Yeah, and, and you raise a really good point. I think it all boils down to winning the third quarter as well. That's a massive focus for teams across many sports and many disciplines. Um, that's what they were able to do here at Uruguay. They've had, like, that's a great three. Wow. They've had the, um, the really, the kind of uh, mental focus from the opening tip-off. That's what's impressed me the most. And look at this defense. Oh, it just steals it off. Certified just keeps the ball to himself. Actually misses there. A free shot. So he can get a phone boot shot. But he, <laughs> he doesn't take this one. Are you kidding me? Kind of crazy, right? Another corner three. Another miss. All right, Venezuela trying to work some magic right here. 37 points on the board. They'll just they'll, they'll have like a mental note, like let's get to 50. And this is good defense. Risky passes over the key there. Always high, high risk, low. Oh, oh yes. Big dunk. This big is legitimately one of the best dunkers I've seen. I, you know, I think Rubinho is one and even gets the block. I'm sorry for your years, mate. Great effort plays right here. Good shot from the corner. Rattles out. There's Rubinho again. Got to be in double-digit boards at this stage. Really phenomenal stuff. What a pass. Oh, yeah. Two minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Uruguay going for the drive. Another board. And they've booked themselves a ticket in the grand final for the South American Conference FIBA Esport Open 2. Now is the time. Take your victory lap, Uruguay. Fans in chat start spamming the flags, spamming the names of your favorite players as Certified drops in another massive bucket here. This is going to be huge. They're actually, as you see the table there, they're going to leapfrog Argentina into first place. However, Argentina are undefeated at the moment, have a game in hand, will take on Bolivia, who are not expected to win that game. And Argentina will probably finish in first place, Uruguay second. It's going to be massive. So 97, 37, that's a 60 point difference, twice as much as they had against Argentina for Venezuela. And that really just means 41 points. And five steals. Unbelievable. And that is like, you know, he is the best player on their team, I think, rather in shooting. But uh, I don't know, I just want to point out Rubinho saying that I think he's been the most valuable player on their team so far. Getting these blocks, getting these look. dunks and alley -oop. still has the ball. And uh, look at that, one alley -oop coming in. There we go. No, just a three from, uh, did we from the sidelines. Did there. you see the diving play for the ball there and the fact that the pass came up? That's normally an instant timeout, passing up to the man on the fast break. What you're seeing there with a minute left in a game that you're up by 63, you're seeing really heads up effort plays. Continuing on, Rubinho still has the ball. And, you know, for, for what we under. Uh, if Argentina wins Bolivia, which is to be expected, they will be first place. And, and even if they don't, they're still in the first place. And Uruguay is in the second place in the grand final uh, to yeah. compete in the grand finals. And But That's afterwards, right. uh, there's no point. There, there's no difference. Yeah, In absolutely. the grand finals, everything erases and there's going to be a best of three. And what a beautiful duck again from a uh, block from Rubinho. And I just love to see it. Again, this is my favorite player to watch. He's been super exciting in defense and in offense. Yeah, a real a real team player. A great performance from Rubino. Good look there from Pega. Just finish strong if you're Venezuela. You've come up against a Uruguay team, a Uruguay team here that has just been so focused. 
the effort that they've put in in this game to book themselves a place into the grand final for the South American Conference here at FIBA Esport Open 2 has been absolutely phenomenal. A rare miss from Certified. He's just showing off at this stage. Pega working it up. Attempted alley-oop, trying to be the team player that he is. Five seconds remain in this game. Uruguay have booked themselves a place in the grand Ooh, final. actually didn't get that last shot in, you know, leaving up in a bad note. But still, 100 versus 39, I think that's a pretty decisive Look, victory. That right there was a statement game from Uruguay. They came in and they said, we're not going to take anything for granted right here. We're going to put Venezuela to the sword. They really just put Argentina on notice. Really, it's basically a statement game saying, we're coming for you in that grand final. And I got to tell you, based on the way that they perform right there, I'm kind of tipping towards Uruguay potentially being the favorites, even though, even though with our next game, irrespective of whether Argentina were to somehow have a shocker and lose, they have the actual tiebreaker against Uruguay, which means that they are still going to be in number one position. So we know who our two grand finalists are as we look at the conference right here for the South American conference. Uh, Artis, what jumped out uh, the most for you? I know you love Rubinho there in that last game. Yeah, I think the w one thing that he manages to do so well is not only play offensive, but he's in defense. He's, I think, the most valuable player there because he gets the blocks not only, he gets some of the interceptions, but he gets all of the rebounds that manages to jump up there. You know, every missed shot, Rubinho's going to get that, and afterwards he's going to dunk it in and say, hey, this uh, this belongs into your basket. Yeah. So him being the center man there, he's definitely showing off that he can do both, and... Uh, uh, you know, in Phenomenal. Argentina's side, I don't think uh, I see that much. I don't think I see that yeah. much from there. Venezuela also doing great, but IBG not doing as much in the center as Rubinho is. So it's going to be a um, really, really interesting game, I think, between Uruguay and Argentina because stylistically they're very, very similar. Obviously, Venezuela 0-4. We bid them farewell, but we say so long and thank you for all of the amazing passes and dunks. I cannot wait to see Venezuela uh, participating in future Fever Esport Opens. I think it is going to be awesome for everybody. Even though they went 0-4 there, I really feel as though they kind of like just announced their arrival on the global stage as well. So it's going to be really, really good. And now, though, we start to look ahead to this final game between Bolivia and Argentina, which, look, if you're if you're Bolivia, you've got one final chance here. Uh, you're... you're your soul, your soul game uh, and soul victory came against Venezuela, okay? You've got one last chance here um, at of well-established. I mean, they are the reigning champions until they lose their crown. Uh, Argentinian game, uh, Argentinian team, I should say, to make a statement yourself. What are you expecting from Bolivia? Uh, I think a great basketball. I saw that they played good against Brazil, but they sort of let go a little bit too fast. And if you want to play against Argentina, if you want to be careful, you got to take in the first quarter. I think that is the most important one. Don't let them get away too far, and you can at least have a pretty decent game going onwards. Of course, it's it's not as expected for them to win this one. Argentina is such a great team, yep. and Bolivia is just play maybe uh, you know he does. They don't have enough experience in this. They they need to practice a little bit more. But this will be definitely one of the best practice games they could ever ask for. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you get a chance to test yourself against the. Uh the 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 champions and um don don small dog their big man was really really impressive in that game against brazil um you could see that their tactic in the first quarter and i'm going to be fascinated to see we're going to find out in just three minutes guys um fascinated to see whether or not they try a similar tactic as well when it comes to playing against argentina which is they tried to slow down the pace of the game take the full 24 seconds off the shot clock work in a low post power move with their big man. And then on the flip side, you know, when you've got, when you've got maybe truly numb at the top of the key, you know, doing whatever he wants with the ball and working an open three to foul him, to get up in his grill, really put him under pressure. I wonder if we're going to see the same thing. It's going to be interesting. He's truly numb to any opponents there, but let's go into the lineup and look at the players. Absolutely. Starting with Bolivia here, and there's the man that I was speaking about. A small Donadoc there, their big man, phenomenal post moves, doing a really, really good job. A DJ Petabol, and he can stroke the three, but uh, look, when it comes to these really, really kind of elite teams like Argentina, it's hard 
to find yourself a open because you have to move and get open off the ball but b you're kind of taking a contested shot nearly every single time which means you have to stroke it perfectly then adrian uh has been really really solid i i would say um uh, probably haven't seen enough shots again it kind of falls in the same category there uh as dj and then uh sebastius can hit it from the corner and we started to see there actually uh probably for the first time in the tournament uh faz faz Genese also kind of make those corner threes those guys though for me especially in the corners they they need to mess start to make some baseline cuts if plan a isn't working we didn't see them have a plan b they've had a whole game to go back and, and kind of uh recoup uh recoup recoup and say all right let's develop a plan b i hope we see that from bolivia who we got from argentina uh, we got it's from miro uh, you know a great center definitely working those uh, blocks and uh, uh, you know kind of zoning everything out haven't seen that much maybe from the offense in him but honestly can you do anything when you have truly numb in your team and i'm Bujo? Like, they're just taking all of the shots. Three-pointers are going in, and they never stop. Lamo, haven't seen that much from him so far. Still waiting to see some of the three-pointers coming out from him. Maybe some layups as well. And Tiggs uh, could pretty much be the same as well. You know, it's very important for the side sideline players, these small forwards, to be ready to get these shots, op be open up, and, uh, you know, taking... Uh, taking them when truly Nam or Aimbuho, where the point guards are getting countered, are getting defended. So uh, to zone off, you know, it, it it's one of a world-class team, which is Argentina, playing yeah. against Bolivia, who are more of a newcomers into this whole scene. And interestingly, Lemoy, we've seen him drain the corner three whenever he gets given the chance, and uh, Tiggs was starting to work the same as well. But you're right, truly Nam, truly Nam and Buho between them. Um, they 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 account for around 80 90 percent of all the points for Argentina. Um, this one could get ugly and could get ugly quickly. Irrespective, we already know. So this is where I want to see the mental fortitude from Argentina. So this is a trap game. This is where we just watch Uruguay take nothing for granted against Venezuela and come out and really dominate, put up 100 points against I would say a really underrated Venezuelan team. Now let's see, are Argentina already in that champion, that kind of killer mindset here? Are they locked in? Do they have the Mamba mentality there? Are they channeling, you know, that? And, and are they going to come out and really do a number on Bolivia? Or are they going to slip a little bit? Because I got to tell you right now, I'm really loving what I'm seeing from Uruguay. And now the spotlight's on Argentina to go and perform the same. Yesterday, they got 117 points against Bolivia, and that's for Uruguay. So I want to see how Argentina is going to do, because we haven't seen them cross that 100 bomb yet. They were very close, 95 points. That is good. That is good, but that's uh, less than uh, Uruguay, you know? Absolutely. And, and then the final that will be coming up later is also going to be great. That is kind of the thing, though. So on the casting desk and at home, we're allowed to look past this game and what we believe will be you know, a, a result for Argentina. We're allowed to look past and get a little bit excited about the final, but are Argentina doing the same? And that's it. That's that's when it becomes a trap game. That's when you take your opponent for granted and all of a sudden you're not putting out the performance that you want. And I feel as though they're going to win no matter what. There's just too much talent on this Argentinian team to lose. However, what you don't want to do is become like in your own feels and in your own head and have a lackluster performance. You want a strong performance here, which is really your last dress rehearsal before you head into the finals against Uruguay, who are firing on all cylinders. They had a pretty close game against Venezuela, Argentina. So uh, if they get another close game like this, they are probably going to feel worse than Uruguay did. Because yeah. Uruguay right now is on a big high. You know, they lost the first game against Argentina, but it was a very close game. I think only the nine-point difference there. So um, Uruguay winning the rest of these three games, is they're definitely feeling their best. And uh, they're feeling like, hey, I'm going to win. I'm going to get it. So Argentina, if they win this game, they get a massive hype. If they uh, are get close or, you know, they might lose again. Anything can happen. They are probably going to feel a little bummed out, and uh, that's going to probably, you know, take something in yeah, you for just the finals. You don't want to mess with your yeah. head before the grand finals. I feel it now. The players are getting into the digital tunnel. They're getting ready to emerge, okay? Cue the intro music. We're only a matter of seconds away. We're going to get into it. Can Bolivia finish strong here? Can Argentina put on a performance ahead of the final? We're about to find out. It is nearly game time. Let's Here let, we let's go. jump in.
And here we go. It is going to be Bolivia and the Doc Unis this time. Oh, look at that big man smile, Dona Doc. <laughs> uh, definitely there. And Argentina again with the white jerseys yeah. that they love so much. You know that their, their, their signature blue color, it's, it's almost hidden. Yeah, right. Absolutely. But here we go. On Bujo working the key to begin with, and that is a three. It rattles in and out, so Bolivia with the board to begin with. Let's see, can they finish strong? A reminder that we are going to be having uh, an interview with the Argentinian captain after this game. And then, of course, we're going back to Jeff's corner. Oh, our friend Jeff. I haven't uh, spoken to Jeff uh, so far. I haven't had the chance, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for my chance there. But while we're waiting for points from Argentina, because Bolivia is ready, is up by three. And that is a missed shot. So actually still keeps the ball there. A lucky rebound, but a dunk goes in and it's Ramiro. Not a dunk, just a, just a little uh, tap there so that Ramiro gets two points. Good stuff right there. I guess the early advantage Bolivia. You can see the full court pressure from Argentina. Just missing an opportunity at a steal there. Trying to work their magic. There's Faz. Rattles in and out. Small Donna Duck though. In the corner. Fantastic. Uh, now they do get these two points back, but it seemed like uh, Argentina wasn't up. Argentina wasn't up uh, in the defense as they wanted to be because they left Faz free there for no apparent reason. Adrian oh. just goes in and solo dunks and drives by. Does a little drive by there. There you go, magnificent one-handed dunk there. I like that. Already playing with a bit of pride. And I gotta tell you, Argentina's uh, full court defense doesn't seem to be existent right now. Look for them to kind of rectify, remedy that a little bit here. Once they get a bucket, finding the open man, oh. dropping in the three. Now let's see, how does this pressure work from Argentina? Yeah, dribbling too much actually gets this. Truly numb isn't in this game. It's dribbling too much, uh, switching him out. So another substitute is happening. That's what I'm seeing on, yep. the, on the player side there. Great observation, but, uh, good work. Pito with the ball. And, and you know, I actually like the Bolivian black uniforms in this better. Yeah, they look kind of cool right there. Good steal from Argentina. Nice, oh, Lord, oh, <laughs> nice transition dunk right there. Great work. Argentina with a four point advantage. I'm Looking sorry good. for the headphones again, uh, and for anyone watching at home, but uh, that was beautiful from uh, from the Argentinian it was. side. Hey, hey, nothing wrong with that. Good passion on the casting desk is what we're all about here. Small Donna Dog trying to work in the short post, and again, and oh, wow, a rare miss for him. I thought he had that. Great Ooh, defense, good The hustle. block was good try there, but a little bit too much. Ed so Lola. close, though, so close. Now look at the uh, full court. Trap coming into effect here. Three players on the side of this. This is incredible. Corner but now three. Pass is free. And I got to tell you, Argentina are looking a little bit sluggish on defense. Yes. We spoke about yeah. this. This is the game. It's a dress rehearsal for the grand final. It's your last outing. You want to perform well so that you feel like you're in the zone. And, and they miss a shot like that. But now a far pass gives it to DJ Pedro and. And I wanted to say an easy two, but still doesn't get it in. I guess it was a little hurried there. Uh, but dribbling too much, might have dribbled a little too much right now as well. Almost manages to get the eight second one, but uh, gets over. Uh, wasting some time, only three points in front, but giving the pass to oh. Miro, and he just dunks it in, slams it. Slam, bam, jam. Absolutely, that was great. Good work from them. And again, though, the Argentinian pressure is kind of non-existent, so if you're if you're gonna let bolivia come up the court that easy you're you're really kind of tempting fate in my humble opinion bolivia have shown that they can work a, a bucket really whenever they want from their big man that's a free shot nobody's there no defenseman to do block these two players what is happening with argentina are they not really caring about this game because I, I get they still get into the grand finals if they lose but I mean, it's for national pride I'm talking about here. It's not just national pride, it's mental fortitude. It's mental preparation for the final. Missing shots yep. one by one. I'm Bujo with the ball, That's and finally, it finally gets it in. That is a leadership three right there. So listen, um, early, early advantage here uh, to Bolivia, but that is a good shot right there. Uh, we got a reach in foul. Um, unprecedented reach and foul i wouldn't have done that uh they weren't going for a fast breakaway there so uh actually falls down there dj pedo gives the pass to sebastus he's gonna go himself just does an easy two Beautiful. and you gotta take these shots yeah it's not 
uh, it's not the prettiest shot. Look, it's not rocket science, yeah. okay? You got an easy two. We, we are massive advocates on the casting desk of taking your quick, easy points. Maybe if, we just want to see a lot of buckets. Of course. <laughs> I, think, I think everybody does. There's nothing wrong with that. Pujo wide open. Ooh, Ooh. Actually misses that Romero. Whoa, what a, <laughs> what oh. a block from him. It just says, go home. There you go. Get out of there. They then switch off a little bit defensively and allow another big three there for Argentina. But Bolivia came to play in this one. As far as I'm concerned, as the first quarter comes to an end and winds down, I've already seen enough from Bolivia to say they came to play. Argentina have, look, they've had the challenge thrown down. They're finishing a little stronger now, putting in some good threes here. And that's what you want to see. Now there's 10 seconds left in the first. You want to see Bolivia work a nice open shot here. Has to get it, only four seconds, three, two, one, gives it to Pito, gives it to Sebastian, he shoots, but that's a miss. Yeah, the shot, look, that pass and that shot was on one pass before, they had it, but you just got to recognize that and work the open man. A chance to double dip there, goes a miss in for Bolivia, and here they come, bringing the ball back up the court. DJ with a nice Ooh, drive. That is beautiful. Rattles home, that's what you like to see right there. So look, early early on in this one, I really like what I'm seeing from Bolivia. I like that Argentina are executing a little better and warming up with their shots, uh, but want to see more of that. And yeah, just leaving your player like Ayn Buja open is definitely going to result in three points there. Argentina up by 25, 10 point difference. Again, not game breaking yet. Yeah. It's the second quarter, you know. They're, they've done pretty good, and Bolivia has so far showed great shots. And, you know, again, uh, what a beautiful dunk there was from Small Don. Uh, on a duck, you know, yeah. I love to see that. Just getting these two points here as well. Awesome. I Honestly, if that was their whole offense, I wouldn't be disappointed. It eats <laughs> the clock. It frustrates the opponent. It, it continues the, the, just keeps the scoreboard uh, ticking. I love it. I really, really do. Um, I got to tell you, I feel like Argentina just got a little bit of a rude awakening early on in this one. Uh, Bolivia even had a lead for a couple of minutes. It's good to see them warming up now, though. That is the sign of a team that recognizes, okay, we got to turn it on right here. Pass with the ball right now. Although he's a, quite of a big man, he can get these threes as well. Now oh, Sebastian with a ball, gives a, it gives a scaredy pass there. Pedro, Adrian, back to Adrian. They're passing so fast again, and this is what you love to see sometimes. Actually goes for the shot, but it was a little blocked. Sam Small gets it back and puts it in two points. Now Argentina is you know losing a little bit of that lead there. Yeah, just, just chipping away at it a tiny bit, but I... I feel like Argentina got the message now. They probably have had a, like a rousing discussion uh, in 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 their uh, their VoIP communications, and they're getting it ready fast with the board. There, just a rare miss. Uh, now DJ Pedro trying to work up the court, goes oh. through himself, and there wasn't even a block. Uh, the opportunity tried to steal it midway, but uh, he doesn't allow it. Impressive. I like I like. We've seen a couple of drives from DJ already like that. That's impressive. Now just look at look at the improvement from Bolivia defensively. Dri oh, dribbling too much is so hard to stop. But I like that Bolivia are at least trying. You can see them working the strat. It's not quite working, but just trying. Oh, almost uh, could have been a backcourt violation there with the pass, but Adrian got, gets to go through. Actually doesn't give the pass. Pedro with the ball. Uh, eight seconds left on the shot clock. You gotta be a little bit careful there. No time left, but gives it to Foss, and he's gonna get uh, a shot that's not gonna go in. A far Unlucky. pass to Ayn Buhol, and he does, does, just gets the two points in one, se one, two seconds. Yeah, exactly. Quick transition buckets like that are phenomenal. Very hard to defend. Uh, you gotta be Johnny on the spot if you're Bolivia. You'd like to great defense in the corner there. You'd like to see Faz knock that in, though. You really, really would. Rush shot there from Argentina, gonna reset it, a foul from Bolivia. I tell you what, I've been impressed though with what I've seen here from Bolivia. And I'm worried about Argentina, just a little bit. You, you should be, Bolivia is good, doing something that I haven't seen before, he's actually, they're actually breaking them a little way. Maybe Argentina is not as focused as they should be, but Bolivia is definitely taking it and putting it for their uh, chance. Now giving these passes fast, uh, actually doesn't manage to put it right in and Ambujo is going to go solo. Actually giving the pass to dribbling too much, uh, a lot of passes going through, I thought the two points are going to go in a little bit faster this time around. Absolutely, dribbling too much, just trying to work himself open here, he's so hard to keep 
keep up with. Didn't get the shot, and a block comes Another out as well. And a double, that dive to keep the ball, but a timeout comes from Bolivia. I, I think a good timeout. Yeah, you know, not wasting time there. Heads up right there, you know. Uh, just a quick timeout, get the ball. Great defensive stand for Bolivia. Good work right there. Now, there's Small Donna Duck. Let's see him work a, work a move here in the low post. That's what's up. Yeah, he's going to do it needed. himself. And as that happens, he activates his takeover there. He is on fire. I've been, I've, this has just been a really impressive performance from Bolivia. Um, technically, still in this game, we just know how much talent there is on that Argentinian side of the ball. Um, and look at Umbujo just working his shots. That is dribbled so far that he manages to find himself an opening. It's nearly impossible to defend. Folks at home, the stick skill required to keep up with a player that is a squirrely. That's the word for it. He's like a squirrel. Uh, like Buho um, or dribbling too much. Impossible. It really is like, it's like trying to catch a chicken. You can't catch a chicken. It's true. Well, Rocky did it. Oh, well, it, it is hard to catch a chicken. I mean, Rocky can do anything. But now a beautiful three again from the Argentinian side. You know, it's it, it's a hard task to go up against them anyway. They're probably going to, you know, slowly get away if they put a little bit too much concentration on it. But uh, Bolivia's side is doing great. All these passes, again, uh, good defense work. But now, I'm Buho is with the ball. Now, and a these, foul. these passes, okay, in theory, I really like what they're trying with Bolivia, but if you are the man off the ball there, which is the wing shooter, the corner shooter, you have to move, though. You Ooh, can't just, that was an air ball. Uh, just off the rim, but oh, the rebound and the quick putback right there. You can't be a statue out there. You've got to give yourself a, a chance to get a catch and shoot moment there. As pretty much uh, shot clock and in game clock are matched up. And we've got only 15 seconds left until halftime. An impressive performance from Bolivia. It is all a great Ooh, backing nice. down here. But it is going to be Argentina with a 14-point lead unless they can add something here with 10 seconds to go. We've got activated players on both sides. So it shows you it's been a, an entertaining yeah. contest. Last shot here. Rattles out. I got to tell you, I got to tell you, Artis, this is a lot closer than I think Argentina would like here. I know it's a 14-point gap, right? But honestly, I think they're going to be a little bit embarrassed by that. Yeah, against the best, you know, against playing the best team, only having a 14-point difference, that's not bad. And Vito is free there, could have gone for the three-pointer, actually goes through and uh, doesn't get the point. Now a fast uh, turnover, and I'm Bujo just gets slams those two points in, yeah. and, you know, biggering the gap there. Absolutely. I'm Bujo, 22 points already. Phenomenal stuff. Here we go. Good dribbling here from DJ, though. It's not easy at all under this kind of pressure. Good worked pass right there. Oh, I thought oh, that was in. Yeah, that could have gone in maybe a little too early uh, with the release there. But dribbling too much is definitely... Oh, look at how he plays out his play opponents, but actually didn't get the shot in itself. And now it's uh, now it's a chance for Bolivia to take it up a little bit. Uh, bad pass, but uh, actually intercepted there, so yeah. still Bolivia's ball. Just came off the fingertips there of an Argentinian defender. <laughs> On the and, fingernails. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Big man's got to work a shot right there. Yeah, you could probably even take a couple couple more steps and slam it home. Um, look, uh, Small Donadoc, I'd like to see him do a oh, very lucky bounce of the ball right there for Argentina. I'd like to see him do a little bit more out there if he could. And, uh, of course, keeping up keeping up with these shooters for Argentina. Maybe now is the time. Oh, that was right in the hands. I saw this one. Yeah, maybe now is the time to try that against these uh, shooters, though, you know? Definitely kind of work a few fouls. It's the second half. You've got a few to give and uh, get a little bit more competitive on those shots. Another great board yeah, there. And dribbling too much hasn't actually shot so many uh, good three three pointers. He sort of misses them all around. He's good at dribbling. That's Definitely. why the name, hence the name. Yeah, Absolutely. but he's not shooting that good. It should have been shooting too much. Oh, but uh, small man. corner dog, yeah, just goes in. He doesn't do dunks. He doesn't do dunks. He, he loves that power hook, though, working the low post, working the high percentage shot. Lamo rattles one in and out. we got a good board here from Tiggs, though, and it's Ramiro with a couple of back-to-back -back buckets for him. Good work. That's good hustle offensively, just extending the lead. It's definitely closer than Argentina would have hoped for. That's Ooh, for Beto sure. is clear. Oh, but a block is good. 
big block right there and it bounces fortuitously here for Argentina as they get green and a huge three. That's a little more like it. Good defense, great offense from Argentina. Pito again with the ball. Adrian try, trying to drive himself there home. It gives it to Small. That's a that's a too far uh, sh uh, driven shot. But I'm Bujo goes in and one. The big dunk and one. Phenomenal stuff here, Bujo. Wow. Argentina feeling a little bit more comfortable here with the 33, the 23 point lead. You know this is where they want to be. Even further away, I would say. Yeah, definitely. Looking impressive though. And here we go. DJ working the ball up the court here for Bolivia. Remember, after this game, we're going to have an interview with the Argentinian captain. And we're, oh, we get a huge alley-oop there. And we're also going to have Jeff and returning to Jeff's corner, our friend over in the States. It's Ramiro doing great things. Look at that, 10 points, 13 rebounds, three assists. Those are those team performances, those role players that you love to see. Yeah, you gotta remember this. Uh, although you're good individually, you hit, this is a team game in the end, and every rebound that you get is gonna help your team so much, and it's gonna help yourself as well with the stats. You know, it's love to see, look back and see good stats. But there, the ball has been lost. Uh, a, a, a risky three-pointer there, but this one is much more safe and dribbling too much just uh, drives it home. As we're talking about him, Ramiro gets another offensive board there, eating up the glass, finds the open shooter in the corner. Argentina now pulling away with this one. We had a rare miss in there, uh, a block shot on, uh, on its small, uh, small Donadoc, which is very rare for him. A reach in foul, and uh, looks like it's Bolivia are gonna get the inbounds right here. And so uh, I wanna see him work a few more big man moves for small Donadoc. Here he goes, do your thing, bro. Yeah, yeah. The, the thing is, we haven't seen alley-oops from Bolivia's side or dunks exactly from small Donadoc. I guess he's just not comfortable with them. Absolutely. And here is the big man. We're in the bonus now, so he's going to go to the free throw line. And I think he I think he struck them pretty well previously. Yeah, he got mistaken. them in. There you go. He was the better Shaq at this. There we go. Better than Shaq. You love to see it. More of an Alonzo morning type right there. Good stuff yeah. from Bolivia. Just dropping in some more points here. Argentina will be a little bit more happy with the performance, I think, you know, in the second half so far. Definitely pulling away with this game. Dribbling too much, tries to fake out his opponent there. Uh, you know, two players that too close to, to each other there. Gives a far pass to Aimbujo, and that should go in, and oh, it does. Oh, rattles home another big three Real. there. Fantastic stuff. Okay, what can Bolivia do? One, coming up on one minute left here in the third. And now the difference is 30 points or 29. Uh, to be exact, and you know, that's where Argentina wants to stand here. They're, they've been probably put in the focus that they didn't have in the first half, and now they're respecting it back, getting these interceptions and dribbling too much, keeping the ball, and that's a fast foul, a reach in, and uh, the ball to Argentina. Really, really good effort right here. Okay. Pulling up there. Oh, another big board for Ramiro and a quick putback. Phenomenal stuff. Yeah, he gets these rebounds. He gets those points as well. Finally seeing more from Ramiro. 15 rebounds in the third quarter. That is incredible for him. That is quite the stat line. Amazing work here. Great team performance. And here come Argentina again. Will they have their sights set on maybe blowing it out to 100 here? Let's uh, hope, but it's going to be a hard task to do. Maybe this could be their first 100, but uh, Ramiro gets the rebound again. What's it now, 17? Crazy. Good look there. Boom. Green only needs is a little bit of space, and he's going to drop it in. So Argentina heating up here. Third quarter coming to a close. Bolivia, they will be going home. We already know it's going to be Argentina, no matter the result, in first place uh, in the pool, going up against Uruguay in the grand final of the South American Conference here. FIBA Esport Open 2 action. Our final quarter coming up, artists, of, of pool stage games. Exciting stuff. I'm out of breath, I'm out of words, because this has been exciting so far. A lot of close games, but so far, Argentina, you know, pulling it back from the first quarter where they had a small lead. Now they actually have a significant one over Bolivia. And this is how probably people uh, thought about how this game will look beforehand. But Small Donato giving a pass to Faz, and that's a beautiful dunk there as well. Nice big dunk for Faz. I like it. Listen, this is the final opportunity for all of these Bolivian players in the spotlight here, representing their nations. It's been really, really great to see the, uh, the new teams as well to the South American Conference.
Oh, gets uh, gets the rebound there. A uh, small Donaduck with the ball. I don't think that's a play person you want to start the play because, you know, kind of slow there, but uh, gives a pass anyway and the shot misses. A far pass to Anbuho. Is he going to try himself? He's going to drive it back home, but a foul and uh, that is going to go to Argentina still. Four minutes and eight seconds left here. Inbound for Argentina. Dribbling Ooh. too much. Oh, quick turnover. Here we go. Bolivia on the attack now. Quick pull up green. Nice quick bucket there. Bolivia may be just setting a goal Hey, can we get 50 points? Yeah, I think that's a really good uh, goal to pull like, up against one of the best teams in the in the in the, in the tournament or in the even the whole, uh, you know, first and second tournaments. He, they've been showing great effort so far. Pretty similar games, but I I won't say that they're the biggest scorers yet. We haven't seen them as dominant as Uruguay in different games. Yeah, and Canada yesterday dropping in 151. Yeah. Too wow. bad we didn't see that one. Wow. Yeah, of course. Yes, that was that was off stream. A phenomenal performance here and a quick out of bounds here Bolivia gonna get the rock back here again actually did dribble too much this time yeah there you go just a tiny bit but uh don't stop dribbling buddy you're doing great and here comes DJ oh here comes the trap look at there it's just broke that double trap though right there good stuff from him when you break a double trap you've got Ooh. offensively you've got to uh defensive three seconds here offensively you've got to recognize if you're the open man and make a move yeah, if you don't, you can easily lose the ball there. Definitely. Uh, one shot goes in, and now Fast is going to give the pass a small, you know, right in there, and he's going to get these easy two points. So a three-pointer from this attack. Good work right there. 42 points. Small Donna Duck. Look at him there. He's got 14, six rebounds and three assists. I like it. I like me some, some big man action. You know that, artist. As we get down to three minutes left, a huge oh, dunk there. Ramiro dunks over a small Dona duck, and I don't think that is not an easy task to do, but he still did it. Adrian now with the ball, could have drove it home himself. You know, what I see from these games and from a lot of games, they don't really take these two shots, you know, because they're not as pretty. <laughs> but like these free throw shots from that line from the paint. They don't take these, but I think they should be taking you more, especially once you're losing. you got to take any points you can. Yeah, absolutely. We're a big fan of the high percentage shots. Keep the t uh, scoreboard ticking over. It is important here. Adrian working. Oh, FaZe thought about it. Thought about it. Pulled up. Great pass there. Small Donna Duck trying to work a shot. Another big, powerful hook there for the big man in the low post. I love it. Again, I still haven't seen a lot of dunks from him or even alley-oops. I guess that's not something they train for, but uh, it's good. That there's a big man who can also just put it in. And that rattles in. Two minutes left here in this one. Argentina will be in first place on the table. South American Conference uh, and obviously playing Uruguay in the final. It's going to be exciting. We will have that interview coming up with Argentina after this. Then Jeff's corner. There hey, you go. Finally dunks it in. Good job. I, I've been waiting for it. Thank you. You just lit up my heart. There you go. And he's, he hung on the rim for a few extra seconds there just for you artists. Oh, I think. Style points. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate every dunk they do and the longer. I just want to see the, net, uh, the, the hoop break. There we go. <laughs> really? Point. I don't know. Is that animation in there? That's fascinating, though. We'll have to find out. All right, a nice uh, another. I believe that was a, a three, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah. And here comes uh, uh, Bolivia once again, just setting their sights. Two more buckets, and they have that 50 burger, which I think is a really good uh, sign of things to come for them as well. Oh, foul! Ooh, there. That is going to be a three. Three, uh, three free Ooh. throws. I think that was in a three-point line. Potentially. Let's find out right here. Uh, I didn't see exactly, but could be. Could be. Seabass with the free throw. Rattles is on. good. Swish. Love it. Swish, fish. And two. No, it looks like only there was a two. He stepped, uh, stepped over the line a little bit, but still uh, two points until the 50 uh, mark, which is still good for them, you know, not, not losing that bad. And uh, you still get a lot of experience out of this. Because offense from Bolivia has been so far very, very good. Yeah, I think so. Look, if they can get one more bucket and break 50, it's really, really just a great mental note for them. Argentina, likewise, might be chasing that 100. That's a good three, a big ball for Small Donatok. Trying to work his magic here. Physical uh, game play. Get it in. Unlucky. That was good defense there. And, and a look, good foul. You can see they want the ball back. We're under a minute. They're down big, but they are playing, representing their country here. They want that ball back. They want that 50-burger Bolivia. Yeah, good score is a good score in the end oh! anyway. 
Pujo dropping in a massive three. Likewise, Argentina want the hunch. They're going for the, the hundred here. Bolivia with a quick bucket. Oh, yeah. and that is going to be a foul. Could have been in, could have been in, but that was in Close. the fingers. Now, if he gets both of these shots, that's going to be a 50 ball. There we go. No pressure, Adrian, but your whole country wants you to knock in two. There's green. One more, and Bolivia have a 50 burger against the reigning champions. Argentina, nice. and he gets it. Held our breath there, didn't we? Yeah, we did. You know, sometimes you just got to take a... <gasps> and he shoots it in. But Ramiro with the ball. Uh, I don't think Argentina is going to get the 100 ball. Uh, now actually taking it, taking him to the free throws. Uh, again, a big man near the free throw line. You never know what's going to happen. One doesn't go in. That was, uh, you know, pretty... Does a round around uh, the hoop there, but goes out. The second one as oh, well. The Can't lap. shoot him trees. There you go. The lap of honor, and it, it rims out, and the second one misses too. And now a chance to add to their total. Big a big board for Small Donna Dog. 18 seconds left in this game. It's been a, a really rousing performance, I think, from Bolivia. Argentina will be happy enough. Good oh, shot from 53. Faze. That's good. And that's probably 52 actually overstepped over the line there. And I think that's how they're going to be finishing off. Argentina with seven seconds. I'm Bujo. Throws it. Actually misses. And the rebound's good. Through one. And it goes in. One second left. That's going to be 91 against 52. And I think that's game. Yeah, one second left here. Really good effort. Uh, from both teams. That's all she wrote. And uh, I got to tell you, a lot of positives to write home about there for Bolivia. The reigning champions, Argentina. You put up a 50-burger on them. That's impressive. I think that Small Donadoc might be the best host moves player that we've seen at the FIBA Esport Open 2. You don't see it a lot. It's not necessarily a tactic that a lot yeah. of teams use. But I got to tell you, I love it as a big man. I think the fans at home enjoyed it as well. Argentina won't necessarily be ecstatic about that performance. But at the same time, at the same time, they were able to really pull away. If I'm not mistaken, they dropped in 50 in the second half right there. Yeah, so 50 yeah. points. That was more of a statement right there. Let's have a look at the final standings then. We already know who's in the final. Uh, it's Argentina and Uruguay proceeding through to the grand final, which will be a best of three. Take us through the runners up here, though. So Argentina, four wins, that's good. But runners up, exactly, I just uh, took my mind off there. Brazil with two wins and two losses, 53-point uh, difference. Still still good, you know, as a, as a third place there. Bolivia following up with one wins and three losses uh, with a big uh, point difference. And Venezuela ending it up with four losses. Uh, better luck next time. But they did show us great uh, performance anyway, and yeah. I can't wait for them to practice a little bit more, get that chemistry just right and hopefully see them in a different tournament. Yeah, absolutely. I got to tell you, I loved watching Venezuela play. We've made uh, an unofficial request to FIBA that Venezuela get to play with 10-minute <laughs> quarters because we want to see even more action, if, uh, if that's okay, just from them. Now, uh, we do have an interview coming up with Argentina. Um, our production are going to let us know uh, whether or not that's ready, we're told that they're still waiting at the moment. Um, that is going to be great. And then after that, we are going to be returning to Jeff's corner as well. So I look forward to speaking uh, with Jeff. It's Ramiro. will be with us in a second there. Uh, you are a massive fan of his. You enjoyed his game there, Artis. Yeah, I mean, I always enjoy big men because, you know, it's it's the most different than, than my play style. I could never be in the center and dunk in. And Ramiro, now he's... Uh, what I said before, we hadn't seen that much of him, at least I haven't, yeah. and now he just showed everything he had. These blocks, these rebounds. I think in the end he had 20 rebounds, at least. And that is phenomenal. And For me, that's the kind of team MVP uh, performance as well. I mean, he's the really, captain. Really, really impressive stuff. I love that a lot of captains seem to take the center position as well and really just kind of like do right by their team. It's clearly uh, kind of like a, a key critical communication role as well when it comes to the pick and rolls and the alley-oops but he was all over the boards absolutely brilliant there he is ramiro can you hear us yes guys oh, how are you we're really we're well thank hey you. thank you how are you that was a great performance there and look i, I want to give you the platform what does it mean for you to represent your country here in the fiba esports open too well for me it's a honor uh, i mean i grew up watching the golden generation and well now i can represent the same confederation and my country it's a dream it's a dream come true that's brilliant and look can you tell us obviously 
you, you are a, a step ahead, a, a really classy team, definitely on the international level. Can you tell us a little bit about the preparation that you, you and the teammates put into the tournament? Well, uh, we play a lot of games. We train a lot, like four or three hours a day uh, with a film session. And now we are ready for finals now. That's amazing. And I love that you're sharing that as well. Um, and, and it kind of is, is really inspirational for aspiring athletes to hear. But look, I want to ask a fun question. And I know Artis has some questions of his own as well. Um, says you're studying chemical engineering. Okay. So yeah. tell us, you know, uh, what's the coolest thing you've ever done in the lab? Well, uh, I think that we changed the color of the meat uh, some years ago. What? Wow. <laughs> Yeah, it was crazy. That's unreal. Oh, my that God. Is... You're, you're the bona fide scientist. All right. How I'll do you just... change the color? Oh, well, let... That's awesome. I'm, I'm going to think about that a little bit later on. But uh, since the group stage has ended, who do you think was the strongest opponent that you had to, had to face? Well, uh, I, I think that it was Uruguay and Brazil. Uh, and now we are, we are seeing Uruguay in the finals, too. So let's see. It's a best of three. And anything can happen. Yeah, anything can happen, especially, yeah, as best of threes are usually, the, you know, the hardest ones to predict because, uh, you know, you need to run away. But continuing on, uh, you, it, it said in the survey that you can't play a center in real life, but you're doing that in NBA 2K. <laughs> Don't worry, I can as well. I'm short. Uh, but so is center your favorite position and, and why would that be then? Yeah, sure. Uh, I really like playing center. Uh, well, because as I said, uh, I couldn't do it in real life. Uh, I'm... <laughs> One, uh, I'm five four. I think that is in in the imperial system. So well, I'm doing the PS now. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. You know, well, that's that, great. Yeah, absolutely great stuff, Ramiro. Mm. Listen, we're gonna let you go and get ready for that grand final, which will be coming up after the intermission. Thank you so much for answering these questions. And hey, good luck in the grand final. We'll see you there. We'll be here on the casting desk. Well, many thanks. I see you. See you, mate. Well, that was fun. And and now uh, we're not done with our interviews, though. We get to uh, speak with Jeff in, in a couple of moments here. Jeff's corner will be Jeff heading himself. over there. Jeff, obviously incredibly knowledgeable when it comes to 2K. I love to listen to his predictions about what is going to happen and uh, also uh, uh, kind of his feedback on what he's seen so far. You know, and how, how, how do our notes differ? Because that's what's great as well, to kind of get that American perspective on things. Obviously, we got the European and the Australasian perspective as well, Oceania. But, um, yeah, looking forward to Jeff. He'll be with us momentarily. I'll tell you what, that was great. Changing the color of meat. What I love about all of our interviews is that you can see that um, uh, these are all very kind of driven and intelligent individuals representing their nations. You heard him speak about the golden generation of, of Argentinian basketball as well. Well, um, I just love to hear that. And I think it was uh, inspiring probably to any younger e-athletes listening and thinking. Okay. And now we're getting into Jeff uh, uh, kind of uh, any second. And there you go. Jeff, can you hear us? I can hear you guys. Oh, wonderful. Mate, it's great to see you again. Happy Sunday. Yeah. No, look, happy Sunday. It's, uh, you know, midday here in the U.S. I know you guys have put in work and I, I've been telling I, I said to some people in Twitch chat yesterday who were like, wow, these announcers are bringing it. You know, I said these casters, it's not just now you guys. It feels like you've been at it every weekend for the last month or so. Aww. So I just love the energy that you guys have been. Bringing. Well, thank you, mate. Listen, when you get games like that, it's pretty easy to bring the energy. Um, really loved it. I mean, we probably saw some of the most entertaining basketball from an 0-4 team Venezuela. It was great. But look, could you tell us just a, a little bit more about yourself? Uh, anyone who didn't see Jeff's corner last week, a little bit about yourself and your background in the NBA 2K scene. Yeah, so I've been, uh, you know, part of the broadcast team for the NBA 2K League the last few years. I know a lot of them are, will be watching, especially today, because of the North and Central America aspect. And we've had South America as well this weekend. Uh, I was here last week to talk a lot about Europe and kind of analyze the, the the nations and the players that people might not recognize uh, or getting are getting to know for the first time from around the world. And we're really digging into who these players are, what makes them special, and look. We're still in the infancy, right, of yep. international NBA 2K, and people are starting to see the rivalries develop. People are starting to see the nations take shape. So oh, yeah. I'm excited just to, to give that a little bit to the people. Absolutely. And look, we already saw the first edition of the FIFA Esports, uh, FIBA Esports Open, and now we're on to part two. 
okay? Uh, and, and how would you kind of describe the difference between the two competitions? Well, I think that you're just going to continue to see the competition level get higher. And look, we just had South America, right? We had two nations last time, Argentina and Brazil. And now you've seen that st that start to expand. We're going to see North and Central America today with a lot of nations that were not in that first uh, eSports Open, probably due to the NBA 2K League going on. A lot of those players on those elite teams in North and Central America actually play in the professional NBA 2K League. They are professional players, and man, did they put on a show yesterday. I mean, you guys saw those, those I, I know we'll get into it later in the day, but I just want to say those four teams, right, the U.S., Canada, Dominican Republic, and Puerto Rico, I mean, you can argue that those are four of the top oh, teams yeah. in oh, the world. Oh, yeah. Completely. And the way Epic. they just went blow for blow yesterday was incredible to watch. And I think it's testament to FIBA uh, working both with uh, NBA 2K and these basketball federations, national basketball federations, all of them coming together to, to make this. So there we go. Artis, mate, uh, 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 any any questions for Jeff before we hand it over and hand over the reins? Yeah, well, you know, the grand final of the South American Conference is right around the corner. And now, what do you think? Did you expect these two teams and, you know, how, how, how did it turn out? Well, I definitely, I mean, Argentina, We like I said, we saw it the last time we've seen, you know, look at, I think you're going to mirror a lot of IRL uh, basketball as well in terms of how committed these nations are to NBA 2K. So it's not entirely a surprise to see Argentina the way it's been. But Uruguay, I mean, you know, we have to give them credit for what they were able to do. And you just heard it in that last interview. I think they were kind of the unknown. And here we go. We're going to get to see, you know, just what they can put together if they can maybe figure out Argentina one more time. Absolutely. Yeah, they've Brilliant. been awesome so far. They have. It's been great. All right. Well, Jeff, we are going to hand over the reins. We will see you a little bit later on. Enjoy, viewers. We'll leave you in the capable hands of Jeff's Corner. Yeah, no, I appreciate that, guys. So, again, thank you to everyone that's joining us. You know, if you're wondering what's going on today, South America and the North and Central America conferences, they will have their finals. But South America is going to be first. So I just mentioned it a little bit to the guys. Well, what's going on here? Last time you had two teams, Argentina, Brazil. We've expanded to five. And one of those teams that has been discovered is Uruguay, who in group play only lost to Argentina in a relatively close game. So those teams will meet again. Argentina, they won the FIBA Esports Open uh, South America Conference the first time around. You would have to imagine they're the favorite again. The guys just talked a little bit about a few of their players. Truly numb. He had eight three pointers in that first matchup against Uruguay. He will be so important as a shooter for this team if they want to get past Uruguay again. Bujo is an interesting player as well who's able to score the basketball for Argentina. Look for him a little bit in the backcourt. And then the guys just mentioned it's Ramiro was, was who they just, the casters just interviewed. And what an interesting story. A guy who plays down low, the captain of the team at, at center. And in these elite matchup so far what we've seen in terms of elite nba 2k is rebounding becomes so essential offensive rebounding you see it a lot more in the virtual basketball world than you see it in the irl basketball world if it's ramiro can get his positioning down for argentina they will be very very tough to beat on the other side uruguay i got a shout out a guy certified wama who responded after that loss to argentina uruguay had a big big victory over Bolivia. He had 44 points and 15 assists. Again, the world's still getting to know this Uruguay team that was not in that first uh, FIBA Esports Open. They've come to play this time against Argentina. It's also interesting for me, coming from an American perspective, to watch the teams play from South America, from Europe last week outside of North America. You see that much more North American, a little bit more one-on-one, -on -one, a little bit more of a brutish style down low. And then you see these teams. You're going to see it in Argentina against Uruguay. The South American and the European teams tend to, and, and the Asian teams tend to spread the floor more they get into a lot of shooting they keep they, they keep it's almost like a spread offense for those football fans out there they keep everyone spread out around the perimeter and get down a lot of passing as opposed to dribbling so again that's argentina uruguay coming up and just to tease what we're going to have later on north and central america will be playing later on and and i cannot wait to talk about that that four-headed monster of usa dominican republic puerto rico and canada who features some of the greatest players in the world but North and Central America, it's going to be interesting seeing these two because the South, the, excuse me, the South American teams 
down there, Argentina and Uruguay. These two teams you're about to see, they want to prove to the world and especially their North American counterparts in the same time zone. Hey, we can play with you guys. We can make it. We have guys like it's Ramiro who will pound your best big man down, big man down low. So I'm excited to get things started. The South American final Argentina you're against Uruguay is going to be coming up after this intermission. Lions and stick with the penmanship, put me in the Coliseum With the red letters that pray I stay strong Even if they bear arms on your boy Call me the ref and it's on of the father's surface Staying true to his purpose Pray to Yahweh alone if I rest in his worship I look through the throne whenever I'm stressing I'm worried, he leads me by the steel voice I'm never hurry If they yes, where I'm at, tell them I'm right here I stand beside a giant that resides no fear Oh no, I never rise so low I hear them cry, hold on, we gon' fly Our people perish due to lack of knowledge, not a macroeconomics, but of God's solid promise. More relevant today than it can ever be tomorrow. And we don't fear your pistol, so that tip you want is hollow. Hoping the resurrection, so that pit you dig is shallow. Reaching for is easy, cause the best of leaders follow. Call me the harbinger, tool in the hand of the carpenter. Dead and stereotypes in the way that they like to market us. Fist up for my people that ain't pride of solidarity. Truth is a rarity, we don't deal with your relativity. We woke for certain, and we don't want to bread and circus, power with the eyes, people with implication and purpose, bigger than pound symbols and phrases without spaces, timelines updated with prophetic application, grinding from the basement, but we always been fly, reaching for that maturation, cloud seven, eight. If they yes, where I'm at, tell them I'm right here, I step beside a giant that resides no fear, oh no, I never rise so low, I hear them cry, hold on, we gon' fly, aye, 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 on cloud nine, we go so high. His element ain't no wrecking his regiment rudimentary relevance that he's relishing you insulted my intelligence it's evident your rapper's extrament from an elephant one year you be irrelevant i need minds i mean yours in the meantime i just need time open doors and i'll be fine it most denied shows on pause in the rewind then i realize my jealousy got me on decline you don't really know that feeling when they paint you as a villain in the night you get the thinking homie maybe they was right put your eyes closed to the ceiling and we're playing all your feelings so we met this up your healing diving deeper in your Black. Oh, don't you get involved on my toes, reservoir, Tarantino with the balls, know they in it from the start, no I do not play no part, your whole squad just full of ops, through the day congratulations, but I'm plotting in the dark, hold up, hold up, hold up, don't you ask me about no motive, my whole life I've been supportive, while my peers all get promoted, getting numbers, hitting quotas, posting photos on their socials, now I put you on, on notice, put my shoes all on your sofa, should've never gave y'all money, Rick James to your Charlie Murphy's, I'm done playing with your job turkeys, I drive quicker with the pride lucky, but is it worth it if I hit you with some lines to get your mind working? Nobody better make a sound. I need everything. Somewhere I fell and lost my crown. But I'm still a king. I just need my, I need yours in the meantime. I just need my, I need yours in the meantime. I just need my, I need yours in the meantime. I just need my, I need yours in the meantime. I'm, I'm laying down the gauntlet. I'm tired of watching culture vultures turn a profit while the real ones never charted. Little buddy, run your pockets. I want your platform and your wallet and your follows and your market. I should stop it. I'll be bitter because his time is ticking and these songs ain't hitting. I know they hits, but I can't get these folk to pay attention. Baby, because my skin is black and I ignore the fitness. Baby, it's in his time and boys up whining, hate the scriptures. I get offended in the absence of contentment. My resentment being sending out the message that I lived in. Baby, I just need a minute for my methods. Make a minute, send her battles with my shit and going back and forth. Like, like, boy, I need my tips, yeah Maybe just repeat why I rap a level up You gotta go and act like this Just because I got the victory Don't mean you don't exist Living water in your goblet Can go ahead and take a sip 
I was satisfied till I saw the Twitter verify. Why the other side probably searching for the paradise? What I realized, numbers be a never in the vibe. But if I chase my purpose, boy, I never be denied. Yeah. Pressing towards the mark, steady moving for the prize. Yeah. Keep my eyes on the truth while I'm ducking all the lies. Yeah. Keep my head low, staying focused. Worse for the wise, uh, killing off the villain whenever I hit on cry. Nobody better make a sound. I need everything. Somewhere I fell and lost my crown. But I'm still a king. I just need my amigo to the meantime. 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 Somewhere I fell and lost my crown. But I'm still a king. I just need my amigo to the meantime. 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 What? Get out! I can't let it go, no more past. I guess I'm not in your ass. As long as I'm with you, I'm gonna take a look fast. I guess I'm not in your ass. I can't let it go when the moment passes. I guess I'm only average. Blessings always come, but they go the fastest. I can't hold it back no more. I can't hold it back no more. Yeah, now you got a lot to kill. Yeah, I've been on the longest trip. I know I did you wrong, I did. Try to get along, I did I, 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 I wanna lie, I, 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 I Are you out of that, I, 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 I Got me like, bye, 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 bye Whoa. I can't let it go when the moment passes I guess I'm only average Blessings always come, but they go the fastest I can't hold it back I'm on the average Blessings always come But they go the fastest I can't hold it back No more
when they high side. Pull me up the sideline. Now I'm making highlights. Woo! No way, no way. Rolls up on the pedal and homie, no way. Move all week, little homie, no breaks. Lighting up the streets just for the city's sake. Roll with the beast, yeah, I know his face. If you pick a team, little homie, win the place. I'll be the feeder, little homie, no way, no way, no way, little homie, no way, no way. My team don't know what the feed is. When you see me fixing with them dubs on swole. Now I see these rappers wanna be friends. All up in my inbox, steady blowing up my phone. Boy, Ben Wallace with the defense. Blocking up the boards, but I gritted up the fro. You know it's street light season. Nothing they can do to stop us reaching on our coast. High stepping to the goal line, praise to the most high. Watch me hit the folk like, uh. Only got the gang as a cosign. White bed is so fine, know I'm about to kiss it like, uh. Boy, I'm Chef Rizzy with the sauce go. Got it on a boat like I'm Costco. No, I got a condo in the gospel. Team strong, everybody hot show. Trying to get some pesos with these nachos. Uh. Lighting up the streets just for the city's sake. Roll with the beast, yeah, I know his face. If we picking teams, little homie, win the place. Us be defeated, little homie, no way, no way, no way. Little homie, no way, no way. No way, no way. Rolls up on the pedal, little homie, no way. No, no. Move on, wait, little homie, no breaks. Lighting up the streets just for the city's sake. Roll with the beast, yeah, I know his face. If you picking teams, little homie, win the place. Us be defeated, little homie, no way, no way, no way. Welcome, dear viewers, back to FIBA Esports Open 2. My name is Renars, and alongside with me is none other than Chris, who already had the glory of uh, talking about the games today, right? Oh, brilliant. An amazing first session. A quick break for us here, recharged, rearing, ready to go. Great to be your sidekick again, Renars. Uh, no better host in the business, mate. Oh, shocks. All right. Well, I think it's about time we start uh, talking about the thing that everyone has been waiting for and obviously that is the South America Grand Finals. Those are slowly approaching here as the teams are having their final talks. Gradually are going to be joining the game, as you can see here in the South America Conference overall standings. Top two teams are Argentina and Uruguay this time around. Yeah. Ever so slightly short for Brazil. Yeah, absolutely. Brazil, obviously, are kind of OGs when it comes to the conference as well. Uh, participated in... Uh, FIBA Esports Open number one. However, they miss out on the grand final now. Uruguay booked themselves a, a ticket there. It's going to be very, very close, I think. Exactly. And I mean, these teams are still fighting for that valuable trophy to obtain. And of course, the MVP award as well. That's going to be awarded once we actually have a winner decided. And of course, with a uh, quick talk for between myself and Chris and, and the third caster as well, Artis. Yes. Um, we, we'll, we'll decide who we're going to pass on that brand new Tissot watch. Right, that's absolutely. And it's uh, it's going to be going on the wrist of the MVP at some point. 
And uh, first of all, though, let's have a look at the matchup screen here, the two Absolutely. lineups in grand final number one. And here for Argentina, it's Ramiro, truly numb, uh, Lamo dribbling too much, and Lauti Rodriguez. And on the side of Uruguay, you're going to see certified Juanma, Rubinho, 13, Nicolas Fernan, Santi Falero, and of course, Ico Daigo, or Ico Digo, however yeah, you prefer. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, whatever emphasis you want to put on wh whatever yeah. syllable, okay? We say things differently in different parts of the world. I mean, it's, it's even harder for me. I speak three <laughs> different languages, so get mixed up sometimes. Well, there we go. But I'm sure chat will always uh, set us right. We That's love, why we love you there. We love Twitch chat there. But look, this is going to be uh, early New Year's Eve fireworks right here. That is what has been promised, and that is what will be delivered. Um, it has to be said, beyond any shadow of a doubt, that Truly Numb is one of the best shooters in the entire conference. Absolutely. Okay. However, look, It's Romero has been dominating games on the glass 20 rebounds there in that last game at least it's been pretty impressive and likewise then uh Rubinho there uh for Uruguay as well dominating the paint and both of these teams um very very I would say top shelf on the international level um clearly have like great strategy great communication great skills and raw abilities as well stick skills um this is going to be a very special you know, final. Like there, there are a few important factors to mention here. <laughs> Firstly, for Argentina, they are def defending champions, right? So they've made it into the grand finals again, which is great. Now the, the biggest task to, uh, at hand here is really to defend that title. For Uruguay, it's the first time on the international esports stage here. So obviously, you know, if they didn't feel pressured beforehand... <laughs> You're gonna feel the pressure now. Well, yeah, I mean, they kind of they they're literally like a thief in the night. I feel like Brazil will be a little bit hot done by like, wait a second, well, you know, the conference when the conference was just ourselves and Argentina, we, we you know we had a great time of it, but now Uruguay True. come in and they've been very very impressive and, and and but like you said, pressure wise, maybe now they're starting to feel it, but until now. I Look, don't know. So, so just a quick reminder, guys. The grand final is going to be played in a best of three fashion. So one country needs to secure two wins to be able to call them champions. Yeah. Um. You know, when these countries both met, still back in yesterday, was feels like <laughs> already was uh, such yeah. a long time ago. After that many games, um, the score was as follows. If I remember correctly, it was sixty-three against fifty-two in favor of Argentina. So it was still a very close. Yep. Score line. You, we, we continuously talk about this 10-point differential that essentially doesn't mean much, yeah. especially when it comes to NBA 2K as well. You can very quickly recover from it, and obviously a lot of it is going to come down to the approach. I think we definitely do have a nail-biter on our hands. Of course, Argentina has that slight advantage, I would say, yeah. purely on paper and purely based off their performance, what we've seen here. But then again, you know, if, if there is any time as now when it is really the most important time to dig deep within yourself, and yep. I'm talking about Uruguay here, yep. you know, really find that last bit of strength, well, focus like, and everything, That's this is the moment where you should apply that. So, yeah, and we're talking about mental fortitude, right, and kind of yes. mental preparation. Well, I got to say this, okay, the last two games were rather telling because uh, I pipped them both as potential uh, trap games or kind of, you know, if you fall asleep at the wheel and you're the powerhouse team, this team could come and take the win uh, away from you. Venezuela versus Uruguay. And I got to tell you, they came out and they did not hold back. It was in their perfect performance from Uruguay. Yeah. Uh, con considering Venezuela, even though they were 0-4, trust me, they're a handful. They are a handful. But it, it sounds as though we are ready for the first game. I mean, it's... It's about time we kick this thing open and let's get it going. It's going to be FIBA Esports Open 2 South America Grand Finals Game 1 between Argentina and Uruguay. Oh! Having a look at the poll here from chat. Sorry, I just spoke over the very end of the video there. Apologies, though. But it is about as tight as you can get. 55% of chat saying Argentina are going to get the win. 45% Uruguay. Will chat be wrong? Will it be one of those rarefied moments?
those almost look like betting odds to me. <laughs> but like, in, in, in fairness, if you look on paper against the uh, about both of these teams, that's really what the odds are here. And the game is on its way here as Juanma already looking for those first early openings here. Fake pumps the shot. Nicholas does the same as well here, holding on on the three-point line. Rubinho ready to take a pass anytime soon if needed. And it's going to be Juanma to make a breakaway play for it. Jump shot. That's the first two points for Uruguay. Instant timeout called by Argentina. Not really sure I understand what they gain out of this though. I don't know, maybe just trying to rectify something really quickly here. Or, uh, or, or lose one of the available timeouts. <laughs> oh, what a ch charging foul coming out from uh, Truly Numb here. That is something, something to see. Right, good defense here early on from Uruguay. The point I was about to make while we were just waiting for the players to come out of the virtual tunnel as we see uh oh this is gonna be a, a, a yeah well, it's foul a this block. time around okay that's a block okay so a couple of fouls already here for argentina um is that I, I thought i thought that uruguay performed a little bit better than argentina in their kind of trap game that's all i wanted to say mentally they seemed a little more switched on as we see a mental error and a quick bucket here for the argentina a big slam dunk. We're knotted up at two apiece. Yeah, Lotti just slams it, rams it home, and of course opens the point score line for Argentina here. Alley up and dunk to finish things off with Rubinho at hand there. Look. Nice quick play, not allowing for Argentina's defense to spread themselves out or to do anything about it really here. Truly not with the three-pointer. It makes use of that quick situation where two defensive players were just too pre preoccupied with each other. My goes for goodness. the three, grabs it, takes it home. And now Juanma, let's see if he can answer with the same. Could have gone for a shot. It's going to be Nicolas from the sideline, and he gets the three as well here. As Uruguay instantly take the lead back, five to seven, three minutes and 32 seconds still remaining here in the first quarter. And it is as close as it could be right now. Rubinho even gets the steal here. It was a slow pass and just too easy to do. And this time around, an error in the offensive play is truly numb is able to return the favor. Oh, Nelly Ross uh, lost the handle there himself, but uh, his teammate was there to, to help him out, and a foul here from Uruguay. I tell you what, it's end-to-end yeah. -end stuff right yeah, now. Yeah, and I'm not really a fan of so many early errors here, as well as uh, fouls. You know, there's there's really not that much need so early on here, especially, you know, ha having issues like charging fouls, oh. for example. Great job shot, puts it up. And evens out the score line here. Again, though, it really is kind of a case of they are matching each other, even with the fouls and the mistakes and the score line as we get a massive driving dunk right there. Oh, my goodness gracious. That was huge right there from Rubinho. Yeah, you, Rubinho really with the super confident drive in that situation as well. Julian Nam opens the lane. Just... We, uh, the the we, C splits in front of you. It's incredible when you see the little men taking it to the to the rim like that and slamming home, getting vertical. Santi. Green from the corner from Santi, and Christmas is coming early for him the last couple of games. <laughs> Dropping L in the three-pointers. Little pun on the name there. Truly numb, though. You can't well, leave him. Can't leave him I that open. I was just about to say, why, why is nobody paying attention to the guy? It's not like he can't shoot. <laughs> One of the most uh, uh, incredible shooters here. Santi from the other corner, though. Oh, this time around, he's going to be swaying a bit too much to the right there. Doing the doing the corner tour right there. Swinging yeah. from side to side. Definitely, uh, as far as a FIBA eSport Open 2 is concerned, it's been phenomenal stuff uh, uh, from Truly Namas. We see another massive alley-oop dunk there. He has been one of the, the best shooters we've seen. Yeah, I mean, truly not playing together with his Romero in that situation. And obviously the result shows 14 to 12, though, and the two point differential fast steal, fast breakaway play. Truly not with the layup gets it in. Looks like could have been almost an and one there as well. Not this time around. And pretty rare that you see certified lose the handle on the bowl as well. So Argentina showing some great determination and skill here on the defensive side of the bowl as well. A missed shot, but Rubino gets it back, kicks it back out, restarts the offense. Ten to shoot, though. Here comes Certified. Ico is open there for a second in the corner. Instead, going to pass it to Rubino, and again, that drive 
absolutely unstoppable in the first quarter here as Argentina is in the lead by two points right now in the very first quarter of the first game of the fir grand finals oh. in the South American. Oh my, what a three-pointer. He can't even let us get a sentence in before he drops in another massive three, showing up when it counts and when it matters the most, truly numb with those mind-numbing threes. And you know, that's obviously where the nickname comes from, right? Of course. There we go, fantastic stuff there. And um, well, Argentina building a bit of a lead for themselves here. Yeah. It's a five-point lead right now. Um, a lot of it is off the back of small errors. And we're into the, wow, we're into the bonus and, and already. This is, this is what I was talking about. Those early errors are starting to pay dividends, obviously, for Uruguay right now, because obviously having free throw opportunities like this, and with still half a minute remaining, closing down the point gap down to three points only now. And you can expect to see Juanma perhaps going for a three-pointer, unless Truly Numb has something to say about it. Fantastic dribble skills here from Truly Numb. Just trying to work that pick and roll right there as well. Great technique though defensively. He does get a little bit open. You can't give oh. him that much space. He will punish you every single time. And right now that is the difference in this game. Literally a couple of big threes from Truly Numb. Under 10 seconds left here in the first quarter. It's already the end of the first quarter, Renaz. Absolutely, and Juanma with no chance to give a pass really here. It's gotta be a steal, but not enough time to make a play happen and very early on. Argentina in the lead by six points. Uruguay looking to respond. And, you know, if I look back at the first quarter quickly here, I really feel like that Uruguay slightly lost their pace Ooh. towards the second half of the first quarter. Yeah, and I have to say, I'm really impressed with the uh, the performance. Truly numb with 20 of his team's 24 points. I Look, if, if you're a smart team, and we know they are Uruguay, You've literally got to say, okay, we're taking away Truly Numb. Yeah. No matter what it is, no matter where he goes, either put a man on him, even when he goes over to the bench for some Gatorade. If there is a game where you don't want to have, give him any working room, this is the one. That's got to be a charge. It Absolutely. is. Absolutely. The block was clean. He was standing still on his feet, charged straight down to the ground. That was really, really good work there defensively from Uruguay. Well played. Now they'll have an opportunity to just eat away at this uh, now eight-point lead. Oh, nice pass. Beautiful. And that's just what the doctor ordered. A good defensive stop and then a quick bucket at the other end. Just chiseling away at it. And another stop here for Uruguay. Oh, this is a breakaway play. Rubinho was open for a pass. Fake pumps it. Goes out on the three-point line. Needs to pass it over back to Juanma. Could have still given it back to Rubinho there for a second back. Now Lottie obviously... Giving a lot of trouble for Juanma here. Was open again for a second. Not really keen on the three-pointer department now. And the long two. Oh! That is going to be good. And he is a certified shooter of the ball right there. Renars, that is fantastic work from certified Juanma. And I got to tell you, we got the final we wanted. It's tight. That's truly numb. What just, can just you do? You pops can't... one over the whole defense. Right? You really can't stop these. It's kind of impressive. The one tactic that we saw, and you're not going to like it, though, as we see another great alley-oop there, Rubinho doing his thing. It is, is a three-point difference between these two right now, and Argentina haven't responded with a point. Well, what feels like a minute, but not oh. unless Ramiro can do something about it. Their nice adjustment mid-air catches it. Right place, right time, right lovely timing as well on the jump. Just lovely, and and look, the only way maybe you stop Truly Numb is to really great drive, and one! And one! Beautiful bucket here, is it, to stop Truly Numb is potentially to really try to pick his pocket, as in foul. Yeah. And honestly, I know it sounds a, a little bit counterintuitive, but when we get down to the fourth quarter, if you've got the fouls to give, I would be thinking about it, because these threes are deadly. Um, you know, maybe that is the plan for Uruguay. They don't want to overdo it too early on here. We're getting close to that halftime. Still 250 oh. remaining, and what an A. This is a, a massive alley-oop. Yeah, guys, at home, everybody watching, the skill on display to time that alley-oop, the communication level, absolutely great. And you're doing it against a Uruguayan defense that is solid as a rock as well. Juanma. Play set up for him. He goes for the dunk, can't make it through. Lamo just too tall. And now Santi in the left-hand side corner makes a breakaway play for oh! it, slams it home. I was not expecting that. I was expecting a pull-up jumper. And he says, 
Look at this dunk. Boom. This goes flying. Truly numb now. Really in the danger zone for Uruguay as he's activated his avatar. Bit of blunder happening here. Can Juanma... Oh, Good timeout okay. for I Uruguay. I thought he was going to go for a breakaway play there. Actually, could have done it, but well, they decide to reset it here. Just decided to play it super safe, super smart. Every bucket is counting. It's grand finals True. time now, and I really like what we saw there. But the, for the first time, going for the steal on Truly Numb as well. Charging foul of their own. The defense has been really good for both teams. That's hard to do. Absolutely. I mean, look, you know, if it's not going to be truly numb performing, obviously it's going to be Ramiro that's going to fill his shoes in the point department. But I feel like that is a better chance oh. still to take. What a defensive play there. That was clean as well. No foul in play. Truly numb left open. And again, oh, I love has it. that lane to use. I love it. I think that's a, a real leadership bucket right there because he, he recognizes we just need a basket here, you know, and does the job. As, as we see the same from Rubinho with the two-handed reverse dunk at the other end. It and does not surprise me. Rubinho on fire now as well. So expect a bit more from him in the nearest minute or so. Okay, and minute 20 left in the first half. I can't believe how quickly this is going. Absolutely. I mean, they want to finish off strong here. That is Uruguay. And now, I personally, I really like that foul right there. That's what I'm saying. I feel like uh, the, moment, the, down. the moment he is looking like he's going to be shooting, just reach in and try and take it away. As you can see, he is so slippery. It's so impossible to defend. Absolutely. I mean, and again, like you can't really fault Uruguay at this because... If, if someone goes to stop him there in paint, yep. you're going to leave the corners open. Yep. One of them is going to be vulnerable, and obviously the player is going to have absolutely enough time to, to charge that perfect shot. Yeah, absolutely. We haven't even really seen from the corner shooters of either team. Or you're going to leave the middle of the key wide open there. That's a contested wow. shot to Rubinho, who is on fire himself. It shows you how good the defense is. But, yeah, there's so many ways they can score. They've literally got plan A, B, and C, and that's a sign of a dynamite team. Look at Truly Numb just faking them out of their boots and swish. Yeah, Beautiful. you can see that really the players seem to be getting a bit anxious on the Uruguay side, just jumping preemptively there. Yeah. Feeling like they can predict his movements, but it's not <laughs> going to happen with the guys so fast. Iko from the corner, however, Ooh. is just unfortunate. It's 37 against 31 here, six point difference in favor of Argentina. And Ramiro is going to be left open, but what a block coming out from Rubinho. Oh my god, that was prom night all over again. More rejection, Renaz dancing with myself in the corner. That was vicious right there. Fantastic defense. Now they've got uh, what, about three seconds between game clock and shot clock. Alley-oop! Well defended. Argentina is going to get the put in right here though. Six seconds to shoot. It was actually certified that blocked the ball there as well. It wasn't Rubinho even, so excellent play. Seven seconds remaining before halftime here. Ooh. No score. 5.1 seconds before the half. Can Uruguay pull something out of the out of the fire here? Maybe a a good trick play. Working it up the court. Three, two, one. We're back here, Argentina versus Uruguay, and it's 37 20, against 31. 29 points for Truly Numb. 20, out of the 37, out of 37. Yeah. If, if he hasn't, if he hasn't literally said loud and clear that I am this team, you know, what else does he have to do as he gets another easy bucket? You've just got to shut him down. I mean, he's so far absolutely <laughs> carrying his he team. And it's missed. not like his he teammates missed. are not doing anything. But, yeah, if the man doesn't miss, like, you really do have a problem on your hands. And now with an eight-point lead in favor of Argentina, Uruguay desperately need an answer here because they haven't had a point in a while. And that is going to be in the form of certified Juanma there with a big three. I tell you what, we have to pick an MVP. They haven't won yet. We have to pick an MVP from the winning team. And when you are 100% from the field in the grand final, that is pretty impressive here. Rims in and out, but we get an offensive board from Mitz Romero, who's had a quiet game by his own really high standards. I guess they haven't needed him offensively in terms of the rebounds because every shot is going in. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, if, if Julian Am doesn't miss, what, what rebounds are there to take? 
you could just, you know, touch the rim for the sake of touching. Oh, Lottie comes in at the right time, slightly falling, falling asleep there. Uruguay's defense in the left-hand side corner. I believe that it was Aiko who had to cover the man there. Rubinho now is going to be stopped on the three-point line, draws two people to him. Now, when that happens, if you're the open man for Uruguay, you got to make a move. you got to let yourself be known. Exactly. That's a good pick and roll. Big dunk. I thought he was going to give it to the corner for the three right there, but I like that as well. They are well and truly within uh, touching distance here with such amazing teams. A couple of buckets. Uh, two possessions is nothing. Five points between the two. Make it eight. As Truly Numb puts up another three-pointer for him. And, I mean, I have no clue what the man is on, but <laughs> Jesus this is very reminiscent of Bandit uh, from yesterday, and it really felt, you know, that's that's why we asked, you know, Costa Rican captain um, over, overrated, asked him, what planet is he from? Because this is an out of this world performance right now. Oh, a beautiful green three from the corner there. Lovely shot there by Okodigo. Very much needed points for the team as well. Two minutes and 50 seconds in the third quarter here, and we often talk about it being the one that could potentially be very decisive for the end result, but not this time around. When it comes to grand finals, you can't really predict anything, but what a steal comes through. And another interception as Uruguay regained position of the ball here. Juan with a fast breakaway play, takes one page out of Truly Numb's book, puts Fever, one up for the team. Fever Esports Open 2, grand final action here, South American Conference, game one, and it is a real humdinger. All comes down to this here is truly numb. Good work on the dribble there. Screen set up, left open, gets the slam as always. Oh my goodness. That is incredible. He is showing the full repertoire of skills here. Look at the full court pressure from Argentina. That is a clever timeout from Uruguay because it looked dangerous. Truly numb with 38 points and I don't think he's missed. Yeah, I, I don't. I can't recall seeing him missing uh, any time. 48 against 41 here, seven point difference, and they leave certified wide open. Rubinho just trails next to him, making sure no attempts at stopping him will be made. Fantastic ball skills here from oh, Truly Numb. Oh, no, that was a blocking. Yeah, well, a little foul there. I thought there might have been a backcourt violation as well. It but seemed the leg was over, but. Okay, quick you never down. know. Here is truly numb. Oh, miscommunication there. A rare mis misplay right there for Argentina. Well, Ur Uruguay needs to really take advantage of this in such a tight game. Doesn't count as a missed shot, though, so the statistics yeah. are still good for truly numb. Oh, fake bump. Ah, uh, that was. And again. Was, was that a pass? Was that a shot? I couldn't really make I it out. I think that was an attempted alley oop that was just a little bit mistimed with Rubinho there. So this might be just nerves playing at this stage. Oh, the back foul. Yeah. That's uh. That's uh, not one that you yeah. often get to see here. Yeah, that's pretty rare right there. If we're playing 2K bingo, you can mock that one down. Someone's going to get bingo eventually, Renaud. <laughs> okay, here we go. Trying to work a Christmas miracle of their own, Uruguay. They are down in the grand final. A good hard drive. Oh, who's going? Argentini's going to get the ball here. Yeah, they... they couldn't regain possession of it there. Five point difference between the two. 57 seconds remaining in the third quarter here. And I mean, really, it's getting close to that it point is. of no return for Uruguay where they need to start putting up more points wow. because not being able to score. Oh, a really, oh, that was a clutch miss right there. I gotta tell you, they worked it perfectly. And what a quick three-pointer out from Uruguay. That was Nico, I think. That was phenomenal. That's exactly what the doctor ordered right now. They are well and truly back in this game now. Yeah, 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter here. Truly numb. I tell you what, I, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If I'm him, I keep shooting. Yeah, give it. just give it to Nicholas. He's definitely clearly able to put up those three-pointers. Lamol from the right-hand right side corner. It bounces out. Second it's miss. 48 against 46 with 12 seconds remaining here. Can Uruguay even out the game as the quarter finishes? Juan on a three-point line. Pass over to Aiko from the corner. Left wide open. He nails the shot. And Uruguay overtake. No, they don't. Over yes, they overtake the lead by a single point here. 48 to 49. I tell you what, 
missed three-pointers in the corner there, wide open. I love your expression where you say, take the time to make that shot. You've got the time. That is coming in clutch right here. As we see another big dunk from Uruguay, they double dip. And now they've got a three-point lead of their own. And just like that, Argentina's lead is evaporated, eviscerated, and, and now they're down three. Watch Julian Ump put up a three-pointer now. <laughs> He's going to make a sidestep left and go for three. Nearly. No. Just working it he open. He wants it. Oh, it's going to be Lottie to nice. make the adjustment. Nice play there still. Uruguay up by one. And look, the, one of those really kind of uh, a fortune cookie wisdom age. Big block there from Ramiro. Big man on big man. Uh, fortune cookie wisdom. But it's true. It's not how many points you score. It's when you score them. They need truly numb to step up now. We got a turnover. That was an error in the passing department. A reach and foul. And absolutely justified one as yeah. as well. It looks like it looked like the Argentina could have run away with a free two pointer, and then one more error on the passes here this time around from Argentina to give the ball back to Uruguay. What is happening with these steals? Uh. It's going to be Argentina truly numb on the three point line here. Too many defensive players around to go for a fast play. Another steal goes through. Certified Juanma. Could have gone for a jump shot there and a timeout called by Uruguay that didn't feel comfortable with the layout of the players on the court. I tell you what, they're scrapping, aren't they? And yeah. it's it's literally, it's not so much mistakes. It's really just dogged defense forcing mistakes. It's fantastic. And Uruguay has plenty of room for, for to make those fouls when they are really needed as well. So they're not going to feel pressured so far to use it early. <laughs> That is a style finish from Rubinho as well. Hand switch up, gets the dunkaroo. Right, I mean, come on. Grand final dunk. Let's switch the hands. 10 out of 10 for me. Oh, why? Did, I, I'm not sure why Truly Nam didn't go for that quick two points. He could have gotten. And a rare miss, but Ramiro with a good board. Loudy dropping in a three. Oh, my God. We are even here. It's 53 to 53. In the fourth quarter, in the first grand final game of FIBA Esports Open 2 in South America Conference, Ken certified Juanma, together with his team, overtake the lead here, take down the reigning champions, that is Argentina. Or will Argentina, with truly numb in front, with a truly insane performance, take it back home. Huge block come through block. from Lamo. What a block! Incredible block right there. I honestly thought the dish was going out to the corner three right there. I was ready for it. Okay, Argentina now with a bit of momentum of their own. But let's see if they have the hearts of champions. Can they work something open here? Oh, the corner. Yeah, he's a fake bumps it and now oh. stuck in no man's land. Lottie again coming from that left-hand side quarter. He's doing this more and more. And now with that activated avatar, expect him to do so. Definitely, definitely. Look at the tight defense everywhere as they're working the pick and roll game. A missed shot, but of course, Robinho with a big aggressive offensive Nicholas rebound. is open. They rotate back to Argentina. Looks like that corner shot is on. Failed alley -oop. he's just got to put that up. Great uh, defense from Argentina, though. A bit of a miscommunication. Surely that was on the comms there. Oh, what do we got? Personal foul. Yeah, blocking. He, he established his, he set his feet there a little bit. Okay, um, so you can't be moving there. Fifty-six against fifty-three now in favor of Argentina with the last two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. Truly not misses, but of course Ramiro gets the board and can't quite get the N1. But he is going to go to the free throw line to add another two here if he can. The big man. Let's see, can Ramiro do it for his team on fire? Oh, he got makes the first it happen. One. I can. I can't watch watching the big man shoot. Oh, he got it in though. Five point lead for Argentina here in the first grand final games in this best of three minute and 45 seconds to work with here. Rubinho again is going to be stopped here. Over to Juanma. Trying to work something here. Coming up on 90 seconds left in grand final number one. They need buckets. That's good. And of course, that's the name of the game. They are certified. Just plays the ball as long as he can get two players to his name. And then afterwards passes over to Rubinho, who's already made it to the key there. Who is on the ground and why? 
And that is a long Ooh. three pointer. Ramiro gets the rebound as well, plays it out. 10 seconds still remaining. Fake yep. pumps it for no one, really. <laughs> Truly numb on the three point line. Bit of a Alley battle. Oh my goodness. That is phenomenal execution right Talk there. Talk about timing. Five oh. points between the two. 60 against 55. One and mi one minute and five seconds remaining. Ico open for a pass. Lamo now narrows in to close down that gap. Certified trying to work this pick and roll game here. There it is. Got to get a bucket. Quick steal. Argentina's defense coming out when they needed it the most. Phenomenal stuff here in the grand final. That pass was intended into the corner there, but instead went straight into Argentina's hands and now truly numb is looking to extend the lead even further. Obviously, he's going to be running down the clock to the max to take that last second attempt. Oh, my goodness. Gets the two as well, and that is a seven-point difference with half a minute remaining here. What is Uruguay's plan? Truly numb with 41. 41 points, and that bucket right there might have been the most important one. Certified missing Out in to the Ico. corner. Green. He gets the three, 17 seconds remaining here. Four points between the two. Full court press needed. Probably a foul as well. They've got to be quick about it. Great ball movement here from Argentina. Fantastic. I think that's going to be it. Eight seconds on the clock here. Truly numb. Really running it down. Reaching foul. Six and a half seconds remaining. Free throw line. and Yeah, in the bonus here and a chance to uh, make it, well, already a two-possession game, but at least it would have to be two threes here. Even just a draw up. We've seen it happen before. FIBA Esports open to two. two three pointers in six and a half seconds. Can Uruguay can up come up with a miracle here? Very long pass over to Santi. That is only two. It was with green. three point nine seconds remaining. Timeout call for Argentina to get the players across the court already post timeout here and then just running down the clock. Yeah, absolutely. Look for a, a potentially a quick foul here. That is the smart move right there, eating up the clock. Oh, my goodness. Santi did brilliantly to catch and shoot that, but obviously foot was over the line. Slightly over the line here, and it's safe to say that Argentina have secured that first oh, game wow. here in the first grand finals of the South America Conference. And, I mean, you know, going into a best of three for Uruguay being now one game down, yeah. being backs against the wall, really, what can he do? Well, I mean, you uh, are a former e-athlete yourself. You've represented at an international level for your nation. Best of three series, I, I think you... I'm having flashbacks. <laughs> right, you're having flashbacks. <laughs> I mean, what, what can you do? you got to focus on the positives. you got to recognize that, you know, it was potentially just Look, like a couple of misses and you win that. So it's all down to execution. We knew it was going to be tight, though. It was really about stopping Truly Numb in this yep. game. The man had like 70% of the team's points and uh, Uruguay, obviously they tried to do that. I don't think Aiko is the best man to put up against Truly Numb when it comes to defense because yeah. his, his character is just simply too slow for that. Okay, it, it should be certified going going one to one, uh, playing defensively and trying to stop Truly Numb on that three point line. At least he'll be able to follow through. Yeah, because that's a huge problem right now. It is, and and you know that's really and, the switch up that they should make. And the moment, the moment the Truly Numb went a little bit dormant. Okay, at one point he had ninety percent, if not more. Yes. Of, of the team's points. The moment that gap just widened a little bit and it wasn't him doing all the scoring, that's that's when Uruguay was able to take the lead. And that's exactly what they should talk about right yeah, now. Yeah, I agree. Focus on the positive. Focus on... You need to do everything perfectly. So it's not an easy... It's uh, definitely it's, not an it's, easy it's position. It's also definitely not an easy task for Argentina here. Look, it, we're still within that 10-point gap, even less than that. Six points in this game. Not a lot in it. And it really looked like uh, Uruguay are going to be able to actually take the win here. Yeah. Um, the problem was they weren't able to extend their lead any further than five points. Yep. And after those few unsuccessful steals, um, that's really where the game got to them. And of course, take out that truly numb factor. But... Right, right. At which he is a massive <laughs> factor. I wrote it down. Operation Stop Truly Numb. Yeah. If you're Uruguay, that is the mission. Should you choose to accept, okay? Otherwise, you know, your chances at winning in the grand final self-destruct after one more game.
Well, look, that is exactly where Uruguay is right now. Backs against the wall. No room for error. If you lose this one, that's it. The show's over. South America's conference is concluded. And that is going to be Argentina running away with the win. But something tells me that, I mean, if not overtime, has, then a third game is on the line for feeling, us here. It feels as though we're going to go to a third. I'm feeling that as well. Um, listen, chat, let us know. Spam, are we going to be? Are we gonna see an Argentinian victory here? Is it going to be two or three games in the series? I want to know. Give our mods a hard time. Also, spam your country flag while you're at it. And, and the best part is you can give them a hard time at three different platforms. That is YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. So, you know. Just go for it. Those poor, poor mods. <laughs> Those poor mods. A lot easier here on the desk. So um, this is going to be massive. I got to tell you, I loved, I loved the scrappy defense here. I, I put a note and I put a circle around it. The charges. I think we had yep. two charges each way. I thought that was incredible. Um, they were really scrapping. And honestly, um, honestly, that age-old expression, not how many points you score, but when you score them, truly numb. And that finger roll layup that he had there, you know, just to take him to a roughly a, a, a six or seven point lead there right at the end. Phenomenal work. And that was such a clutch bucket. It was really good that he you did know, that. You know, one more factor that we haven't talked about here was Lamo. He came in crucial in four different plays coming in from that left hand side corner right into the paint. Um, to get that dunk in at the right time. Because obviously Uruguay was paying so much attention to Truly Numb and... Um, who am I forgetting here? Uh, it's uh, Ramiro. There we yep. go. Uh, so to Truly Nums and Ramiro's duo that they completely forgot about Lamo there in the corner. And, you know, four, three, four plays like that. And that's still eight to ten. Uh, math is absolutely off points. <laughs> but you, you get the idea, right? So yeah, absolutely. That's, that's obviously what, what the case is here for and, uh, Uruguay to figure out. And it kind of felt like Certified maybe didn't play to his full potential as well. I'm yeah, I've, I've, I'm not look, sing I, I'm definitely not uh, singling him out at absolutely. all whatsoever. Like he, 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 It's a team sport in the end. But at the same time, we know that Certified has the same ability as truly. Nicholas known. as well had the, those uh, small moments of brilliance with those cl clean three-pointers. And I think if you can put him more again uh, in that three-point position close to the sideline where he seems to be very comfortable, especially from the left-hand side, um, if, if you're looking towards the basket, then I think that's something they could utilize here and, and see if they can play around that. Because obviously, you know, everyone knows at least between these two teams, um, where to keep their, their eyes on and on who to watch closely. But that does leave a lot more room for everyone else to work with. And I think that's not really being utilized to the fullest right yeah, now. I completely Still, agree. Still super close game, though. But Rubinho has looked awesome as well and loads Absolutely. of dunks. Um, I think I feel like we could have top five dunks of FIBA Esport Open 2, and it would be all Rubinho's dunks from the last game. That's how good he's been. It's been insane. I saw animations there that I didn't know were in the game that I haven't seen since literally dunk contests. Um, so brilliant stuff. Now, I guess we are just uh, waiting. The players are, are are nearly there. Taking a bit of a breather after that. Obviously, in, a lot of talk involved. Yeah, in the virtual tunnel at the moment, getting ready to come out. Um, wow, look... It, it's Argentina's to lose at the moment. It has to be said, though, with truly numb putting up a performance like that. Uh, well, question is, can he do it two times in a row? That's exactly what I was about to ask you. So, uh, you know, it doesn't, it, it definitely feels as though he's a high skill player. It doesn't strike me as a streaky player, but he was literally 100% from the field shooting. So th there was a period, I think, up until the third quarter we hadn't missed. And so it, that's very difficult to maintain. You're talking Absolutely. about maintaining perfection and that focus. Um, is exhausting mentally. It is, and uh, you know, the thing that really works the best against this is long pauses. Like I'll be, I'll be honest. That's why you sometimes see in different sports as well. If one team is very dominant over the other, yeah. the other team will just take timeouts for the sake of taking timeouts to give that guy enough time to cool down yeah. and really just allow for that and small fall, grain of doubt. Yeah, maybe fall out of the zone, fall out yeah, of the flow. Exactly. Absolutely. No, I feel you. I so. So PsyOps, the men who stare at goats, we could have some mind games going on here, Renaz, as well. Just it's, waiting. Look, it's it's a huge part of any game, really, when it, when it comes to, you know, especially getting to a point where you get to grand finals. Mind games is definitely something that you want to do, and that's why you see these plays where, when, you know, yep. players go for super flashy dunks, the shortest guy going for dunks, and you're <laughs> like, how is this even happening to me? Impossible! And just, if they get you upset... 
they are already winning mentally, and that's that's another battle to and, win. And so again, I, I'm not putting it all on his shoulders at all. But of course, um, I, uh, I Cody uh, Digo, he had. Um, a couple of opportunities there to drop in threes and it's so hard to uh, you're focusing non-stop which is exhausting okay but then like the shots come to you, you might only get two threes the entire game to yeah. be to be on the money right there where your team needs you is difficult but this is this is what the grand finals are all about you're chasing perfection you know you're chasing that trophy the silverware um so you've just got to be i guess ready it's easier said than done a lot easier from the <laughs> yeah you're just gonna guess. be ready right just be ready to be perfect <laughs> at a moment's notice if you don't mind but um well, we're going to find out soon enough as well. I believe the game is on the way here, so let's find out. Can Argentina take it home again and become the two-time champion in FIBA Esports Open 2? Or can Uruguay do something about it right now? Okay, I don't know we're going to have another poll. Who knows, right? But it was very, very tight. Uh, and chat was right. right. Well, if you convert the points to the poll, it's probably uh, same as it was this time around. Oh, wow. We've got it. They're, they're, they've doubled up here. Chat believe that Argentina, 69% of chat believe Argentina are going to get the win in game two here. So they are liking what they saw there from Truly Numb. I you don't know. know. It's it's still a bit of a too close of a point gap for me to be a believer like that. But we'll just have to wait and see here. And uh, it looks as though we've got uh, just reverse colors here. It's going to be Argentina in the white. Yeah. And then Uruguay in the dark. Just just to help us confuse ourselves yeah. here. Truly Numb with the jump shot, though, opens things up for Argentina. Two to nothing so far. And, of course, that little dot next to the scoreline indicates they are one game up in this best of three. So if Argentina win this game, they become the two-time champs of the South America Conference. And Uruguay are going to try to do their best to prevent that from happening and to take a win. First time being on the international stage and perhaps becoming the first can, can I just, I, country I feel, here as well. I feel like the digital, uh, the virtual stadium got a little bigger as well. Can I just it? Does it look like it's a rec center anymore? Looks like it's a bona fide proper arena as well. I, that, if that is in fact the case, and maybe I'm just absent minded and didn't notice <laughs> earlier, but prop sends a 2K as well for upping their game. That's really awesome. I'm sorry if I didn't notice the stadium. Oh, what a three-pointer oh. coming up from Certified Juan. Let's open things up for Uruguay here. Three against five. Great three. work there from Certified. That's what you need to do. We put, we mentioned it as we see another massive drive dribbling too much with the big dunkaroo right there. But Certified needs to step up. He really does. You know, because he's amazing. He's, a, he's an incredible player. Yep. We're going to give it over to Robinho now. Back over to Certified. The player's on the ground. You can easily play two against one. Instead, it goes for a jump shot there still. So, obviously, high percentage yeah, shot. Working it open, that's fine. And he's always going to stroke a green there. A crazy skilled player. And again, we weren't singling him out. It's just that we know how good he is. And if he steps up and has a kind of truly numb type performance, well, you know, his I team... just noticed what truly numb's number is on the jersey as well. And then I thought about the performance, if you take a look. Uh... You know, staying true to the number, I suppose. Yep, absolutely. MJ and LeBron. <laughs> Lamo dribbling too much with a far three-pointer after that dunk. Not going to be happening this time around. It's two points still between the two. Certified. Pass over to Rubinho. Oh, my God, that actually connected. Brilliant. That is the team play we want to see here from Uruguay. Those types of plays are exactly what they need to surprise Argentina. And to continuously score here, truly numb. This misses. time, misses. Okay, rare bounces miss. Bounces out. Certified again on the three-point line. Nicholas was in his position to take the three. Still is. Fake pump. Rubinho comes in to help out. Yeah. Six seconds. They really need to make a move oh. here. Instead, it's going to be a steal happening for Argentina. It's going to be truly numb on the. Close to the basket, is then backs out and is going to be dribbling too much with a three-pointer here. So well played, so calm right there. That was fantastic. 
I mean, obviously it, it works out for them this time around. And now Nicholas doesn't go for two. Pulls up. Certified oh. just trying to work it. Got to watch that three seconds. Oh, I would have liked to see the pass there. Rubinho had the seal. There it is this time. Just going to put that in. No. Yeah. No. Go back up. Oh, Nicholas, come on. Give us a three at least. <laughs> They're Rubinho gonna... coming in to help out here with a screen play. Not going to be good enough as Reese Romero gets that interception. Mid pass. Big. And Lottie with a huge dunk to finish things off, extending Argentina's lead to five. Big dunk right there. That was amazing. Looked like he got about 14 feet in the air right there. Huge dunk from Lottie. You love it. Grand final dunk. Okay, here comes Certified now. Working himself open and oh, just missing. There we go. Here comes Truly Numb. I got to tell you, it feels like Argentina just playing with so much confidence right here. Look at that. Absolutely. Go straight flying again and now extending the lead to seven. Yeah. With, right now with they've, the doubled, only... they've doubled Uruguay early on in this one. Exactly. And a single minute still remaining here in the first quarter. Certified again with the help of Rubinho. Rubinho asking for a pass there. You can see the help defense from Lamo though, waiting for it there. I think you just got to try and work something in the post here. Back out to certified. Has to shoot. One second. Pass to Rubinho. Quick shot. Great work right there. That was much, much needed by Rubinho. That's I don't know. I, I... Well, hey, they all count, though. They needed a yeah. bucket, and they got one. Look, that was way too close for comfort in my books. Just shows you, though, this Argentinian defense making them really work for a simple two-pointer. Great work defensively there. Illegal screen. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't count. Okay. So here we go. You're going to have a chance here to just put a couple of plays together back-to-back -to -back offensively. Good defensive stand right there playing. Great D. And and you gotta you got to make a statement here. you got to get another bucket just to show that you belong. Because, honestly, Argentina just seem to be playing with so much confidence right now. There you go. Certified. That's Perfect. the three. Breaks the double-digit line as well. Only two points between these two. And with eight seconds remaining here, Truly Numb is going to be looking to see if he can extend that lead a bit further on. Two seconds on the clock. Wide Long three-pointer. Not going to be good. Ramiro gets the rebound. Almost gets it in as well, but not this time around. 14 to 12. Okay, so we were asking pre-game or a quarter in, can Truly Numb keep up that pace? Uh, that was a little bit of a shocking miss for him. Even though it was from halfway, he makes that look easy all the time. Yep, but that doesn't give any right for Uruguay to relax here. The fact that Trulinam is not scoring as he did in this first game doesn't mean he can't again fire it up. And it's going to be Ramiro. No, the ball is going to be stolen out of his hands. Santi already on the other side of the court, ready to take a pass. But it's going to be reach and foul here from Argentina. I got to tell you, I am super impressed here with Uruguay uh, just Absolutely. scrapping it out here because they, uh, look, their backs are against the wall when you're down 14 to 7. They've scored now five straight. Their defense is outstanding. Certified, putting up a good shot right there. Rubinho drawing another foul. I feel like that was a bit forced. Rubinho was ready to take a pass any time of the day, dear. Certified had two people on him. There we go. You there we go. Ramiro now doesn't feel comfortable with where where uh, Rubinho is. Ico sort of open. There we go. That's going to be the corner three. And, and it's good. Rattles it home and takes the lead. That is fantastic for their confidence right there. Uruguay now with the lead. Right when Argentina was starting to pull away. And now Argentina need to answer with some points of their own. Now that's going to be truly numb, of course, to respond here. Quick jump shot. 16 to 15, single point lead over back to Argentina. My favorite kind of lead, by the Rubinho way. Rubinho with the drive. There we go. Great move. Got the go. Oh, he got it back, though. Look at the hustle from the big man. Oh, now stuck on the three point line. Someone needs to come in here. Yeah. Six seconds to shoot, though. He's got to make something happen, certified. I call. Big Bam. dunk. And once again, we are. This is why I love these one point leads. Now we're going to seesaw. I love it. Now Argentina need to answer with some points of their own again. And there's Numb with a beautiful layup. You can't give him that much space. Absolutely. Okay, full court pressure here from Argentina. They are going to really make Uruguay earn this. Uruguay, though, just, just pumping the brakes a tiny bit. Good pass here to Rubinho. And another 
Really high percentage bucket right there. Fantastic stuff. I love it. The Second. lead is changing with every possession. This is fantastic grand final football here. FIBA Esports Open 2, South American Conference, corner three, missed. Rubinho has activated his takeover. He's on fire. Yeah, Lamo, wishful thinking with that three, but you don't get to see him shoot those too many times, not at least during these grand final games. Rubinho asking for a pass here, looking to see if he can perhaps get Lottie off of Certified. Instead, Certified has the chance to go for the three. Slightly over again on the release, and it's going to be Argentina's ball here, but Ooh. Uruguay has plenty of time to return back here. Even Rubinho comes in out. That's going to be a reach and foul. That is from Aiko. There is truly numb. Ten seconds to shoot here, coming down to two minutes left in the first half. Grand final that was number out two. Of there we go. Out of bounds. Uruguay just turning up the defensive pressure here. Slow cooking the Argentinians. Let's see what they can do offensively now. Two players activated. Looking impressive. You can see truly numb being mindful of the fact that Nicholas is a threat on that three-point line. And that leaves certified open to make a play together with Rubinho. Wow. I mean, this duo. Yeah, phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. We're just we're speechless here on the Coster desk. This is this is special because they are. Fantastic quick cut there. They are well and truly up against it here at Uruguay in this game. Down early seven to Argentina. And now, look, they've clawed back. They've still got a lead and a possession. Phenomenal stuff right here. What can they do? Minute 20 left. Wide open, Rubinho. I was about to say, Ramiro was slightly late on the return there. Truly numb with the reach and foul. Got to be getting close to bonus, I would have thought. Maybe yeah. I'm losing track. I think, uh, they think it's going to be on the next one there. Yeah, and here we go. So certified, 10 to shoot here. Great looking shot. Not good enough, but the rebound is good, of course, as Rubinho, very valuable two points. Three-point lead now here as well. So truly numb has not been as much of a factor here in this game as he was in number one. And he has missed a couple of shots as well. Uruguay might have his number this game. This is, is it the pause or is it the nerves? It's going to be the dunk from Rubinho again to extend the lead to five here for wow. Uruguay with 50 seconds remaining before halftime. And that has to be a bit of a sinking feeling right now in the guts of Argentina. Yep. Looking back at that first game, Ramiro was open for a pass. Instead, it's going to be Lamo again from the three-point corner, uh, left-hand side corner. And now Ramiro does get the layup eventually. Great rebound. In the nick of time as yeah. well. Still three points between the two. Yep. It Great. is Uruguay's ball. Great board. If you're, you've got to be ready for that corner shot if you're the corner shooters. It's grand finals time. There's no excuses. you got to make them. But really great boards from the big man there and a, and a quick bucket keeps them in touch here. Look at, look at him go here. Fantastic from certified. And now, you know, truly numb. Has to step up here. Probably going to try and take the final shot of the half. That's a nice bucket right there. Play full court defense if you're Argentina. Try get this back. Look at them hustle. Good outlet pass, though. I feel like there's a breakdown maybe there for Argentina. Ten seconds before halftime. Nicolas again was open for a brief moment here. Five seconds on the clock. Will Certified go for three, or is it going to be a drive play here? It's going to be Robinho. A very even game on our hands. 27 <laughs> to 24 in the second game in this best of three grand final oh, yeah. for South America's conference winner's title. Oh, yeah. It's all on the line here. And Argentina get the ball here, which is good. But I got to tell you, I'm feeling like Uruguay have this. It's just something in the air as they find an open man, though. And that is a great way to start the second half if you're Argentina. Dribbling too much. Second time around on the three-point attempt. It's got to be good. Nicholas here as well is going to be stopped on the three-point line. So Uruguay can't respond quickly here. Rubinho open for a pass if needed. Ramiro again slightly late on the return in the defensive zone. It's going to be a pass over to Aiko in the corner. Still Uruguay's ball. Way to get a hand in the passing lane right there. That's critical because now they've got to inbound the ball with seven seconds left. Kills the flow. Um, and, and now... 
just trying to work something here at Uruguay. No better man for it than him, by the way. Oh, wow. it rattles in. That is a huge three-pointer to take home oh. for Uruguay in the third quarter here. Four minutes and ten seconds on the clock. Can truly now find the correct pace together with Ramiro. That is the dangerous duo at hand at play here again. Finally, we see an alley -oop from them as a duo. It's definitely been the, cer the certified Robinho show in this one so far. Truly numb and uh, Ramiro. Wow! Another big three. Certified just with a quick sidestep to the right. Finds that little bit of momentum that he needed for and that a steal. Three. And a huge steal comes through for certified breakaway play. A huge dunk to finish it off and. The lead is even further now, so up by six points, Uruguay. Wow, that was phenomenal defense. They timed that steal so well, truly numb, very difficult to rob. And they managed to get it as we see a good drive. Clean block. Gotta knock this in. Lamo, why the fake pump? Nobody I, was there. I have no idea. The nerves may be getting to Argentina here. Honestly, you've got to take that shot. Absolutely. 35-29, three minutes, 11 left in the third here. FIBA Esports open to South American Grand Final game number two, best of three series. Uruguay trying to send it to a third deciding game. And they have their backs against the wall here. Argentina is one game up. Nicolas pass over to Ico. Again, I'm still... Six I'm seconds to shoot here for Uruguay. Listen, if you're Argentina, Every possession counts. I'm with you. I don't know why they passed up on an open three. Now all they can do is play what's in front of them, which is get a stop right here. Certified. Oh, oh my no God. Way. If, that, oh, yeah. It's just way too close as well to make that shot. A contested one at that. Truly numb on the three-point line this time around. Two players to his name. I, <laughs> three. Three defenders with him, big dunk. That's what you need. That looked like a foul as well, but that's exactly what the doctor ordered there. Argentina just needs to start getting some buckets, okay? No more empty possessions. Certified is still on fire. Good transition bucket right there. Nicholas. Oh, wow. I thought that was in for all. Absolutely. Money. I think everyone thought that's going to go through, but instead, again, Uruguay. Don't have an answer for Argentina right now. Yes, they're in the lead, but it's a oh. dangerous one. A nice steal comes through. Long pass over to Certified. Easy two-pointer layup. Wow. And I got to tell you, it feels like the pressure is getting to all of the players. The superstars on both teams are making mistakes, but Uruguay is just making a few less mistakes. It's not been... Another steal! It's not been a perfect Santi game. Santi wide open to dunk it home. And Uruguay to extend the lead even further. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. That's another turnover. What is happening here? The th third steal in a row. This Big time block. around, Ramiro comes in with a huge block. Big block right there. Eight-point lead for Uruguay right now. This is not something that Argentina going to feel comfortable with no. if it extends any further. And it, it's an incredibly significant eight points given the low-scoring nature of the game. It Absolutely. feels like it could be 20 points in a different game right now. They are really scrapping here, Uruguay. They've got Argentina out of their comfort zone. There's green from the corner. Wow. Now, Argentina, it's it's really, even though it's the third and we've got a ton of time left, there is... They're, it's really vital that they start to get some some scoring possessions. For the first time ever in the Grand Finals, Uruguay were up by a double-digit lead, which very quickly was narrowed down now by Lamo, who did finally take that three-point shot there and made go. it happen. Good things happen when Lamo shoots, right? It's just got to take a few more, especially if they're open. You know, that's a good reach-in foul. I don't, I don't dislike that at all. I think you've no, got to chance your arm right there. But yeah, this is uh, this is big now. Eight point lead. Good defense here so far from Argentina. Good dribble as well. Absolutely clean three to take wow. it back to two digits. Eleven point lead here for Uruguay and Argentina just don't have an answer in this game for the certified Robinho show. Amazing stuff. Truly numb as well. Seems to be has just really slowed down here. Ramiro doesn't get the dunk through. The rebound falls straight in the hands of certified. Too much time though here for. Argentina to return back. So Uruguay can't really make a 
fast breakaway play out of this this time around just running down the clock to the last few seconds not really wanting to give anything back here yeah he's gonna go for a shot at the last second and obviously as the third quarter is closing oh, oh get out of oh. town get out of town it looks as though we're going to a game three i gotta tell you argentina just look as though they've had their souls ripped out of them here by uruguay in this one they are next level performing here uruguay one second left and santi with the fadeaway doesn't get it fourth quarter about to begin and i just can't see i can't see argentina taking the lead you know uruguay i, I can't see them you losing know, the lead that's the thing yeah just wait and see until they activate all of their five players and <laughs> then what's going to happen obviously so we have what could be potentially the last five minutes in the South America Conference on the line here. Can Argentina dig deep and find their way back into this game to overcome the 14-point lead that Uruguay has obtained and to secure their two-time champion title? Or will, will it be Uruguay that's going to take it away to game number three in an absolute nail-biter of a finals? And it's going to be Rubinho to slam it home an extended lead to 16, if I'm not mistaken. This is all about the, all about above the shoulders right here. This is all mental. It really is. You're seeing Argentinian players who would drop in those open threes nine, 99 times out of 100, you know, and, and, and just missing. Uruguay, on the other hand, are, are just playing out of their mind. Look at this. That alley -oop actually connects there it feels like certified Rubinho are on a bit of a different page right now they are they they are next level honestly I we might we I if I were to pick an MVP right now I'd have to give it to both of them can yeah you, two two Tissot watches is that even the thing I don't know sorry sorry fever and Tissot <laughs> can, can one get the band and the other to watch face I don't know, yeah but um really phenomenal stuff Argentina have a mountain to climb look at the defense Whoa, what a block and Long look, pass over, nobody there to defend it. Gets the easy two through as well. It's over. It's over. Uh, we're going to game three. And Argentina very, very quickly need to hit the reset button here. Absolutely. Like, look, they need to rack up those points fast. They need to stop losing the ball three times in a row by steals. And it's Ramiro absolutely cannot be left open like this. Why was Rubinho not there? They were so afraid of truly numb to of doing something in that situation. So instead they just left Ramiro open, but I mean, look, let's be real here for a second. If you're looking at duo plays, that's none yeah. of the two are the ones you want to leave open here. Rubinho yeah. is going to lose the ball and it's going to be a steal for Argentina. Lottie on a three-point line, fake, pump it, fake pumps it. Two players for open. Argentina were open. Underneath the No hoop. play happening as well here. Reaching foul to slow down the play. 14 seconds on the shot clock here. Argentina desperately trying to find a way back into this. Truly numb on the three-point line. Over to Lamo from the right corner. It's not going to be any good. They're just, uh, listen, it's an unenviable situation. I, I really feel like they're just in their own heads right now. And hopefully they hit the reset button. That's a great, great. Oh, they're going to call that. That's a blocking that. foul. Wow. Ref. Ref. I guess he was moving just a little bit. But look, they've got to hit the reset button. They've got to come back in game three and just know that they can make those shots. That's what they need to tell themselves. Take the time. I love it. It's an expression you use. Take the time to hit that shot, right? And that's exactly what Santi does yeah. from the right-hand side corner there. Puts up a three-pointer, 57 to 38 here. Yeah. And I mean, it starts to feel like that Argentina has a mountain to climb at this stage. This is no little hill. Yeah. They this truly is have tough. a problem. They're, look, they're sharpshooters who, again, are fantastic players, are missing. It, they're just in, they're not in, they're in their own heads right now. They're not in the flow. You've just got to finish strong in this one and start thinking psychologically about game three and getting ready to reset. Wipe the slate clean. You know you can win. Big dunk right there. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. My eyes are wide open looking at that happening. I mean, it, it, it looked so fast. And look, the two players are on fire right now. There Argentina. were several players from Uruguay flexing after that dunk. And you know what, young man? Flex away because that was incredible. Well earned. Absolutely gets all the good stuff to his name a very difficult shot to take and now 
going to be truly numb on the free throw line, obviously. Well, we get our wish, I though. I would be surprised if we if, if he misses this. Oh, okay. He's going to drop them both in. This is this is truly numb. He, he's I told you something tells me about that third game. Yeah, right? I was going to say, we go, oh, he's got three threes. That's great. Um, look, we wanted a third game anyway. Well, it's not <laughs> there yet. There's still a minute and 50 in play here. And, I mean, if, for example, Argentina again can pull off those... Uh, steals same as Uruguay was able to do. There is there no, might be a chance, but there's no way that they're gonna let this lead slip away. They are well and truly in the zone, in the flow. I don't know. I don't know. I feel how, like truly is looking for a three pointer here. Definitely. I don't know how you kind of um, how you reset mentally like that. It is difficult as Lamo does drop one in. That's good. That's great for your confidence if you're Argentina. You've been throwing up bricks this second half, but that one is green. That's what you got to hang your hat on at the end of the day and go into the game three saying, you know what? I made that last three. I'm going to make the next one and the one after that and the one after that. Sianti here able to spy and Uruguay are up by 20 points over Argentina in the second game. And Which like... Let Let's let that comment sink in for a moment. 20 points. On Argentina, who just beat them very convincingly. Only by six. Yeah, well, yeah, except it was the truly numb show. It's very, very, it's a, it's a statement game for Uruguay. I tell you what, no matter what goes down in game three, we have seen in the, in the South American Conference, FIBA Esport Open 2, we have seen now that there are five really great teams. And there's even more to come. And Santi continuously left open in the left-hand side corner there. You know, two back-to-back three-pointers from him. Do you really want to still leave him open? I'm not <laughs> too sure here. 50 seconds on the clock, fourth quarter on the way. 13 seconds on the shot clock. And Romero to nail it through. Argentina are in the bonus here as well. So Uruguay can't really make that many fouls. Gotta... Really, there's no need to do so yeah. right now. You just need to allow... For the time to run down. That's even <laughs> going to be a three-pointer that Certified puts up. Oh, my God. I'm, OMG. I'm, this is like... A, I don't know what to say. It's a memeable performance <laughs> here. It, it's it's absolutely... Oh, my God. Michael Scott Paper Company. It's on fire. This is brilliant. I love it. Dribbling too much over to Truly Numb here. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Can go for an easy throw here. Ooh, that's a difficult position to be in dribbling again with a three-pointer attempt not going to be good enough and with nine seconds remaining here uruguay have done it backs against the wall they take this to game oh! number three huge three-pointer really to just have that you know final saying oh in this game God. truly numb over to dribbling and it's not happening here uruguay take it back in look, a super commanding lead. Look, uh, to quote uh, a very, very famous European, because we are in Europe, uh, Borat is nice, because that was very, very nice very right nice, there. Absolutely. Very nice, Two thumbs up. Um, I absolutely love that performance from Uruguay there. The mental fortitude to come back after the Erlen game one and execute like that. And it really just feels as though, again... When it comes to teams of this caliber and this level, 15-point spread is nothing. Okay, so it's here. It's five threes, and they had more than five missed threes. It's crazy. So here's what uh, Uruguay needs to do now in this best of three, okay? So you, you lost the first game. You came in second and got a super convincing win. The biggest problem that Argentina can have right now, if you come into game number three and you still very you very early on obtain, I would say probably should be enough with between five to ten point lead and just hold on to that lead till like the third quarter if possible, if, if possible, right? That's going to give so much pressure on Argentina's shoulders that yep. you're almost guaranteeing yourself a win there, just psychologically alone. Absolutely. They did great right now, stopping Truly Numb. Truly Numb as well wasn't going for those fast breakaway yep. plays in yep. paint. Yep. So that was one thing that was gone. Second thing as well, he didn't do that much work in the dribbling department and with those sidesteps with the three-point open yep. lanes. Well, they defended so, a lot better yes. as well. They made they made his life a real kind of hell there. Look, it, it really is a story of 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 kind of the the duos right there. Okay, yeah. so truly non Ramiro and then certified Rubinho, and that one right there was the certified Rubinho show. They Absolutely. really stepped up. Rubinho, I mean, he's been huge for Uruguay and in then, general with together with certified. And and then the un you're, you're absolutely right. But then the unenviable position of being a corner shooter who you might wait. 
three quarters before you get your opportunity. But when you do, you've just got to be money, you know. And if you get if you get a second and a third, you better hit them as of well. Of course. And so, like that ends up being the difference. It's um, it's I think it's the top. It's it's the shoulders up. It really is the top six inches here. And um, it's it's very very interesting. And still, there's a huge trophy on the line here for for there all of these teams really here. So <laughs> you know, the the question remains open. Really, it's down to a single game. It is, and I love this trophy. By the way, obviously, this is a digital rendition of the trophy. Oh, really? I can um, tell. Yeah, you can tell, but they're floating <laughs> between us right there. But a real trophy is going to be going home to the champion of here of the South American Conference FIBA Esport Open 2. And going... look, and in terms of picking an MVP player who's going to get that Tissot watch, I... I really have a problem right now because... Like, look, when I it really know, matters I, the most, there are so many people that are performing can we, to can just we get crazy from production? Levels. Can we get uh, maybe from production and maybe from FIBA? I mean, if we can't pick one MVP and we pick a duo, are, are there two watches? No joke. I doubt. We, I don't we, think we, so. We're being we, told we'll, we'll no. Have, we'll have so we to have to pick decide, one. Yeah. So, look, no matter who we pick, it, it's not just the two of us. Uh, Artis, uh, uh, our, our third uh, co-host as well. Um, look, whoever it is... Uh, I'm really sorry to whoever gets left out. But look, we're, we're hey, going to find is, out soon enough. We, we have to make a choice here anyways. But look, the plays do speak for themselves here as well. It's not like um, it's not clear you for anyone what? who might get it you from either country here. Could we maybe ask chat for a little bit of help, please? Maybe could you start Could you start uh, spamming spamming in chat who you think the MVP is? Give yep. our mods a hard time. Give us the player name and the country flag. Copy and paste a million times over. Spam the chat. Sorry, mods, you live. Don't worry. Let <laughs> us know because we need help picking this MVP. Yeah, I mean, I'm very curious, obviously, who is the fan favorite. I, I'm, I have a suspicion it might still be truly numb on Argentina's side just and off of that first game performance, but... We, and, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. And so. you know, uh, just before we go to the matchup screen here, you know that I am the Joker uh, on, on the casting desk yeah. as well. And this is going to be my, my last chance to mention him, unless maybe Jeff in Jeff's corner brings him up as well. Um, I want to give a shout out to um, the real MVP of the South American Conference, and that is uh, the captain of Venezuela, uh, El Kiko's dog, Woody. He's definitely stolen our hearts and our imaginations here. Woody for MVP. I don't yes. think this, I don't think Tiss ought to do we'll uh, a dog biscuit watches. Any soon. Let's have a look at the lineups. There we okay. go. Okay, so uh, there is a switch happening here on uh, Argentina's side. So Lamo is going to be left on the sidelines this time around for that third game, and Tigso is going to come in to replace him. Okay, absolutely. And then, um, look, the names speak for themselves. It's Ramiro, truly numb, dribbling too much. Yep. Uh, Laudy Rodriguez. Um, and as you said, uh, Tigzo coming in, um, you know, it, it's a team sport. And occasionally, you know, you've got to make the hard choices. Maybe you feel as though one player gives you a slightly better advantage at the win right there. And um, I, I want to commend Argentina for making the tough decision in that regard because <laughs> – there's, there's no game four, right? And look, um, uh, Tigzo as well here mentioned in his player sheet that last time around his his family, his father, his father, mother, and brother were looking at the match against Brazil just a few meters away, and he could hear them uh, celebrate <laughs> with every single basket they got, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same this time around. Hopefully that is enough of encouragement that he needs, obviously yeah. as well being a young player, only 17 years of age here. That is a look at the huge ages. response responsibility on the shoulders look at the ages and if you are inspired we'll run through Uruguay in just a moment but if you are if, if you are a young aspiring e-athlete look at these ages be pumped be inspired you know FIBA eSport Open 2 action we increased from 17 countries that participated in FIBA eSport Open 1 to 36 every single continent on the planet represented by a conference here FIBA working uh, with 2k to make this possible and these these national basketball federations putting the building blocks in place to also make it possible. Now let's give Uruguay their just deserves as well. Certified Juan Ma, absolutely devastating from beyond the arc. And his partner in crime. They really are Batman and Robin in that last game right there. Rubinho doing amazing things. Uh, uh, Nicholas as well. Uh, if, if he catches and he's open, he's going to knock it in. Santi! Christmas coming early for everybody. I'm sorry about the puns, but really fantastic. He has the amazing threes. And then uh, Icodigo, again, also a sharpshooter there for a power forward. 
pretty impressive stuff. Um, we have a very, very exciting game coming up here. And it, you, you, you know what? We have, we're being told something exciting is coming here in chat. Okay, so the poll was... The poll had 70% of you in chat picking Argentina to win game two and run away with the final. And now 55% think Argentina can still do it. But 45% Uruguay. I got to tell you, I feel like Chad is throwing a little bit of shade at Uruguay there. I mean, look, okay. So obviously they're slightly doubting them. And yes, again, on paper, I sort of justified those <laughs> odds. But look, looking back at the last game, I, I'll i be honest, I think... I'm, I was obviously confident that Uruguay were able to secure the win there, but with a close to 30-point lead, that that's a sort of a bit of a different statement on that's its own. That's what I'm saying. They, they really pulled you know? on the points. I mean, they made it kind of look easy. Um, I got to tell you, for me, the respectful thing would have been 50-50, <laughs> but I feel as though maybe we have a, a little bit of national bias coming out. Yeah. You look, uh, uh, you know, there is also one small fun <laughs> fact to mention here about Sergio Pajuan, but do you know what that is? Oh, my God. Lay it on me. Well, he says that when he was very young, that he didn't even like basketball. <laughs> Don't you find it kind of ironic yeah, yeah, that I he do. currently, I you know, is representing his country? And if, if to his little self, someone would have been able to tell right? him, like, well, one day you'll be playing basketball for <laughs> your country. And he would have been like, eh, no, nah. I'm good. I'm <laughs> yeah. good. I'll stick with my Lego blocks. Right. Well, but now he's playing for the country and it's awesome. For a chance to actually be called a champion in NBA 2K here in FIBA Esports Open 2 to get that trophy home, to get it over to Uruguay. Again, this country, the first time on the international stage here. A lot of pride is on the line here. I'm pretty sure that everyone's family friends and close acquaintances are following oh, this oh, match as, look, they, as as closely as the, we are. The entire country is tuned in. Absolutely. Um, absolutely phenomenal stuff. I believe that thousands are watching and thousands will watch the replay as well. We have an exciting concluding game three. It's sad it's going to be over, Renaz. I'm it getting is, pumped. It is going to be the third and final decider match. This is it. No way to take a step back. A single game between Argentina and Uruguay for the title of the South America Conference Championship title. Here we go from the beautiful cobbled streets of Carmelo in Uruguay to the hustle and bustle of Montevideo, their capital. The entire country is behind them here. Can they get it done? Or will it be Argentina striking back after winning game one, Uruguay tying game two, the jump ball here in the deciding game three, everything to play for. It's going to be huge. And every single possession is going to be of the utmost importance here a single game to either side here, and truly none with a fast drive, breakaway play. The layup is not good, and it's going to be Rubinho to retain position here in favor of Uruguay. Can Uruguay open things up now? It's going to be certified to do exactly the same, and it doesn't play out here. Rubinho forced to move out to that three-point line, a certified Juanma back to Rubinho, and a huge slam to Ooh. open it up. And they draw first blood here, Uruguay, with a fantastic dunk with authority right there we've only got four quarters left here of the south american conference i'm a little bit sad Renaz, but i'm excited as well let's see what can happen here between these two what well, what are right now truly earned their titles as the oh. titans of their conference and truly numb with that Juicy clean three. Oh, yeah. If that is not a dangerous preview of what's yet to come here, I don't know what is, but not unless Aiko can return the favor back from the left corner. Oh, my God. Aiko coming out as well. Sharp shooting from the corner. This is phenomenal. We are getting the best of both. There's Tig. Oh, he's the replacement, and he misses his first shot. That's okay. It's just the first shot. Just, just a warm-up. Just, just the, the warm-up. That's okay. Oh, here we Three go. minutes and 40 seconds still in the first quarter here. Good Rubinho hand stopped. off. Good hand off there. They're just working with that pick and roll game. Certified such great defense right here. So hard to stick to him like glue, but they're managing it right now. One to shoot. Tough shot. It's an air ball. 
And that, you know, you have done your job defensively when you nearly force the shot clock violation and an air ball from certified. Yep. That is phenomenal defense there from Argentina. And that was a very clean play at that as well. I believe that was Lottie there. It was able to do that. Truly enough on the three-point line. Pass over to Lottie into the corner. Not good, but Ramiro oh. with the rebound. Gives the pass straight to Uruguay. Certified on the three-point line. Three defensive players around him. Of course, a personal foul happens when there's yeah. that, then, that many hands in play in a yeah. single ball. And a good foul as well because there are a couple of open sharpshooters right there. So I think they, they did the right thing. Look at the trap here. Robinho... I thought he might think about driving right there. You never know. Hard to stop a big man with momentum. Could have gone for it. He is in prime position to get the rebound if needed, but it's not. As another three will fall through for Uruguay and very early on, a five-point lead here. And this is what I was talking about. Get an early lead, five to ten points, and just stick to it as to as long as, as long as possible. Just leave a maximum amount of pressure on Argentina's shoulders. Yes, they were able to respond with two right now, but not unless Robinho can do something about it. Aiko in the corner ready to do make a shot as well, but it's going to be stopped. Look at the defense from Argentina there. Great. Instantly two people to yeah. whoever touches the ball. Yeah, Shortly, great. Uruguay can find a way how to use this, yeah. and they do as Rubinho slams it home. You called it. It is so hard to maintain that tempo and that discipline defensively, and, and a good team will just wait patiently until they find the open man, which is exactly what they did. Truly numb drops in three. Oh, he's back, Renards. He's back. That's We're getting game one truly numb here. He's already got six points on the board looking good out there it's a tight game here nicholas Uruguay. open for a moment there could have gone for a pass there it is to over the to santi really good defensive rotation great passing across the baseline here pulling up low percentage shot great defense there from argentina and a chance to potentially tie or take the lead right here truly numb with the great crossover they're trying to trap him right there Really good defense from both both teams here. Good job running down the clock so far. And you can see they don't want to allow Truly Numb to pass them, but it still finds his timing I, for it. I love the little man dunks, man. They look so cool. They just fly to the hoop right there. Looking really, really good. And it's kind of interesting. Like the, the other side of the ball, Argentina are really going kind of like a man-on-man, -man, nearly zone, but obviously a two-pointer there. For certified obviously that is that is no small task keeping up with certified defensively absolutely here truly numb again is going to be looking to see if he can perhaps make a breakaway play happen santi tries to stop him rubinho moves out of way but santi is able to return back instead it's going to be ramiro to pick up the ball mid-air and that get was that dunk an absolutely epic alley-oop right there and this is the final game we wanted. It's tied up at 12 apiece. Another tight, a tight affair right here as we see a drive, but a great board from Rubinho. Doesn't want to put that back though. They're going to reset the offense right here. Nicholas is open. No Rotating, pass. Rotating over there. Only 20 seconds left here. Three to shoot, two. Has to pull the trigger. He's open, though. Oh, it's green as well. He gets the three-pointer through in motion. 15 to 12. 15 seconds on the shot on the clock here before the first quarter runs out. Truly numb. Close to that center line. Doesn't have a lot of time to work with here. Six seconds remaining. Lane open for him. So many block attempts going through, and it's not happening as Tiggs now trying to pick up the slack. Doesn't get it through. Couple of misses at the end there for Argentina, but I think that both teams will be pretty happy with that first quarter performance right there. Nobody pulling away with it early. Both of them making some really nice plays. You can't fall asleep though. Ooh. Rubinho coming down with that nice alley oop right there. Not quite sure what happened defensively, Argentina, but I'm sure they'll get it fixed. And now it's truly not. You know what's the first here though? Uruguay able to hold on to that lead for the full quarter time. Yeah. That's actually a really good point. As we draw a foul, oh, nearly rattled in right there. We got the big man right here. Ramiro early on kind of reminded me of a Napoleon Dynamite type uh, looking player model right there. But um, I tell you what, he has he's earned the right to be called Ramiro. That's for sure. Outstanding work. And he drops in both free throws. And now here we go. Uruguay to see can they build on this lead Nicholas already has one big three in the game. Great defense here from Argentina, though, forcing the turnover. What can they do? They want to close this lead, if not tie it up right here. 
Tries to give it to Rubinho. It said it's going to be truly numb now in possession of the ball. Ten seconds on the shot clock here. Needs something. And he finds Tiggs wide open. And Tiggs gets the 3-2. That was awesome. Awesome. He missed his first. Missed his first. Got the second. That's really what matters because the scoreline is even out here in the second quarter. And that's exactly what you want to have right before halftime. You know, a lot of... A lot of hope is riding on that momentum. Ico from the right-hand side corner, not good. Ramiro gets the rebound, holds on to it as well, making sure no shenanigans can happen quickly here. Truly Nam is going to be greeted by both Rubinho and Santi. And I, I like that shot from Ico. I think if you're confident, it's a great cut right there, dribbling too no! much. Really good defense from Uruguay, though. He tries to get the quick steal back. More of a frustration foul. Yeah. Look, Ico pulling the trigger on that shot right there. I like it if you're feeling confident as well. There's not a problem with that. Absolutely. And look at Certified's breakaway <laughs> player there. Takes the ball, and he's like, you know what? I'm just not going to yeah. stop and see what's yeah. happened. Yeah. Like, why not? There, it just comes a point where they hadn't had a bucket in a few possessions there, um, and, and Argentina asking all kinds of questions. Just take the quick drive. Uh, take the quick bucket if you can get your hands on it. Obviously. Guaranteed points is the name of the game yeah. here any time of day, especially when it comes to the matter of being in the last game of the South America Conference for the winner's title. Rubinho, a difficult contested shot to make, but it's Santi there to get the rebound. Rubinho is open at least. Sure, he can't take that three-pointer, but he can still give time to his team to work with here. Over to Juanma with seven seconds remaining. Three defensive players, right-hand side court play, back into the hands of Juanma. Klopp, close and personal. Santi from the corner. That is two, three. Oh, it's a three. That looked for all the money in the world like he was on the line but the refs are going to pay it Santi drops in the three clutch defense from Argentina but Uruguay holding on to find the open man and to hit that shot right there truly numb with the drive and a great block there huge block long pass over to certified up close and personal decides to hold it out feel like he could have played it uh, till the end there over to Rubinho and he'll probably just hand it off here just resetting Resetting the offense, but he's got to get a move on here. Only seven to shoot right here. Working working to get open, two to shoot. Has to pull the trigger. Good contested shot. Great board from Rubinho. Quick put back. And just like that, a five-point lead for Uruguay here. And a huge commitment to Rubinho as well. Very mindful of that three-second timer in his head. Being in that position as well, I feel like that was in the nick of time uh, to avoid any sort of fouls in play. And now it's going to be Tiggs with the rebound. Out to dribbling too much on the three-pointer line. Certified is going to be stopped here. Uh, an alley-oop attempt is good, of course, but truly numb slightly too short to get it through. Had the momentum, didn't have the height. Digs from the left-hand side. Horner not going to be good. Has another opportunity to do that. Ten seconds on the shot clock here. Truly numb looking to set up a play. Another block against him. It's still going to be Argentina's ball, but with five seconds to shoot, what can they do here? Yeah, you're probably going to look uh, at a quick pass here, and then the inbound man is going to make a cut uh, to the hoop. Uh, they've only got a, a little bit of time to work with right here. It's going to be truly numb. Trying to work a shot. Got to pull the trigger in the corner. Oh, that, that was way too close. But, I feel like Ramiro uh, there could have make, uh, ma made a play sooner slightly and just really go for that drive look, to take the pass and finishing things off. I think Argentina just need to settle the nerves a little bit. Captain, coach need to step up because Tig Definitely. is the sub. And even though it was a shot clock violation, that was his third miss in a row. These players can perform. They are phenomenal. They've got the skills to pay the bills. They're playing great on defense. They really just need to focus and, and get out of their own heads a little bit and let those shots flow. Uruguay needs to calm down here in the fouling department a bit. Yeah. Getting close to that bonus minute and five seconds remaining before halftime. Truly Numb waits out the jump but can't really do anything as he's... Just a step too far. Goes for his second attempt. Jump shot, not good. Ramiro, why not put it up? Well, I th they're just trying to reset the offense a little bit again. Again, Argentina just in their own heads a tiny bit. Just got to get a little bit of clarity out there. Looking for a shot. Truly numb. Pulls the trigger. Misses. Good board here from Uruguay. Okay. I really I feel like Argentina might be playing themselves here a bit more. See, Rubinho wide open. Yep. Gets the two. And gets it done. Ramiro had a few opportunities beforehand as well, but he never got the ball in hand because, you know, three-pointers for some reason was the main task at hand here. And with 26 seconds remaining before halftime and an air ball like that. Yeah, look, the, the good news is that 
the damage isn't well and truly done here. Seven points Not is nothing when you've got a player like uh, Truly Numb and very capable sharpshooters on your team uh, for Argentina. But what you want to do is just try and finish strong. Last possession of the first half here. Drop a bucket in. Only 10 seconds left. Just finish strong here. Into the corner, Tiggs with five there seconds remaining. Gets he the three that. through. Absolutely four-point difference here. Can Uruguay respond with something before halftime to finish on a good motion? Big alley-oop. Mm. And I think just for his own confidence there and for the confidence of the whole team, I'm so glad, so glad for him that, that takes his three dropped in there. And uh, now they got to play a little bit more defense right here, but they're right back in this. Only a four-point game. Fantastic stuff. Final final half of the South American Conference, Renards. Exactly. Third quarter on its way. Rubinho on the three-point line, slightly stuck in no man's land. Eight seconds to play here, bit of a technical problem seems to be. Let's see how this plays out for Uruguay. Well, Can you know, they score here? When you're uh, when you're when you're a player who's that good, that's how that's how slow the game moves. You know? <laughs> Looks that's very, how you see into yeah, the future. Yeah, exactly. Their matrix, uh, their neo matrix moment right there. Truly numb though. They've got the ball back here, Argentina, trying to work his magic. That's a good look, and he walks away. Because cool guys don't look at explosions. You told yeah, me and that. I mean, look, look, it, it, it's becoming a problem now. Uruguay have uh, failed to respond to at least two baskets from Argentina. Argentina are starting to gain momentum here. It's the third quarter. Yep. And it's a, such a low-scoring game by their standards. This is how cagey an affair we have right here. It's it's fantastic, though. My nerves are, are wrecked. I don't know how the players are doing it. I really don't have so much respect for them. It's, it's absolutely 50-50 in my mind right now. Certified Juanma with that jump shot. And Not who good, else? but Rubinho, of course, with the rebound is there. Second time in a row. Tries to put it up himself. Can't make <laughs> it happen. It's going to be dribbling too much. And Santi actually gets the steal. Instant timeout call because there was no teammate to give oh. the pass to. Too many defensive players around him as well. 26 to 24. And another full, almost full shot clock available for Uruguay to work with here. I can't believe the, the hustle, the heart we're seeing from both teams here. As we get a big alley oop there, Rubinho with those back to back rebounds, and then the steal as well. And now uh, the four point lead reestablished. Absolutely amazing stuff coming out from Uruguay here. Reach and foul as well. And it is going to be Argentina's possession with 18 seconds remaining in the third and final game here for the championship title. Dribbling too much with a very long three, and that is going to be an air ball again. Eichel forced to hold on to the ball a bit longer, and now a fast steal coming through from Truly Numb, but the defense is already back from Uruguay. Fascinating stuff here. Fascinating stuff from Argentina, and now Truly Numb just needs to lead by example. That's a good pass here. Ramiro just setting the uh, offense up. Only five to shoot. A great cut here. Does he have it? He does. Absolutely. Phenomenal, phenomenal work here. Okay, and, and here we see. Oh, okay. I don't I don't hate that foul at all. This is such a low scoring game. It's a one possession game, two points in it in the third quarter. And and certified is such a deadly shooter. I'd rather see you try to pick his pocket than give him an open three. And now just working the top of the key so hard to defend. There's a there's a costly turnover. Tiggs, an absolutely important steal going through straight into his hands as yeah. well. They've got to be close to bonus, by the way. Yeah, Uruguay have, have made quite a few fouls. I, you know, I really should start keeping count. Um, you would think so. Uh, but here comes. Oh! Can he come up? Huge here. Nice look <sighs> on the shot there. Rattles out. I'm devastated for him. I thought that was in. I really, really did. Look, it's still a two-point game here. Everything is up for grabs. Nicolas with a very long three. Usually very precise from that position. But Santi again with the steal two times. Yeah. He's exact been, same fashion. He's been everywhere, hasn't he? Santi doing really great things there. And another turnover here. They're scrapping. 
so hard. I love to see it. I don't think that was a necessary foul at all. Yeah. Got to say, uh, there wasn't anything on there. But look, um, man, you think they want it? This is crazy. Both players really going at it here. And here's Truly Numb, who has another opportunity to either tie it up or take the lead. The defense is phenomenal. He was quiet during oh. the second game. He's oh, going to come up huge here for Argentina to take over the lead by a single point right now with many a minute and 40 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Uruguay still very slow on their responses in the point department and it might look like Argentina are dangerously coming back to life here as another steal happens. This time around it was Lottie back over to Truly Numb. Ramiro was asking for a pass. We've seen great steals from both sides as well, but oh, it's just backwards and forth here. I, I can't watch as Truly Num pulls the trigger again. No way! He's just dropped in back-to-back -back big threes, and that's a four-point lead for Argentina. 117 left in the third. And that's a sinking feeling in your stomach if you're on the side of Uruguay. Even the icicle and next to Juan certified is now as an icicle oh my god that is not the time to get a lolly next to your name you're right absolutely um it's too cold for ice cream right now anyway but look if you're rabino you're putting your hand up and you're saying okay yeah i'm gonna work uh work a basket right here feed it to me that's what they need but you think that ramira doesn't know exactly what's going on all right rabino is wide open there we go great work that is such a clutch leadership bucket i am so impressed with both teams here. The leaders are being challenged to make plays for their country, and they're both st both sets of players stepping up. Truly numb, fakes the breakaway play, still gets the jump shot off. Rare miss, I thought that was money. Absolutely, those are very high percentage shots, and especially for the likes of Truly numb here. Rubinho, though, can go for a dunk, oh. it does exactly that. Doesn't care, there's two defensive players. Does, does not care. Flies over him, and an even score line here as Uruguay even things out. In the third quarter here with half a minute remaining still. Truly numb again looking to set up a play here. Foul and the reach and foul. Gotta be in the bonus. Obviously. There we go. Yeah. But can can we just take a moment there? You're down by four. Rubinho puts his hand up and says, team, I got you. Get on my back. Carries them there. He's going to have sore legs at the end, i got to tell you. It doesn't matter. Give it to him. At this stage, you'll have plenty of time to rest. Yes. Absolutely. As I say, really anything at this point in time at hand, and the only thoughts should be about how to win this game. The cost is insignificant. Leave it all out on the court. Literally, not and figuratively. Just leave it out there. Rubinho will set this up. About a seven-second difference between shot and play clock. They want the final three or... Just kind What's of trying play to here? chew up as much time as possible, but they got to do something soon. Got to pull the trigger here. It's Nicholas off balance. Oh, my word. But they're going to get it back. Here we go. Nicholas, another chance into the corner. That's Santi with a contested three, and oh. it's still not good. 34 to 32, Argentina able to overtake the lead here in the third Massive. quarter. And the very last five minutes in the South America conference in FIBA Esports Open 2 have begun. And with a missed three-pointer, Truly Numb must be shaking his head at that. He's missed a couple here, but honestly, I don't fault any of these players. The nerves must be absolutely insane. What a block! But of course, he gets his own board. Oh my god. Like only certified can, right? Unbelievable. But, oh, we got a turnover! Gotta work some magic right here! Oh, he knew Rubino was coming back to him there. Truly Numb with the, the heads-up play. That's a good timeout as well. Hey! You cannot take your timeouts with you into the locker room after the game. Exactly. So make use of those. And that's also something that, you know, some of the lesser experienced teams might not be utilizing to the max. Truly numb, though. With 13 seconds, still plenty of time. Free throw line. Wide, of course, it's good. Wide open. And he worked it wide open magically there. That was absolutely phenomenal. Here comes Robinho just pulling it up, setting up the offense. And Certified still has the icicle next to his name, so he wants to get rid of that. It means shooting is going to be so difficult. He kind has to. Kind of takes the pressure off. As what? we get another oh. alley-oop miss, though. It doesn't go through. Ramiro did just enough to throw him off there. And now, Argentina, this could be a really massive possession right here. A chance to, to really extend the lead. Oh, my word. Truly Nam works it open. Has he got it? He has! He's starting to wake up here in the fourth quarter. He was super important in the first game. The second game was a bit of a blunder from him. But now when it really matters in that third 
clutch game in the fourth quarter. He's coming up huge with clean plays like that. Certified Juanma can't really answer with the same, not until so, not at least so far. And it's going to be a timeout called here. The Sansi was boxed in. Yeah. And there was a high risk of losing the ball in that situation with seven seconds on the shot clock. They still have time for, yeah, I'd say one, two passes to make a play here. Certified Juanma. Rubinho asking. <gasps> Stolen though. No. Oh my word. And here comes nine. He's activated. He's takeover. He's literally on fire in the fourth quarter of the grand final game three decider. And he's just activated his takeover. That is... That is a champion mentality and mindset there from Truly Numb. That's massive. And look at this three. He gets it through as well. 42 to 32. Double digit lead in the fourth quarter with three minutes remaining. Argentina looking to see if they can grab that second title to their name. Uruguay trying to do their best to try and prevent that from happening. Rubinho comes up huge with the rebound. Nicolas on the three-point line, certified with another attempt at the three. Not good as it's Romero gets the rebound over to Truly Num, who is on fire now. And will this be another three-pointer, dare I say it? Oh, my word. I feel for certified. He has had that icicle for since the third quarter now, and it is so hard to shake. Those shots are nearly impossible to make. Honestly, I feel like they got to try. No way that goes in. I was okay. going to say, oh, my God. God, Jesus. I was, I was about to lose my mind as well. Here's Santi now with the layup. Good work. That's what they need. Honestly, I would be focusing on on quick and easy buckets, maybe pick and roll, alley oops to Rubinho. Hopefully you can catch Ramiro. I definitely wouldn't necessarily be working the uh the three-pointer, not with the icicle. Another easy bucket there, though. Truly numb has come to life here in game three. And at the worst possible time for Uruguay, Truly Numb has 32 points out of the 44 to his name. It's absolutely a crazy performance yeah. coming out of him in the fourth quarter here. Minute and 45 seconds on the clock. Nicholas with a contested three, not good. Santi with the rebound is certified, is open for a pass, but good. it's going to be Robinho to get the dunk from the air. That is exactly what the doctor ordered. You've got a minute 40 here. You've got to go full court pressure. You've absolutely got to force some turnovers just like that. Oh, somehow, miraculously, Argentina ends up with the ball. I don't know. I don't know. That was like David Blaine. That was, that was literally a magic trick right there. Phenomenal stuff. Truly numb now. He's, he's no longer on fire, but the damage is done as we get an alley -oop. Get out of town. It's Ramiro coming up huge here again to extend the lead to double digits. It's a 10-point game between the two minutes and 20 seconds on the clock. Certified Juanma has lost that icicle icon, but he needs to become on fire here. Yeah. He needs to start to nail those shots in. Rubinho setting up a screen for him. The three-pointer is not good. Tiggs gets the rebound. Minute and five on the clock here, and obviously Argentina are going to start to slow things down here. Yep. They're going to be running down the clock as much as possible, slowing it, allowing for more room for error for, Argen for Uruguay to make. And so, oh... Truly numb did look he did drop the clock quite a fair bit there. That's a pretty high percentage shot from the Absolutely. free throw line. There we go. Nicholas with a huge three pointer. Don't, takes it down to, to what? That's a seven, seven points. point game. Don't look now. Don't look now. Oh my we saw something very similar during the European conference. That was such a massive clutch three there from Nicholas. That gives you a glimmer of hope if you're Uruguay. But my word. Another bucket here for Argentina, and it is pretty much over. You need a defensive stop as you get a massive alley-oop to Ramiro. Oh, my word. These two have challenged each other. They've pushed each other, and now we're seeing phenomenal performance out of Argentina. Half a minute remaining here for Uruguay to come back into this. Another three-pointer three bounces. Ramiro being on fire surely gets the rebound there as well. Behind it's him, just it's faking. truly numb. <laughs> and Ramiro, that's just it that's is. just insult to injury right now. As Argentina are going to be looking to run away with a win here in the South America Grand Finals to become the two-time South America Conference champions in FIBA Esports Open. It is going to be Argentina to seal the deal and truly numb leading the way. Well. I don't need to tell you then. I'm pretty sure. You know, we, obviously, as we're calling the game, we're looking over at uh, production. We're looking over at our co-hosts as well. I'm pretty sure we have our MVP as well. We'll, and, we'll and, get to that in a and, second. And you've, you've got it written down. I'm going to let you break the news, though. But, yeah, let's let's dissect that performance there. Oh, my Look, God. Okay, so let's just take a quick breather here. So the beginning of the game, 
Trillian Um comes in, puts up a few points for his team, but Uruguay really looking strong and solid. It really looked like Uruguay found that perfect recipe. Yeah, yeah. And they were holding on to the lead as well up until that third quarter, and that's really where they sort of were broken because yeah. Trillian Um started putting up so many points, and they were having uh, Uruguay was having such a problem of finding the correct answer to it. It's not like the attempts were not there, but the precision absolutely was not yep. comparable to that second game. And I think that was the second game could have slightly played against them in the sense of having that false sense of security, but yeah. really it was going, uh, I mean, almost as, as we called it here before that third game, right? Uruguay taking the lead, sticking within that 5-10 to 10 point range, having the pressure on Argentina's shoulders up until the third quarter, but it was Im Im super important for them to hold it on till the very end. But the fact that Argentina were able to overtake that lead in the oh, third yeah. quarter, and then from that point on, it, it was really a huge problem on Uruguay's shoulders once. Um, that is, Ramiro activated his avatar as oh, yeah. well, and that means he's getting more rebounds in than Uruguay definitely would feel comfortable with. Definitely. A few clumsy passes, a few steals going the steals, through. Yep. And that defense from Argentina, the steals was something I, I wrote down and, and, and circled in, in the third. But like, let's take a moment to kind of acknowledge what a low scoring game that was. And that's not throwing shade For at sure. all. That is because those two teams really brought like the absolute best performance out of each other right there. We, we're talking a sub 50 score from two teams that can very easily get well and truly over over 100 points. So, so an amazing up, grand final. Yeah, give it up for your South America Conference winners. Is That is Argentina. Take it away, Chris, from the left. There we go. It's Ramiro, truly numb. I'm Bujo, Lamo, dribbling too much, Tiggs, and uh, Lottie Rodriguez. And in the end as well, so much pressure on these young men representing uh, their country. You heard... Uh, from from It's Ramiro talking about, you know, growing up watching the, and, the and golden generation of Argentinian basketball, and now they get speaking, to represent. Speaking about gold, speaking about trophies, and speaking about golden plays, the golden boy himself, truly Nam is going to grab the MVP prize, taking it home, really. Oh, yeah. I mean, that sort of performance, when you come out in grand finals and you put up 80 to 90% <laughs> of points for your team in your favor continuously, yep. yes, that second game didn't work out for him, but it's the third where it mattered the most, where he came back and with a commanding lead allowed for Argentina to take the trophy home for the second time in a row here on FIBA Esports Open. These are the final standings on your screen here. Look and again, that. look, first game, 60 to 66. And I cannot actually, just looking at this, Argentina scored 48 points in the game they lost as well. Look at the difference there. Able Absolutely. To hold you, able to hold Uruguay to 39, the adjustments that were made on the fly. Phenomenal stuff right there. Crazy good performance coming out from Argentina. And I mean, you know, if, if the first time around anyone was questioning if Argentina are the true champions of South America in NBA 2K here in FIBA Esports Open, then this time around it's a done deal, okay? You can't take away a two-time champs title away from anyone, especially the likes of uh, Argentina. I mean, look, Back. the players are insanely good back to back it feels good to say and here he is there's there's <laughs> the, the man smiles. himself i love i love the timing from our production team how you doing ramiro yes sir how are you we're great we're, we're great. absolutely stoked for your win here so take it away let us know what does it mean for argentina to become the two-time champions in nba 2k crazy story well it's been a lot i mean we practice a lot of time uh more than I don't know how many hours, but yeah. four days, four hours a day, and well, I think that we deserve to win. We play a really good series. Congrats to Uruguay too that uh, achieved the finals. And well, I want to to say thank you to all the people behind the CABB who believe in me and my team. Uh, and well, many many thanks. Yeah, I mean, uh, not one more time. Huge congratulations. And really, if you look back at those final games, what do you think was the key to your success? What was the key to victory there? I think that we believe in each other and we could we could play our, our best games. I mean, we play really well two quarters mm -hmm. because we believe in each other and we, and we green those shots and we really... 
we really got we got really well. Sorry, sorry. I'm so nervous. No, oh, it's, no. oh mate, totally don't worry. understandable. Oh, we uh, are <laughs> we are exhausted. <laughs> We're exhausted watching that game. We can't imagine the mental concentration required and yeah, the effort. Yeah. Congratulations, it was phenomenal. Um, and and if I could just ask, as you heard there from Renaz, we did announce the MVP is truly numb. I hope you yeah. agree with our selection there. I hope that's okay. For sure, for sure. He's a dog, man. He's a dog. Yeah, oh, he is. But I, but I got to tell you, there were phenomenal performances uh, across uh, the board as well. Um, uh, really, really impressive stuff. But look, um, if it's okay, I'd love to just give you the microphone for a second. Do you have an inspirational message? You're only a young man yourself, and but a leader already, by example. Do you have an inspirational message there for uh, the other aspiring e-athletes who are watching at home right now saying, geez, I'd, I'd love to represent Argentina one day? Yeah, sure. That if you have a dream, you have to chase and work for it, and it will, and you will, uh, and you will finally get that dream and chase it. That's that's my only advice. You know, I wanted to to be part of the national team. We w I worked really hard personally, and I had a great team behind me who believed me. And well, that's that's for you. That's for you, guys. Well, look, Ramiro, thank you. That is definitely the correct words to say, everyone out there. Don't lose faith. And obviously, she, you showed us for the second time in a row here. Argentina are your FIBA Esports Open champions. Ramiro, I'm going to let you go now. I'm going to allow you to celebrate and to calm <laughs> down. And the trophy is on its way. Well, many thanks, guys. Many thanks for the tournament. Um, well, see you, guys. Back to the championship. There you go. See you next time. <laughs> see you. Oh, that was brilliant. Well, I, I love that. Look. I mean, I always feel like you know, we're asking these these young men who uh, do you have an inspirational message for other young men, but but they are leaders now. And that is that is the face of your back to back, uh, you know, a captain champion right there yep. for Argentina. He is the face right now of Argentinian e basketball. And um, Matt, you could see what it meant to him. You could see. Uh, the exhaustion and the elation, everything you would hope for after a final. Everything shaking inside oh. after that performance and obviously grabbing that tight win in Brilliant. the third game in the best of three. And that's exactly why those games, the grand final games are played in that fashion. So obviously, uh, you know, it, it, it's a lot of and nerves on the it, line. It is. And, and congratulations to Argentina. I do just want to say uh, we, we won't be uh, speaking with the Uruguayan captain there, but also a fantastic performance from them. Congratulations in your first appearance. Uh, Absolutely. In, in the FIBA Esports Open first appearance. Ever. Silver first appearance in the first time on awesome. an international stage with very little experience in tournaments as well. And I got to tell you, I loved the, the entire conference as well. You know I'm in love with Venezuela, okay? You know I am. <laughs> All right, and Woody, Woody but um, look, I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Look, um, we've talked about the winners. We've talked to the winners as well. We've announced the MVP. And what's left here, Chris? Uh, all we got to do is send it over to our man Jeff in Jeff's corner in, in USA. How are you doing, Jeff? <laughs> I mean, my heart, look, that was, what, what could we have asked for? More than that, you know, a best Incredible. of three, two nations that, like I said before, kind of previewing the final, maybe people don't know as much about in the greater NBA 2K community, but yeah. South America, especially those two teams, established itself as, look, we're here. We can compete. You know, maybe next time we'll see them with these, play against these North and Central American teams that we're about to see later on. Absolutely, absolutely phenomenal stuff. So um, I, I Look, believe, yeah, we're going to step away, though, Jeff. It's Jeff's corner after all. Exactly. So we're not going to get in your way too much here. And when we come back, we're going to continue on with the North and Central America. Yeah, thanks, guys, so much. And I mean, you know, I, I kind of I alluded to it last week that I was waiting for this. I'm based in New York. I'm based in the U.S. A lot of this North and Central America conference contains NBA 2K League players who I was really excited to see what happened. And yesterday did not disappoint. If you need to get caught up on what happened in day one, a, a four-headed monster has been established in this North and Central America region. If you thought Team USA was going to run away with this, you were wrong. They started right off the bat with a loss to Puerto Rico. I think a lot of people got introduced to Young Star, who is an outstanding shooter, went four of six from three against the U.S. He would go 10 of 16 later on against Canada. He is a player to watch for Puerto Rico. Two of their NBA 2K League players, Wolf and Jomar, who actually were teammates this past season with Pacers game, 
programming. They also established themselves as being formidable players. And I think Jomar, who continues to grow, who won the NBA 2K 250K My Team tournament last year and put his name out there with a lot of people in the community, really shows that he is a bona fide Pro Am player. So Puerto Rico right off the bat sent Team USA into a friend a frenzy. Team USA was able to rebound by winning their next four games. It was not easy, despite the fact that they were able to get past Canada uh, with some ease at 67-61. The game against the Dominican Republic, maybe the game of the day, USA Dominican Republic goes to overtime. The Dominican Republic had a chance to end it in regulation with a dunk, just miss, and it was Team USA getting the win in overtime for the Americans, JBM and Rhea. We talk about two players who were the top picks in the NBA 2K League the past two seasons, showing why in terms of their point guard and center play together. When Rhea and Ramo get going down low, I think Team USA it's, is at its best rebounding with two of the top bigs in the world. I think they're going to have to look in the mirror and try to decide how to change up their lineup as we go on. Kenny was the MVP of the NBA 2K League Raptors Uprising, which actually plays in Canada, went undefeated this past season. Kenny was the guy, but original Malik in some of the games that Team USA played him showed he could be the top sharp on that squad right now in terms of form. So we'll see how USA adjusts their roster. I mentioned the Dominican Republic, who they beat. Well, the Dominican Republic hasn't lost other than that, and the Dominican Republic was able to knock off Puerto Rico. Bohio, another guy, by the way, on Pacer, from Pacers Gaming this past season, who struggled a bit in the NBA 2K League, put out an, an outstanding performance yesterday for the Dominican Republic, working well with Tactic, uh, who plays for the Lakers out in the NBA 2K League. They were able to form something and shock a lot of people with the Dominican Republic. Now, the other team in, in all of this is Canada, which lost yesterday to Puerto Rico in the United States. A lot of people, I, including myself, thought Canada would probably be one of the top two teams. Use of Scarbs, uh, Putting in a performance, he has been one of the top power forwards and centers the last two to three years in pro -Am, in the Pro-Am scene, and he continues to put in work. Sav at point guard is a budding point guard. They work well together, but Canada needs to get more help from the other players. Now, in terms of what you'll see today, only two teams will make the finals, and I've mentioned Puerto Rico, the, Domin the Dominican Republic, and the United States, all with one loss each. The U.S. has played one more game. They're four and one. Those other two teams are three and one. The first game coming up, the, Domin the Dominican Republic and Canada are going to play. Canada already has two losses, so they're probably not going to make it to the finals unless they get some sort of help. But this could they could play spoiler if they beat the Dominican, the Dominican Republic, it puts Puerto Rico and the U.S. in the driver's seat to get a rematch between those two teams. If the Dominican Republic wins and all three of those teams, Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and Team USA finish with one loss, then the first tiebreaker is head-to-head. -head. They all are one and one against each other. Then you have to go to point differential against each other. And because the Dominican Republic had such a commanding win over Puerto Rico, 67 to 51, if the Dominican Republic be beats Canada, all of a sudden they and the United States are in the driver's seat. So the U.S. is probably in if they win that last game. But the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico, a lot of that hinges on this game between the Dominican Republic and Canada. And of course, we have to shout out Guatemala, Costa Rica, and Honduras. They can also play spoiler as we head into what should be a crazy game. Get your pulse going, lock in, because we've got a few hours of some incredible North and Central America Conference basketball coming up after the break. <laughs> Still old money, old bread, guess I like it better still And she's on me, dog, and I don't wear designer Cause I got a better sell You peons can be on my level, I'm clever, so be gone I know you see the lights flash neon Right as hell, right a bell But we don't save these hoes And these girls bad as hell, so we say Oh Lord They don't really do it like us They don't really live their life They don't really got their buzz, so we say Oh Lord Carpe diem, it's about time that they see How many days that I've been seasoned time they see me they say oh lord uh, we don't hear that jargon what you talking about it's my time my time to take my targets out make a move pray to god you dodge a tune because when i make a move i tell everybody move bounce
After I get it, I reinvest. After I get it, I reinvest. People wanna talk that talk in reality. You have not seen me in action. You think the come up comes overnight. You ain't behind the scenes. Trust me, these things don't just happen. No shade to Gerald, but G's don't come easy when you tryna eat out producing and rapping. I read that contract you sent me to sign, but excuse me, I can't help myself. I'm just laughing. Hey, you tryna cut out a piece of my pie, and I ask you politely, what's it that you offer me? Yeah, I produce all my own beats, and I have no intention of losing my publisher. Yeah, independent individual boy, I've been eating off passive residuals. Yeah, let's be professional. Thanks for your time. But I had to decline at that principle hey, I've been scheming up a plan hey, I've been saving all I can hey, You can call me David Rams hey, The way I handle these bands hey, We ain't messing with the old model oh, You wear a new kid, we full throttle oh, Just know that the come up is not a flow My amigos, they focus, no one to do After I get it, I reinvest After I get it, I reinvest After I get it, I reinvest Stack it, stack it, stack it, put it back in it After I get it, I reinvest after I get it, I reinvest. After I get it, I reinvest. Stack it, stack it, stack it, put it back in it. Yo, look, I ain't saying that I'm rich. Cause if I'm honest, I have never been. But when I look at all these other kids, I feel just a little bit ahead of them. You should know the business is competitive. There's a lot of people that I'm better than. Even veterans ain't got the knowledge I do. I've been reinvesting all I ever spent. Stop pretending like you popping. Who been out here making profit? Told my mama that I got this. I wonder if she noticed what my job is. I don't know how I'ma make it, but I know no matter what, I'm finna find a way. All my homies finna eat and I ain't letting no one on my team look at an empty plate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Went from a boy to a man. Ay. Every day we make it plan. Ay. They don't really understand. Ay. Gotta look out for the fail. Ay. I won't fall for any scam. Yeah. Only worry about the fans. Yeah. I won't compromise the brand. Yeah. I've been saving all the bands. Whoa. After I get it, I reinvest. After I get it, I reinvest. After I get it, I reinvest. Stack it, stack it, stack it, put it back in it. After I get it, I reinvest. After I get it, I reinvest. After I get it, I reinvest. Stack it, stack it, stack it, put it back in it. Spending money in some really funny ways, man. I promise you ain't really getting paid. Yeah, show a couple bands like on the Instagram, and nobody getting fans that way. Yeah, will you really dumb if you spend that on your funds on some clothes and your tape need work? Yeah, you ain't gonna stand if you win a businessman, man. I promise you the plan ain't gonna work. Yeah, rappers spending money in some really funny ways, man. I promise you ain't really getting paid. Yeah, show a couple bands like on the Instagram, and nobody getting fans that way. Yeah, will you really dumb if you spend that on your funds on some clothes and your tape need work? Yeah, you ain't gonna stand if you win a businessman, man. I promise you the plan ain't gonna work, yeah. As the Black Power Ranger, never scared of danger. Snapping my fingers to the beat of my drum. Became addicted to fun. We would fight with our hands. Never needed a gun. We would gladly chill in the house, play mom and daddy. The greatest feeling was when nobody could ever tag me. So happy, not being the last to be chosen. To run to the candy lady to buy us a frozen. We were just kids up to no good. Remember the first time you watched Boys in the Hood? Rat tail in the back while my barber fazed me. Do you remember when? Yes, no, remember maybe. Remember when you were the end song you liked and you felt like it was about your life? Remember when you would write a letter to your girlfriend and she would read it to all of her girlfriends? Remember staying up all night, talking on the phone? Remember skipping class with your homeboys? 
yeah. Remember G. Hey yo, I hope you shit a long day, a long stay in the hallway. Harking back to an era of the tape play, hitting on the track well, on the max cell. With the spitting, the beginning of a rap tale. A last scoop, the loop shine vividly. In due time, produce rhyme synergy. And for the longest, caught the blinking of the torment. Till England of performance, still thinking of his dormant. And so it be, who hold close and kept dear. We're left there, won't know folks by next year. For ties cut, invest shears. Flex beers, rise up and flex fear for hex sneers. The rest cheer, know we did it for a purpose. Poem of a kid, never did scratch surface until the unit. Respect the craft for proponents, cause it ain't over till the soul. Remember what? You would hear a song you like, and you felt like it was about your life. Remember when? You would write a letter to your girlfriend, and she would read it to all of her girlfriends. Remember staying up for a night. Talking on the phone Remember skipping class with your homeboys Remember G.I. Joe's I used to play Mortal Kombat with Matthew I swore he used to cheat I swear I could never beat him Those sour jawbreakers I swear I could never beat him Baddest chick in the school I swear I could never beat her Until I wrote her a letter Telling her I'm a singer Me and Terrence would draw pictures of sneakers Me and Ashley used to be in the class singing I wrote my first rap in the back of the class thinking Um, I'm feeling it yeah. Feel the high that you get from the lie If you feel it, raise your hell in the sky huh. I remember selling my mixtape in high school They was really kind of supportive at my school I was selling cassette tapes for five dollars I was making my own beats, I was beatboxing Brown, brown sugar, that brown, but brown, hey 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 I mean, we were just sitting back, you know, <laughs> chopping it up, reminiscing about the good old days and all that, <laughs> you know, tracking my roots, where I came from and where I'm going. But like I say, man, always said it, it's not about the destination, it's all about the journey. Ain't nothing changed but the weather. The dangling carrot that hang from the rear view. Uh -huh. Your dreams in the past ain't nowhere near you. Go, go, Backseat go. drivers got nothing but two cents. Shotgun riders too biased, they all liars. I should get an A for effort, I'm too tired. But I'm never giving up, that's why I'm kinda admired. Role model, like it or not, I gotta play it. Sugarcoat the rhyme sometimes, but still say it. Said I was quitting at 40, it's just a fib. I'm still a kid that's wiping the food off of my bib. You ever wanted something so bad that you could taste it? Cried over everything. Every opportunity wasted. Yeah. Good and bad news, which one you want first? Either way, you pick the bad, still gonna hurt you the worst. I never got to bask in the fruits of the label. Uh -uh. And I never got the cash from that dude from the label. I'm just thinking back. Thinking back, thinking back, thinking back. Can we go way back? Way back, way back. Way back. Can we go way back? Retrospect. 
respect, I would have did it the same. In hindsight, I'm the only one to blame. I ain't picky, I'm just real specific. I want nothing less than terrific. I know y'all get it. I'm aggressive, so our style is clashing. Killer instinct, and I play with passion. I'd rather be hated for being one of the realest than get a lot of love for these overrated appearance. I can stand on skill alone, but I'm a package deal. I can write the whole song and rap for real. I got my head in the cloud with a pun intended. I don't need to see nobody. I don't want no visits. Introverted, I just flirt with the music. Small circles, how I choose it. Stay away from squares. They the one that look like a L7. I've been doing this since I was 11. And the shit gets real. When I'm in the building, grown man flow, I ain't got time for the children. Now you can boo me, jump off, I'm winning. I still love you though, shout out to the women. Watch you was cool, they was acting wild. Walk in, leave drunk, it was packed for hours. Belligerent students, man, the shit got messy. Remind me of my first show I did at the Red Sea. I ain't had no DJ, uh -huh. just the tape deck. Yeah. Opened up a son of Star Child, I love that. Met this cat named Larry, he was with the Avengers. Show me how to make moves and walk with the winners. Soon went to the pen, I never seen him again. But I did a couple shows with his friends. Lumberjack, brown clown, so and so, and do with the orange pants. Ten years later, now I'm rocking the orange pants. <laughs> But they Jabos, though, okay. you know, <laughs> fresh to death, yeah. always and forever. Uh -huh. <laughs> Don't get it twisted, <laughs> number one listed, uh -huh. nitro, nitro, with the nice flow, nitro. you know, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Take a picture, baby, it'll last longer. <laughs> All in your mouth, <laughs> yeah. In retrospect, I'm just thinking back to the time when it was... Life come crashing down, rise above, don't ever let it sink you. Me, I don't like to tell people what to do, but I'm speaking from experience. If I can help another person out going through this cell, then I hope they're hearing this. Like when you're going through the hardest times, what you read the book? You can hit the ball, call hard, get a shook. You a son of the most sign, not a crook. Why you on the block, bad ball, but a hard look. I've had a hard time since I was a baby, struck down to the ground, my life crazy. Tragedies hitting my family, cope was no longer coping like they I've got to do the hardest thing that a man got to do, bow down, give it up, that's real talk. If you want to go your own way, that's death without life, you outline the right show. Already real, recognize real, everybody want the truth, yo, I don't want to blow it. We living in a culture where the people turn up, but they better humble down before it's too late to slow it. So when you want to be picked up, raise your hands up to the father like a little baby do. You ain't got to live your life on your own when the waves start to crash, have a team by you. And I ain't talking about a team where you have to be initiated just to be accepted. This is your ride of passage, you a human being, come and get connected. When the waves of life come crashing through, and they knock you down, gotta get back up, you do what you do. When the waves of life come crashing through, when the waves of life come crashing through, you rise up, rise up. When the waves come, rise up, rise up. When they knock you down, rise up, rise up. Gotta get out the waves of life come crashing through, you rise up, rise up. When the waves come, rise up, rise up. And they knock you down, rise up, rise up. Gotta get out the waves of life come crashing through, you rise up. Rise up to the tip top. You are not a floor mad or a flip flop. Sometimes the rain comes down, drip drop. Wait, is that flu on the hip hop? We could be a little backwards, upside down. Sometimes you would look at us sideways. I love my Lord, He picked us up off the hedges and highways. All these people feel this. They know that He's the realest. He the demons shaking, they sure that shot Jesus is Lord, He's legit. See, I don't wanna follow anybody else. When the waves come, He can just raise His hand, calm the storm, bring the peace. Point blank, period. He's the man. When I was at my lowest. And I had nowhere to go, another sea, share hundred damn waves down low. I 
robbery. Said the father when I didn't know him, I just heard of his name. And he grabbed my hand. I was running for a while, but he made me right there. All of those years saying like it's not fair. I never would have made it on my own. That's clear. Looking back now, no doubt God was there. You were never on your own when you're going through it. When the waves come, stand firm, get through it. But you got a little one who will get you through it. Heal of her heartbreak, change that hill door. Never forget to bow down to the Lord who will heal with his touch. Do not blame God when you're going through hell. He loves you so much. When the waves of life come crashing through and they knock you down, gotta get back up. You do what you do. When the waves of life come crashing through, when the waves of life come crashing through, you rise up, rise up. When the waves come rise up, rise up. When they knock you down, rise up, rise up. Gotta get up. When the waves of life come crashing through, you rise up, rise up. When the waves come rise up. Wow, yeah, swear to God I'm with it I don't see nobody in my lane is quite go get it Like me, wow Please don't be wasting my time with that business Who are you kidding, man? Yeah, 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 yeah Wow, yeah, swear to God I'm with it I don't see nobody in my lane is quite go get it Like me, wow Please don't be wasting my time with that business who are you kidding, man? Yeah, 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 yeah. Say it gon' put me all in the mad with all that mad game you been talking. Oh, yeah, man, that's awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. Show me this plan that you brought me and this cash you ain't mentioned yet, dog. I'm done with all that talking. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I don't do pay to play. I get paid to play. And since you're playing games to get paid for me, man, swear to God I'm walking. Yeah, 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 yeah. I seen the type before about a hundred times Trying to undermine my abilities to be killing anything I target Yeah, yeah, you wanna be a boss of them reins? That power don't come cheap All my life I've been moving them chains Now you wanna love me, I see the way you think You're all about you, 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 you And that's cool, you do you But me, I've been doing my own thing I swear to God I be killing everybody, tell me if you wanna get involved Lyric or Rovara that is aiming at the center of your thoughts Yeah, they tell me everybody in my city that I'm finally love my songs Cool shit, saying pretty please with a cherry on top is a cool way Whoa. Wow, yeah, swear to God I'm with it I don't see nobody in my lane is quite go get it Like me, wow Please don't be wasting my time with that business Who are you kidding, man? Yeah, 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 yeah Wow, yeah, swear to God I'm with it I don't see nobody in my lane is quite go get it like me. Wow. Please don't be wasting my time with that business. Who are you kidding, man? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't see a reason they should be hating the way that I'm making a way. Welcome back to FIBA Esports Open 2 here. My name's Renars and alongside with me this time around is going to be Artis. Artis, your thoughts on those previous games? Oh, so close, man. One final down, you know, one more left to go. I'm just so excited. Yeah, exactly. So let's just quickly take it back from the top here. Just to remind to anyone who might be tuning in uh, right now, this is FIBA Esports Open 2 NBA 2K. Together with FIBA have created this environment where this time around, 
36 national federations have come to defend their country's pride and to battle for that chance of obtaining the uh, valuable prize, that golden trophy in their hands. And of course, there's also one more prize to give away in the process. Of course, uh, individual play also counts because we're going to be choosing MVPs. We already have one chosen, which was truly numb from Team Argentina. And, you know, there's one more to go. Exactly. So... These teams are joining from all over the world here from, well, into, into this event. And obviously, uh, that does involve some sleight of hand when it comes to technical aspects of the game. So let's have a look at the map here and see where everyone is tuning in from. Yeah, to know, to understand why we have six conferences is because of the internet speeds, right? Mm -hmm. It travels uh, slowly. Sometimes if there's a big difference, you know, uh, a, a team from Australia can't play Canada, it's going to be unfair. So for a for fair game, we have them in six different conferences, as you can see on the map here. Yeah, and we've had three intense uh, weekends where already a few conferences have uh, crowned their respective winners, and we have talked to them as well. And the first conference at that was the Africa Conference, where Ivory Coast was able to secure their first international win on the big stage, and that was back at the 15th, 14th and 15th November. So that was a month ago already. It still feels like yesterday. And then we had the Middle East Conference also at the same date where Lebanon and Saudi Arabia played. And, you know, Saudi Arabia took the win the second time in a row in this conference. Yeah, the two-time champs of the Middle East, that is Saudi Arabia for you. The next conference we also saw on the 14th and 15th November, this time around, was a merged conference where Southeast Asia and Oceania met. And this time around, it was Australia to secure the win. Now, notably, well, technically, they are also a two-time champion because first time around back in FIBA Esports Open 1, which was close to six months ago or a bit more at that, uh, Australia was able to secure the win in their Oceania conference and now in this merged one as well. Truly a very strong team from that region. And as I said in, in the very beginning back in November, if you're looking to test out your forces uh, against the team in that region, see if you can hit up Australia. They'll definitely give you something to run for. Going into the next conference, which happened last week on the 12th and 13th December, what was the Europe conference where Bosnia and Herzegovina, Germany, Latvia, Russia, Ukraine on Group A played. Group B was Austria, Cyprus, Ireland and Turkey. And on Group C, we had Croatia, Great Britain, Italy, Lithuania. And on yep. Group D, we had Czech, Czech Republic, Portugal, Spain and Switzerland. And of course, here as well, as you can see, Turkey. First time on the international stage for them as well, and they were able to make it into the playoffs. The playoffs were played in a single elimination bracket, meaning if you lose, you're out, and they were able to continue, continue on winning and finally uh, naming themselves the winners of the Europe Conference and getting that trophy to their name. And just now, this weekend, that is the 19th and 20th December, the North and Central America conference concluded and you had uh, obviously in in this conference uh oh sorry this one hasn't concluded yet the south america conference concluded but this one is still going to be decided right here right now just after a few minutes and you still have uh, some well first timers here on the big yeah, stage canada costa rica dominican republic guatemala honduras puerto rico and usa Still a lot to go through. Uh, six games in total until the Grand Finals. And well, what happens in the Grand Finals, we're just going to have to find out. Exactly. And of course, the South America conference that you just saw roughly 20 minutes ago where Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Uruguay and Venezuela were fighting against each other to see who can grab the title here. And this time around... Again, it was Argentina that was able to secure the win here in those best of three grand finals, coming into a close game against Uruguay, not Brazil as we predicted initially. Brazil were very eager to come back into this, but obviously that, that it was Uruguay that was uh, able to get into the grand finals. However, Argentina securing the two-time championship title to their name. And just to remind, they played in a single round robin where everyone played each other one time. Afterwards, they went into the grand finals where they had a best of three. 
Yeah, and I mean it was it's it's the same format for the North and Central America as well. So obviously uh, we are getting close to that point. But before that, let's have a look at the games of the day here and how it all began here. So we kick things off today with Uruguay going up against Brazil, where Uruguay was able to secure the win. Afterwards, Argentina played against Venezuela, also a win on the Argentina's department there. After that, you saw Bolivia going up against Brazil. Bit of a problem, you know, with that scoreline, 42 to 78. Afterwards, they had Venezuela versus Uruguay. And, you know, a, a dominant victory by Uruguay. Then we had Bolivia versus Argentina. Another win for them. And Uruguay versus Argentina uh, in the first grand final game. Uh, following up, we had the two more grand final games where Argentina, uh, this time around, lost to Uruguay. And then Uruguay won, uh, lost against Argentina in the last game. Yeah, exactly. So, the next game is going to be uh, played off-stream. And that is going to be between Puerto Rico and Honduras. You can see the local times next to the flags there. So, local time for each respective country next to their flag here. Obviously, all of the games go uh, consequently, meaning that as soon as one game finishes, we jump into the next. After that, well, we're going to see after a short uh, moment here, Canada on stream going up against Dominican Republic. And I must note a super important game for both teams for the chance of stepping into the grand finals. Then we're going to see United States going up against Costa Rica and followed by a game against Ca uh, Canada against Honduras. And continuing on, we still have Costa Rica against Puerto Rico and finishing off the single round robin is going to be Guatemala against Dominican Republic. Which leaves us only with the grand final after that to decide who is going to be the winner in the last North and Central America conference here. So a lot, a lot of important um, points on the line really here. So let's have a look at the standings as well just to remind you guys what the current situation is. So United States so far at the top uh, space, you know, with the most games played as well, five games with nine points and four victories, only one loss. Close second is Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic, both with three victories and one loss at seven points. Only thing differing there is the point difference you can see. Yeah, obviously uh, Dominican Republic able to rack up those points quite convincingly. Currently in the fourth uh, place is Guatemala. Two wins, three losses to their name. Excellent performance on the international stage in the first time uh, for them. Canada as well at a very experienced team tournaments-wise. They definitely have attended way too many tournaments to count here and still currently in the fifth position and as I said before they're going to have that game against Dominican Republic which is going to decide a lot here for Dominican Republic especially uh, and then a sixth and seventh position currently held by Costa Rica and Honduras respectively there are four points in the overall standings to their name Costa Rica has managed to grab uh, at least one win here for Honduras they have managed to take on invaluable uh, experience to their name so well, Honduras so far with zero victories, but hopefully, hopefully they still have two more games and uh, they'll be able to snatch one up. You know, everyone likes to go home with at least one victory. Yeah. Well, before we continue on to the games, we had a uh, off-stream interview with a little lady, 87, from USA's lineup. And why is that important? Because she's the currently the only female in USA's lineup representing national pride. So let's hear from herself. My name is Wendy Fleming, also known as a little lady 87, and I am proud to be representing Team USA. <laughs> means a lot to me. It's definitely a milestone for me and other women in gaming. But like another step. Um, we've been included in the NBA 2K League with Chiquita, so now to make it to the FIBA Esports is just another step in the right di direction for women in gaming. And I'm definitely honored to, to be the one to represent. I was so ecstatic. Like, I just, like, lifted my head back. It was like, I finally have made it to play on the, the most competitive team, which is something I've been trying to do for a while now. I've been pursuing the NBA 2K League, so this was just like a dream come true. And I couldn't be any happier than to be a part of this, this seven. In high school, I was playing basketball and 
every day after basketball practice, me and my dad, we kind of bonded over NBA 2K and he never beat me like not one time. So that that's pretty much where my, my love for NBA 2K came from. To never give up and not let the toxicity of like the younger 2K community bring you down or hold you back from what you enjoy doing. If it's what you like to do, just keep doing it. Take advantage of the opportunities, put yourself out there and be in the competitive scene. Don't be afraid to go out and play against people who are might be better than you or just make sure you're out there in the competitive scene so people can see your, your abilities and how well you are at the game. A role model on the real pitch, I would say like Candace Parker because I went to UT Knoxville and so did she. So we're like classmates or like we went to the same school and she was great and um, back then and she's still great. She's a great basketball player and she's fundamentally sound center and I play center. So I really like Giannis uh, Antetokounmpo. He's my favorite player. So like he likes to do flashy stuff. He's he finishes great in the paint, and I'm a center, so the paint area is is my main focus. And then I'm defensive minded, and he's he's very defensive, a very defensive player. So I would compare my in game play to to Giannis. Even though I play the video game and I'm mostly a homebody. I like outdoorsy things. So one of my favorite things to do that people probably don't think I enjoy is I love snowboarding and I'm actually really good at it. So I try to go at least once a year. And my favorite place I've been to so far is uh, West Virginia at Snowshoe Mountain. There we go. What a great interview there from a little lady 87. I mean, it really is like it's Ramiro said right in, in, in his post game, game interview that at, well, after obtaining that championship title is that really you just have to have faith in, in what you believe in that you can achieve here. Don't listen to anyone else trying to, uh, well, persuade you the otherwise and obviously success will follow here. A huge step, of course, uh, having a female on your international team here as well. And that's as as well something unique when it comes to e-basketball or e-sports in general it allows you to have this competitive edge on the same uh, same same line pretty much with the guys here as well and really there is no boundaries uh when it comes to e-sports and and being able to represent that national pride on the line here and the key aspect i think is just you know practice practice and practice uh, get the pubs get the public matches and then wait for the tournaments to come in. Yeah, well, as you can see on your screens here, we're going to see if we can get a call uh, with Sav here from Canada and hear from the man himself what the emotions are like be playing on the international stage here, uh, representing Canada, of course, as well. And uh, they do have an upcoming uh, important game here. Stan, hello, and can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Wonderful. Hello. Hey, Stan. Okay, so please let me know. Obviously, Canada is, is a country that has quite the experience on international stage in different kind of sports. But now this time around, it's the first time here in FIBA Esports Open uh, 2 when Canada is participating. So what does it mean for your country to be on the big stage? It's, it's super big. You know, it's a really uh, good experience for all of us. Um, you know, like a couple of years ago, you'd never think esports would be, be this far. You always watch like Team Canada play basketball on the on the real mm -hmm. court, and now we have an opportunity to do it on the virtual court. Um, just uh, super exciting, and I, I've I've loved it so far. Yeah, obviously the future is looking very inspirational in in e basketball. Um, look, looking at the upcoming games here and just the games that already have been played in general, can you take us through perhaps just a few steps of how the preparation process for this event went down for Team Canada? Yeah. Um, so, well, originally Canada they had contacted uh, I think around twenty or so people, and then um, after interviews they narrowed down the roster to s seven final people, mm -hmm. which you guys mm -hmm. know. Um, and then ever since then, we've just been scrimming as much as possible, um, you know, finding the best lineup, getting our chemistry down. And it's just been pretty, pretty much that uh, day after day. 
Yeah, and look, individually as well in your roster, you have so much experience in different kind of tournaments. And what I wanted to understand is, is there some sort of a different feeling to this tournament in comparison to perhaps other events? Obviously, this being a national event is already different in itself, but I was just thinking perhaps the general vibe or, or any other difference that you can point out to us here. Yeah, honestly, uh, I think just more pride in this tournament since we're playing for our own country and yep. you know we're trying to put especially canada we're trying to put us on the map in basketball because you, you know in the united states they run that that world right now so um you know there's a lot of pride that goes into it and it's just a different feeling in general when you get to represent your home country i totally agree it is an absolutely different game when it comes to having the flag on your chest and on your back yeah, even the virtual chest uh, is still good. But asking a little bit more of a more of a fun question, uh, you know, uh, just to, just to calm down, uh, you know, Imaxi said that he's very talkative in, in the survey. Uh, now, is that really true during the games, or you as the captain do the most talking? Um, well, Mozzie hasn't been. He he's uh, not. He hasn't been in this tournament. But um, yeah, I know he's talkative. But I think usually on the court, as being the point guard, I'm. I'm the one talking and uh, on the offensive end, obviously. And, you know, I try and let my lockdown do the talking on defense as he, he runs the defensive end. But all around, I'd say, uh, yeah, he's a talkative guy. But um, I think uh, I, I definitely do the majority of that. Well, I think that goes to the point guard and, and the captain of the team. It should be like that. Uh, also, a question for you. You played a lot of games so far and you still have two more left to go. Who do you think was the strongest opponent that you faced or you're still only going to face? Um, yeah, I mean, we got a pretty tough opponent right now. This is going to be a big game for us, but, um, USA was definitely a challenge as, you know, as predicted, but, um, you know, it could have went either way. We made a few, uh, small mistakes that could have been avoided and definitely could have taken both of those games we lost yesterday. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's tough in those best of one situations, you know, it can go either way. So, um, not super happy with the outcome, but we all played hard. So, um, just looking forward to finish off this tournament strong. Well, I hope you all the best luck in the next game. But to finish off with a positive note, do you have any inspirational messages to new talent out there and to your friends and family who are watching? Yeah, it's just, this is like a, a perfect opportunity for guys, you know, who are going for the league or trying to get their name out there more. There's a lot of scouts, coaches, people watching. And, you know, I, just, I was just watching those guys in Argentina. You know, nobody knew them, but these guys performed, put on a show. Um, you've seen multiple guys you haven't seen before and they're putting their, their names on the map. So this is a good time to get yourself out there. And um, just shout out to everybody watching at home. I'm grateful to do this during this whole COVID pandemic. So it's, it's a really good tolerance. Well, that's the best part about having this online. You have the opportunity still to participate in international events. And you're absolutely right. Scouts are already out there and they're looking for the best talent to grab here. So, Stan, thank you so much. We're going to let you go now and allow you to prepare for that important game against the Dominican Republic. Okay, thank you, guys. Goodbye. Okay, so that was Stan there. Obviously... Yeah, I mean, I, I can, can confirm one more time. There are a lot of important eyes watching this event. And obviously, e-basketball is just going to skyrocket from this point on even further. And I think next time around, whenever that happens, there's going to be even more countries participating here, which means even more talent on the big stage. And speaking about talent, we still have to talk uh, with Tactic here. That is from Dominican Republic. He's been huge impact for his team's success but Dominican Republic as well first time also on the international stage and coming up very strong against very well-known players and I think we have tactic on the line and hello and can you hear us yes yes how you guys doing all right great I'm doing absolutely amazing so far having a blast casting these games now tactic obviously Dominican Republic now the first time in the international stage here I would say insanely good performance so far. So let me know what does it mean for Dominican Republic to be on this international stage? Nah, it, it's an amazing feeling, man. It's something I never imagined that I could do in, in my life. And then when I saw that they had the chance, I know that the Federation really wanted to do it. They really pushed for it. They trusted us. So this is an amazing thing, man. I know. It, it, it can sweep you off your feet at times when, when you know that a whole country 
uh, might be following you. And now, uh, one more thing that also is uh, I'm very curious to find out is you probably had a good idea which sort of countries that you most likely will have to face, and 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 some perhaps obviously in the in the form of USA from that region uh, are very good in the basketball uh, sector in general. So my question is obviously what was what was the preparation process for you coming into this event? Did you manage to scout any games, or did you have a clear idea in mind how you want to play these games here? Yeah, we we scouted as many teams as possible. Um, we, we got a lot of film. We had tryouts. We had practice every single day. We had a practice squad that was filled with a bunch of talent. They got us ready. We played them every single day, and they were super talented guys. And it, I think that really helped us prepare for this. Yeah, and uh, well, um, did you also manage to see any of the Europe Conference games? Because Turkey also had their first uh, appearance here on the international stage, and they were able to secure the win here. And I mean, so far. Uh, Dominican Republic story seems to be evolving in that same general direction. So, did you manage to see any of uh, Europe's talent? No, yeah, I did. It was that conference was crazy too. <laughs> it was an amazing conference, man. I, I was watching uh, my boy Mario there. He was with Spain and stuff, and guys over at Germany too. And man, Tur Turkey hooped. <laughs> they yeah, earned it. absolutely. They, they showed out, man. Same with Argentina just now. I saw that they just won. You know, my boys there won too. So I, I'm happy, man. All right, cool. Well, I, I hope you got something to take away from those Europe games as well for you there. So something to write down and see if you can implement afterwards in your games. But I believe Artis has still a few questions to ask. Yeah, you probably have already a really serious game next one. But uh, comparing comparing to others, which uh, team do you think was the strongest opponent so far or going to be thus far? Um, I, I think from my country, we really wanted to be Puerto Rico. <laughs> I'm happy we were able to do that one. But I... Obviously, you know, I think the, the toughest team is USA. We lost to them in a nail-biter. So hopefully we could win this and see them in the final. Well, uh, well, I hope so, too. I just want to see uh, great gameplay so far. I can't take sides, but I'm rooting for you in my heart. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> Not taking sides. Yeah, not take, uh, uh, that, you know, neutrally <laughs> supporting. I'm supporting everyone. But uh, from the player surveys, I see that all of you guys are pretty much the same age. And, and we saw that on the side. Do you think that gives an extra... Uh, you know, extra boost to the chemistry that you have going on. Definitely. We we all do the same things. You know, we, we hung out in real life. We all live close to each other, too. So we, we took advantage of that. I think we're one of the teams with the best chemistry, to be honest. We play other games together, not just 2K. You know, we truly got a brotherhood over there. So we, our chemistry is definitely at an all-time high right now, too. Yeah, I mean, it's it's very important to have that. I've I've experienced it as well, especially if you can take it into other games that really transitions then afterwards in that chemistry and that obviously results in, in better plays to come here. So, look, Tactic, I'm not going to take up any much of your time. You have a very important game coming up. Best of luck in that one. Of course, we'll be here watching closely and trying to scream our lungs out. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. You guys are doing a hell of a job. Thank you, Thank dude. you. All right, so it's about that time that we prepare ourselves for that game between Dominican Republic and Canada. And the reason why we've been ra are ranting on about why this is such an important deal here, because Dominican Republic have a very big chance of getting into that, that big foot into the grand finals. But beforehand, they need to overcome Canada here, who are very eager to secure as many victories as they can now to their name. Because obviously, as they said themselves, of course, you're not going to be happy with losing a game, but still, those games have been against very difficult opponents uh, thus far. And obviously, um, the result just shows in, in terms of how competitive this conference is in general. So one more time, let's have a look at the overall standings here. A uh, quick reminder, right? USA and Puerto Rico here is at the top. Dominican Republic coming up with the next game against uh, Canada, who are currently in the fifth and for a chance of getting into the grand finals here and there's going to be a few games after that as well one i believe is already on its way and that is being played off stream so we're going to update you on the result as soon as we can but really i mean what's the name of the game here for Ca for uh, dominican republic uh, getting into this or for canada at that point because obviously dominican republic do tend to pay quite a fast placed uh, game and tactic obviously is is in the paint getting those finishers uh, on the glass as well and you know, what really can Canada do here, or should they do? They, I probably think they should just try and see if they can put a stop to that speed first. I mean, they had uh, the whole of yesterday's evening, you know, to watch the previous games, how Canada played or Dominican Republic played, you know, looking from both sides. So 
uh, just look for the weaknesses that, that they did before and, and, and you you know enforce them and show that you can actually uh, use these mistakes yeah. as your opportunities. But before that, we can go into the lineup screen. All right, so on the side of Canada, you're going to have a Sav, Israel, It's Goon, Yusuf Scarbs, and Dugs. And on the side of Dominican Republic, Bohio, Il Glo Gloy, Majestic, Rando, and Taktuk. And I just want to say, Taktuk is such a positive person. I mean, obviously, you're going to be positive when, when you know that the chemistry is good. You don't have any nerves coming into the game in terms of, uh, like, you're not going to be worried about your teammates' performances and so on. And in terms of uh, Canada here as well, keep a close eye on to Yusuf Scarbs. He has had definitely his moments of brilliance when it comes to uh, plays in the paint. Um, Ice as well has been prolific on the three-point sector, um, getting those shots mostly from uh, left-hand side wings, if I remember correctly. But again, it's been just so many games here. Now, this one should be a nail biter in my books because obviously when it comes to games that de actually decide quite a quite a lot and as Sav said there um you know it is a best of one essentially here so the either side really needs to secure a win and when it comes to those a lot of unpredicting things can happen yeah and also looking at the lineups you know a Dominican Republic again is a team that does not have a center and do you think that even impacts the game for them uh well i, I really feel like tactic definitely fills those shoes quite successfully <laughs> considering his archetype as well he has the means to do so uh he definitely has the avatar type as well to be unstoppable when it comes to getting that drive into nailing that basket in as well going for those dunks continuously not afraid to activate his avatars being on fire um, making sure he has every single advantage that he can take off and of course off the back of the excellent plays of his teammates because again um, in order for tactic to really be impactful you need to have your teammates at the right places to get the right passes to put the ball around the court before he gets that pass into paint to get the slam through so uh, that is obviously what I'm expecting to see here uh, on paper looking at things probably Dominican Republic would have the upper hand obviously if you go by just the standings alone as well a huge question to you dear viewers again in chat if you could elaborate what are your thoughts on this matchup here can Dominican Republic grab the win here and advance into the grand finals potentially or will it go be Canada this time around securing that win let us know in all three platforms that's YouTube Facebook and Twitch but I hear we have a game on our hands so let's have a look Canada versus Dominican Republic or not I uh, hear we do have to wait for a brief moment a bit for beforehand before we can join so they're just restarting the game at the moment um, but yeah as I said look this game is all or nothing pretty much for Dominican Republic. Not really many opportunities after that to come back into this. Um, you know, they're, they're, it's, they're going to have one more game against Guatemala. So let's jump into the game, I hear. We should be jumping straight into gameplay here, and the jump is on as IGL is going to be in possession of the ball here for Dominican Republic. Bahia now. Yeah, just to remind, uh, blue jerseys are for Dominican Republic and the white ones are for Canada. And the current Twitch poll says the majority is in favor of Dominican Republic. So Canada, make sure you let yourself be known in those chats because so far Dominican Republic fans are taking it away. But <laughs> on the, the, fan, field. the fans might have it in chat. So far Canada opens things up with a three-pointer. And Bahia now looking to see if he can perhaps respond quickly here. Being blocked off, two defensive players to him, and that leaves the right-hand side corner. Majestic with a three-pointer of his own, not going to be good, rattles out, but Tactic is there to pick up the slack, gets the rebound. Rando24 comes in with a huge three-pointer of his own and a very far one that. I'm actually still surprised that he managed to go through those two people. Well, there's a quick uh, interception by Dominican Republic. Now Rando with the ball from the sidelines trying to find an open space, but it actually being guarded quite good. Had an opportunity to shoot there, but there's a foul coming out from Canada. 
Yeah, and I didn't mention this on the lineup of, uh, screen we had there, but Randall has been very impactful with his three-pointers. If he has the opportunities presenting himself, then definitely he can score pretty much at will here. So uh, obviously that's one of the things that Canada are going to be paying close attention here, especially he's already got his first. Ohio with a breakaway Ooh. play. Huge block comes through. No foul in play. And Randall with another three-pointer to take it home. You know, you get a quick uh, saying, no, you're not going to get from here. Give a quick pass and boom, there's a three-pointer where nobody expects it. Absolutely. You got to play on these fast plays. And Dominican Republic is definitely going in 100% already. Sam now is going to be setting up a play here. Screen set up for him as well. Not really too keen on taking that right-hand side wing. And goes for it at the end of it and does exactly the same as Rando. Evening out the scoreline here. Three minutes and 22 seconds on the clock as Dominican Republic are looking to see if they can perhaps grab the lead and extend it further. I mean, two minutes in and it's been pretty close so far. Eight to six, you know. That's what we said before. Nail biters, huh? Uh, it's, I think this is going to be how it's going to go all the way through. Canada gets a, gets a hoop, Dominican Republic gets a hoop. It's going to be a close point system. I don't think we're going to get past 10 any point. All right, nice. Decent prediction there. Let's see if that's going to manifest itself. Sav as well. Not going to make the shot, but it's going to be its goon to step up. Takes a few steps forward, gets the jump shot. Nice high, high percentage shot at that as well. And obviously a clean release. Mojillo with the ball right now. You know, this point guard is uh, definitely going to be looking for some shots. But as you said before, he's not the only one who can score from the three-point line. Maybe he's better at going in. But there's a timeout coming from Dominican Republic. You know, sometimes you just don't see where you want to do the shot. You don't know what to, what to, to, uh, where to go. So you just take a timeout, take a little breather. Everyone goes to their own positions and start up again. Yeah, Goon here as well on the Canada side has been having a great game. Five points to his name out of the eight early on here. No time remaining for Bahio. Play needs to happen. Tac Tac now. No time to shoot. Shot clock violation. It's going to be Canada's ball. I mean, sometimes, you know, you can't shoot, uh, get the shot in. Somebody is actually blocking you there. And getting the fast shot, I don't know if that's the best option because they might do a fast breakaway. Speaking about fast breakaways there, a steal and a fast pass over to Bahio. Fake bumps it on the three-point line over to Majestic into the corner. That was not aimed for tactic. It was actually Bahio's ball. Another block is going to happen. Oof. Bit it's been the second time that Bahio tries to go himself and he gets blocked. But now a far pass to him as well. Uh, gives it to the other side to Rando. Majestic had a chance to shoot, but there's a uh, three-second violation. And in that's Canada's. an offensive three-second violation. That Those are a, rare. Yeah, rare and really not needed here in, on the offense. Luckily, this is only the first quarter, so it's, it shouldn't have a high toll to its name here. 145 on the clock, Sav. Again, looking for those opportunities. Three-point line open to pass, and Tactic intercepts this one. Bahia on the three-point line now. You can see Canada very active on the defense. Quick to return, but they leave Bahia wide open and gets the three-pointer in after what feels like was a solid minute without scoring. Yeah, Tactic put a beautiful screen there for Bahia to have any chance to shoot. Now he gets the ball again and tries to go for a shot. Ali U, but it misses. Hits the rim. Now back to Rando. He's going to take a shot and it goes in. Uh, three points to Dominican Republic now getting a bigger lead up on Canada. Yeah, up by six currently and with a minute and five seconds remaining. Another pass doesn't go through. Canada tried to go for these fast plays but it is completely going wrong right now with the misses in the passing department and obviously a three-pointer from Rando again. Excellent job coming out from him. Dominican Republic extend the lead to nine. My prediction is going to go wrong soon if Dominican Republic keeps playing like this. Canada has to take uh, more uh, information on where, he, where they want to give those passes because Tech took again. They steal the pass mid-air, and that is the third time in a row that Canada does not have a chance to, to actually make a shot even. Yeah, IGL almost lost the ball there, managed to regain composure. Bahia now taking it out a bit just to make sure he has some room to work with here. Fakes the shot. Rando, Rando. again. <laughs> Holy. Fourth, fourth time in a row. Rando gets the ball, shoots a three, and it goes in. What, Abs what surprise? Absolutely unstoppable now. And we're in the double-digit lead very early on here. 25 seconds remaining. Another interception from Tactic there in paint. Bahia over to Rando on the three-pointer. That's going to be two this time around, but it's not going to go through as Canada with the quick return. And that is a very long pass over to Goon. He's able to actually catch that one. Use of scarves now in paint can't do much. South fakes, pumps it back over to Goon. Good for the three, 
4.6 remaining. Finally get the shot there, because otherwise these passes have been going nowhere. Dominican Republic definitely being a, a superior right now in the defense. Again, losing the ball this time by Dominican Republic, but didn't have any time to shoot because the first quarter is ending. Now the ball to Canada. Yeah, I mean, for Canada here, the name of the game really is to just slow it down a bit. They're playing the first quarter like it would be the fourth. And, you know, it doesn't really go well considering that you've lost the ball in, in the same fashion three or four times there. Ice now goes for the three, puts it up good. But Rando with the rebound is oh, almost makes a break for it. But it's going to be Canada to steal the ball away there. Of course, instantly calling for a timeout as there was no teammates remaining to give the ball to. Yeah, sometimes the tactical timeouts are super important here. We've seen them, uh, you know, work different ways, almost going out of bounds as well. But Ice Rail, oh, gets blocked by Tactic. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm always the guy who loves the big guy plays. Just blocks. Absolutely. And I mean, they, they're so clean so far as well. Dogs puts up a huge three. Was that a three? That, no, no, that was two. That was two. He stepped on the line there. I mean, sometimes sometimes happens, you know, you slip, the ball slips a little, you step on the line. But Tactic, he gives it to Bohio right now. He gives an alley-oop, and that will go in by Iglo. Huge plays coming out here from Dominican Republic. And I like the switch-up plays as well. It's not just Bahio together with Tactic. But everyone is pitching in, really. Ice now, good dribble, finds Yusuf at the right time, and he slams it home. Yeah, okay, my prediction still stands. They're, they haven't passed the 10, uh, 10 point mark just yet, but uh, Tactics on the point of wanting to do that, definitely. Maybe could have tried to go in himself. The paint is open wide. If somebody were to go in, almost try to, but be careful of the three second violation. Never mind, there's a three pointer. Exactly, and we're talking about threes, and this time around, that's a three pointer too. Bahio, uh, Rano taking a break from the three pointers for a moment here. Uh, Ice again looking to set up. Yusuf asking for a pass, gets it. Passes it back to Sal. Could have tried to take the shot there, but wasn't 100%. Actually loses the ball. Gives a fast pass. Uh, tried to intercept, but Majestic somehow managed to keep the ball to himself. Bohio now with the ball. Maybe looking for Taktuk in the, in the paint there. But a beautiful steal from the Canadian player. Now Sal is again with the ball and gets two teamed. And that will be a personal foul. Yeah, nice foul there to stop the play from Canada. They still have 19 seconds to work with here, so definitely plenty of time to make something happen. Bahio is going to be screened against. And another foul, two times in a row. Now, now, now this is getting to be a little bit too much. Soon that bonus is going to come out, and, and th those will be free three throws. Yeah, well, here Dominican Republic just want to really run down the clock and not leave Canada with many options in terms of plays to happen. Um, it is going to be Doug's looking very good from the other corner this time around, and consecutive three-pointers from him as well. So it looks like he's ready to step up for Canada here. Seven-point lead for Dominican Republic as Bahio goes for a free-throw line jump shot. Gets that done. Again, that, what we saw from the previous games, you know, getting these 100% shots, it always counts. They don't have to be pretty, but this was pretty by Scarbs there. You know, dunks as always. Now, uh, you know, they, they most of the time has become 100% shots, but we've seen Tactic this game already block two of them, so. Uh, I.O. over to Majestic in the corner. Uh, look, uh, it's a corner three-pointer game on our hands right now. Still 10 points between the two. Dominican Republic sitting, well, I would say comfortably at a 10-point lead. Yusuf stopped on the three-point line as well. Can't really go for that shot. Forced to pass over back to Sab. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Sav opening up a lane for himself, not going for that shot. Ice back to Sav now. Yusuf trying to set up a screen. Three seconds remaining here. Ice will have to go for a shot. Takes it. And no good, but uh, Dominican Republic takes the ball. Rando gives it to Bohio. And uh, now he's looking. Oh, almost didn't, wasn't able to pass over. But Rando gets the ball and puts it in. And finally, extending the 10-point lead. There we go. My prediction goes away. 33 against 20. Scarbs with the ball again. If he was the person who could be able to, uh, to take the three pointers two times in a row, but yeah, those sadly, would be two he's opportunities. Not. Does ask for a pass and finds the dunk to finish things off as well. Catches Dominican Republic defense sleeping, makes great use of that. Ohio, you got to find the person who's lacking and you know just take the spot. Uh, go in, give all that you can, and uh, you know this is a hundred ten percent game. Not less, and Bahio definitely takes this and gets the three-point as well. 
Dominican Republic definitely feeling a little bit more, uh, you know, ready for this game, especially in the offense and, uh, you know, some of the players definitely in the defense, like Taktuk. Yeah, again, another steal will happen. Mid-pass here, Bahia on the three-point line is greeted by two different players defensively. Everyone is assuming positions right now. 12 seconds and a steal goes through. Fast turnover, Goon with a dunk to narrow things down for Canada, but still 36, 36 seconds remaining before halftime here. Can see, Canada come back into this? Let's see if Dominican Republic can actually also extend this. So uh, it can go both ways so far. Uh, but Tactic tries to go in for the alley you but a lucky touch there made the ball go in a different way. So now it's Goon with the ball. Gives it to Ice. That's a far three and it's good. Green is good and that's what he saw. Nine point lead for Dominican Republic right now and with 13 seconds remaining before halftime, Bahia will be looking to run down the clock and perhaps go for that final shot. Looking to see if someone's going to go for a steal. Not this time around. Nice dribble. Fake pumps it. Majestic from the corner to put up the three. It's good with one point seconds remaining before half and Dominican Republic are running a dominant game right now. Yeah, 12 points ahead. Thirty-nine to twenty-seven in favor of Dominican Republic coming into this second half, and so far they have been super precise in the three-point department, uh, and specifically Rando. Yeah, Domin Dominican Republic so far. Rando has given the most of the three-pointers we've seen so far, even in this game. I, don't, I think there's been a lot of dunks from the Canadian side, but uh, they need to work on the many points as well. But Scarbs actually could have gone for it now. Dugs. Uh, gets another three-pointer. Now he's been precise uh, in this whole game in in, in the first uh, second and twelve yeah. uh, half as I'm well. I'm pretty sure this was his uh, third three-pointer. In the meantime, during the first quarter in the game between Puerto Rico and Honduras, Puerto Rico are in a commanding lead, 33 against nine. Yeah, definitely a different story in our game where Dominican Republic is only nine points in front of Canada. So this could be anyone's game still. Uh, now, actually, a beautiful steal coming out. Sal with the ball, and there's a foul. Good foul, good foul. Yeah, yeah, stopping, of course, the breakaway play, slowing things down um, for Canada here. 21 seconds still remaining. Yusuf, Yusuf putting the ball back into play instantly goes for a screen play here as well to allow some movement for Ice to work with. Another screen set up for him, too. Jumps go out, but it's going to be Goon from the left-hand side corner to put up the three for Canada. Now, all I could say for Dominican Republic, so that they don't chase on your tail, you have to look out from the sidelines. Because because Ducks has been giving three uh, three three-pointers in a row, and now it's Goon as well. I think more most of them have also come from him as well. But Tektuk now was in a good spot, giving it back to Rando. Iglo, you know, getting, getting defended by the player there, Bohio as well. Three seconds running down on the shot clock, and there's a foul, a shooting foul. So two three, three throws are going to be going out for the Dominican Republic. Yeah, I really feel like Tactic could have just gone for the drive there and finished things off himself instead of opted in for the pass. Okay, this time around it resulted in free throws, so there will be points gained as Bohio nails the first and the second. But you can see that they want to go for those three-pointers there. If Tactic, uh, you know, since he is the captain of the team, that's what he probably did. He was like, okay, we don't want to get these two-pointers, we want to get a three-pointer. But, uh, you know, sometimes just take these 100% shots, as we say. But Scarps now going in and getting an easy two-pointer uh, from uh, the under, under the hoop. Six-point lead for Dominican Republic still, but Canada are slowly coming back into this here. So, really, Dominican Republic can't allow themselves to take any... Uh, advantages for granted given to them, obviously, tactic there. Slams it home, gets the easy two, and extends the lead a bit further here with still three and three minutes and five seconds remaining. Ice! A difficult shot to take there. Felt like it was contested, but it was all green all around the board, and of course, that results in gained points yet again for Canada. Yeah, the difference now is back to five points, so... Uh uh, Dominican Republic definitely has lost some of the advantage that they had in the previous half, but Sal 
with an easy place, could have gone for the two, but Ice World from the far gets to three. You know, two is worse than three, so that's what they did so far. Only two point difference now. Ooh, Dominican Republic, Berwa Chak, is kind of is on your footsteps. Yeah, Goon as well for Canada has 13 points to his name. Great job from him, but overall, I'd say all across the board, great performance coming up from Canada. Truly playing an even game here with Dominican Republic. And Obviously, the scoreline speaks for itself. Bahio goes for a jump shot. Tactic there to try and grab the rebound, but it's going to be in Canada's favor. Ice with a long two. And, and that will be tied. Absolutely. Game tied on our hands here. Two minutes and ten seconds remaining to play in the third quarter here. And we spoke about this a few times already today. The third quarter can be absolutely crucial, but when the games are so close, it all rides on the fort here. Bahio with the three. Yeah, after a missed alley, you're getting that three is what you need, especially in this situation. Dominican Republic wants to win, the same as Canada. So none of them will be giving up before it's the fourth quarter's past two seconds. Absolutely. Ice has activated his avatar now. So let's see what he can make of that. Try to go for a pass over to the left-hand side corner, but... Went out of bounds and now it's Canada's ball with nine seconds on the shot clock. Ice Rail could have gone from the under there, but gives a pass back anyway to Scarbs and gets it in. It's funny how you go outside and you still give the pass back into the into the paint and he just puts it in. So, you know. He just needed to make sure he could draw plenty of defensive players to him so they would leave Yusuf open and, and it worked out in their favor. Um, Slightly dangerous pass in my opinion, but obviously if there's no defensive players around, it doesn't matter too much as long as Yusuf is able to pick that one up. Bahia needs to be careful there, close to the midcourt line as well. And 15 seconds on the clock here, needs to avoid any unnecessary errors, tries to break some ankles, gets the drive in, slams it home. We haven't seen him go in for those drives for a little while, but that was because the first two times he tried to do it, he got blocked. So uh, a good choice from him to finally go back and try it again and finally getting those two points anyway. Israel with the, at the three-point line, giving it to Scarbs. And again, switching back passes. You got to look at the sidelines. Exactly, that's what they do, but they miss it. Scarbs still with the ball, gets it and dunks it in, slams it down as uh, only one point differs now. In parallel, Puerto Rico playing against Honduras after the second quarter. The score is 56 to 11 in favor of Puerto Rico. Bohio with the ball in our game and goes in for the drive. Easy two points and now 50 mark is uh, getting crossed by the Dominican Republic. But Canada is sure to follow soon. Israel with the ball again. It looks like he was he's taking up the point guard situation from Saw now. And, you know, maybe not his luckiest game, so he's going to give it to Icewell now. Uh, looking again still to find an opening. Nobody's on the sidelines, but it's Goon and missing the shot. A very unfortunate one indeed. Yeah, Canada really trying to play through Goon here, trying to get him for an open shot, but still fortunately misses in some of those situations. Tactic now on the three-point line. Five more seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Ohio comes in for a Ooh. great play. Rebound is good for Tactic to make another attempt here, but it's not going to happen as the third quarter finishes. In the last five minutes in a game between Dominican Republic and Canada here, again, very important game for Dominican Republic to see if they can grab the win and get into those grand finals here for Canada. I'm not really sure they can make it through if they grab the win here, but don't trust my math on that one. We'll have to trust the standings afterwards. Bahio now. Yeah, definitely. We're better at speaking than uh, uh, doing math equations. But now Dogs with the ball actually came up with a great block in the previous uh, quarter there. We're giving it back to Sal. Maybe he's going to take the point guard position back and uh, looking for a three-pointer maybe. I can't find one. Gives it to Ice Real again. Now look at look at the left side. Look at Ice Goon. Is uh, like Goon is being completely defended, but Scarps just goes in for the alley oop again, making it only one point difference. Four minutes and twenty seconds on the clock here. Bahio contested in terms of even trying to get over that midcourt line. Tactic trying to set up a screen to even up. Uh, the playing field here, passing to the right, IGL left wide open, gets the three through, and that is a bit of a taste of your own medicine, Goon. Yeah, you know, the defense here is just incredible, but every time you let one open, you let one open player for at least a second, that's it, there goes, the pass goes to him, and there's a three-pointer in, and you're down by three again, but Scarbs just puts it in again, finds his open spot, and goes.
You where don't he needs to go. leave Yusuf open in paint like that. Surely two points will follow here. And it is a two-point game on our hands here. Yes, Dominican Republic are still in the lead, but slightly struggling here to answer. Mojillo with the ball, you know, trying to find even more points because this point difference is definitely not comfortable from them. They don't want to go into overtime as well because that's a tricky spot. But one second on the shot clock, he takes the easy two. You know, a, sh a, a jump shot there. Uh, might not be the prettiest, but that's the best you can do there. A points talk instead of the fashion how those were gotten <laughs> in. A ice now, long pass over to Gouin into the corner. Rando wasn't even trying to, to defend him. I mean, he knew that he, that shot was not going to go in. <laughs> yeah, it was obviously a, a difficult shot to take considering the pass was not, not really on par there. Or, or it's hard to say was it the pass's problem or was it just Gouin not ready for it. Perhaps the call just came in slightly too late over comms there. We really can't uh, know for sure. Four-point game on our hands. Two minutes and 50 seconds here and a lot on the line for Dominican Republic. I really... Obviously, they're not going to be feeling too comfortable with that sort of a score line. Now, there is going to be personal foul drawn here, so it's going to be Yusuf to put the ball back into play for Canada. 21 seconds still to work with, so not the end of the world. Ice has been slightly quiet for the past few minutes in the three-point department. Let's see if he can perhaps make up for it. Yusuf looking did. for a pass, but it's going to be Ice to put up the three. Yeah, he's been a little bit quiet because Dominican Republic has definitely uh, put their eyes on him. But now, as you can see, again, he took a little free time there. He had an opportunity. He's going to take it. Now, Tactic with the ball uh, gets uh, pretty much two teams there, but that's a jump ball. So we're going to see who's going to get it. Yeah, and with a single point between the two, obviously, both are going to be quite eager to get the ball in their favor. Let's see who's it going to be to take it home here for another chance to score in this fourth quarter. It's going to be Canada this time around as Dugs does get it. And there's going to be Sav now in position. Oh, this is a big turnout. If they get this shot, Canada for the first time in this game is going to be in uh, in front. Or maybe the second time, you know, at the start they could have uh, switched fast. But Ice doesn't have any space to work with. Gives it to Scarps. He's going to try to go in himself. Uh, tactic is in there as well. Ice, uh, time is running out. Has to shoot. Uh, but no good, and now Dominican Republic has the chance to, you know, uh, take this uh, opportunity to widen the gap. A lot of question marks in my head off of that play because I really feel like Yusuf should have just gone for a shot. It didn't seem to be a big of a problem, especially with two seconds remaining. But okay, Tactic with a huge <laughs> dunk. What <laughs> that alley you? Did you see that hand going behind and still slamming it in? Now that is what you call professional. He ex he expected that. He knew he's gonna he's gonna be able to take that. But now they need a three to make the tie game tied again. Ice with the ball, looking for an opportunity, going for the alley you but misses, and the ball is lost now into Dominican Republic hands. Bahia gets defended there, but that will be a timeout. Yeah, it was getting a bit too hectic for Dominicans. Uh, so they call the timeout to reset the play. 18 seconds, still plenty of time for. Uh, to see if they can score here. Bahio back over to Tactic there, looking for his friend. Bit of a cluster of players happening. That's always a dangerous situation. Easily a steal can go through in that moment. And a nice interception from Dugs there. Saw the play already happening and a foul drawn. It's going to be a shooting foul, but obviously, as the coach says, says this one is justified. It was a score either way. Yeah, you know, two points or maybe one point. It's, it's better that way, but it probably seeming as late as it's Goon who's shooting. There's still two points going in. And again, a one point difference. Now, I wasn't expecting it to be this close. Yeah, I, I mean, if you're looking at the standings, they definitely tell a different story here. But Canada bringing out the big guns, showing that they are still in this tactic with the layup. Finds the correct timing on it. Still a three-point game here. Let's see if Doug Zorikes can put it up for his team. You know, it's one basket to get the tie, and it's one basket to get away from a really scary situation. So who's it going to be, Canada or Dominican Republic first? Or it's, you know, 30 seconds left. They might not even have a chance. Scarves actually puts it back in in a one-point difference. If they do manage to steal the ball and get the get it uh, the bucket in, that's it, game. But a foul coming out, so, you know, wasting a little bit of a time, but it's, it's going to be a hard one for Canada to fill in. 
Again, really, this is the moment where every single second counts. Ideally, Dominican Republic would like to get a three-pointer at the very last second. That would leave very little room for Canada to work with here. Bahio is going to be running down the clock here. Tactic doing his best to open up the lane. Gets the three-pointer. 15 seconds remaining, though, so there is still time to come back into this. Canada calling for a timeout, getting those players across the court. 62 to 58. Four-point difference needed here. Really a tall order to ask for Canada. And can they make it happen? It's going to be Yosef to go in for that two-pointer. And he doesn't get it in that... That, I think that's game. Yeah, Tactic calls foul. out. Of course there's a foul, but it's in the bonus already. So Tactic on the free throw line secures the deal pretty much here for Dominican Republic. Unless Canada can pull off some sort of crazy miracle right now. But they need six points to even the game. That's two three-pointers. Sav trying to do his best over to ice, but not enough time for anything to happen here. And that is going to be Dominican Republic securing that very needed win with the slightest of margins. That was so close. Four-point difference in the end. Oh, six-point difference in the end. I'm sorry, but I, I wasn't expecting that. That was a one-point difference until the last 30 seconds. Yeah. Well, did you expect this kind of a game? Look, uh, I was not expecting it for it to be so close. I'm very pe pleased to see that um, Goon was very prolific in the three-point department in the left-hand side corner. But as soon as they started to uh, pretty much exclude him out, that is, uh, Dominican Republic started to cover him a bit more actively. Obviously, that stopped. And really, those were the few missing three-pointers that Canada really needed here um, to get it done. Ice was unable to put those up as well in parallel. After the third quarter, Puerto Rico going up against Honduras. Current scoreline is 81 to 22. So Puerto Rico looking to run away with another dominating win here. And obviously that is going to put us in a bit of an interesting situation if you're looking at the overall standings here, which are already updated. And currently Dominican Republic are sitting in second. Now uh, we'll, we have some more games, four more games to watch, one more game to find out the score of, but you know, probably Puerto Rico is going to take the dub there. I mean, still thinking about this game, Tactic, he really went into tactics here and, you know, managed to prove the calm, uh, the, you know, the mind. They, they're going to get it. They're going to get these two points when needed. They're going to go for the three point that they so needed in the last point, making Canada maybe unsure. Because before, with the one point difference, you think, okay, if we just get the steal, we're good. We can go into the yeah. points. But if you get the four point difference, that already makes a different kind of a y scenario. You obviously, ideally, in the last seconds, you want to put the opponent in a position where they need two separate baskets in order to even, even out the game itself. So, uh, great job from Dominican Republic. Showed great composure. Were able to recognize the problem that they were having um, against Goon being too open at times and I mean a great Valorant attempt from Canada here on the big stage. Now um, we need to put our eyes on the next upcoming game and that is going to be USA going up against Costa Rica here. Um, USA on paper really should have no trouble doing this. As always we are hopeful to see a close game especially coming out from Costa Rica again on the big international stage here. A lot is on the line, a lot of pride and a lot of important points to be handed out on to either of the teams here. So let's just hope it's going to be a close one this time around. Obviously, USA have shown us that, you know, the very first game that we saw them was a loss and it felt like they just shook it off. And from that point on, they haven't dropped a game here. So I would be surprised if they if they'll do it here. Yeah, well, this be the last game for them before uh, before the potential grand finals if they get into them uh, looks like in a good way there but i want to talk about costa rica they do have bandit on their team in the pre the last team that last match that i watched that they commentated on i mean he did great work there he, he yeah. was definitely dominating before uh, sadly afterwards he got dropped out of the game because of technical issues but okay he he, he proved immensely just a different gameplay that i've never seen before almost 50 points just to his name so obviously a lot is going to be riding on Bandit's shoulders here, seeing if we can uh, perhaps experience another performance the likes of he had previously. So let's have a look at the lineups here as well and just quickly remind you guys who's going to be playing for who. So on the side of United States, you're going to have JB, MNY, Original, Malix, uh, Crushraf, a Real Ramo, and a little Lady 87. And we have Bandit, uh, Illuminati, Underrated, She Love Nilks, and Bold 97. 
Uh, so, you know, what I said from Costa Rica, definitely banned it on that side. But uh, I want to see, I, I wasn't able to comment it before on the Little Lady 87. You you were the one commentating there, and you said she, she did a great job as well. So Absolutely. It's, it's Playing that center position, being seen and known, as well as able to box players out, able to get those rebounds consistently as well. Obviously, when 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 you have a solid center like that, it just leaves all more space for the three pointers, for the point guards um, to to really have a go at it because you can be confident in having those rebounds and having second chances of having another go of getting those big points on the board here again on the side of Costa Rica. As you mentioned, Bandit has been very impactful, underrated as well to my memory. He did an excellent performance showing what he's capable of. But obviously, if you look at the age here, um, you know, the experience is in favor of United States. The players themselves as well have been uh, participating in many different tournaments, different leagues as well on Costa Rica's side. Um, the players on paper have slightly less experience, but again, that opens up room for cre creativity here because for Costa Rica, really, it's free reign um, to try anything they'd like. Um, while we're uh, talking here in the meantime, we do have a finish on that Puerto Rico-Honduras game, and it's 110 to 27. So obviously a dominant performance coming out from Puerto Rico. Honduras have again gained um, valuable lessons and we can see here how this does change the overall standings a bit here but still it's it's too early to say how this will look after what we have one, two, three, four more games. Yeah, and, and in the end, we also also have to look. If there is going to be a tiebreaker, there, we're going to have to look at the respected games, not just the point differences, but it's going to be a little bit of a closer math situation happening there. We'll, we'll see that later. Hopefully, uh, you know, anything... In, also, I don't want to ruin change. the surprise. Yeah, I don't want to ruin the surprise, and I want to. I want to see more games played out before we actually make any presumptions. Exactly. So let's leave it up uh, to the production team behind the scenes to make sure that we have the two finalists in play here. Um, but yeah, look, South America Grand Finals were something to watch, and looking at these score lines and how certain countries are. Uh, performing on the big stage here i would presume these grand finals are going to be even closer still these are going to be played in a best of three fashion whoever does get to uh, get into those so still one country will need to obtain two victories to their name um to make sure that they'll be able to crown winners and i'm i'm very honored to be here to for the very first time to actually see north and central america uh countries play on the big international stage because we finally also have a better idea what what sort of national level is at stake here. Yeah, and and, and for that matter, I, I just wish at some point in the future we're going to be able to see how uh, different conferences and uh, you know play in different uh, styles. Imagine Europe playing with NA, NA, you know, North America and Central America or South America playing against uh, Southeast Asia and Oceania. You know, these clash of styles will be so interesting to see, but for now we can only dream and, you know, think about it in our minds, how, how that would change the, the game. Yeah. In the meantime, we are waiting for a USA to join up uh, with Costa Rica on the server, and I believe we do have a game ready, so let's have a look and see between USA and Costa Rica who's going to come out on top. All right, the game is already on the way here, straight into the action. JB on the three-point line, and it's going to be his team. I didn't get to see the name there uh, to open Crush up. Up. Yeah, that was Crush Raft with the three-pointer. Right-hand side corner, we get to see him there play quite often. Bandit, the player we spoke about beforehand, and you definitely one you should pay attention to. Bull in position, over to Bandit, open to take a shot. Takes a contested one instead. It's going to be Illuminati to get the rebound there. And of course, just a little reminder, Costa Rica is in the red uniforms, USA is in the white. And, you know, just putting up three more points there, 6 nil so far, USA would have a strong start. 6 nil on a full minute already has passed here as Bull 
Looking to see perhaps if he can go for a three here. Tries to go for a drive play. Difficult shot to take. Almost goes in as well, but it rattles out here. JB on the three-point line. Fast pass over to Real Ramo. That is a pass out onto the three-point line. Realizing he can't really do much here again this time around. It's going to be Malik. He's looking for an opportunity as well. Gives one to Real Ramo under the paint, but that... That would have been a three-second violation as well, but it went out of bounds. And now it's Yusei's ball uh, back to him now. 4.6. Four, yeah, not a lot. Seconds. And a foul coming out for the reach-in. So actually resetting the shot clock to 14 seconds. Good for the USA. Yeah, not sure was that was, was that somehow triggered by USA. So obviously excellent tactical play. A little late, 87. Puts up the two for the team, and that makes it 8-0 to nil so far in 3 minutes and 25 seconds still remaining here. We are yet to see Costa Rica score here. You know, we have way too little afros in the game so far, so I'm happy that a little lady went for the afro there. It's easy to spot, uh, but Bandit with the ball goes for the far three. Still unlucky with them, and now USA is up for another uh, attack there for another offense, giving it to original Malik. He's going to take the far three, but this one is going to go in clean. Yeah, so far so good for USA. Obviously, the point differential is going to be something that might come in crucial in those overall standings, and USA are going to be looking relentless here. They will take every single opportunity that will present itself. Cross there as well, trying to get the steal in, Bulls three-pointer doesn't make it through. The rebound is still in favor of Costa Rica here. So still eight seconds to work with. Bandage, five to shoot. Gives the pass, but it's going to be falling straight into USA's hands here. JB on the three. Over to Crush in the corner, and he rattles it home with another three-pointer. 14 to nil, and two minutes and 15 seconds remaining to play. Costa Rica has to find a way to open up the score. Otherwise, you know, you can't really get the motivation to go yet. Again, taking these taking these hard trees, you know, sometimes you just got to go closer, get these two points for the start, and then you can maybe get some three-pointers in as well. But Malik now completely free, gets the three-pointer as well. Uh, not even contested there. Yeah, Costa Rica still looking to score here in this first quarter. Full three minutes have passed already. Will it be Illuminati to open things up? It's going to be passed over to Underrated. He's going to be stopped there on the three-pointer line, put in a difficult position. Nice steal happening. Long pass from a little lady, and it's going to be crushed to take things home again with another two-pointer. 19-0. I haven't seen that yet. Uh, Bandit gonna try to maybe change things up a bit because you know that zero doesn't sit well with neither one of them and in that's oh. an eight second violation gotta get you, past that a little bit faster you don't want to have those especially look it's not like Bandit didn't have time to get over the half court there so really just you know, perhaps some talks are in play and he just forgot about the timer there. A little lady puts up a nice dunk as well. Click, quick, clean passing so far from USA. And you love to see a clean game like this. 21 to nothing so far. Reach in foul coming out from USA here. So game reset. 16 seconds on the shot clock here. Illuminati to put the ball back into play. Over to Bandit. Gives it to Mixty there. Uh, back to Bandit, has to try to take a shot somewhere. Whenever you're free, uh, gives a far pass. Actually, really, uh, you know, a scary pass. They're both still with the ball. Two seconds on the shot clock, has to try, and uh, no good. A little lady actually gets the ball back, and that will be an alley-oop for two more points for USA. 23-0, uh, first time in the tournament, I think. It's definitely, I can't remember if we'd been so close to a finish of first quarter, so I'm pretty sure you're right there. This should be a first, and will this be a uh, first time with a zero on the board before the when the buzzer rings? Yeah, but again, another steal by a little lady so far doing great in the defense there. She said she loves her defense play, so she's been showing that uh, effortlessly. Lee, now Long. a shot goes and still no good. 14 seconds. They could leave Costa Rica with zero points in the first quarter. That would be a first time uh, ever in USA. Malik coming in again wow. with the three-pointer here. 26 to nothing. Five seconds on the clock here. Can Costa Rica do this and come back with a point or two? No, it is going to be the first quarter with a team unable to score. Everything's going to change in the second quarter, hopefully for uh, 
Team Costa Rica now at Mixley with the ball. Go in for the two. It's still no good. I think it's just unlucky. They don't They don't have. It's some sort of magnet going around that doesn't let the ball go in. But on the other side, USA can pretty much drop any ball from anywhere. It does look like it. Crush putting up another three-pointer. And I mean, all around, USA looking to be very strong. Obviously, one of the contenders for the title here. And it just goes to show 29 to nothing. JB with a far two. Extends it to 31. Now that is a lead that I haven't seen, but Bull with the ball, hopefully opening up the score underrated from the sidelines there. They need to take a timeout and think about an underrated. Still has to find an opportunity. Now Bull with the ball. It gives a fart shot, but still no good. You got to find these 100% chances, not take these risky shots. But meanwhile, on the other hand, Crush just uh, puts it in. And more troubles are plaguing Costa Rica here. It looks like one of the players has dropped and you have an AI as a replacement. Two AIs actually, but finally one of them is able to score. So 34 to 2. Yeah, now losing the ball midway has a chance to get the points in, but no good. And there's a foul coming out. Uh, looked like a shooting foul, so he's going to be able to get two uh, free throws going out there. Maybe... Uh, increasing the points to four. Yeah, well, look, everyone that could potentially go up against USA in the grand finals if they make it through, we're just looking at the overall standings. They're hoping that they won't be able to score huge here, but, you know, having two AI players on your side, <laughs> what can you really do here? JB puts up a wide open three here, 37 to four before halftime and still three minutes and 20 seconds in play. Yeah, Jaminski with the ball right now passes to the AI. Bull again should go for a threes. I've seen him do a lot of damage with these three-pointers, but not having the opportunity to shoot them. Underrated with the ball now and uh, uh, back. And that doesn't go in as well. Now a little lady actually takes the rebound there and looks like... Malik is going to get another three, making it uh, over to 40 points already. Look, both Malik and Crush looking extra crispy sharp on the three-point sector here today. And I mean, look, anyone watching here trying to figure out what they need to do against USA, first you need to figure out what you're going to do with these three-pointers. USA has three people that can shoot at will for the three. Dunk as well, obviously. And a little lady will be there to pick up the rebounds if needed. Crush is yet to miss a shot. Yeah, the defense so far from USA has been just incredible. And they, sh they definitely should work on this if they were, were to go into the grand finals. You know, this is the last game. If they win, they're, they're pretty much settled to go there. But every practice counts. So keep, keep doing that. Keep doing that. You've been great. And JB just taking this far three. He's just testing to see if he can make it from there. And obviously... Looks to be a no problem for him. Minksy, with the breakaway play, decides to pass it out to the three-point line. Minksy back again with the ball. You know, somehow wounds up in his hands. Now, is he going to be trying to go for a shot there? Has to find an opportunity, but the pass gets intercepted. And now, uh, an easy jump shot from the free throw line. Yeah, USA running a very dominant game here. JB as well, putting up those 10 for his country. But really, it's all around the board here for USA. And instantly going in as well, not allowing Bull to score or have any chance at doing so easily. JB already posted up for that three-pointer and, of course, gets it done. 50-4 to four before halftime and a minute and 20 still remaining. Yeah, definitely. This could go in for the 100 uh, points game for I'll USA. I'll be surprised if it doesn't. I'll be surprised if it doesn't at this point in time because, you know, even if you work out the average here, 25 per quarter, it still should it's go. happening. Yeah, little lady goes Ooh. in for the dunk, jumps over underrated like he's not even there. Exactly. And no real attempt there. Nice interception by a little lady. Good overtaken. Malik with another three-pointer. Can anyone even stop this man? Imagine going in for the dunk and running back to get the interception, giving a pass and allowing to get two or three more points going out. And that's all by one person. Yeah, Malik also on fire right now. Slightly unfortunate. He got possession of the ball but was out of bounds already. So 
The ball is going to be given back over to Costa Rica here, who are looking to see if they can get into double digits before halftime. Nice steal for USA. Pass over to JB. And he does it from the left wing as well. Another three-pointer for him here. And this is just a feels-good game for USA all over, uh, overall. Yeah, Bull with the ball right now, trying for the three as well, but unlucky. I, you know, this is a game where you just have to go in, back to the drawing board, and think about what did I do wrong? Where did we, where did we mess up? And how can we fix that? Yeah, I mean, look. 18 points to three players, if I saw that correctly, on USA's side. So, obviously, the guards are doing work. The <laughs> I, I cannot not agree with you. And now JB with the ball. Let's see if he's going to actually take the far shot with only 12 seconds on the shot clock. Will he be running out the time? Nope, just testing grounds and still shooting those threes in. Costa Rica has a chance to get some points back in the last seven seconds. 6-5 to respond here. Minx T, can he make something happen? 2-1 makes an attempt. Not good. We're back for the second half here between USA and Costa Rica, and it is a very dominant show so far coming out from the state 64 to 6 in their favor as the third quarter begins and another attempt from Costa Rica. Minxie with the ball right now trying to get those points back and you know at least making it a little different because you know you're still playing for the pride you, you still want to do as much as you can sometimes you know some games you just have to lose you can't do anything you're a little unlucky and you haven't done the best uh, strat that you could come up with, but underrated with the ball yard now. Uh, there were two, uh, you know, interceptions uh, back and forth there, but a little old, a little lady gets the ball, gives a far pass to Crush, actually gives an alley-you back in a beautiful dunk. You, you know, these fast plays, the only sport where that, where that can happen is in basketball. Yeah, look, uh, oh my god, another interception from a little lady there over to JB instantly. Another three-pointer goes through and Obviously, this is a bit of a done deal right now, but for Costa Rica, currently this game is a matter of seeing if they can throw a stick in USA's wheels and perhaps deny the chance of them getting into the grand finals. So still worth fighting for every single basket. Never give up in these games. You don't know what you're going to gain out of it at the end of it all. Bull 97 now greeted by two defensive players. You can see USA very eager to take every single opportunity that they can. JB with the play on the three-point line, opens up a lane for himself, shoots, and of course scores when there's no one to contest that. At this point, he could have taken a step back and tested, hey, can I still shoot from here? Oh, one step further, yeah. Yeah, but a bull with the ball right now. I want to see some threes from him, but sadly, that's going to be a backcourt violation. Even professionals sometimes manage to do that, and, you know, that's nothing. That's just human error there. When you're so focused on passing the ball forward, you might forget what's behind your back, and that was the backcourt, uh, midcourt line there. Now... It's going to be underrated. Ooh, loses the ball right on the line there. And it's going to be Malik from the left wing. Very far three. And, of course, goes through as well. It feels like a bit of a three-point contest here for USA in between themselves. Yeah, I mean, probably they want to they want to see who has the best stats. And, and to mind, they are still playing for that MVP, uh, the Tissot watch. So, you know, the, the better show you play on us here, uh, the better uh, their chances are of being the MVP but now uh, Costa Rica gets these two points, uh, the easy jump shot there. And JB is going to try in for another three maybe or yeah, just just Ghost. the same old. Well, one thing to anyone watching here to note is obviously when USA are presented, we'll just going to go ahead and say it with easy op shot opportunities like this. Um, you get to learn what are USA's players' favorite positions to shoot from. Because obviously, if you have a free chance to score, um, most likely you're going to go uh, for those attempts from your comfort zone. So you have that 100% uh, chance on your side, right? So uh, if you play close attention to, and if you are still looking to go up against the USA potentially or for real, then take note where these players are taking their shots from. And, you know, for USA, this is still great practice to find even new spots where they want to shoot against, you know, because why, why not? The international stage is still a place where you can practice. And JB gets two points, actually, from this one. You could have could have gone for the three points, kind of time there. But 
33 points on him and I think 20 more on two different players on the on USA. Roughly around that mark, roughly around that. Minxty holding on to the ball here, running down the clock, not really going for a play, not sure what's happening here. Perhaps these batteries died on the controller, hopefully not. <laughs> of yeah, course, if he uses pass. one, uh, eventually went for a pass there, but of course it's going to be JB to respond and gets it in as well. Slightly early release there, but the ball rattles through. 83 to 8. Couldn't imagine I'm going to say that score line, but here we are. A minute and 20 on the clock in the third quarter here. Can Costa Rica break into the double digits? Anything can happen on the FIB Sports uh, Open. So, you know, this kind of a score, it just sometimes happens. You know, we've seen Costa Rica perform greatly against other teams. And sometimes, you know, you say maybe it's a little bit too much for them. But now, three more points on Team USA. Let's see. Can they beat the, can they beat the top score? I, I don't think they can. No, it doesn't look like it really here. Nice attempt, but you would have to score insanely in the fourth quarter if you're USA. 45 seconds on the clock. A three-point attempt from Costa Rica. He's going to rattle out this time around. Long pass from a little lady. Crush able to regain control of the ball there. JB, left wing, not going to happen this time around. But a little lady is there to pick up the rebound. And it's going to be Malik to get the three. Three points. <laughs> the biggest, uh, by the way, score point, point scores to say is by Canada, 151. So um, I want to see if anyone can actually beat that, but uh, I'm not sure if they can. I think that's going to be a hard task for anyone to actually manage. But uh, everything's still up on the table now, underrated with the ball, uh, wasting down time, giving it to Mixty, and uh, looking, trying to go for the shot himself, and good rebound there, still gets it, is trying to go in for the dunk, but that will be a foul in a shooting one. So two free throws for Costa Rica to be able to go into double digits in the third quarter. Let's see if Ming Stee can make it happen here. 4.9 seconds remaining as well. So USA will have one more chance to score here before the third quarter finishes if they're fast enough. Ming Stee gets the two in and gets the 10 points on the board for Costa Rica here. 89 for USA and Malik with a three point attempt. Not gonna be good this time around. That's gonna be the buzzer for the third quarter. USA starting off the fourth quarter there. The five minutes are starting up and uh, nope, they're going to cross the 100 mark, but we'll see how far they can go. Uh, I don't exactly remember their highest score so far exactly for uh, USA, but they might have a chance to break it. Real ram on out to put the ball back. JB holding on and a little lady to dunk it and take it home 91 to 10. USA again starting very strong here and a little lady here as well. 11 rebounds. Uh, especially since Costa Rica hasn't been uh, taking so many shots. Well, they have been taking shots, but most of them have been unlucky. And getting these 11 rebounds has been, you know, very crucial uh, for Make the it 12 point now. score. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, talking about defense, they're absolutely unstoppable. And putting up one for the ladies. JB, of course, again with the three-pointer. Four minutes and 15 seconds on the clock here. 84-point lead for USA. Looking to extend that even further. Costa Rica, 12 seconds to shoot. Is it going to be bold to make that attempt? Uh, definitely wasting down time. But the shot clock goes out. A steal comes out. And now Crush is going to be putting two points in. Costa Rica with the ball right now. Mixty here is looking around to maybe finally put up the score a little bit higher and then before and uh you know i still gotta say the usa's defense at the start was just incredible absolutely they shut everything down and that score line just tells the tale here for us fourth quarter three and a half minutes remaining 86 points make it 89 between the two like what's what's more to add there we don't need a Twitch chat poll to know who's going to be grabbing the win here. <laughs> Underrated with the ball right now. Maybe going for a three-pointer himself. Actually is going for a three-pointer himself. Almost goes in. Okay, that's just unlucky. Okay, that was a, a very good attempt. Nobody expected that. Actually, you know, this is quite a, a fun play that they're doing so far. Maybe creating a new tactic. Just make sure uh, that... To look like you're looking for a pass, but actually taking the shot at the last second, and boom, almost goes in. 
Deception. Should have gone in. Yeah, Deception, the name of the game there. JB slowing things down a bit here. A little lady comes in to set up the screen. JB is going to go for a play here. <laughs> no, he's Fakes not. Fakes out two jumps, takes it back to the three-point line and gets it through. It was only two, though. His toes were on the line there. He took the defensive players with him and made a little turn around around roundabout, and then he took a shot himself. Bull trying to look for a pass, but he's getting guarded there. And uh, gives it to Mixty there on the side. Is he going to go for the shot himself, or is he going to look for someone else there? By the way, I still love that blue Mohawk there. You know, you can see him from a mile away. Bull, I haven't seen him taking a lot of three-pointers, but that's just because the USA's defense is just so incredibly good. Yeah, you even get the shot clock violation there as well with 2 minutes and 15 seconds remaining before the game runs out here. And uh, yeah, USA, of course, looking to secure a maximum point lead possible to their name is potentially coming in crucial. So let's see how this plays out in the last two minutes here as the next game is going to be between um, Canada and Honduras. Now, JB has the ball to himself. He's going to be... It's, it's sort of been like the JB show so far. Well, he has 40% of the USA points to his name <laughs> alone. So, you know, we, we get to mention that name a few times here. Mixty again with the ball. Almost doing the fake shot there, you know, tricking again, doing the deception now, gives a pass, and finally he goes in, and those three points are added to Costa Rica. Uh, for a long time, they ha they weren't able to get any points, and that's just because of USA. Now, they, they have to use this defense as much as they can, and they've been doing it, and it's, you can see that they've worked hard to refine it. Absolutely. I mean, the plays are on par all across the board. Malik fake pumps it as well, takes it back closer to midcourt, goes for that long three, gets it done. And with a minute and 15 to spare, Costa Rica 13, a steal coming in from Crush and goes for the three-point attempt. A little lady with the rebound is good as well, and real Ramo to take it home. And look, USA all fired up here, looking to get the maximum amount of points they can possibly can with a minute and five seconds remaining here. Costa Rica left absolutely speechless on the court right now. Bull struggling to even present the pass opportunity as he has too many people to work with here and too little time. Tries to go for an individual play. Eventually will lose the ball. Crush is, Crush is gonna take it out. Uh, and I did just, he make the shot? I, did, I, I missed the shot. I thought he went for a pass there. But. He did make the shot there. That was, I think, a three-pointer or two-pointer. May, could have stepped on the line, but I want to say that I was looking at the five activated avatars on Team USA. You know, they they ready uh, and it sh shows for the score. Now with 33 minutes still left in the game, 32 make that 118 versus 13. Now that is uh, that is a dominant game by Team USA here, of course. Yeah, absolutely. You reach and foul in play, so the game is going to be reset with a fresh. Shot clock here, but not enough time for Costa Rica really to do much. Pass over to the AI. Three-point attempt, not good. Minx there to take up the rebound. Actually gets a steal there, and Crush is going to go in. I wanted to say he's going to go in and, and crush the hoop there, but still giving passes. And now Malik actually trying out the far range to see how, seeing how fast he can shoot. But five seconds left and actually gets this one. You know, second try is lucky, so now only five seconds left. And the game will be over. What well, at least gets the two pointers still back in? The, uh, you know, a, a, a little prize at the end there. Um, timeout called as well, just to get the players uh, across the court there. And another attempt with three seconds remaining is going to come out from USA here. As expect Malik to put the up fire. the three, but not this time around. And that is going to be it. Obviously, a very commanding game coming out from USA here and looking very strong as it, within their own region, as well as obviously during this game. I really have no words here. I mean, sometimes uh, a team, you know, just shows their dominance at the start. And for Costa Rica, I, honestly, I got to say, the start was so unlucky. None of the baskets went in. All of the shots were a little poorly timed, and, and that's what crushed them. I think how Costa Rica should look at this would be, okay, well, firstly, in terms of what should, they should try to do is obviously see if they can work with these guards putting up those three-pointers. Obviously, all three players were able to do that continuously and not necessarily off of the lacking defense at times. They were just simply too good with those individual plays. If you look on a bit more global scale in terms of how Costa Rica should look at this, you know, it's 
try to put yourself in both positions and see the small score that you had just now as a starting point and the score that USA was able to obtain as a goal where you want to be. I really set that goal hard and work and work towards it because obviously if you if you have paying have been paying close attention to the interviews here you're going to hear a similar trend where people say that it's about believing it's about sticking to your belief it's about working hard and putting in the effort putting in the hours needed to evolve mechanically evolve teams chemistry as well so sticking together with the same lineup is also very crucial here to have that absolute highest chance of getting a win in here and i really think that that's the name of the game here for costa rica they will still have another game later on but before that as i said we're going to have a look at canada going up against honduras here and uh, for canada as well coming off of that well slightly disappointing loss against dominican republic it was a close affair there um this time around let's see what they can do against honduras and for honduras as well i mean overall i i've been Fairly impressed with them, guys. They, for the first time, showing on the international stage and playing against these very experienced teams, they have shown that they can actually go head to head at times. You know, I might sound like the broken record everyone's been playing, but again, it all comes down to experience with tournaments. You know, everyone's yeah. played, especially some people, uh, some players, almost everyone from the USA has played in the 2K League. And I think that's where it comes down. You know, they've seen any uh, many tournaments and, you know, every game counts. And, you know, friendlies just don't do the same tension that you have, the same stress levels that you experience. And not to even say that this is a national uh, tournament where you get to, you know, uh, reprise your national uh, pride and, and protect it and, you know, defend it. And it, it just puts so much pressure on you. And a lot of these are young guys, you know. They've never experienced uh, pressure like this before. So it might break them down. But this... This is all just a start, you know, just uh, play these games, um, try to do your best, have some fun along the way, because these are still games in the end. Of and course. afterwards, when you do win a game, look at why you won. And if you lost the game, again, look at why you lost. Look at the good things and look at the bad things, what you did, and try to fix them. Yeah, really, I mean, you, you should be um, just to really say the same thing that I said yesterday. I was just trying to phrase that so everyone would be on the same page. Um, you want to have a look and be honest with yourself about what's not going your way. And as long as everyone on the team is able to admit that and be open about it and, and have a constructive environment where you can talk about how to fix these things, that's where you're going to progress the quickest. So uh, obviously, there, when it comes to sports in general, there's a lot of ego involved as well. And that is needed, especially when it comes to gaining confidence, if, especially if you are in a position where you need to make an individual play. That's where really that ego needs to come into play. But beforehand, it is a team game and team is exactly what's going to take you and get you those wins. So let's see. Uh, as soon as the Canada and Honduras players have joined the game, uh, if we can see something the likes of that. Before that, though, let's have a look at the lineups. Yeah, On the Canada side, we have Sav, Icewell, It's Goon, Scarbs, and Dogs. And, well, uh, you know, in the previous game, we saw Dogs getting these sidelines and getting these beautiful uh, shots, the same as yep. It's Goon. And we're going to see if Honduras are going to understand that they will be going for these sidelines and taking these side uh, three-pointers in. Because It's Goon has uh, had all the opportunities in the first half there. But in the second one, Dominican Republic, you know, just sort of uh, took it away as well. And, and they started defending it. Super great. All right, and for Honduras, it is uh, uh, going to be Net Alonso, Manuel Garrick, uh, C. Riviera, Jenka, 200, and Aguirre there. So on the side of Honduras, I remember uh, from uh, the previous games, I saw there that Net Alonso was definitely uh, a player to pay attention cl close to, of course, being the point guard, being the one to set up the plays for your team, at least one of the point guards. Um, Jenka as well was very active, so they do tend to switch those roles around a bit. Um, Jenka, he was good on the three-point sector, but I really feel like they might have problems if uh, Canada starts to shut them down early on defensively here. Again, as you mentioned, it is probably going to be a lot on the shoulders of Goon in the three-pointer department. Uh, in that left-hand side corner, Yusuf is very present. Um, with his uh, center archetype plays in paint, getting those rebounds, getting those long passes 
uh, on the receiving end as well from his team and being able to convert those into points for his team is going to be a crucial name of the game here. I really feel like for uh, Canada here, it could be a game where you can really polish off these dual plays. Ice as well in the three-point department has been absolutely it's unstoppable at times. Uh, on the Honduras side, I want to say, I want to point out Rivera. Yep. I saw him, and you know, they have a lot of point guards. They actually have three point guards coming out, Alonso, Rivera, and Gianca. And uh, Rivera was the one that stood out to me because he not only took these three-pointers in, but he actually went in for the drives and for the layups and getting these two points whenever he had the chance. So I'm going to see if he's going to be able to take this and uh, look out for scarves and, you know, just put in, pulling in uh, those uh, two-pointers he, whenever he has the chance. Exactly. So... As the players are gradually joining the game here, my thoughts are um, already getting closer to those grand finals that we're going to see in the next segment as well. So these are the last games being played here in North and Central America Conference where we have a total of seven countries playing a single round robin format, meaning they, every country gets to play a single game against every other country in this conference. The top two countries will advance into the grand finals, which are going to be played in the best of three fashion. If you manage to see the South America finals, you already know the name of the game, and we definitely know that it can go into hole three. Looking at the teams that are contenders for the title here in North and Central America, I feel like another three, uh, all three games most likely will be played in the grand finals here because we have some huge names on the board here, some very high scoring games. Canada has managed to broke the historical record of the highest scoring game in FIBA Esports Open 2, putting up 151 point to their name. That is something that, well, you know, this time around, I say most likely we're not going to see being broken anymore. But if we're looking slightly in the future, you know, last time around, I thought 117 was a lot. And looky, looky, this time we have 151. So question is, when next event comes around, perhaps we can get to 200 as well. But Obviously, that, oh, that sounds is crazy that right is now, unlikely. but, you know, <laughs> with more new participants, that is still an opportunity here. So, the players are gradually jumping in. Let's see what can Canada do here against um, Honduras and, and what sort of points they can take home. Because, obviously, point differential as well, looking at the standings and seeing how many teams have overall um, an even scoreline it's going to be important to get every single basket. So let's have a look and see Canada versus Honduras. Okay, the players are walking out onto the court. We saw them just about a half hour ago, and we see them again. That's Canada in your whites. Honduras are going to be in your... Is that black? That looks to be black jerseys. Nice and contrasty here. So let's see if that's going to be on the scoreboard as well here as the jump is imminent. Hortz is with his purple... Uh, purple header there. It's it, you know I love to see different hairstyles you can see in uh, in FIBA and uh, Gianca now with the ball starting off uh, he's gonna look for a fast uh, point fast points into this first quarter you know that's good to see but oh that is an offensive three second violation uh, yeah Howard just just spent a bit too much time in that zone and and had to go for the shots, unfortunately for him. Too late. Reaching foul as well coming out here. And Canada's play will be reset. This time around, it's going to be Dogs to put the ball back into play here as Ice now. Pass over to Sav. Wide open three. You really want to nail those. It was a far shot, to be fair. And it is going to be out of bounds off of that rebound. So it is going to be Honduras' ball. And it's still an even game here. Nobody has opened things up. And a half a minute has passed. Yeah, I mean, I, I like it sometimes that people don't open up. It means that this is a hard get, a game to shoot in. You see, it, all the defenders are in good spots, so it's they don't give a lot of time, except for right now, Ice Rail, to get it and get those three first points for Canada. Yeah, good job in the passing department, and so far, so good for Canada. Three to nil in the lead. Jenka fakes a shot, pass over to Alonso. It's going to be... 
find a three-pointer of his own. Goes in for the play here. Very difficult shot to take, contested like that defensively. Yusuf gets the rebound, pa long pass over, and it's going to be out of bounds in Honduras' ball as Sav oversteps that line. But, you know, one could argue there that Jenka might have helped that. Yeah, I mean, that's good defense for him, definitely. You know, a, a little hustle there near the near the borderline of the court, that is always appreciated, and that just shows that, you know, it's the similarities that you have in esports, the same as in real life. But now Gianca with the ball actually loses it, and now uh, it's Goon is going to go in for the dunk. He's good for the threes, he's good for the dunks, and all around the board, considering he's been playing only since 2K18. He's looking to show amazing talent here. Only two versions of the game played and already playing on the big stage. This being the third. And a big three-pointer goes through for Canada. Eight to two in the lead by six. And let's see if can Honduras respond. Aguirre over to Jenka. And I want to point out that this was the one who got the first two points for Team Honduras. And he gets the next two as well with the beautiful alley up coming out pretty much from nowhere there. Uh, Howard is pretty much showing off that, okay, I'm, I'm going to set this game to a dunk dunk mode. But uh, Scarbs uh, replies with, okay, a mode switch, let's do it. Yeah, Yusuf is always eager to take up that challenge in the dunking department. Jenka now is going to lose the ball here, midcourt line, and it's Goon for another dunk to take it home. 12-4, to 4, extending the lead by 8 here, 2 minutes and 45 seconds on the clock remaining in the first quarter as Canada is looking to build a commanding lead unless Honduras can answer here. But the ball is going to be lost, unfortunately. Too many passes, too many defensive players around for the ball to move around so freely here for Honduras. The south passes over to Ice on the three-point line. Open for three if he wants to go for it. It is going to be Yusuf to take another dunk. I wanted to point out, I think Goon took it personally when the uh, when in the match against Dominican Republic where he got defended so bad in the, in the side corner there. He's, he's decided he's going to go for dunks this game. You know, no more three-pointers. Let's just go it easy and uh, let's dunk in some. Well, obviously, Canada knows they can shoot for three. They just want to make sure that the dunking department is uh, not ice cold when it comes to crunch time. Now, Janka with the ball passes it to... Uh, Gary, but he misses that shot. Now a far pass to Sav. Ice Reel gets the ball again. Will he go in for another three? He does, and but it's no good this time. Hortis actually keeps up the ball, and now it's a uh, Honduras chance to go in. Now a far pass, beautifully done. Aguer, he shoots in, but sadly that's another miss. Yeah, you, you need to take that extra second there to take that shot uncontested. Ice shows how's it done, even celebrates before the ball goes through the hoop. Because he knows that's 100% in. Alonso now almost lost the ball. Nice attempt from Ice to intercept. Jenka now. Let's see what he can set up for his team. Pass over to Hortis who goes in for a play. Out to Jenka again here. And a long contested two-pointer. Not going to be good this time. Uh, Dugs instantly pass over to Sav. Into the corner to Ice. And that is another two this time. He actually stepped on the line. Thought it's going to be three. Minute and 15 on the clock still to play. Honduras definitely uh, sticking by in terms of pace, but precision slightly lacking right now for them. Wanted to point out that actually there was a subst substitution happening. So Rivera is not ha uh, playing, but it's Manuel Garrick in this game. So, uh, you know, the starting uh, table wasn't the correct one, but that's, you know, sometimes the substitutes happen and uh, they actually figured out that, you know, Manuel is better off playing this game. Something else that also sometimes happens is Canada making a bit of a blunder and a defensive three-second violation will result in Honduras obtaining a point here, going for a three on top of that after as well. Not going to happen. Very long pass over to Sav. Ice with the three-pointer gets it done again and extending Canada's lead even further with 40 seconds remaining in the first quarter here. Ice is definitely ice cool right now. You know, he's just keeping it keeping it simple. He has an open space. He has an availability to get that three. He does it, but now it's Goon who's, uh, who's actually taking the three for himself back to his old position. 20-point lead for the first time in this game between Canada and Honduras, and Honduras are looking to respond. Nice pass from two Manuel. Should have taken a shot there. Decided to pass over to Quartz. And it didn't go his way as Ice now into the past two chugs. Sav on the three-point line back over to Ice looking to find that open lane screen is set up. And 
A sidestep to the left is going to result in another three-pointer with three seconds to spare in the third first quarter. You know, sometimes we say that uh, it's better to pass out. Never mind, the first quarter just ended. But to continue on, sometimes I want to say that, you know, passes are good, but you can also overpass. And you can, you know, you needed to shoot there, but you still gave the pass there, which went south. To put it simply, no need to overcomplicate things. An opportunity is there. Take it, especially if you're <laughs> 20 points down. And now with another three-pointer, make it 26. Janka with the ball. Passes to Manuel. It looks like he's not the, the point, point guard that should be playing the ball up first. But, you know, sometimes he can't. Gives the far pass. That actually misses. Now Sal with the ball. Ball. Jump shot from a hard spot. But... Yeah, that's, that's an easy task for him. Yeah, I felt like he could have easily just positioned himself for the three, but perhaps just wanted to see if he can make it. Not really sure. Region foul happens from Canada to just make sure that everyone defensively is able to uh, return and assume position. Nice interception from Sav here as well. Finds Ice on the left-hand side on the three-point line, and of course Ice is not going to miss an opportunity like that. 36-5. to five. Second quarter on its way here. Almost a full minute has passed and Honduras have yet to break the double-digit line to their name. Now it's going to be an interception there. That's going to be Ice shooting, but actually missing this time around. Not so hot on his knees, right, feet so far. Right now, Neto Alonso shoots, but that's also a miss, a rebound coming out from the Canadian team. Now Ice actually, you know, saying no 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 never mind that was a that was a missed shot it's okay i'm gonna get it this time around sounds like the more we say ice the more icicles appear on honduras's side two already let's see if they can find a third if ice is gonna continue with the three pointers like that janka with the ball passes it to horses um now it's back to manuel and that should go in but sadly the icicle probably put some point in there but Aguera shoots again and two back-to-back -back misses from Honduras there Sal with the ball actually almost double teamed there but Ice Real is uh, getting the ball again now again two people Scarbs will he go himself no passes back to Ice he's open he should shoot he does so and it goes in of course it goes in incredible incredible precision coming out from him and from the whole team of Canada Yusuf very active on the rebound they all instantly activate their avatars at the same time here almost choked like that sight three minutes still remaining and they're looking to extend their lead even further here an interception attempt this time it's going to escape Doug's hands but what can Honduras do here with six seconds remaining and with a potential steal imminent as Alonso looking to put the ball back into play here. Jenka stuck on the three-point line. No real opportunity to take a shot. Makes a breakaway play for it. Tries to go for a layup. Not good here as Yusuf with a long pass over to the right-hand side. Back to the left as Ice gets the jump shot too as well. And me wondering how are you still breathing after that sort of a commentary. Jenka goes up against... Uh, Gary gives the pass there, gives it back to Alonso, should have taken the shot there, had the chance, has to take the shot, and finally does so, but no good, it's a little slightly too late, and, you know, I think that's the stress coming in, oh no, we're losing that bad, but, uh, they should be getting some buckets in, because that five hasn't moved for a long while. Absolutely, the second quarter, what a dominant performance coming out from Canada here, and it feels like all of those bottled up emotions are coming to surface right, right now after those previously disappointing losses and rightly so trying to get those maximum amount of points trying to ruin someone's day here at let's be real but obviously for Honduras it's a very tough opponent uh, Canada has such amounts of experience on their side their playing eaters have been playing since the version of 2k8 so you could just do quick maths there. How many years is that? A little hint. That's more than 10 years experience <laughs> on the game alone here. So obviously these players know the ins and outs of it. Ice with another wide open three. No real contestant there. Honduras, however, did manage to put up two points in this quarter. Still looking to break that 10-point score line. Minute 45 seconds remaining here. 12 on the shot clock. Jenka continuously stopped by this defense. Alonso has to come in and look to see if he can save the day for his team. Three seconds remaining here. Can Jenka make something to happen? It's going to be Aguirre to shoot and it's going to be over. Dugs gets the rebound. Sal now with the ball. And it looks like he's going to be actually trying to go for a shot himself. Gets the three point and it's good. Honduras at seven. Canada 53. 
And uh, Jenka back again with the ball. One wants to, you know, lower the score difference uh, so far. But, uh, you know, this one is already looking kind of grim for them. But, you know, it's never over. It's never over. Janka shoots in, but uh, it misses. Sal back again with the ball and calls a timeout. Yeah, so it looked like he was keen to take a long pass. Couldn't really find a teammate to give it to. So decides to reset the play here and see if they can make a, another setup play happen here. Sav on the three-point line. Dugs is open to take a pass if needed to, but of course, if Sav's precision is like that, you know, there's really no need for passing here. Jenka is going to be giving to Manuel. He's going to be taking a shot, but that is an air ball as it only touches the net there a little bit. The rebound is good still for Honduras, so they do have another shot at this, but only, say, eight seconds to work with here, so feel like Alonso is able to take that pass back. Comes in to set up a screen here for Jenka. But one second to shoot. Contested shot at that. The rebound is going to be good for Canada. Long pass already. Three offensive players in position. Ice, of course, with the three. 20 seconds remaining before halftime here. 59-7. Honduras still having trouble breaking that double-digit scoreline. Manuel now with the jump shot gets the two. That puts them up to nine. 12.9 seconds remaining here. Honduras really need a steal to happen as Ice puts up another three and Honduras will have 6.8 seconds to work with here. Let's see if they can make something happen as Jenka is looking to make the shot. Gives the pass to Alonso. Three from the corner, not good. Going into the game, 62, yeah, on the second half already, looking at Ice Real, 43 points. That's ridiculous, <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. I am the one to say it, blame me. I mean, how is, I mean, it is ridiculous. I, I don't think anyone can blame you here. 43 <laughs> out of the 62 points. Wait, is it going to be more? No, ah. it's not. No good, no green, no good. No green, no good. Third quarter on the way here. Jenka with the three is going to be good, and there we go. That, oh, that's two. He got the foot on the line. Nevertheless, the double-digit scoreline is broken here. 51 point between the two as Ice makes it to 54. 46 points for Ice. 46 points. Wait, wait, that's an interception. There actually a bad pass coming out. Uh, that was a pass to the back there. Dogs. Going out from the sidelines, trying to shoot, but misses. Ice Reel going back again and manages to get it now to 49 points. Almost breaking the 50 mark. That is incredible what he's done uh, so far in this game. Another interception, another steal. Ice Reel still with the ball, reeling around, trying to find uh, the hoop again where he can put his basket. Is in. Ice Reel looking for a personal highlight reel? Or what's the name of the game here for Canada right now as he puts up Another three-pointer. Look, I'm going to stop saying three-pointer at this point in time because, like, you know what, what, how many points he's putting up. Another shot. <laughs> he he makes point. another shot and he goes in. And that, that, should, that should explain everything. 52 points, three assists, you know. He still, he pretty much is accountable for 55 points out of the whole 71 that Canada has. And uh, Aguirre actually shoots one a close, a far two, actually, for that one. And 13 points are for Honduras now. Uh, looks like a bit of a technical problem on the side of Honduras as well. One of the players has dropped, so that has been replaced by an a player, a AI player, excuse me, and obviously doesn't uh, make the task at hand any easier as Ice puts up another one. Yeah, Canada is going, wants to go for that big score again in this one. At uh, third quarter, is still three minutes left and 74 points. And, you know, they, they do have the high score, so, you Look, know. it's the international stage. A lot of eyes are watching. Obviously, everyone is very keen to show what they are absolutely capable of. And they really want to show why they are there. Why are they the ones to represent their national team? They have the country, on, the country flag on their shoulders here. And this time around, it is definitely ice showing why Canada picked him. And rightly so. What a performance coming out from him. Obviously, the team as well, recognizing that he's absolutely on fire, passing the ball continuously over to him. Yusuf as well, obviously, gets those rebounds in. Six currently to his name, but 
mostly after those, a pass follows over to Ice here to just continue his reign of three-pointers. Alonso on the three-point line. Jenka comes in to try and help out as well. Wide open to take a shot if he wants to. Over to Manuel in the corner. Not going to be good this time. Slightly uh, early on the release there. And that will be a personal foul. So Team Canada now takes the ball, gives it to Ice Reel again, and he gets another. You know what he gets <laughs> at this point. But, uh, you know, Sa told us that they had an interview before, before they actually managed to... Uh, you know, get the place in the team outs. And, and I want to understand, how, what kind of an interview did Ice Reel give that uh, that could pr prove his performance, you know? Because right now we're seeing magic, but uh, can he can he say the same? Or he just showed another one of his wads, you know? And then he said, look at me, <laughs> I'm great. Who knows, we can only guess, but obviously, you know, having in, in a positive place mentally coming into any game is very important, having that right vibe some people call it being in the zone uh you know and speaking about being in the zone as well if if anyone wants to research that there's uh actually quite a few documentaries right now about that there's actually a few scientist teams that are working specifically with gamers to see how you can obtain that state constantly and obviously that's um you know putting yourself in a position where you could potentially be continuously performing to your peak performance and what really that means is that when you're in the zone it really feels like your hands uh, are you doing the decisions for you it's almost as if you are a spectator to your own plays it's sort of a bit of an out of body experience and in in those situations really your reactions are doing the decisions for you and that's where you guess get these insane plays and speaking about good stuff Honduras I've managed to put up a three-pointer there and getting to 22 points as Ice of course celebrates another one Ice has 70 points you know he might actually be able to get 100 points himself as he puts three more 53 seconds remaining in the third quarter there will be another five minutes another quarter to play here so technically he could do it AI from the free throw line is not going to make it happen. Yusuf grabs the rebound. Obviously, all players on the side of Canada are on fire, activated to see if they can uh, go for that high score. Um, realistically looking, this is probably not going to be the game where they break their own record, looking at the pace of it. Obviously, so far, a very good Valorant attempt at it. Half a minute remaining here in the third quarter. And uh, yeah, the ball currently is slightly evading Canada. Jenka is going to put up that dunk, and that is a feels-good moment for Honduras. Yeah, it's quite refreshing to see some dunks like these because you know the teams are still playing. They're trying their best, and uh, Ice is also trying his best at getting that 100. But uh, uh, Canada at 98 points so far, and you know most of it has just been Ice. And that's it. It just has been his games, but... On the other side, Manuel just, you know, gets more dunks in, and that's good for him, you know. I uh, haven't seen him so much in the previous games, so it's good to see that he's actually been performing quite well as well uh, when he does get given the chance. Absolutely, and with six seconds to spare, Canada does break the 100-point line here. 1.0 to shoot, slightly short on the release here, and that is going to be the buzzer for the third quarter here. Canada versus Honduras. Honduras since then, timeout called. You know, you got to uh, take a little breather after these uh, after this third quarter. And I think Ice just uh, completely destroyed any sort of defense that they have. And it's super hard to defend against, like, pl uh, players of this level as well. But now a bad pass has been given or intercepted, and Ice just gets another one in. I mean, honestly, how does he keep doing that? In the zone, my friend, in the zone, absolutely. Manuel, nice attempt on the three, slightly short, I believe, this second time in a row. So just hold on to that button ever so longer as another three-pointer will fall in favor of Canada here. 107 to 26, 81 points between the two. So quite a similar story to what we saw previously between USA and Costa Rica. Sadly, they do step out of line there, so now it's Canada's ball. Ice Reel again with the ball. It seems like they're just really giving him the ball and want him to get that 100. Yeah. Alonso now looking to set the play. And in the meantime, we are getting some news about the next game. Um, but we'll just wait for clarification before we can definitely confirm that.
Ice gets, uh, meanwhile, another three. Of course, they get another three there. So uh, just going to be have to waiting on how much points can he get in the end there. 113 to 26. Now, uh, the Honduras, I don't know, they should be setting a small goal for himself. Now, Neto is going to be able to, uh, trying to go for another sh uh, shot himself. So let's see how that works out. But nope, they just get another steal in. And Ice, of course, gets the ball, hand it to him. And I think he should be closing in on that 100-point line. Uh, too bad I can't see the scoreboard at this point, but uh, we'll see in a second now. Net Alonso still keeps it, gives it to AI. Uh, should we, can we get a three-pointer in? Uh, not available now. Gianca yeah. now is able to get the ball to himself. Will he try for the three? Goes in a little bit. Net Alonso had the chance to go for the three, but a good defending from USA. Now two seconds left on the shot clock. Aguar shoots it in and gets the three finally. All right, a bit of news coming in from that next game. Unfortunately, Costa Rica are forfeiting their game against Puerto Rico, upcoming game that is, due to having internet issues. So at the worst of times for Costa Rica really here, forced to forfeit that one. So instead, we'll have a bit of a filler segment there. Now, Jenka gives it to Manuel Garik. Uh, gets passed back around and there will be a reach and foul. So the ball stays at the Canada's hands. Yusuf now over to Ice, back to Sav from a long three that's slightly over on the release and the rebound is going to be good for Honduras here as Net Alonso. Long pass into the corner, that's good. Aguilera with the three, not going to be good around this time as Dugs does get the rebound. Long pass over to Sav one more time and this time it's good. Made the adjustment, made the correction, made sure that three-pointer He's going to go through and still two minutes and five seconds remaining before this game finishes. And Yusuf, long pass over to Ice. How does that even connect between two defensive players? I don't know. Ice over to Sav on the three-point line. Again, not good. And it looks like Sav so far still warming, him, warming up in the three-point department. AI player for Honduras puts up the two. Um, their Ice is not shooting anymore. So there is a big chance that he's actually gotten those 100 points. Yeah, uh, that could be prob that's probably the biggest score any individual player has ever gotten in FIBA Esports as well. So far, I believe you are correct here. Ice, long pass into the corner, over to Dogs, back to Ice as well. Two defensive players, Yusuf to make the adjustment. Gets the two. Yeah, easy there, a two for Scarbs, but a far pass to the AI. He's going to take the three and it's a little too far. The release was a little early, but uh, it's Goon takes it from the side, also misses. So a back-to-back -back misses there. Back to Gianca, gives it to Ma Aguar, but what a beautiful block from Scarves there. Yeah, amazing defensive play happening right now. Aguero does get the uh, jump shot, 35 to 127 right now. Obviously, Canada in a very commanding lead. Ice Reel over to Yusuf to get the fast dunk and gets it through as well. 104 remaining here. And really, Honduras are now, I mean, to be honest, they have scored a lot more than they had in the pre first half of the game here. Canada make it to 131. Yeah, the second half has definitely been a little bit better to them. And they should be focusing on what did they do and what did they change in the second half and how to even improve that further along in the next time they have a chance. And yeah, Ice Real has exactly 100 points. And that's why he's not taking any shots. He wants to keep this beautiful stat. And that, that should go into... He's yeah, give it to someone else. Share yeah. the points around the board, right? He's Here. not even trying. He, he is free. He's able to take the shot, but he wants to keep it. And, you know, you open up the scoreboard, you, you take a screenshot and you put it in your wall and you say, okay, this is, the, this is one of the proudest moments of my life. Obviously, especially on the international stage here. Aguero over to Jenka, back to Manuel on the three line. That was actually two if he would have made it. AI player makes the adjustment, gets the through, uh, through the two-pointer there. It's a good job, but still slightly less than 100 points between these two teams. And Sao with back-to-back three-pointers. There we go. That's the ball getting rolling for him. You know, I actually want to say that Canada is quite close to their record there. But it, the time is just going to be a little short for them to completely do that. Agor shoots the far pass there, and that will be an easy three for them as well. Hunter is up to 40 points. You know, this is still an okay game for them, comparing that they are fighting against Canada, which uh, they had a really, really close game with Dominican Republic. But now, only 10 seconds left in this game. 
Honduras' ball as well. And let's see if they manage to get those final points in their favor here as Canada are going to be securing the win here. And this is their last game uh, to play here. So obviously, with having the fact that Costa Rica as well are forfeiting their next game against Puerto Rico due to internet problems, I'm very keen to see eventually how our overall standings will be looking like. But we still will have one more game to cover uh, after that. Speaking about this game here, though, clearly Canada came with a uh, clear initiative in mind, and that being is getting those point guards fired up, getting them warmed up, and getting those three-pointers through. I s probably somewhere along the lines, uh, I'll guess that around the 50-point mark, he was like, you know what, let's see if we can get 100 to my name, to, to as you said, probably to just get that screenshot. Um, and and that's exactly what happened there. He was able to execute on that factor. Now, if a team does get a technical win, they are awarded 20 uh, points that you would normally score in a game, but most importantly, two points in the overall standings. Uh, Puerto Rico did have a decent uh, uh, point differential. So obviously, as I said before, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out in the long run. Now, we're going to have one more game, and that's going to be between Guatemala and Dominican Republic. And here, looking at the overall standings, obviously for Dominican Republic, it is uh, vital to get the win with the maximum amount of point differential here. Really, they need to see if they can... What is that between 235, 218? That's roughly 20-ish points. That is definitely a differential that they should be uh, able to get. But uh, still, it, it's, you know... I might not have the full picture here in terms of how it all plays out. It's a bit of a different format here uh, in this particular conference than to say, for example, in Europe. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into an intermission. And when we come back, we're going to have Guatemala playing against Dominican Republic. They don't see all of the stress and the problems I deal with like every day. Uh, envy will kill you and misery loves all the company that it can get. To even the odds, I wish I lived in all my life, but I'm in love with this shit. Boy, I came out like a bull and I looked like a tough, but I came for it. Everybody wanna aim for it. The head of a veteran, the militants apparently angry that I have said it is screaming. Don't nobody let them get ahead of me. Independent rappers gonna make it to celebrity alone. They don't ever get a throne, never live at home. You didn't even have a million views and they're headed in alone. I said, huh? You didn't even see the bigger picture. Look behind me, see the army full of kings. That is men in my fear, the thief. That is me and me alone. You at least see my bros, I'll never miss a beat. I can live everything I'm on. Every video I send my homies, you don't even know. If I ain't the greatest rapper, then I swear I'm getting close. If you really think I need you, all I gotta say is. <laughs> wow. Yeah, swear to God, I'm with it. I don't see nobody in my lane. It's quite go get it like me. Wow. Please don't be wasting my time with that business. Who are you kidding, man? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah, swear to God, I'm with it. I don't see nobody in my lane. It's quite go get it like me. Wow. Please don't be wasting my time with that business. Who are you kidding, man? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like everywhere that I go, everybody got their hands out. The body is the vital one side of defining the signs of the prodigal. We all get the money, find my new head in the clouds. Chase the rain to the pot of gold, how to code out of to the father in his hands. Hold eternity possible, Reverend Apostle, the doctor, miracle, the fire, witness, blood applied to the obstacle, unbreakable, never shaking the faith of the king, unstoppable. And that's real to me. Now, what's real to you? And times was real to us, might be real and true. I find faith in what made the last name absolute. The homies found it in the money making avenue where you could cradle the fence, sit on the bench and be lukewarm. Shout hallelujah. Put some fly suits on, then you all set. Bet if you ain't on yet, put on some bread and you can sit with the best of the best. A rap guard still it like you got success because you blessed. Never speak about Messiah and his sheep are impressed. Listen up, I could do it just like you. Compromise truth and live just like you. Say Messiah was only a man just like you. But that's not something I could see I do. In your face, they young ashamed, but claim you changing. You ain't brothers, never been a lane, not entertained with the pedigree of a bust. The truth remains, keep it like bread and the bread is buttered. I suffered being subtle, no, I wrapped them candy circles round these suckers. Cut the table to brutally honest picture that I paint. That is suffocate my brush accustomed, using mud is and corrupt seduction of using a 
front and bluffing while the blood of saints is ushered into discussion. I smell the second coming, yet we run a straight chasing after what is disgusting. Concussed from the deduction of what is holy and covered. The ark of the covenant encompassed, made public and unencumbered by the father when he said a son of way. Where can we run today? I ain't gonna lie. I almost cry when I think about the life that I cost. Why we ain't real? Why we ain't real with each other? Why we ain't real? We were supposed to be brothers. Why we ain't real? Why we ain't real with each other? I'm just being real. I see wolves in the field. And that's real to me. Now, what's real to you? At times, what's real to us might be real and true. I find faith in what made the last name absolute. Found the homies ain't the homies when they mad at you. But listen, I am not a rapper, do rabbit with a raffinous attitude. Come from a different cloth, my fabric incompatible. Leaders claiming they lead them. But I take a jab or two, picking at the fastest of what is actual. And now these actors move. I seen them, they move, I screen them, delete them, and don't repeat them. My freedom, they cover is clean, but looks could be deceiving. Now, even Eden was absent of any trees. Before the fruit was plucked and needed, you can see the reasons I spot the snakes in the grass like weeds that weed them before they become trees. This is my season, and yeah, show me what to believe in. If I don't see the king or the kingdom of what they speak in, I don't believe them. I've been pushed fully bloodied and beaten. The evil created by my own people. You see the needle in the stack of failures, often regarded as feeble. But I'll be that needle if I need to and trick the soul in the heel. If you try to step on what's been revealed, Messiah's here. Nah. Why we ain't real? Why we ain't real with each other? Why we ain't real? We were supposed to be brothers. Why we ain't real? Why we ain't real with each other? I'm just being real. I see wolves in the field. If I take it down, would you really hold me down and be your best friend? She just wanna hit me with a quickie by the pool and I'm like, yes, ma'am. When you got me feeling for your body, you might turn me to a yes, man. Oh, yeah. 80 and a 40, I'm a nervous bitch, I'm flyer than your ex, man. We ain't gotta go. Hey, ain't the first to really sell that shit Champagne with the roof gun Bought this jam back in Tucson Think I got to get a move on Never had much to lose But you could do better with me In the middle of the road Or the back of the Jeep So baby, let's not talk about it But I gotta know If I take you down Would you really hold me down And be your best friend? She just wanna hit me With a quickie by the pool And I'm like, yes, ma'am me feeling for your body, you might turn me to a yes man, oh yeah, 80 in a 40 on the nerve, bitch, I'm flyer than your ex man, why you act so extra, let me in your section, running through my mind, we got a connection, back home ain't the same, your pop's drinking all the time, you just wanna get away, come hop up in my ride, two goofies on the run, couple 40s in the backseat, spirits in my lungs, got my it's a little raspy Turn me to a yes man Before we do this girl I got a question If I take you down Would you really hold me down And be your best friend She just wanna hit me With a quickie by the pool And I'm like yes man When you got me feeling for your body You might turn me to a yes man Oh yeah 80 and a 40 I'm a nervous bitch I'm flat Flyer than your ex, like oh my god. Ride into your legs, like oh my god. And let's go on a day, like oh my god. When I'm back from LA, like oh my god, oh my god. Yeah. She still think it's odd, yeah. I got all these fans, she's the only one I want, yeah. Impress me with your mind, I might turn you to a mom, yeah. You might get a pension if you work it for me long, yeah. It's gonna be a long, yeah. I don't know how they get like that. Recognize my runs and get them fixed like that Booming through my city with my people all around 
Is you coming with me or you staying on the ground, yeah? Uh, yes or no, how'd it go? Where your man? Do you got one on the low? Oh, you do? How'd I know? Born in 1994, you still a scrub. But I still don't think you know this how to love. But I gotta know that if I take you down, would you really hold me down? I'd be your best friend. She just wanna hit me with a quickie by the pool and I'm like, yes, man. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. The way you got me feeling for your body, you might turn me to the yes, man. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. 80 and a 40, I'm a nervous bitch. I'm flyer than your ex, man. I'm flyer than your next, man. I'm flyer than your... Let me in my zone, please don't let me in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gonna play that. 
Take you down, I'ma say that. Mine need me a couple dollars. Telling you now this payback. Huh. So I'll take that. Ask them now, we'll say that. I've been going to the top and I got what they not, so I know that they hate that. Uh, but I'm on now. All these lanes gonna zone now. And all these lanes gonna take what I did and they twist and they bust till I fall out. Uh, but I know that, so I keep what I'm doing cause I own that. And I stay in the lab and I kill everything, but I don't ever move, I'm a code that. So don't, I'm gone. Find me back in my home. I'm working like so much, they swear I had me a clone. Can't answer my phone now, just leave it there, that tone. Balling can't beat me up cause I'm back in my zone now. Cause I'm back in my zone now. All in can't beat me up cause I'm back in my zone now Back in my zone now Let me into my zone, please don't let me into my zone. Let me into my zone, let me, let me into my zone. Let me into my zone, please don't let me in. Please don't let me into my zone. I just need some time on my own. All these people trying to get a conversation, you can conversate to that tone. Uh, my God up on that throne, yeah, so I'm never alone, yeah. All these people trying to box me in, I may weather, it's on, yeah. Now they ask where I'm at, making his that line back. I'm MJ, I'm 2-3, man, I just need some time back. I'm zoned in like defense, my life. I've gone no recess, but I live my best one, so I got no regrets. So gone, I'm gone, finally back in my home. I'm working like so much, they swear I had me a clown. Can't answer my phone now, just leave it there, that tone. Balling can't beat me up, cause I'm back in my zone now. Cause I'm back in my zone now. Zone now. All in can't beat me up cause I'm back in my zone now Back in my zone now Let me into my zone Let me let me into my zone uh, Let me into my zone Please don't let me into my zone uh. Trying to figure me out, like what's my life like? Am I committed to vow? Perception is relying on what you train your sight like. So what you see is whatever gets permitted by your eyes, right? I'm guessing that it's okay if they follow me. As long as they know that the praise is never known not to me. No, not to be condescending. My philosophy is all that's represented. Should never become the god of me. Crows become the cons, all that's kind of me. But to become content with this content. Leave room for the kind of pictures that in the concept. Why you sit at the feet of beneath this monolithic object? Not painted in the image of God, but chiseled in the image of flaw. Sinner spitting redemption presented under a continual clause. Covenant of the brothers pulling out the rug from under you all. Standing on solid ground, mud can't hold a structure for long. Let me ask what you're building on, corruption or the word of y'all. Constructed a constellation with curse of universal wordsmith. In six days I stand in awe of the seven fallen worship. Captured by the Sabbath as I chill with the Nazarene. And I'm plugged for the man that's the calf is golden hands open as they scream. It's right as we walk through this land. All we can feel is sand. So we can feel. Lord, will you take our hand? on you we stand. When the water pours out, we go. Do this 
place And the valley is the alley and darkness covers my face The folly followed by Hollywood The hearts of the hearted hardened by the love And their disgrace long and if I compromise And replace the godly they got more of the Sodom in me and my people Riding beside them I whisper asylum Goodbye but won't deny them asylum Praying for God and says we march in the desert No weapon drawn against us could prosper Even the pistol with the click and it pop it If it hits me from a distance Cling to the promised land but it's my feet I don't mind slipping inside and knowing I will arise with the gift of a body Everlasting vision of the king in the sky when I'm flying Absolute conscious dividing the saints and the scholars The fate of the fate hearted despising The wake of the ship that we riding All overboard and we sinking I cling to the wrath named Jesus It's right as we walk through this land All we can feel is sand So we can feeble Lord, will you take our hand on you we stand When the water pours out Victory lap though. Whoa, whoa. They ain't never seen nothing like this before. Lit the room when I came through the front door. Ask me if I should suffer, come work for. Train in the trees, please pardon my sycamore. Touch burning sands, cross lands, and show me sure, sure seasons in the year, yeah. Ain't no channel for champions and chain no fear. Yep, the champ is here. Switch gears with the three haters in the rear. Sweat and tears in my goal so near I see my victory so clear I see my victory so clear It's a day we break through 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 I know it's lonely at the tail, but that's not by speculation. But the position that I got, I climb too high to fall, but too hard to drop. Stop clocks on the speed bag, every gal under pressure, no jet lag. This is greater than trophies and saluted flags. Titles of fame, the cost is paid. Yay, I, I, I give it the cross I made, deal with the dealer. Baby, the hand was played, new level, next stage. Learn to lead as a legend. Now tell me what's my next stage, yay. Yeah. I said the champ is here, Swiss gears. We keep it haters in the rear. At the blood, sweat, and tears in my goal so near. I said my victory is so clear. It's a day we break through. 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 I think I'm playing chess, I see a king, I'm at his neck I'm three steps ahead of every move, now that's a check Yes, they wanna know my secret, it's because I never slept All my nightmares of me at 40, life's a wreck See my dad, he in debt, and my mom, she upset That's way back when 408 on Seminole was the address I saw things I shouldn't have, though I love the family to death Way back then it was a mess, we was living check to check Now my shirts are getting pressed, your girl see me, she impressed And my fans 
friends are quite obsessed. I own everything I'm blessed. Made a living making art and aiming closely at they neck. If you think I'm not a threat, I'm like, eh, incorrect. Yeah. She cut off, put her on block list. I call that options. They can support, they get dropped quick. They be my stock pick. I get some back in the cockpit. Turn the whole crowd to a mosh pit. I make it hit like a drop kick. Cause I got the key like a locksmith. Think I'm playing chess, I see a king, I'm at his neck. Three steps ahead of every move, now that's a check Yes, they wanna know my secret, it's because I never slept All my nightmares of me and 40 likes a wreck And I be a ghost What I do is a hobby for most A comedy roast so I'm on my own I gotta be known I gotta be toast I'm an anomaly No, you ain't never put The motherfucking work in the be dreaming It's obvious not about it Everything and everybody It shows my revenue growth Is out of control I'm ready to blow I'm ready for war I'm ready for smoke You ready to go I really think I'm playing chess I see a king I'm at his neck I'm three steps ahead Of every move Now that's a check Yes, they wanna know my secret It's because I never slept All my nightmares Of me and 40 Life's a wreck Okay, I've been working like three jobs. Probably why I never see ya. Probably why I never have time for the fake friends I won't be ya. Oh God, I've been running now. Up early when the sun is out. Not setting out my own soul, but those real ones, they coming out. Oh look, who's reaching out? Old friends wanna feature now. They don't work, so they need it free. Ooh, you reaching out from the west side of that old town, but there's no show. Still I go down to the open mic, show love to the real ones they know now. Some of y'all don't know now. In a couple months, you're gonna find out. Been blowing up from the underground that they stay Stepping on a landmine now, and he know it's my time now. Coming up, I'm on a climb now. Everybody claim they've been bottom, but it's looking like they took a time out. Okay, I'm working on a Wednesday, then up again the next day. So and so is popping, man. I skip him like he leg day. Kick it like I'm Pele. I never care what they say. Put myself on Spotify, so every day my payday. That's right, I'm coming back like OJ, like a running back in his old days. Still rocking those OJs. My paychecks get a little bigger, but that don't change me or make me richer. Money coming the money go, but my guy's here when he's staying with you. Blowing up off the internet. All these haters need to introspect, because they been hating while the rest love him. And I start to go and doubt they intellect, because I've been a threat since day one. No money or bank funds since y'all been saying you can do it better, but none of y'all ever made one. That realness don't feel this, but I've been sick. That illness, I've been fresh like Will Smith since 94, and I built this. Stressed out, ex out, missed calls from my ex now, but I'm staying focused in the lab, baby. I don't need your calls or your text now. God say the boy blessed now. Who am I to say Rondo? And the way that I sell six, they been calling me Rondo. 23 in my prondo, finna ball like Lonzo. Go and tell everybody talking stage, better be in that convo, uh. I 
get a crest on my neck. Look, crescent these demons like Westbrook. Why would I run for a check? Huh? I'm just gonna get out the best next. This ain't my feeling, no checkbook. I'm just gonna stick to the textbook. Save my life and now I see something new. Don't let me run from you. You gave me everything. I know your love is true. Yeah, you're my resting place. I cannot leave you warm and brave. Heal up my broken faith. You show me that there's a way. Jesus, my God, my King, forever, my God, my Lord, I'm yours forever. Jesus, my God, my King, forever, my God, my Lord, I'm yours forever. Jesus, my God, my King, forever, my God, my Lord, I'm yours forever. Jesus, my God, my King, forever, my God.
So just leave me by myself tonight I need some space to clear my mind I said it's okay, so much that I won't say Miss me with your games, guarantee you that I won't play Trying to live this thing out, you ain't what I need now Balling off a rebound, you can't touch the team now All of the time, you took my mind Give you a place I couldn't stand so won't you just leave me by myself tonight Leave me alone I don't need you up in my face right now I don't need you up in my way right now I don't need you up in my face right now I don't need you up in my way right now But I just keep it suppressed Harder to be humble when they feel you the best Harder to believe you when they say you a menace All your kids is pushing past you while you waiting in menace Crazy I do lately, why I'm feeling so bad We two different systems, I may need a reset Things my pops have never taught me, let me stress I've been praying for forgiveness for decisions I need a way, I need a way I need to pray, I need to skate, I need to read, I need to think, I need this grace, cyber please, I need my space, I need a way, I need to pray, I need to skate, I need to read, I need to think, I need this grace, sorry but I don't need you up in my face right now. Up in my way right now. Right now. I don't need you up in my face right now. Right now. I don't need you up in my face right now. Welcome back, dear viewers, here to FIBA Esports Open 2. My name is Renars, and alongside with me here is Artist to witness the last and final game played in the single round robin format in North and Central America Conference. And that, of course, is going to be played between Dominican Republic and Guatemala here. So a single game before we get to find out which two teams are going to be the ones that are going to advance into that best of three grand final and obviously then from that point on it's any man's game but still here dominican republic are going to be looking to see if they can secure that uh, win over guatemala on paper of course looking at things they should have really no problem on doing so the question of course here is more what sort of a point differential we're going to see but obviously as well for guatemala they've had some time after yesterday as well to have their talk to ha give that in-game analysis have a good look at what they've done what they haven't done and see what they can bring out against these big guys. You know, they saw how good Dominican Republic showed their strengths yesterday. So we want to see how Guatemala maybe has done some scouting on them, you know, and, and he's going to show a completely different experience what we saw from yesterday. Yeah, it's exactly. Especially uh, when Dominican Republic did share with us that, you know, they have done their fair share of scouting, especially to the best of their abilities and to all of that information that is available out there on the Internet. So great job. In, in the preparation department from them coming strong into this, maximizing their opportunities to come uh, off with a win here and, of course, with the potential of getting into the grand finals as well. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the last and final conference that we need to conclude out of the six that we had. And we started off three... Uh, well, it was three weekends of plays and essentially a month ago with 36 nations joining in from all across the globe here, split into six different conferences, five out of which have concluded here. And today we're going to find out which is going to be crowned champion in the North and Central America conference here. So let's have a look at the lineups here for this game between Dominican Republic and Guatemala. We have Soy Melia, Jan Davier, Kid, Lossi the Goat, and Noah Angel Skirt. And on the Dominican Republic side, you're going to have Bohio, ILG, Lolly, Sabakso, Omirabal, and Tactic. Now, obviously, 
players to keep your eyes on on the Dominican Republic side definitely would be tactic and both Bojio as well in that point guard position. Bojio has proven countless times that he can put up those three pointers, but if those don't work, of course, tactic is going to be there to get those rebounds in and to get the finishes. Yeah, from the Guatemala side, Lossi de Goat, you know, the captain uh, of the team as well. He's, he's been showing off great performances and sometimes, you know, just seriously, when the team's not doing too great, he takes the ball into his own hands and it shoots those threes or if needed, drives through and gets those layups. And that's the, exactly what you want from a captain, especially playing in a point guard position, showing your versatility, showing why you are so valuable on the playing field all around the board. And of course, Taking on that initiative yourself brings over, you know, m momentum is a sticky thing and it can uh, rub itself off on your team. It's obviously if you're having a great game, a great game, there is a good chance that your teammates are going to have one as well if they're not already having it. You know, it's interesting to see on Guatemala's side, they actually have four point guards playing and only one power forward on this. You know, this could be an interesting new tactic. Because uh, sometimes, you know, the, the, the tactics that the, everyone in real basketball uses is one of all, one of yeah. each. So uh, one center, one point forward, one small forward. But this time around, maybe in, East, in NBA 2K, it's good to have four point guards. You know, everyone can shoot those threes. Every, everyone can move the ball very good. Of course, the defense and the rebounds are going to be the hard points to reach out. But, uh, uh, well, we have to see in how... In the, in, enjoy how they play this game. Yeah, well, if you're looking at the archetypes, obviously you would expect from Guatemala to have a good precision in the passing department as well as on the execution on those mid to long range shots. The question, of course, is, as you mentioned before, how is that going to pair up with the defense to the Dominican Republic and with the likes of Tactic there, who is going to be very keen to take <laughs> over the ball. And actually, even though, you know, you don't really get to see um, a point forwards they're getting that many steals in but last time around we saw the game he had like four or five to his name alone and going to show that Dominican Republic are very aware of where these passes are intended to and when you have a known lineup that you're going to go in, up against it might be quite easy to do that so without further ado let's have a look at Dominican Republic versus Guatemala In your blue jerseys are going to be Dominican Republic here, lining up and squaring up against each other. As you can see from the left to the right, confident faces around the board here. In your whites is going to be Guatemala, and that's going to be Lossi the Goat to see if he can get the ball in play in favor of his team, and he's able to do exactly that. You know, uh, this is the last time for me to be able to com uh, commentate on that. What a beautiful dunk already. Doesn't allow me to even finish my sentence. Lossy the Goat, you know, showing the power. Uh, point guards are able to dunk and dunk they can. But continuing on, I just want to say Dominican Republic, what beautiful uniforms. You know, these stripes uh, going off of the sides of there, you know. It's just beautiful. The red goes in perfectly. That is the joy of playing in Pro-Am mode where deep customization is available. And of course, everyone gets to have that little special touch to make sure that all falls into your favor. Kid there, good pass out to Angel. Angel goes for the difficult play there, but Soy Mielia is able to return the ball back in play. However, uh, it's going to be IGL to pass over to Bohio on the three-point line. Sabixo. It actually passes back to Bojillo there. Subixo gets the ball again. Haven't seen him in the previous games that much and it now misses actually the layup there, uh, the uh, jump shot. Uh, but Lossi again with the ball, passes to Angel and beautiful block by Taktuk there. Already a minute shaved off the clock here and it's a close game so far. Dominican Republic leading by a single point. Subixo trying to go for another attempt there but a reach in foul will stop him. 16 seconds on the shot clock here. It's going to be Mirabal to put the ball back into play here. You can see Bojillo as well going for that jump shot. Excellent play. Easy two, five against two in the first quarter here in favor of Dominican Republic. Lossi to go with the ball. Have seen him do a lot on the field so far, on the court uh, in different games. So far, not that much. Had that one shot and one beautiful uh, dunk. Uh, Lossi still keeping the ball to himself, hasn't passed around, now gives it to Jandavir. Actually, it's it's going to be a jump ball there, it looked like so, you know, 
lost the ball a little bit, and then you have to uh, fight for it, pretty much. Of course, uh, both teams very eager to obtain position here. Let's see if this falls in the favor of Guatemala. It's going to be defensively Dominican Republic getting the ball over. Subexo with a very long two. Doesn't get like, it in. Yeah. yeah, it looked like it was meant to be a three-pointer, but he overstepped the line, and then it just got a bit awkward. However, of course, his teammate steps up and gets the three. That was IGL. A January passing all the way to Angel. He wanted to go for the shot himself, but sort of loses the ball there. Passes it to Soy Melia on the sidelines, and that is a beautiful three. Rattles it home. Eight to five, only a three-point game between these two and two and a half minutes. But close to that, still remaining here as Bahio puts up a three of his own. Of course, on that open lane is going to make the shot happen. Yeah, can't let him be clean there. You have to have some defender uh, with him at all times. You know, Soy Malin actually goes through there himself, gives the pass back to Janavir. He's going to be looking for a shot. He takes it, and that goes in beautifully done. Although it was covered, he still manages to find that. Yeah, nice attempt there, and of course, perfect execution. But here is going to be looking to return the favor here and is able to respond. Obviously, this starts to become a bit of a three-point brawl between these two right now. Jandavir as well, great on the dribble. Over to Kid, back to Jandavir as the screen is going to be set up here. Nice deep pass to Lossi, fakes the pass. Soimayola fakes the shot as well. Jandavir there to try and pick up the ball, but it's going to be overtaken now by Dominican Republic as Mirabar... Over to Sabekso, back to Bahio, back to Sabekso with the pass over to Tactic. Should have taken the shot there. I think he had an opportunity. He's still going to go for the drive and put it in. That's not going to count because there was a reach-in foul before All that. All these style points are awarded for those plays, <laughs> but he felt like seeing it through anyway. Mirabal on the three-point line, back to Sabekso. Jump shot up close, not good. Rebound is, though, and Mirabal with the three from the left corner is going to make it happen. 17 to 6 now in favor of Dominican Republic. And now we see how important these rebounds are, and it's good to have that one, tall, at least one tall player on the team who can actually get these. But Kit is pretty tall for himself, so he, he should be looking for those. But Lossi just goes himself and gets the beautiful dunk there, finally get, taking them to double digits. One more minute to play here in the first quarter. Dominican Republic looking strong, but he recognized that opportunity, and of course, with that fast drive to the rim. Actually had three players around him and still manages to dunk, and that's that's why you need a center sometimes, you know? You need the big guy to scare off that, but Lossi does not care, because he is wide open and gets the beautiful dunk. Seven points between the two teams here, 45 seconds on the clock. Bahio on fire here, tactic as well. So there's going to be a bit of a duo play probably happening from Dominican Republic, but not unless Guatemala has something to say about it. Kid gives the pass over to Soimela, but he was out of bounds there. A bit of an error happening, and that instantly stops that offensive play. Yeah, he had the best intentions, but unlucky. He was a little out there, and, uh, you know, every line counts, but tactic... Counts two more points to his name as that Ali Yub goes through. So Emilia looking to set up a play. Ooh, bounces off the back of the Dominican Republic's player. And Sabekso, very long pass into the corner. Instant three from Bohio there. 22 seconds remaining. Dominican Republic starting to gain some serious momentum here. Yeah, that's got twice the points as Guatemala there. But they're not giving up. So Emilia has the ball right now. Has an opportunity to shoot. Doesn't take it. Gives a pass. Now he's on down low there. Janavir is with the ball. He's going to be looking for a free opportunity to get. But every the defense from Dominican. Republic has been so far super great kit actually manages to get the ball they have only one second need to shoot but that is a bad shot doesn't go in and uh, that will be the first quarter another five minutes on the clock here and uh, Dominican Republic are going to be the team to open things up here in the second quarter sub XO very long two again this time around it is successful and I feel like again it was probably intended to be a three, but slightly overstepped the line. And at that point in time, there's not enough uh, time on the clock to really correct that error. Kid out to Janvier from the right wing, and he gets it done. 
Yeah, I mean, you sometimes pass over there and you still get the two points no matter what. It's better to try get those two rather than those three that are not going to happen. But now, an unlucky shot there. It doesn't go in, but Jandavir uh, passes to Lossi to go. Angel with the ball in the paint, gives it to Kid outside, but that is a missed pass and gets intercepted by Dominican Republic. Now, Bohio with the ball, looking for an opportunity to rise up for himself. Uh, he's going to give to Sabek. So, oh, that was a beautiful fake shot. Gives it to Mirabal in the paint there. Uh, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Bohio takes the ball to himself but misses. Fast, long pass over to Soy Melia. Left hand side in the corner. Jandvir, not going to be good this time around. And a very long pass from Sabekso over to Bohio. Back to Sabekso on the three point line. Fakes the shot over to Mirabal in the corner. And he had all the time in the world to prepare for that one. He had a defender there, but, uh, you know, sometimes you still have enough time for you to be able to take this shot. Now Angel with the ball, uh, giving a pass to Kid, now giving back to Chandavir. They've been playing a lot of passing this game. They're definitely more passes than we've seen in different ones, and it's good that most of them actually go through. Now Angel giving it to Lossi, had an opportunity to shoot, giving maybe a little bit too much passes. Someone Need to just shoot. take the shot indeed. Kid does get the rebound, but it's going to be a shot clock violation. Simply not in tough enough time excuse me to execute here and it is going to be Dominican Republic's ball and it's plays like that where you look at them after four quarters and you think to yourself I really should have taken it there yeah those two points even can change the direction of the game so massively so important that you get any points that you can and you know the more points you have the more stress you put on the other team but right now it's out of bounds in Guatemala has the chance to actually finally take these points in 15 seconds on the shot clock. Now Soy Malia with the ball, a foul coming out as a in reach in. Uh, still 14 seconds on the shot clock. This is going to be the third chance to go up against uh, this. Now Jandavir passes to Noah, he gives it back to Lossi. Somebody again needs to take the shots. You can't keep passing around. Angel with only three seconds left tries to go in, but it gets blocked out. And Guatemala has the fourth chance. <laughs> on this offense to try to score. 1.7 seconds on the clock, though. It needs to be an instant attempt here. Jandavir is going to run down the clock too much. And it is going to be Dominican Republic's ball for the second time in a row in a similar fashion here. It's a chance that he just didn't see the shot clock timer being that low. But Subixo uh, shoots the far three, which was definitely not too low, not too high. Just perfect that a beautiful switch can go through. 35 to 14 here and before halftime with two and a half minutes remaining still lossy faking those jumps out of defensive players but still no score as a long pass over to Bohio Sabekso right hand side corner not gonna happen this time around it's lossy to intercept Soy Malia nice attempt on the pass does get the rebound back to himself tries to make a play happen here stepping slightly back Moving over to Jandavir in a nice three-point attempt there slightly early on the release. Long pass into the left-hand side corner for Bahio to play. Back to Sabekso on the three-point line. Tactic there to pick up the slack. Gets the layup but doesn't get it through. Gets another chance at this. Has to pass out. Needs to move. Three seconds are obviously a problem to have on your hands. And obviously Sabekso comes through with a three-pointer there. Yeah, Guatemala needs to get these rebounds after. Kit was trying to get it, but sadly, Tactic was just a little bit better at that point. Lossi now trying to make the two, and he gets it, finally increasing the score to 14. Luckily for Dominican Republic, I believe that was Tactic there, who realized that there's no point of going for that dangerous block. Potentially could have been an and one opportunity. Subexo, however, is able to respond with another three-pointer in favor of Dominican Republic. And now they're really starting to run away with this game here. 25-point lead over Guatemala as they're still looking to see what is that perfect recipe to answer with here. And it's definitely not going to be losing the ball in that fashion. What a long shot from Subexo. Yeah, these far threes have been showing us uh, to be more impressive as, as each player gets to show off how far can he shoot and how precise he can do it multiple times, not only just once. Janavia with the ball gets intercepted by Subexo. Now it's uh, to Subexo back again and he takes the shot in another three for Dominican Republic. Excellent performance coming out from him. Early on, came in, missed a few two-pointers. What was that <laughs> leap? Uh, okay. Now Soy Malia takes the shot. Got 
contested, so he didn't manage to take it in. No, but Hio with the ball passes back to Sabic So in the far distance, has his avatar activated, and that's gonna go in as he is the marksman from the three point line. 25 seconds remaining before halftime here, and the foul drawn against Angel. So play is gonna be reset. 20 seconds on the shot clock, though. So Jandavir. Needs a miracle, a bit of fear to happen. What was that? Angel fails to nail it. Janavir is able to get that rebound, however. Another three-point attempt from Guatemala. Not going to happen. One more time here before Gets half -time. it in. Rattles it through. And 8.4 seconds for Dominican Republic to respond. Bajio on the move here. Sabexo looking for that three-pointer. Perhaps two seconds to shoot. Back to Bajio. Not good. We are back here in a game between Dominican Republic and Guatemala. So far, Dominican Republic is in a commanding lead as the third quarter is on its way. And a lot of it is off the back of those three-pointers from Sabek So, And here's the man on the screen. But a foul drawn instantly there as Guatemala is eager to get the ball back in their hands. Yeah, that was a care uh, like a careful pass they should have taken because almost it was backcourt violation. But luckily, he was just on the line there. Now, a uh, two-pointer comes in. But but no good and uh, Guatemala is up to get that 20 points in and beautifully done by Noah or Angel whichever you like to say now Guatemala up to 21 points Bojillo back Gives. out to Sabexo and you can see clearly that Sabexo is definitely more precise when he's further away from the three-point line not closer to it and that's why you uh, previously saw a few of those shots going a bit over on the release you know, I mean, sometimes that happens. You just have to be like one meter away, half a meter away from the three-point line, and that's your perfect spot. You know, maybe you have a really strong shot. Exactly. Reaching foul now. 14 seconds on the clock for Guatemala to do something here. It's going to be Kid to put the ball back into play. He's been slightly quiet in the point department, asking for a pass, actually setting up a screen here. Soy Malia back over to Jandavir, wide open three, gets it done. Now it takes it to 24 points, uh, still losing to Dominican Republic by 19 or 29. I'm, I'm bad at math, sadly, sadly. but Bojillo has uh, the ball to himself. He's going to shoot for the two-pointer, but misses a little too early, although he had the time to take the shot more carefully. Sometimes that happens. Now Soy Malia still with the ball, gets stolen by him by Bojillo, still with the ball himself, gives it to Mirabal and gets the three-pointer in. I think this might be the first three-pointer of the game for Mirabal. Might be the second at most right now, but obviously a very good sign to see early on here. Nice take on the pass there, but the momentum was just a bit too much, and it is going to be out of bounds. Uh, and Guatemala's ball here, 17 seconds on the clock. Plenty of time to set up a play. Lossy gives to Angel. It gives to the goat. Back it to him, kid. Jandavik giving these passes to find that beautiful three that they so need. Yeah, Janvier definitely good in the point gaining department here. Let's see if he can add a bit more to Guatemala. Sabexo with another three pointer attempt. It's gonna be good this time around only for two, but the celebration was there. Sabexo, 31 points to his name out of the 58 that Dominican Republic has. Now Taktuk is gonna be going in himself. A open court. This was the show for him. How nobody, do you leave it? Nobody expected him to just drive through. Everyone thought it's going to be a pass, and obviously the result just shows. Jandavir, difficult talk, shot to take from the corner, especially being contested like that. But he, oh, pass over to Sabek So, but too many defensive players back again to him as he's looking to take the shot. It's going to be given to Mirabal in the corner there. Another attempt at the three, not going to be good this time around. Tactic boosting up those rebound stats. Gets one for the team. Eight seconds on the clock, though. Sabexo trying to free himself up. It's going to be an alley oop pass and a tactic to finish. Attack took to finish indeed. Now, Guatemala, as I said in the first uh, half, they need to look at these rebounds if they want to do something in this game. But now there will be an illegal screen. So the ball is to Dominican Republic. 62 to 27. Pass turn away. Uh, gets. 
Again, a fast uh, interception there. Bojillo goes himself, gives the pass outside to Subixo, and he gets it in. Already started celebrating beforehand, doing the fist bump. And now the ball goes to Guatemala. A minute and 50 to play here in the third quarter. Angel trying to make a breakaway play happen here. Nice attempt at the layup. Didn't go through this time around. Curved out. And it's going to be Subixo. Another three-point attempt. Not going to happen. IGL good on the rebound. Bojillo another chance. Gives it over to Subixo. And he corrects the error. Gets the three. Gets up Dominican Republic to 68. Subixo so far has shown great performance from the three-pointers. It's a wonder I haven't seen him in the previous games that much, but uh, I guess you sometimes leave the big guns out for the last games. Okay, well, the play there as well works out for Guatemala, but really previously a kid was definitely in a position to shoot, so not really too sure what what's the name of the game here for Guatemala right now. Putting more emphasis on Jan Veer. In the meantime, Bajio with a jump shot from the free-throw line. That is obviously a shot that you want to nail every single time. Has 15 points to his name as well. So it's really been be between Bahio and Subic. So with these continuous three-pointers getting through, 51 seconds still remaining to play. 40 points to Subic. So alone and a backcourt violation. It's going to be Dominican Republic's ball. Yeah, just stepped over a little bit. Could have been a little bit forward to get that pass. But sometimes that happens. Now Bahio goes in, but that's a fast reach and foul to maybe lower it down. I, I don't get the reasoning there, but, but they probably do. <laughs> now still, uh, Bojillo with the ball, gives it back to Subixo, and that will be a missed one. Taktuk uh, gives it back to Subixo, back to Bojillo. They both have similar hairstyles, and they both play in point guard. I mean, do you even see the difference between these guys? One just gets more points. And now he shoots from far and gets the three-pointer. Again, he stepped back a little more, further away, and he gets it in rather than being closer. Absolutely. Now with 20 seconds on the shot clock here. Ooh, the ball is going to be out of bounds. So it is going to be Guatemala's ball. And essentially, with all the time remaining here in the third quarter, Guatemala should be looking to put up a point or two here. He's going to be going for a fast throw but misses gets the rebound back lossy and intercepted by dominican republic given back to subic so he's gonna step outside still waiting for the shot himself bahia goes gives it back to subic so they're see they're clearly trying to find him in an open spot but bahia there actually gives back to subic so they just really want to pump up his scores there 0.4 seconds remaining and a three-pointer goes through what else can you ask for here in this game between dominican republic and guatemala as the fourth quarter and the final five minutes are in play here before we get to find out which of the two teams are going to be the ones that are will uh, that are, will advance into the grand finals here, which are going to be played in the best of three format here. So far, Dominican Republic, of course, in a commanding lead over Guatemala. Guatemala making good attempts at plays here. As I said before, I would like to see a bit more action coming out from Kidd. Now Soy Malia with the ball, back to Kid, back to Soy Malia. He's going to be trying to find that pass. Kid still keeps it lossy, completely free. It doesn't get it in. Should have taken that extra second to time his shot. But uh, now it's going to be Dominican ball when he goes outside of bounds. Going to be starting off strong. Dominican Republic has a chance to get that 100-point scoreline. But there's a reach and foul fast into their court side. Uh, to give back even more time for uh, Dominican Republic to get these shots in. Yeah, Gu Guatemala obviously going for these reach in fouls, just attempting to narrow down the point gap as far as possible here. Lossy, nice attempt on the shot. It is going to be a shooting foul. So free throws on the line. Let's see if he can make it for Guatemala here. Now Lossi uh, gets the first one. And he's going to be able to get the second one. Now, okay, so it is going to be Dominicana here with the possession. And now Bojillo takes this ball again for himself. He's going to actually take the shot himself finally and get these three points uh, to his name. Yeah, well, in the meantime, I can give you a bit of a fun fact that we have here in FIBA Esports Open 2. Not including this game, we have played out 90 games. That is 9-0 games have been played in FIBA Esports Open 2. And this is the 91st. And it looks like it's going to be an absolute dominance coming out from Dominican Republic here. Unless Soy Malia can have something to say about it. Nice attempt from Angel there as well. But the timing was just ever so slightly off.
Yeah, there were a lot of defenders there, but that's going to be a two coming. No, a three still it counts as a three. Looked like it was a stepped over the line, but that just be my eyes. Now Angel is with the ball, passes to Kid, and finally puts a dunk in. Kid showing off how big of a muscles kid, uh, kids have. Absolutely, Bahio now back over to Subic Soul, reach and foul, of course here trying to stop the play already before it can even happen here. Still 21 seconds on the shot clock to work with plenty of time. And it's going to be out of bounds, an error in the passing department, and it's going to be Guatemala's ball here. So obviously, Guatemala enjoying that one. Don't even need to draw a foul there to get possession. And Angel was struggles to regain possession. It looked like he was not really expecting that pass or was just slightly late on the timing there to, to, to obtain possession was sort of a dive in and still lost the ball. But now it's Dominican's Republic to try. Bojillo with the ball, gives it to Subic. So takes the shot himself, and that's another three just beyond that three-point line. And he's still keeping the ball in Guatemala. Kid has it, passes it over, and gets intercepted midway. Now gives the ball back to Mirabal. <laughs> kind of a pun there if you think about it. Now it's going to be to Iglo, passes it back. Haven't seen a lot from Iglo this game, but Subic so... We have seen a lot of him, and another three-pointer from him. Now Kid has the ball, gives it back to Soy Melia. Jandavir with the ball, looking for players, for opportunities to get more three-pointers. Because, you know, you want to go home with a good point score against uh, one of the best teams in the North and Central uh, Conference. Exactly. Bojillo on fire. Still gives it back to Sabek So, but it's going to be IGL to take the three from the right-hand side corner there. Gets his name on the board as well. Had a few shots made as well beforehand. Janavir now looking for a fast play. Too many defensive players. Too many hands to get the ball through right now. And look at how many players on that left-hand side. Surely the ball loses its path as Bahio now passing over to Subek. So barely gets the ball uh, back in control. Super far three. Gets the preemptive celebration as well. And rightly so. That was absolutely on the head of the nail. Yeah, that went from the logo itself, but now gets another interception there. Taktuk could have gone in and trying to get that drive. Still had the opportunity, but slowed down, giving back to Subic. So, and another And he's just taking three. it closer and closer to that mid-court line, just really testing himself, putting on the three-pointer again. And of course, that's going to go through when there's no one to contest. And with minute and 35 seconds remaining here, Dominican Republic are really amping up the pace here. And Guatemala are having trouble to find an answer for it. Jandavir giving over to Angel. Jandavir open to take a pass. Angel's trying to make a play. Shooting foul. He's going to be able to take these two free throws in and, you know, to widen the gap, shorten the gap, actually, between both of them. You know, at First one misses, sadly, with an 88 percentage. Uh, you don't get to see that that often. But there goes 101, and he gets, in, gets that in, nails it in. One and a half minutes still remaining here as Bahio again will be looking for Sabekso, who is, looks like to be similar to what Canada were doing. Yeah. Sabekso has already 67 points to his name out of the 106. So obviously a, an amazing performance. We didn't get to see him beforehand in play, and... You know, it's a bit of a bit of a secret weapon in Dominican Republic's hands. Lossi, yes, had a good attempt at going at it. Kid now tries to go for a cheeky pass through the legs. Obviously, a difficult one to make. Slabexo, in the meantime, goes for another three-point attempt. Not going to be good this time around here. Still one more minute on the clock to play. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Bojillo on the three. Back to Slabexo and a reaching foul. Bojillo could have gone for the furthest shot ever, but uh, he wasn't so confident, I guess, in that one. He, he wants to give it to Subic, so I guess I'll leave it at the logo it is. But Subic, so still with the ball, 43 seconds left. He gets another three, and, and this is definitely just taking a page out of Ice Reel's book and uh, getting as much points as you can. Let's see what can Guatemala do here in the final 40 seconds that we have in the fourth quarter before we get to find out all the good parts of the North and Central America. And by that, I mean who gets to be in the grand final. Reach and foul coming out from Dominican Republic and Guatemala being in the bonus, of course, they're going to be on a three-point line here. 24, excuse me, 30 seconds only left in that fourth quarter. The first shot is good from Janaware, and that, that's what you would expect from this archetype. Obviously gets the second one as well. 
every point guard should get these uh, free throws uh, no problem but Sabixo tries to take the shot with only 26 seconds left now a uh, Dominic uh, Guatemala's ball still can't really get out of there but four players out there could have gone for the pass should have gone for the pass but they get another shooting foul and Jandavir is up for another shot yeah with 18 seconds remaining here it's oh it's all see the goat I'm sorry they look quite similar everyone has that white shade of uh, uh haircuts there perhaps that's also done purposely so so you know if your opponent is paying close attention to uh just visual cues uh, you might get him mixed up to cover the wrong player here kid with a fast interception goes with the drive gets the layup doesn't get the ball through long pass over to bahio here five more seconds remaining sub so will this be a last final three-pointer Back to him, long three, is and good. that's good with the buzzer. So you just saw a convincing victory coming out from Dominican Republic here and over Guatemala. And this is the final game played here in this single round robin format. Obviously, Dominican Republic very strong in the three-point department, bringing out Sabexo to show off his skills and to wear off anyone who might be doubting Dominican Republic in terms of being able to score here. Guatemala, I would say good showing, slightly lacking in the precision department and also just making making use of those ad um, advantage plays that you get, right? You you had a few situations there where, where Kid was up close, could have gone for a shot, decided to play it out still. Perhaps, of course, it was the captain's call in that situation. We really don't have that information, but at least looking from the perspective of getting three points you really should just take these but uh, looking after this game we have a chance to look at the standings the final ones that we have and uh, in the grand finals you can see that it's gonna be united states against dominican republic so very close call for puerto rico there but just simply not enough this time around and it actually came down to the point differential there so it is going to be a best of three grand final between the United States and Dominican Republic. And I will remind you one more time, best of threes are called like that because you need to get two wins to your name to be able to crown, call yourself champions. Now, considering this is the very first time where we have North and Central America Conference participating, this is going to set the tone for any future teams that are going to be looking to, well, you know, take on the champs, whoever that might be. We'll just have to wait and see. But before that, I do believe we're going to have Jeff back on the line here shortly. And obviously very curious to hear from the man himself. There we go, the legend. What do you think of these games? What do you think of these finalists? Uh, first of all, you uh, you guys are being too lenient calling me a legend. I, I just want to <laughs> say the, the casting that all of you have done and the privilege that it's been to listen to the energy the excitement the emotion thank you has Jeff. been incredible the last few weeks so i know as we're we're headed out i want to say that first in terms of you know this north and central america conference i did not think it was going to be as even as it's been and Absolutely. i think that's a testament to the work that these teams have put in and it's been incredible to watch you know you guys just talked about puerto rico right just narrowly missing with that three-way tie with the U.S. and the Dominican Republic. I don't think Canada is that far away either. So, you know, it, you've got four teams in this region, four of the best nations in the world. So it was incredible to watch them the last two days. Well, it obviously sets everyone up for a bright future here and for even tighter games. So speaking about future, myself and artists, we're going to go off screen here for a bit just to prepare for those grand finals. And I'm going to leave it to you, Jeff. Yeah, you guys get hydrated, take a drink, whatever you need to do to get ready because we've got a rematch coming up of USA against the Dominican Republic. I think you could argue this was the, the most exciting game that we saw in the two days of round robin play so far. 60 to 57 was the final score, the U.S. winning in overtime of that day. Tactic had an alley-oop opportunity at the end of regulation to win it for the Dominican, for the Dominican Republic. He just missed, and then it was the, it was the U.S closing things out at th that point it was dicey because the u.s had already lost to puerto rico was playing basically to survive and they were able to win that game and that's how they get they get to be here against the dominican republic so 
what are the keys to the game that we're looking at? Well, it's the point guard and center to me for both of these two teams that matter. JBM and Rhea were the number one overall picks the past two seasons in the NBA 2K League. And while they've been good players, I, I don't think that people would necessarily have considered them the best of their position over the last couple of years in the professional league. But the way that they've played together has shown why they are such elite players. They're going to need to work that pick and roll. They're going to need to work together. In the Puerto Rico game, they kind of lost their their focus a little bit as teammates and they tried to bring it on at the end it was too little too late they're gonna have to keep that up the whole game against the Dominican, the Dominican Republic this time around Bo Ohio and tactic on the other side what a tournament of redemption it's been for Bo Ohio after a sluggish NBA 2k league season he's been outstanding here in the FIBA esports over and proving why Pacers gaming took him with the number four pick in last year's draft and he needs to continue to push the ball for the Dominican Republic and try to work that offense if they're going to compete with uh, with Team USA. JBM had 29 and 10, 29 points and 10 assists in the last matchup. Bohio had 25 points and nine assists, so very similar there, but six turnovers for Bohio in that last matchup. He's going to have to limit the turnovers this time around. On the inside, I mentioned Rhea and Tactic. They're going to be going back and forth. The Dominican Republic out-rebounded the U.S. 14-9 to in that first matchup. That kept the Dominican Republic in the game. Also, such a small amount of rebounds, you realize how little, what the razor-thin margin of actually missed opportunities on possessions was Rhea gets a lot of help from Ramo, and that could could play the difference in terms of the rebounding. But we're going to see as that game develops, as things develop. I mentioned it. Overtime was the last one. It was that close. It was a defensive battle. We're going to see something similar to that again. And look, despite the up and down nature of what it's been like for Team USA, who I think. Most people would have made the heavy favorite coming in. They lose that opener against Puerto Rico. They're able to run the table since. But at the same time, I think all of the pressure is on them to get this victory. So many players, there were 30 players that went to that that tryout for Team USA. So many people think they should have been on this team. It's Team USA's FIBA Esports Open North and Central America Conference to lose. The Dominican Republic has been so impressive so far. They're not going to let up but I don't think people expected them to get to the finals like they have. It is going to be incredible. Some of the top players in the world, you're likely to see nine NBA 2K League players at 10 in these starting lineups. USA versus the Dominican Republic for the North and Central Conference region in the FIBA Esports Open. And for the last time for Jeff's Corner, thank you so much, everyone, for watching. And I'm excited to see this matchup. I don't need you up in my way right Set up on my item in, I don't give a damn like I don't with no time to kill. I've been feeling like the opposite of work. It's a work and I've never been a purpose thing to me. I just do what I love and 
and it works for me. So I'm freaking every check and put the money in the pushing me to be gonna to the finish and the kidding of a little bit. Everybody know I'm working in the sky. I do it differently. So only time will give me everything that I deserve. My it. it. I just bought a new whip, spent a couple thousand just to cruise it. Shawty said she love me, but it's worse and never prove it. I never tell her, but I put it in the music. Well, that's okay. All I want to do is make the best of my whole day. Thank the Lord up above, get the team on the side, make you laugh to know it. That's the stuff that I love, la, la, da, da, da. We can be friends if you wanna. We can just talk if you wanna. We can all hang. Rocking all the same things. Say you need me, but you really trying to change lanes. Well, I don't even care. In my life, I don't battle with no fear. Fighting dragons, always been a real one. Hate you saying you're showing love, you a real chameleon. Get the facts freaking straight, always on repeat. Like, we could be friends if you wanna. We could just talk if you wanna. We could hold hands if you wanna. Hey, tell me what you wanna do. We could just laugh if you wanna. Late nights on the stars if you wanna. We could just kiss if you wanna. Hey, tell me what you wanna do. Present heaven and a teacher If I'm speaking it's a lesson And it's completed infinite evidence Placed within a grace that is measured Let's measure by what could never be meddled with They say we gotta see it Take a hike never buy what they peddle You can keep it Plenty liars and stick with the premiership Put me in the coliseum With the red letters that pray I stay strong Even if they bear arms on your board Call me the ref and it's on the father's surface Staying true to his purpose Pray to Yahweh alone if I rest in his worship I look through the throne whenever I'm stressing I'm worried He leaves me by the still I'm never hurry. If they yes, where I'm at, tell them I'm right here. I stand beside a giant that resides no fear. Oh no, I never ride so low. I hear them cry. Hold on, we gon' fly. Aye, 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 aye. On cloud now, we go so high. Can't bring us down, we so fly. Hold on, I know it won't be long. 
Till we see his face It was love on the way When we meet him in Yo, the sky our people perish Due to lack of knowledge Not a macroeconomics But of God's solid promise More relevant today Than it can never be tomorrow And we don't fear your pistol So that tip you want is hollow Hoping the resurrection So that pit you dig is shallow Reaching for is easy Cause the best of leaders follow Call me the harbinger Tool in the hand of the carpenter Dead in stereotypes In the way that they like to market us Fist up for my people That ain't pride of solidarity Truth is a rarity We don't deal with your relativity We won't for certain And we don't want your bread and circus Power with the eyes people With implication and purpose Bigger than pound symbols And phrases without spaces Timelines updated With prophetic application Grinding from the basement But we always been fly Reaching for that maturation Cloud 7, 8 Yes, where I'm at Tell them I'm right here I step aside a giant That besides no fear Oh no, I never ride so low I hear them cry Hold on, we gon' fly Aye, 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 aye. On cloud now We go so high Can't bring us down We so fly Hold on, I know it won't be long Until we see his face It was well worth the wait When we meet him If they yes, where I'm at Tell them I'm right here I step aside a giant That besides no fear Oh no, I never ride Homie in his element, ain't no wrecking his regiment. Rudimentary relevance that he's relishing. You're insulting my intelligence. It's evident your rapper's extrament from an elephant. One year you be irrelevant. I need minds, I mean yours. In the meantime, I just need time. Open doors and I be fine. He most denied shows on pause in a rewind. Then I realize my jealousy got me on decline. You don't really know that feeling when they paint you as a villain. In the night you get to thinking, homie, maybe they was right. Put your eyes closed to the ceiling, then we're playing all your feelings. So we met this up your healing, diving deeper in your black oh, Don't you get involved, all my dogs Reservoir, Tarantino with the balls Know they in it from the start, no I do not Play no part, your whole squad just full of ops Through the day, congratulations, but I'm blotting In the dark, hold up, hold up, hold up Don't you ask me about no motive, my whole life I've been supportive, while my peers all get promoted Getting numbers, hitting quotas, posting photos On their socials, now I put you on one notice Put my shoes on on your sofa, should've never Gave y'all money, Rick James To your Charlie Murphy's, I'm done Playing with your job turkeys, I die Quicker with the pride lucky, but is it worth it if I hit you with some lines to get your mind working? Nobody better make a sound. I need everything. Somewhere I fell and lost my crown, but I'm still a king. I just need my, I need yours in the meantime. I just need my, I need yours in the meantime. I just need my, I need yours in the meantime. I just need my, I need yours in the meantime. Yeah, I'm laying down the gauntlet. I'm tired of watching culture vultures turn a profit while the real ones never charted. Little buddy, run your pockets. I want your platform and your wallet and your follows and your market. I should stop it. I'll be bitter because his time is ticking and these songs ain't hitting. I know they hits, but I can't get these folk to pay attention. Baby, because my skin is black and I ignore the fitness. Baby, it's in his time and boys are whining, hate the scriptures. I get offended in the absence of contentment. My resentment being sending out the... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here in FIBA Esports Open 2, North and Central America Conference Grand Finals time. The scene is set. My name's Renars. Alongside with me is Chris again back. And Chris, oh. an amazing moment to have you here for these finals. Thank you, mate. Happy to be your wingman again. This is going to be absolutely epic. I have been watching from the wings, even having even having a, a bit of a, a bit of a chat with uh, Jeff off, off stream as well. <laughs> oh my God. Excited. These games have been epic. I, I couldn't believe this stat. We've had 90, 91 games. Yep. And these Amazing. are going to be at least two more there at to least. add it to that number, if not the whole three. Previously yeah. in the South America oh, Conference, yeah. we went all the way to that final match. And let's see if that's going to be the case here again. Anyone tuning in just now, it is USA playing against Dominican Republic here on the big stage for that title, for that first trophy in the North and Central Conference and in that part of the world here in FIBA Esports Open, we have a 
hopefully very close final on our hands here. Both teams have put up amazing effort and showed everyone oh. they definitely deserve to be here. Incredible skills on display, without a doubt. Like, fantastic tactics. Like, you want to talk... Uh, I mean, literally Argentina set the bar very, very high earlier on against Uruguay in the uh, South American Conference Final. Yep. And and we fully expect now North and Central America to absolutely match that caliber. Um, it's going to be brilliant. I can't wait. I would, And they're in the virtual tunnel right now. The players are getting lined up. Exactly. Oh, my God. And, you know, I would be expecting to see as well low-scoring game, games here because obviously either side is going to be running down the clock yep. and... The, you know, the defense is going to be super active on both ends of the court there. So it is going to be exciting times for anyone uh, looking to cast their vote. You still have time to do that. So head over to chat. Let everyone know which team you are supporting. But let's have a look at the lineups here one more time. You bet. Okay. And uh, Dominican Republic, we're just, well, don't worry. They have a team. Let's start with the USA, though, and the very familiar face uh, of the captain, uh, JBM who really has been leading by example. He's been a phenomenal uh, young talent. Uh, then we have, okay, well, obviously. We'll fix that. Obviously, there. we need Dominican Republic up on the screen as well. They need their moment in the spotlight. That is only fair. Uh, but, okay, back to then what we're actually expecting uh, from this final. Uh, are we expecting then a KG affair? I mean, I was off stream. You were casting and calling the live games. Are we expecting that low scoring affair? I mean, the final, the third and final deciding game uh, between Argentina and Uruguay, both teams capable of, of dropping hundreds, well, look, uh, was, was 48 to 39, if I'm not mistaken. The, the only way how I see here a high scoring game would be if uh, just one team finds that that perfect antidote to, to the issue at hand here and really finding a, a, essentially what it is, an absolute counterplay to whatever the other team is attempting to play out. Yep. And that's really the only way how I see we're going to have a high scoring game because back over in South America Conference Finals, we did have that one game that yep. was above 20 point differential and finished positively for Uruguay there. Let's see if that's going to be the case for any of the countries participating. I mean, obviously a lot of ego on the line here as well. It is national pride. Oh, yeah. And, and when it comes to that and then the international stage and when it comes to grand finals away, uh, uh, as well, you know, you, you're going to have these small moments where a bit of doubt here and there, a bit of confidence here and there. And it's all a question of how that is going to be perceived within the team and how they manage that within their own team's chemistry. And, and you're talking about e-athletes here, 100 percent. We heard from Argentina the training that was going in daily leading up to the tournament and, and it pays off. And we know uh, that both the Dominican Republic and USA are approaching exactly the same way. I have a big silly grin on my face because uh, we also get and, and I, I, I believe that there may be a behind the scenes video uh, coming eventually, but we get to see the players' faces uh, behind the scenes and here they are. You get to see them now. Now, and they this means a lot to them to, to put it lightly and so for the Dominican Republic Bojio Il Gloli we've got Majestic Rando with those threes that he likes to just stroke from deep and then of course the thick boy down there in the paint tactic and on this side of the United States you're going to have JBMNY Kenny Got Work Crush Raff Real Ramo and Ria that's right and, and we already are so familiar with these names we know Bojio loves to to just tote that rock drop in those threes rando if he sets his feet and you don't have like a hand right in his face it's green all day green means go. well same goes for united states here really with ria coming in crucially with the rebounds getting those continuously getting another opportunity for his team to score jb of course uh together with crush actually on the three-point department jb the one to set up the plays crush to take out the three-pointers from either side uh, of the, the corners of the court. So really here, I think we do have a very close affair. Yeah, absolutely. And our, our man Jeff over in Jeff's corner, absolute legend, enjoyed having him uh, involved once again with the FIBA Esport Open 2. Jeff is telling us that nine out of the ten faces you are looking at right here are actually 2K pro players. Legitimate so, yeah. 2K pro players. So they do it if, for a living. If you are looking for the highest quality e-basketball games, this is the place where to be right now on the big international stage. And obviously between these two titans who have very rightly so have found their way into the grand finals, the only thing is left to find out who's going to be the one to take that trophy home. And of course, 
that MVP award as well with the team. That is like it's an unenviable position that the casters have having to pick the MVP. And it's so that, difficult as that well. That is one of our questions uh, to the winning captain: Is hey, was that an okay selection there? Um, uh, however, like truly numb uh, from the uh, South American Conference ended up taking home the MVP award, and thank God the the Argentinian captain actually agreed with us. So thank you for that. Uh, but now as well, we have the the dubious honor of having to select uh, the MVP. For from the winner uh, between this grand final, USA, Dominican Republic, already we have uh, some names etched out that we're expecting to see big things from. Absolutely. Uh, uh, none other than the captain of Team USA as well. JBM has been phenomenal the entire tournament. And um, uh, again, he's continuously shows that as well, if needed, he can step up really big time, get those drives yeah. in as well if the three-pointers are not falling his way. Now, one big thing that I really am keen to see and find out here, um, Dominican Republic did say in their interview that they have done their scouting and they have done their research. So obviously a lot will come down to how resultive they are in trying to counter that. But I believe, Chris, we have also the what results oh, in. Oh yeah, we have the poll results in and this is just about out as tight as you would guess so a lot of respect being shown by chat here 53 percent of you though 53 percent i'm no uh, statistician but i believe i believe there's a margin for error there 53 percent saying usa so get the usa chance going dominican republic 47 percent very respectable poll right there from chat not lovesided at all and uh, to be in all fairness, in my mind, this is absolutely a 50-50 game. We've yeah. seen brilliant performances throughout this weekend from both countries participating here. One shines a bit more in one sector, the other one does the opposite. And, well, here's the result. A true clash of titans oh, from yeah. North and Central America. And obviously, a lot is riding on these games. And, of course, I can't even imagine what it means for the family back at home as yep. well, knowing knowing that your loved one is there to represent your national pride on the big stage. And then, you know, every single basket is going to feel like either a gained or a missed opportunity. Yeah. And, and you really need to learn also just while well, being in the game to live with that momentum and to not fall to it as well when it doesn't fall into your favor. You bet so much pressure on these uh, young e-athletes. Uh, we're lucky. We just get to cost it, and it's nerve-wracking enough for us. As you mentioned, I can't imagine family, friends watching, all of the fans out there as well. Um, it really is absolutely epic. But, of course, they are playing for silverware. Now, this is a well, floating between us here, special effects, uh, a, a digital rendition of the trophy. However, uh, and, and it does look a lot like the obelisk that mysteriously started appearing around the world a couple of weeks ago. So maybe a really a smart marketing move from the FIBA, uh, a FIBA marketing department there. But a real trophy will be making its way to either uh, uh, Team USA or the Dominican Republic, uh, their, their respective basketball federations. I just hope, I hope that it does a tour of the players' houses as well. Surely and, it will. I mean, everyone's earned the right to hold it in yeah. hand, to have it uh, right in front of them. And that is... Um, the, the the fruit of your uh, your labor really. absolutely and I'm then then finally we get I hope some like very memeable and hilarious uh, social media um, photos and moments as well um, you know the trophy doing the rounds at home I think that's going to be great and then as you mentioned though we mentioned that there will be an MVP of the yes. grand finals and they're going to be taking home a uh, Tissot watch there. Uh, on on the wrist, so that is uh, that's going to be a cool reminder of what you did in yeah. the grand finals, and I'm probably saying cool is a bit underplaying. I know, I would, I think cool. I'm just like, I, it were it me personally, I would probably never wear the thing because I I lose I lose things because uh, I would probably just leave it on the mantelpiece or I don't know in a, in a safe somewhere. Okay, but we're getting close. You know what, Chris? I believe the game is ready, so no, without further ado, this is North and Central America Grand Finals, the very last games that you're going to see here in FIBA Esports Open, and it is going to be USA taking on Dominican Republic. Here we go from east to west coast, USA. The chant is slowly building. And then from Dominican Republic and the picturesque Samana Peninsula to the buzz of their capital city, Santo Domingo. You know that the whole country is behind them, both re respective sets of players. 
opening tip right there, and it looks as though the Dominican Republic wearing the blue have the ball, and Bojio is going to get first blood right there. USA wearing the white. What a way to kick things open here in the first game in the grand finals. This is a best of three scenario here. So, of course, even if you win one game here, that's not all over. You needed to do it twice. Kenny pass over to Real Ramo in the corner there. Breakaway play. Ooh. Tries to go for the dunk. The ball leaves his hands as great defensive plays. And, of course, a foul drawn here. Just a cheeky foul there. Trying to get the uh, momentum back a little bit. Good stuff right there. And here we go. Bojio is going to take the inbounds here and just get to work. Early advantage to Dominican Republic here over Team USA. Alley oop Duncan. They've got a four point lead. And a big dunk to open things up for them here one more time. Four to nothing so far in the lead. Obviously, USA are not going to be too slow to respond here, but a reaching foul will slow them down just by a bit. 20 seconds still to work with here. Real Ramo puts the ball into play, and you can look at the pressure. Majestic is yeah. up in his face. And that's JB passing over to Rhea. Real Ramo around the block. It goes, and Kenny with the three-pointer. Not going to be good. The rebound is, though, very long three from JB, and it still doesn't go through. USA still looking to respond to Dominican Republic, who are currently up by four. Bojio with the play now. Attempt to pass over to Tactic there, but two defensive players, of course, prevent that from happening as JB looking to set something up for USA. Here we go, Rhea and JB working that pick and roll. Good defense, so great work to get in the pass lane there from Tactic. Perfectly positioned to cut off that pass to the corner. That was going to be an open three, and you would think a high percentage shot as Bojo slams it home again. And just like that, no need, no need to panic necessarily, but three quick buckets in succession here for the Dominican Republic, and they have a six to nil lead over USA. USA are trying to work that ball around. You can't leave JBM too wide open right there. Or Kenny got work. A couple of really good shooters, but of course you got to make the shots, and right now they're just clanging them. Yeah, you need to nail those tactic with an air mid-air adjustment. Extends the lead up to eight. Instant timeout called by USA here. Yeah, look, that that's just a, a kind of stop the momentum. You know, stop the flow a little bit right there. Timeout from Team USA. That's, Regroup, recognize yeah. what's not working for you. So far, I would say it's just slightly um, overdoing it in the passing department. A bit more shots as Kenny. Fakes the shot. Rhea hoped to get a pass there, but that seemed to be a bit of a misplay there yeah just a, a little kind of just a, the timing is just lacking a, a tiny bit here it is you know the the strokes on the shots just not quite there attempted alley-oop but you can see they're creating the chances they're creating the opportunities great dunk from tactic right there they are creating the opportunities they're just not taking uh you know full advantage of them so no reason to panic at all um, but but there is a bit of a problem starting to emerge here if usa fails to respond any longer Dominican Republic will have a chance to even further out extend their lead here. And already in the double digit mark, 10 to nothing so far. And that is not something I thought I'm going to say here in this uh, first quarter. Just uh, look a little bit, a little bit lackadaisical with some more great defense here from Dominican Republic as they get another quick transition hoop right there. So 12 points to nil. The, the only reason I am not really getting too panicky here and, and Team USA shouldn't either is they know that they can pour in some really, really quick points. But I think it's about time they got their first bucket here. Exactly. Rhea in position back over to JB. Fake pumps it. Tries to open himself up, back over to Rhea, again back to JB. But the clock is not playing in their favor. That looks good. There you and go. there we go. That's the first two for USA as he stepped on the line there. Right? That was a little harsh, I think, from referee right there. That looked like, oh, the world. A three. There's Rando, number 34 for the Dominican Republic. A really good three-point shooter. Bojio so deadly with the ball in hand here. He really is like a ninja carving his way. To another two points there. Now what Dominican Republic want to do is they've been great at this. They haven't had any empty possessions. So no turnovers. Yeah. Every time they've had the rock, they've put it through the hoop right there. And now uh, Team USA just need to make good passes like that. Got to hit your shots, though. Early on, I think maybe just nerves getting to them. Good alley-oop, though. High percentage shots. You know, difficult to miss. There we go. That is the fast plays that we like to see. Timeout called by Dominican Republic here. 14 to 4, still 10 point lead. 47 seconds to go in the first quarter here. As it is going to be Bahio on fire now. And looking look, to finish strong here. Look at that full court pressure right there. Tactic though, 
you know, just slowing it down. They know they are kind of in the driver's seat a little oh. bit. Oh, good time out there from in Dominican the Republic. Of time. Yeah. yeah, good defense here. Team USA, no, no reason to panic at all. Play solid defense. 13 seconds left on this possession right here for the Dominican Republic. Bojio has already activated his takeover, and he is on fire early on in this one. Crowd on their feet. And here comes the inbounds. 14 seconds to work with. Oh, already nearly at the end of the first quarter as we get a pickpocket right there. Crush with a big play coming out, setting up JB for Ooh. success, but Tactic with the long hands, even goes for an even longer leap there. Rando preventing from Rhea from obtaining the ball as Bahia on the three-point line gives a nice pass to Tactic. Beautiful. Just the touch of his tip of his fingertips and oh, gets the ball through. That was really fun to watch right there. Questionable pass from JBM. He is the captain. He normally leads by example. He just needs to slow things down, be a calm, steady hand. Good hard drive, kick it out, drop that in real low. Misses again there at the buzzer. Too many misses here from Team USA early on. They do just need to really start to stroke it and drop those shots in, which they can do. We know we've seen it the entire tournament, the entire conference, really good skills. Uh, you know, Rillo knows he's better than that. Great boards here from Rhea, kicks it out. That's green, finally. Finally, they drop into three. They were looking for that three-pointer for such a yeah. long time and finally found it. Hopefully, that gets the ball rolling for them. Tactic as well on fire. Slightly yep. stuck on the three-point line. Here's too many defensive players around. Screen set up. Tactic with the play. Instead, it's going to be Rando with the three. Oh, be careful. That is literally not a giant that you want to wake up. Leave that sleeping giant be because when Rando gets going from deep, it's going to be over real quickly here. you got to step up and defend him there. Here's USA trying to work something, not panicking at all. Good passing, good ball rotation, seven to shoot. Now, Now's your chance to really just take what's on offer. Nice drive, two points right there. 10-point lead here for Dominican Republic. You touched upon that early. Double-digit lead they've been able to maintain. Yeah, I mean, we, we both well know that that double-digit lead can disappear very quickly here, and especially the likes of these two teams. Rando now over to IGL in the corner. Uncontested shot, and that three, of course, goes through 22 to 9 uh -huh. in the second quarter here. Still three and a half minutes remaining in play before yeah. halftime, and JB looking for that golden opportunity. Majestic eager to pit, pick pocket here, and now... Tactic goes for that jump, does stop the shot attempt, but you, you really need to do a bit more to stop Rhea in that situation. Yeah, so the only thing that I am getting a tiny bit concerned about with Team USA is the lackadaisical defense there. Just like that, too many open shots for the Dominican Republic. If you are down, you've just got to tighten the bolts a little bit defensively. Exactly, just a bit more contention here is needed from yeah. USA right now. Kenny holding on to the ball here as well. Two minutes and 55 seconds on the clock as Real Ramo looking to make a play happen here. Having a bit of a trouble going up against IGL and Tactic. Kenny got work. He's going to be looking to finish the job here. But a single second remaining. He needs to take a shot. And that is a difficult shot to take there. If the rebound is still good. Crush remains in position. Another 10 seconds to work with here. JB looking for an opportunity. Rhea comes in with a screen. Not really good enough. And that pass was too dangerous to take there. Bojillo now on the returning in. Tactic in position. Can go for the shot there. Gives it over to Majestic <laughs> in the corner. And oh, an A. Oh, you just, ta uh, Tactic just has the calmest hand on the court, doesn't he? He really just is so masterful at stopping the flow for just a moment. Great backdoor cut right there. More of that needed from Team USA. Tactic, though, such a cool, calm head. A really good presence uh, on the court there for the Dominican Republic. And now what Team USA need to do is just try and put a couple of possessions together um, where, where they're getting stops defensively and scoring at the other end themselves. That's a good look from Bocchio, though. So hard to defend. It's easier said than done. Very easy to say from the commentary of booth course. as well. But uh, Team USA at the moment, yeah, just, just kind of losing their grip on this game. So need to get their act together here. Finish this uh, second quarter. Crush is open. Yeah. Tactic even. They're almost falling in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> good, good pass. Good cuts. Three to shoot, though. Pulls the trigger. Kenny got work. Nice three-pointer okay, there. I was really getting concerned with them running the, ground, the clock like that. Yeah. But finally, the shot goes through for Kenny. 
as he opens up the points for himself here as well, but most importantly for USA a bit more. But he, oh, ooh, dangerous attempt there. That's there good, we though. go. That's the long hands we like to see in defense from USA. JB is going to be stopped here with a personal foul. Yep. And look, that's exactly what Team USA needed, a stop. Honestly, it doesn't feel as though the Dominican Republic have, have turned the ball over or missed once. It just feels like that right now. And so, yeah, Team USA doing really well just to stop the flow a little bit. Now it's important. It doesn't matter whether it's two or three or one. They've got to drop some points in right here. Seven seconds to shoot. Rhea asking for a pass. It's going to be still Kenny in position with the ball. Out to JB, back to Kenny. One second to make a play. And it's not good. The rebound is, however, JB with another 10 seconds to work with here. Rhea comes in with the screenplay. All instantly asking for a pass as well. What's going to be the play here with three seconds remaining? 34 Beautiful. before halftime and a far, far. That was a captain three. shot right there. That was magnificent. Here we go now. Can they get another stop? USA with a bit of momentum. They don't get the board. Look at tactic. He is everywhere. Such, such a great presence on the court right there. There's the turnover they needed, Team USA. A little bit of momentum coming their way now. 17 seconds, good timeout. Work a really high percentage shot here. Chip away at that lead. Go into halftime with your heads held high, knowing that you've turned the momentum a little bit in your favor. It's still only 10 points between the two, and with 12 seconds remaining before halftime, JB, of course, will want to nail this one to the perfection that he's trying to make here. Long pass over to Kenny. Crush able to take the shot. Beautiful. Green, we're going to have half time. It's going to be an eight-point Dominican Republic lead over USA. All right, okay. we're back here for the second half. Eight-point lead for Dominicana here over USA right now. And this being the first grand final game, if you're a USA fan, you're obviously not really sitting calmly right yeah. now in your chair, are you? Absolutely. And you know who's looked really impressive for Dominican Republic, though? Bohio has looked fantastic out there. And he is going to try and continue that. Now they get the double dip, though, with JBM. Definitely just wants a bucket here because then you've scored a whole bunch of points. Oh, it's a risky pass, though. And Dominican Republic working the ball down the court once again. Tactic doing great things there. He even fakes the pass over to Bahio. That's a dangerous one. I feel like a steal is imminent here unless that breakaway play is going to happen. Instead, Tactic decides to drive it out. Goes for another attempt here himself. And that's going to be a shooting foul this time around. So, of course, on the free throw line. And pretty sure Tactic is going to nail these two. Yeah, we've actually seen him. He is deceptively slippery when it comes to those... Uh, power moves from the top and of the key. One more thing to say about Tactic here as well. I like how he's using his player's archetype. He's so versatile with his plays. It's not just about driving the ball. It's not just about being very present in defense. He does everything he could humanly can yeah. to give his team an advantage here. And that's, of course, a true mark of a professional. Definitely, definitely risky, risky passes here from Team USA. I'm not a massive fan of them uh, of throwing the ball across across the key like that. Can he go work just trying to work his way towards a high percentage shot there? That I like, though. I do like kind of working yourself into a 10-foot jump shot right there when you got the skills to pay the bills like Kenny does. Uh, however, Ohio now with the rock himself. Good pass. There's Rando. He's been quiet. Five to shoot. Good defense here from Team USA. Just got to keep a contested shot. That's a great drive. Rattles out. Good rebound defensively there. And here we go, Team USA. Crush is going to be stopped here. Look, three defensive players around six players in total just on the right-hand <laughs> side right now is JB looking to make a breakaway play for it. Pass over to Ria. Very hard layup there. Yeah. Makes it happen as he flies over the defense. That actually takes a lot of skill to perform as well. you got to time your shot really, really well. There's another example of tactic, just holding up the game, doing what needs to be done. Waits for the playmaker to come in and to set up the play for his team. Ten seconds on the clock. A slightly early release on the shot, but it is going to be out of bounds. So still Dominican Republic are going to have the possession here with 14 seconds to work with. Still full three minutes remaining in the third quarter. And so far, 
Dominican Republic are not ready to let go of this lead. And IGL tries oh, the extended oh. tactic with the rebound. Reach and foul this time around 14 seconds on the clock. Neither of the teams are still close to getting into the bonus just yet. So still a few fouls to work with here. Absolutely fantastic work from Tactic. He is absolutely all over the court. He's everywhere. It's fantastic. I really feel like the Dominican Republic are soon going to start to pass this ball over to Rando a bit more here. Bohayo goes for that shot. Doesn't make it. Tactic again with the rebound. Needs something to work here. Can't get it done. And this time it's a reach and foul from himself. Well, he had a, he had a chance at a steal there. And I, I would back him to potentially make one as well. So why not? He does everything else. Here comes JBM. Now this is mission critical. This is exactly where we were to begin the quarter. An opportunity here to just to etch that eight-point lead down to six, maybe even five. This is important. The Team USA in a very low-scoring game, as you predicted correctly, Renaz, just try to get back on track here. Good backdoor cut. Nearly got the and one there. But at least they're going to go to the line here, and they're going to come away if you can knock these both in with only a six-point deficit. That is important. But I tell you what, we're nearly up to the fourth quarter here. Yeah, and I'm really getting close to the edge of my seat as I'm looking at the scoreline, <laughs> looking at the time, and looking at how USA and Dominican Republic are playing this one. Really an absolute nail-biter so far. 19 seconds to work with here as Bohio is going to be stopped by JB. They're dead in his tracks. They're over to Tactic, back to Bohio, looking for that opportunity. Rando now comes in, but a reach in foul happens. So I like 14 that, seconds to work. I, yeah, I like that. I don't, I don't hate that uh, foul at all. Look, I don't, I don't think Dominican Republic are hating it as well. It yeah. gives them an opportunity to reposition themselves oh. as well. So Bohio now. Absolutely. Ball order from him. Broke his ankles there for a split second, but didn't pull up on the shot. That's a contested shot. And who else on the rebound to reset the offensive possession tactic doing everything? But a turnover here. Team USA can really get the momentum going in their favor with a bucket right here. JBM pulling it up. Probably going to put it back here from Rhea. There it is. This is really, really critical. Under 90 seconds left in the third. Captain pulls up, misses the three, but Rhea's got the board. Finds an open man. That's green. We got ourselves now. Oh, my God, a three-point game. This is huge. USA have done it. They've narrowed down the point gap here and with a minute and 10 seconds only remaining in the third quarter. It's going to be crucial with what sort of advantage you are coming into that final quarter. Tactic oh. just making sure that drive has positive results at the end of it, but here you can see Ria now. He's gonna be on fire. Ohio with 11 points and six assists, and in a game where your team has 33 points, that means you are the offense. He's really doing well. There's Green from the captain. Captain America strikes again. Back to a two-point lead. Dominican Republic need to answer now. 45 seconds left in the third quarter. Team USA likewise will be trying to steal this ball back, get a stop defensively. I really think the name of the game here for USA is to really start to amp up the pace and not allow Dominican Republic to keep up with you just pure speed-wise. Oh. That could be one way how to play around this very tactical team that is Dominican Republic. And with no time to shoot, shot. this one's not going to count. Shot clock violation. And right now, 24 seconds left in the quarter, 24 on the clock. If I am Team USA, I am taking the final shot in the third to either tie it up or take the lead and head into the fourth quarter here. It's a three from JBM. He missed it, but they got the board. They're going to be able to reset here. Ten to shoot, though. Risky pass again across the paint. I'm not a massive fan of those passes. Rando! Wide open. You can't fall asleep. Gets the three with three to three spare. There you go. Lots of threes. In the third quarter. Another risky pass here. Oh, oh no. no way. Almost gets it with the buzzer there. Oh, my God. That would have been a heartbreaking way how yeah. to finish the third quarter here. Yeah. But swipe that slate clean. Last five minutes in the first grand final game between USA and Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic currently lead in the lead by five, looking to extend that even further here with 12 seconds on the shot clock as Bohio, again, slightly struggling with this defense, but obviously this being finals, you can't really expect for an easy way towards points. Three seconds to shoot here, long pass into the corner. That's gonna be blocked, but it's gonna be Dominicana's ball with 0 0.5 seconds, <laughs> really. Can you do anything here? Catch and shoot, this is gonna be tough. 
No, nope, shot clock violation. Great defense from Team USA. I tell you what, it doesn't get any better than this. Grand final game number one, FIBA Esports Open 2, North and Central America Conference. Team USA down by five, but they have the ball. They've been defending so well, it has to be said in the second half. The momentum has definitely shifted. They've They've chipped away at this Dominican Republic lead, but they haven't been able to quite wrestle back the lead themselves. And that's exactly what they're trying to do here. Four to shoot, though. Good pass. Ball the block. And who else but tactic defensively? He is everywhere. 36 to 31 here with still four minutes and 10 seconds in play in the final quarter of the first grand finals game as Bahio again is looking for that golden opportunity. Rando looks like is ready to take on a pass any day now. Rando has been really, really deadly when called upon. He has made every shot. alley -oop, great defense from Team USA. This is such a tight game right here. And now they need a bucket desperately. JBM, the captain, stepping up, finding green. It's a three-point game. Three minutes and 40 seconds left. It's getting pretty. It's a camping trip right now, Renaz. Intense. Absolutely. USA, JB, 10 points to his name out of the 33 that the team has, you know, doing the third of the work here yourself in the point department. But look at this out of bounds. A, a really costly mistake here, potentially, from Dominican Republic. They've now got to defend. They've got to defend like there's no tomorrow right here. JBM knows they've been given a golden opportunity there. You don't see erroneous play like that another three and he finally rattles one home ramo with the pressure evens out the score line here for usa and it's an even game right now it's absolute crunch time already here we're beginning with three minutes still remaining in bahia now opens up a lane for himself and nails the three massive i am so happy for real there to to finally bang in that three he'd missed a couple of critical shots earlier it's not how many points you score it's when you score them big threes being exchanged here for both sides and now there's another one from the captain and it rattles out oh that was cruel absolutely behind a long pass over to tactic easy oh. layup there to finish things off it looks like the defense was not ready for it tactic has been phenomenal this game Renards. he has been absolutely everywhere and now team usa find themselves down by five yet again oh i would have just taken the high percentage two-pointer right there but jbm has other ideas as he drops in three and it's going to be a two-point game. It's getting tense here. It's getting really tense. And we spoke about this beforehand as well, right? When things are not going USA's way, JB is there to step up and stepping it up. He is big time right now in that first grand final game. I mean, look, he was slightly quiet during those first two quarters, but really starting to come to life right now. And what better time than with two minutes to spare and five seconds to shoot for <gasps> Dominican Republic. They're going to lose the ball here. Oh, there was a risk of a cross-court violation. That's a very good foul right there. I was there. really expecting yeah. for a whistle to yeah. be blown. Waiting for that whistle. Two USA players have activated their takeovers. They are literally on fire. And it's the deadly shooter, JBM. You don't want him open. He breaks the ankles, pulls up. That's the lead. Captain America coming through in the clutch. Leaving tactic on the ground, wondering what happened there. Minute and 40 on the clock for Dominican to respond here. IGL does <laughs> regain control of the ball there. Looks like it's going to be out of bounds. Ohio now. Taktuk asking for a pass as well. Reverse play happening. Miss. Slightly short on the release there. It was a very contested shot. Only a, a, oh, a couple of seconds to get the ball over halfway right there. A reach in. Ooh, getting close. I was about to say getting close to the bonus. The captain at the line, you would expect him and to is, knock both of these in. I really feel like this is a huge problem that Dominican Republic has right now because there's still a full minute and 20 seconds yep. to play, and obviously JB is going to nail these shots, and that means that Dominican Republic is going to be trailing by by three points. And yep. the question is, is this the moment where you let the beast out and give it to Rando? I think you have to. I think that's got to be the objective right here. And then when you're defending as well, you have to be so careful because USA are in the bonus. Here comes Majestic, the high pressure from USA, rotating really well defensively as well. This is where the strats have to be perfect. So far, so good. Dominican Republic trying to work a shot. Bohio gives it the tactic. I think that's a smart move. Take your points while Take they're it. on offer. 
A minute four is an eternity in a grand final. Absolutely. Still all the cards on the board here for both teams. A single point between the two. I wouldn't be surprised to see an overtime here as well. But still with a minute in play, a lot can happen here. JB slightly stuck now in no man's land. Eight seconds remaining as touch. An active defense finds the lane. Oh. Doesn't find the points right now. Long pass over to Bahio. Randall open for a pass, but it's going to be majestic to pick it up. And that's a long two-pointer to take. Rattles it home, though. 45 to 44. A single point lead, but the 35 seconds still remaining here. Amazing shot right there. The foot was on the line. I was waiting for the call from the ref right there. But now USA well and truly still in it. We've got about a 12-second differential between game clock and, and uh, shot clock right there. Alley-oop, and it's in. And we are trading leads right here. I don't think we're going to have an overtime. That's a it's, good timeout look, right there. It's 20 seconds on the clock here. USA <laughs> are going to leap for reach-ins and see if they can obtain possession yep. of the ball. Dominican Republic's name of the game right now is, well, do you put all eggs in one basket? You have to. Wide Unless, open. Oh, no. He almost, missed. It almost went through, but it's going to be USA with the best possession. Of course, a personal foul, but the problem is it, USA is in the bonus. Ria oh. gets the first. Can he get the second here? He knocks in the first. This is for the three-point lead. Bahio is going to have another chance with 13 seconds left, no doubt, to make up for that miss. My heart goes out to it's him. It's three for overtime it's here with 13 seconds remaining. What's the play? Ohio looking for an open hand, finds one in Majestic. Five seconds to shoot. Ohio on the three-point line. It's going to be a foul, personal one, okay, but no bonus just yet. Two and a half for seconds remaining. This has to be a pass and shoot. Yeah, it, you, you're probably got one dribble move here. There it is. Oh, two points isn't going to do it. USA take game number one. Dominican Republic just falling apart tactically right at the end there. Oh, my God. But Bahio, he has been perfect all tournament. Look, you would expect him 99 times out of 100 to drop that three in tie the game he missed our heart the, goes out to him there but. the opportunity really didn't present itself and you know with that personal foul play uh coming out from usa drawn towards dominican republic that really sealed the deal for them there majestic definitely was not on the three-point line even if the ball would have gone through there and obviously usa in first of all what a comeback yes let's not okay. take anything away from them jbm captain america stepping up in the clutch once Huge. again get this man his shield that was absolutely phenomenal there was no end game there jbm was saying we got this. That that was just leadership Look, by example. But I love I, it. I, I like the fact that the Dominican Republic's relentless plays during the first, well, three quarters, really, and only towards that latter stages of the third quarter, we saw USA starting to bring it back home. And, and the USA were struggling a bit there in the passing department as well as yep. defensively. They were leaving too many openings um, for a Dominican Republic to make use of. Obviously, once the adjustments were made there, a little less of tactic plays in paint and then... Thus, the result here, USA up by one game right now oh. over Dominican Republic. And the question is, well, we clearly know Dominican Republic are capable of Definitely. coming back into this. But when Definitely. you are backs against the wall, you need two back-to-back -back wins against USA out of all countries in basketball, e-basketball, but still basketball on the big international well, look, stage, what's I, the play? I, look, I know what your answer is going to be here. I, I, I'm going to ask you, do, are you even thinking about game three? It's no, right? You're playing it one game at a time. There is no game there three is no you game can't three. make this one happen. That's it. There's no tomorrow, it's right? It's not a question right now. You've got to just focus on what's in front of you. I, I, I want to commend, though. I want to give Tactic a massive shout-out. And, and for so long, the Dominican Republic had their grip on that game. Yeah. And Team USA just chipped away play by play possession by possession and you just felt that momentum shift there towards the end of the third quarter and then they were able to finally claw the lead very late i like that they didn't panic dominican republic they have a lot to be able to hang their their hat on there though because they did have that game in the bag for for nearly 80 percent yeah really and i mean my heart bleeds for them it, 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 you know losing in such a fashion in grand finals obviously you're gonna have nail biter games but really this 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 felt slightly painful and i hope i really hope that the dominican republic has the composure to come back into this 
fresh start. I really feel like there's not really that much that they need to change. I yep. do feel like they need a bit more rando, though. Yeah, a little bit more rando. Work him open. He is fantastic. You know what they say about pain? It lets you know you're still alive. Dominican Republic, you are still alive in this. You've got a game two to tie it up and send it to a game three. We're greedy casters. We want to call the game three. Give it to me. Give it to us now, right? Um, and we're going to need oxygen tanks at the end, but I don't care. I want that game three. Um, Dominican Republic, no. That they, they can get the better of Team USA, yes. but the composure that Team USA showed there, they basically, yeah, really, really sage, uh, wise, wisdom kind of game right there from JBM. And another thing that Jeff said as well, what we're seeing here is is narratives being constructed. We are seeing rivalries being created here. It is the inaugural Fever Esports Open 2 North and Central American Conference. So these teams have not played each other on an official international stage before. Now they have. Now, as you and say... And they really get to find out who's made out of what yeah. here on the big stage. And as I said as well, you know, uh, on, uh, looking at the future... This sets up a big stage for North and Central America. But let's have a look at the lineups here one more time to see uh, who which players are going to be representing who here. Brilliant. So we've got JBM, obviously, the captain once again. And then uh, Kenny got work, Crush Raff, Real Aramo, and also Rhea. Rhea was fantastic there. Real Aramo, I felt so sick for him early on. He missed, uh, I believe it was three critical threes from the corner. And you know that that's your, your main purpose. You're sitting there, you know, making it rain, and he just couldn't quite get it to go. But then in the fourth, rattled one home, and that was phenomenal to work. And that was enough. Yeah, that was enough. It, it's not how many points you score, it's when you score them. That is brilliant. And then Dominican Republic there. Looking absolutely solid. Of course, Bahio, ILG, Lolly, Majestic, Rando, and Tactic. And I mean, look, as I said, I really want to see more plays out of Rando. It looks like that's what they're lacking currently. Yep. If, if, if anything, Bahio did an excellent attempt of filling those shoes. But yep. I really feel like a bit of a sharing is required between the two. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you've got a dual threat, then take advantage of it. I completely agree with you. Uh, uh, give... Look, it's, it's, it's grand finals, everything allowed within the rule book. And, you know, you really need to make the best out of it. They have quite the dynamic, deny, dynamic excuse me, uh, lineup on either side here. And it's just a, such an interesting clash um, between the two here. Absolutely. So, I mean, but let's not take, let's not take anything away uh, from Team USA's defense, though. So they came out with the strategy yep. there. Um, they really wanted to make, uh, I guess, uh, the, the offensive side of the wall for the Dominican Republic very one-dimensional. So they kind of put the game in uh, Bahio's lap nearly. And, and for, for, as I say, 95% of it, uh, he, he did. And he was steering the Dominican Republic to a victory. Um, really, really good hustle. I, I feel as though those turnovers, filling the passing lanes, clogging the passing lanes, eventually paid off for USA, and they were very patient with their tactic, and they stuck with it. Absolutely. I, I, I like the fact that they stick to their own style, and they don't really put too much emphasis in trying to counter some sort of a, a momentum play coming out from Dominican Republic here too much. At the same time, though, same, looking at USA, obviously, what well, question is unanswered still, what will happen if Dominican Republic, looking at JB decide to put a bit more emphasis on him and take and take the captain away well first of all good luck trying okay that really <laughs> okay. does feel a little bit like like wily e. coyote and roadrunner and that always went one way i mean he is very very slippery you can see um we've seen so many times nearly getting the eight second violation when teams uh, uh puerto rico comes to mind we're trying yep. to trap him sometimes triple team him inside his own half and he's just such a cool calm hand bringing the ball up the court really really phenomenal but all right look this, the first game was crazy. All it right, was. I think everyone is on the same page here. This is a best of three grand final. And for Dominican Republic, it's do or die. And it's right now. This is the second game of the grand finals. And what could be the last for Dominican Republic, unless they can get a win here. Let's find out right now.
Okay, and a quick update here before we get to the tip off here is USA will be wearing the dark blue. It looks as though chat 50 again, it's 53-47. But 50, this time around they're saying yeah. that it's gonna be USA to take the cup home. There so USA in two, 53% of chat believe that. That is very, very interesting. And uh, it will be Dominican Republic in the white jerseys here. And uh, opening tip going to Team USA. Here comes JBM. And right, pick it up right where he left off, yeah. Absolutely. Looking for that fast play. Oh. Kenny with the three. Okay. Oh, that is a scary it, sight to see. It literally took Team USA about three minutes to score in the first game. Not here. No. Kenny, Kenny got to work literally right away. USA are coming out strong this time saying, look, we're going to take the fight to you. And it's going to be quick. ILG with the long two. Can't make it, but Tactic, of course, always is there to pick up the rebound. Rando now. Tactic comes in to set up a screen. Rando as well, quite a tall avatar. He nice. can't go for the three over defense. Instead, it's going to be a pass over to Tactic to get the two. And, of course, to open up things for Dominican Republic here as well. And so I, I feel like both teams are listening to you a little bit right there. And, uh, or maybe I just know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, potentially, potentially. A long three there from JBM. It doesn't go in. I like the idea of getting Kenny going early. There's Rando wide open green. There we go. That is the Rando everyone likes to see from Dominican Republic. Yep. And now, obviously, you know, USA says, look, we have JB, we have Kenny as well. Dominican Republic's like, you know what, we have Rando too to add up. But look, Kenny starts to become a bit of a problem already early on here. Very clean three-pointers. Oh, yeah. And that obviously boosts confidence for him. Boom. But not unless Tactic can just dunk it home. Shaking the rim. I felt like that shook the pillars of the earth, that dunk right there. That was phenomenal stuff. And now, look, Team USA, if you are just joining, did take game number one in absolutely clutch fashion as well so if they win this game they are your champions there they are the grand final winners of the north and central american conference at the fiba esport open 2. dominican republic though have something else to say about that and right now they're up by two as team usa reset their offense kenny gets green again that's three early shots for him and he's looking great oh my god there was actually two points here so he did step on the line but still nonetheless a very impressive performance very early on here from usa and from kenny himself bohio left open slightly for a, uh, for too long of a second there this is going to be out of bounds and still dominicans uh ball with 13 seconds to go for a shot plenty of time plenty of time look, actually it looks as though oh that's out of bounds with dominican republic's ball I, I believe Ken, kenny has all of team usa's points right now yeah wow okay so he's kind of he, he's kind of pulling like a truly numb there from from argentina he's really getting to work early in this or one. or just drawing the attention off of jb's shoulders for when needed so jb can come in flying and get the follow-up plays Either way, this is a very close affair here in the first quarter. Two and a half minutes remaining, only a single point separating these two. And now, with 14 seconds on the shot clock, Dominican Republic will have another attempt to go for points. Okay, we're getting a lot of fouls early on, though. They're going to be in the bonus very, very yeah. quickly if they I'm, don't slow down. But they are putting Bahio under pressure. Is that really the play that you want to make here very early on? Rando back over to Bahia right now. Just trying to work something out. T tactic just working the pick and roll. Going to drive it in three to shoot. Got to drop that in Rando. Automatic. Gets the two. Nine to eight. Take the lead. Only by a single point still. Two minutes and five seconds remaining here. JB looking towards Kenny. That was definitely close to a backcourt violation. So pulls the trigger. Gets the timeout. Reset. Absolutely flirting with danger there. Good timeout. Rhea's green. Easy bucket right there. I love those high percentage shots and the quick buckets. I say but take where's away. the defense? Well, you know, Rhea just, he just knifed in there. It's hard to keep track of him. Tactic just slowing it down. Probably handed off here to Bahio. And now Bahio is going to get to work setting up their offense. The pick and roll. It's there. Good defense from Rhea, though. He really does get around. It's fantastic. It's going to be crushed to stop at the three-point line there. Kenny comes in on the right-hand side. Wing pass over to him. 13 seconds on the clock here. Good dribble coming out from Kenny, not allowing for Bahia to go for the steal, and he gets another three. 
Kenny is on fire early on in this one, figuratively, literally, whichever whichever way you want. He is getting it done. That is fantastic stuff, and I I I, I kind of be, I'm starting to believe that you're onto something with the tactic. A little bit dormant, but he is awoken here in game number it's two. It's called conditioning your opponent. Draw all of the attention towards one side of the court for when it matters to be able to just instantly flick the switch and get that crucial points in when it matters the most. JB on the three line, Rhea open up for a pass. JB puts up three as well, just reminding that he's yeah. present. Yep. And an early five point lead here for USA in really what is a role reversal of game number one. So now it's going to be Dominican Republic who find themselves behind, chasing back that lead as they get a quick steal and a quick potential transition bucket. No, they're going to work it back out, just reset things here. I mean, why not? They've, they've been performing so well offensively. 12 seconds to work with JBM pulling up. Oh, he, he will make those quite a fair bit. That's a good shot for him, but it just rattles out on this occasion. Bahio now working with Tactic and the pick and roll. Tactic with the alley-oop in traffic. Absolutely. 17 seconds remaining in the first quarter here with a three-point deficit and one game down. Dominican Republic are trying to find their way back into this. But in the last few seconds here, USA are going to be looking to extend the lead even further. And that's going to be no, no one else than Kenny to pass it back out to JB. Slowing things down. A second to shoot. Real Ramo for the three. Not good. Kenny was open a couple of times there. I'm not quite sure what the uh, thought process was, but hey, uh, Dominican Republic will take it. That counts as a stop. They're, they've got an opportunity here to double dip, which means score twice in a row on either side of a quarter. And here they come now. Bahio again, tactic, and got to watch out with these reach-in fouls. They're, they're starting to tally up. Uh, Bahio, though, and, and tactic really work that tandem well. And uh, tactic has already activated his takeover. He's on fire. Quite literally, another steal here, though. JBM doing a great job defensively. Yeah, and that was tactic there to draw the personal foul. It looked to be a too dangerous of a drive coming out from JB in that situation. Kenny now looking over to crush back to Ria. Oh, slightly sloppy pass. I'd like to see Ria just make a, a, a low post move and get that right there. As we see another alley oop there. Tactic has been solid as a rock for Dominican Republic. From look, the first game until now. Dominican Republic as well, recognizing that the three-pointers so far are not the name of the game for them. So obviously Tactic stepping up big time, filling those needed point shoes that really Dominican Republic are lacking right now. Still down by one, 12 seconds on the clock for USA to try and extend that lead if they can. Rhea left wide open, not good with the layup though, and a fast pass imminent. No, not this time around as Rando takes it to the three-point line, shoots it himself. Tactic doesn't get the rebound there as well, oddly enough, seeing this is going to happen, but now real Ramo is going to be stopped on the free throw line. Kenny got work. Can he go for three? He does. Wow. Rhea's in there to get the board, though, and he'll reset the offense right there. Kenny, audacious three attempt right there. They are really feeling confident here, Team USA. And four to shoot, though. Got to work something. And great defense again for Dominican Republic. And a quick bucket. No, it's going to be a, a shooting foul. Of course. Though. Of course. It looked to be in. Uh, but it's going to be majestic on the free throw line here to see if he can perhaps Dominican get Dominican Republic back in the lead by a point. Oh, there we go, ties it up. Big free throw here. And another low scoring affair, unless we start to see a flood of points. It's looking like a sub 50 point game again uh, in, in terms of, of, of both teams, sub 100, but really, really tight affair. And it's high caliber 2K basketball here at the FIBA Esport Open 2. If you've just tuned in, it's the North and Central American Conference Grand Final. Game number two, USA took game number one, and Dominican Republic trying to fight their way back in to force game number three. Best of three series. Right now, they have a one-point lead, and it will hold for now. Ohio manages to catch that pass, and Tactic with a fast drive and the dunk to finish things off. Dominican Republic overtaking the lead now by three, and of course, you're going to start to look for JB and Kenny to do the work now. That is just a silky smooth dunk there from Tactic, right? I love it. A huge steal comes through for Dominican Republic to see if they can perhaps extend the lead even further there. Rando with a few steps forward, pass to Tactic to get the dunk, and it's 21 to 16 here. 
Slightly losing their grip, that is USA, but only by five points right now. Nothing really to work worry too much. You yeah. really should start to worry a bit more about these steals going through. It's tactic <laughs> with a yet another dunk. He is, I, if I'm not mistaken, three, I, yeah, three I, back to back dunks. I, I think so. I think he might even have eight. Uh, no, no, he does have six straight points though for his team. Phenomenal shot here from JBM. My word, did Team USA need that bucket? And who is it yet again stepping up when his team needs him but the captain? Of course, your favorite there. <laughs> We're not supposed to play, play favorites, okay, but come on, Captain America. Yeah, we can fanboy a bit here. We can not fanboy a tiny bit. Oh, Bahio! Wow! What a shot! And that's what they need, a Dominican Republic, a sigh of relief here, knowing that they can respond with the same. Let's see if they can keep it up. Rhea with a big play coming through and a huge dunk as well, reminding Tactic where he needs to be yeah. when Rhea has the ball. Yeah, definitely. That was a nice double pump dunk there. Oh, nearly came up with the steal, USA. Bahio had to pull up. And now good defense from Team USA just, just getting their feet about them again. Tactic thought about it. There it goes. And another easy bucket for him. Those are some difficult moves to make there. A twist there, a turn there. He's automatic. Two points at the end, minute and 15 on the clock before halftime here. And neither team, of course, is very eager to finish on a positive note. Great defense there. Getting in the pass lane. A nice alley-oop right there. Well played. Five-point differential. This is deja vu, right? Everyone is really starting to become alive here in this final minute of the second quarter, right before <laughs> halftime. That's the moment where you want to have the momentum in your favor. And Randall there puts up a two-pointer. We are being just treated to some of the most skilled shooting that you will see anywhere in the world. Nine out of ten of these players that you're seeing on the court are professional players. As Ramo, Rilo Ramo, drops in a nice three for USA. Cuts the lead to four points. Dominican Republic with 35 seconds left. About a 12-second differential between game clock and shot clock. Oh, nearly intercepted right there. Finds the open man. Three rattles out. Real with the board. Team USA just trying to just trying to claw back a little bit here. They'll get the inbounds here. Only two seconds between uh, play and shot clock. So probably going to try and work the final shot of the first half here. Game number two. Oh, a slightly sloppy pass from Rhea. And now it'll be back to Dominican Republic. And who else with the dunk tactic? Now, if you're USA, you got 11 seconds to play with here. You got to score. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, JB is, of course, keeping an eye out for Kenny, but he's being closely guarded by, by Bohaya right now. Only two seconds to shoot. JB has to go for it. It is a cagey tight affair as advertised and thank you Fieber and 2K for making this possible and of course the uh, National Basketball Federations of the 36 different countries participating in Fieber Esport Open 2 across six different conferences. We are being treated to some amazing basketball. That final 30 seconds is always, oh, he's, he's nailing it in there. Glow drops it in. Um, that final 30 seconds of the first half, exactly what you would expect. Look, Dominican Republic is up by nine points right now. And even though Rhea has been shining very bright with those two pointers, currently it's just simply not enough. They need Ooh. Kenny and JB to come back into this. There and JB go. does exactly that huge three there for USA. Go. Dr. Renard said, we need some JBM. And he delivered the antidote right there. And we got a reach in foul. That's okay. I, I don't mind the scrappiness. I really like the, you know, Put your opponent under pressure. Make them uncomfortable Look, wherever they are. It just goes are. to show that everything is on the line yeah. here for these two. And, of course, wow, what a pass there. Slightly missed time from IGL on the jump to finish off with the two. And now it's going to be USA. And Crush did a great job to get a hand in that passing lane right there. Just needs to hand it off to JBM. Reset the offense here. Ten to shoot. JB on the three. Majestic ankles broken, and that's oh, what he needed. Oh, and we got ourselves a three-point game again, <laughs> JBM. That's just cruel. That man is a family. You can't break his ankles on international TV like this. That's just cruel. Big dog, big alley-oop. Tactic says, I got you guys. Don't worry. Another quick easy two for him. He knows where he needs to be when yeah. those are inbound. 32 and to 37, five-point differential here. Three and a half minutes remaining. 
I got this I got this big grin on my face because Tactic has one of the Oh so he can he pulls the trigger deep rattles in and out Rhea gets the offensive board though great hustle there and here's JBM wide open back to a two-point lead and Tactic has one of the look at the player model one of the largest archetypes that you can get he is a thick boy as they say but when he gets the ball and he's in the key he just he's like he's so fluid it's amazing to watch big grin on my face and Absolutely. He knows what his character is capable of, and he takes that to the absolute extent right now. Yep. Three minutes still remaining, 19 seconds on the shot clock. USA looking for that juicy three, most likely. <laughs> Rhea starting to be closely guarded right now, so that's not an option. Oh! But Tactic falls, and that's an opening that USA needed here. Three more points to their name, overtaking the lead by a single point. I have no idea what we just witnessed, but we got a steal from Rhea right in halfway. Backcourt violation. That is the unluckiest steal and backcourt violation I think I've ever seen. Team USA sneak into the lead here. And JBM, did he just break two sets of ankle? That's four total ankles in one play. Yeah, too many ankles to count anymore. Someone called the doctor already. <laughs> there we go. And another steal. And who else but JBM? Oh, but he misses. Rhea gets the board. JBM won't miss a second time. Three-point lead, USA. Dominican Republic just at the moment a little bit shell-shocked. This full-court pressure from Team USA really paying off. Good pass. Knock it in. That's what you needed to do, Dominican Republic. That's how you break a full-court press, by the way. I was just about to say that I was getting a bit worried that the Dominican Republic haven't had the opportunity to sp respond within what felt like the last minute. And now JB on fire is again going to be looking up for that open lane. But a foul is going to be drawn there. Tactic just yeah, saying it, enough of this. Enough of this. But it would not surprise me to see Tactic just like pill for the pill right there grab it out of there and then be working his way down the court got to be careful with these fouls though you don't want to get into the bonus that really hurt their defensive scheme at the end of game number one got to yeah. be careful i think just play play your strategy you know work the shots obviously jbm is on fire seven to shoot here he is in no rush he's open for a moment has to shoot now why why the delay i'm not really sure he he had opportunities for twos and threes and it's going to be bohio and Dominic it. dominican republic sneak back into the lead that looks a little weird from jbm he might be having connectivity issues there he looks like he's back now hopefully not any more of those because that was question marks in my head Rhea open to take a pass if needed gets it into his hands kenny though being covered does get the pass but with little to no time we work with here again a player in front five to shoot he's gonna go for the jump shot but that's only two this time around but still what we have is a seesawing lead right now i love that that might be kenny's first bucket since i think the first quarter he started off super hot he's been a little quiet since but what a time to start to come alive if he can get rolling again tactic has an open man Bahio big block from Rhea but Bahio somehow gets the ball back seven to shoot green and Dominican Republic back in the lead you cannot fault the defense from either team they are leaving it all out on the court absolutely everyone is doing everything they can to the best of their abilities right now is JB nice but, dribble open oh. lane gets the three and again it's JB <laughs> to take it home 45 to 43 two-point lead for USA and Dominican Republic with 35 seconds remaining in this quarter obviously want to finish off stronger if they can what? IGL was open for a pass but instead a bit of a blunder coming out from tactic there offensively Rhea fake pumps it and now slightly stuck with a problem at hand gives the ball over to JB I really like the way Rhea had the, the peace of mind there. No doubt, the fantastic communications behind the scene from both teams. Rhea again getting the board. They're scrapping for it. That's going to be a jump ball. But I love the tactic we're seeing. We're in a grand final here. Emotions are running high, but they are being really, really calm, collective, and, and I love to see it. Here's a jump ball now. Ten seconds left in the third quarter. I can't believe we're nearly in the fourth quarter. Dominican Republic trying to chisel away at this great defense there. Only two. Oh, that's green. Rando takes the lead for the Dominican Republic. 1.6 seconds left in the third. Long ball. Catch and shoot. Timeout, Team USA. Great heads up play right there okay so still one more opportunity to shoot here for usa with 1.3 seconds let's see if jb can nail this one i presume the ball is going to go flying his way Catch it's going to be kenny with the three that was masterful 
Are you kidding me? And USA sneak back the lead. It doesn't get any more clutch than this, ladies and gentlemen, into the final quarter right here. Unbelievable work. JBM with a nice pass to Rhea, who's now activated. Eight seconds to shoot. They're not going to panic, though. Great cut, great move, big dunk right there. Team USA up by four. I am absolutely taken away by this momentum from USA right now. This is absolutely crazy in the second game to take out Dominican Republic in grand finals here. Can Dominic, the Dominican Republic dig deep and find the strength and belief within themselves to come back into this? Still four and a half minutes remaining to play. Bahio dangerous on that three-point line. Clearly, Crush doesn't want to leave him open here. Fake pumps it, gives it over to Tactic. Out to Rando. Three to shoot, and it's going to be Tactic to finish out the offensive play with a huge dunk. <laughs> How does that get in? Tactic, the timing right there. Oh, the audacity to try an alley-oop over two really world-class defenders from Team USA. And now JBM back to work. He just looks like he's in a zone, though, doesn't he? He's making it look easy. Rillo misses again. Oh, my and there word. There was no one there to contest the shot, and, and that is... Look, you can't, you can't let yourself get down. I love what you say in this situation. Give yourself the time to make that shot. You're wide open. You've made it a thousand, a million times potentially. You know you can drop it in. Just chillax and make the bucket, right? Great drive there. Good defense from Team USA, though. And an opportunity to extend the lead with a big dunk. Oh, my God. Dangerous defensive play from Randall there as well. Could have given an and one opportunity. In the last second pulled away. I didn't know his player model could dunk. That was phenomenal. It's not fair when the little man gut hops, is it? Great work here. Bahio knows he's got a lead by example. That's more like it. A nice, easy two. I'll tell you what, Rhea nearly got there, though. Wow. It's still a two-point game and still three minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. What could be the very last we get to see in FIBA Esports Open 2. North and Central America Grand Finals. USA coming in with the game already up over Dominican Ooh. Republic here. What looks like a very close affair with two to shoot. Kenny. Oh, I thought that was in. Oh, my word. Really quick outlet pass and a bucket at the other end. And we're knotted up 52 apiece. We got two minutes, 35 seconds left. This is absolutely epic, epic 2K here. Oh, my word. What can they work here, Team USA? Really great defense from Dominican Republic when they absolutely had to have it. They were able to deliver. Now seven to shoot. They find themselves in again with an open shot, though, and it rattles in and out. Dominican Republic have clamped down defensively. Team USA seemingly do not have an answer for that defense. Last couple of possessions. Mahaya now. Has a tall order on his shoulders. He needs a result of play and needs one fast. Big dunk. Wow. Takes, goes for the drive there. Probably took everyone by surprise. Yep. You know, I mean, everyone is expecting him to try and go for those three-point plays, and that's exactly where he felt the opportunity arose. And, of course, he made great use of that. 15 seconds on the clock here to shoot. Pass over to Rhea, hard shot to take, can't oh. really make it happen now. And a fast breakaway play from Dominican Republic, but slightly blunder there in the passing department, slows the play down. 14 seconds, 13 to shoot. Bahio again looking for those opportunities. Pass over to Majestic in the corner. Right hand side is a possibility as well. Instead, it's going to be Bahio back to Rando on the three. Has to shoot, difficult shot and, oh. shot and fell a bit Gets forced. the offensive board. Okay, wasn't quite sure why there was a timeout there. Maybe uh, a little bit odd, um, an off-balance shot there in the making. Good captain's timeout. Dominican Republic, a minute 20 left, 11 on the clock. Plenty of time to work offensively with here. And they have an opportunity, though, to extend a two-possession lead when possessions are really, really precious right now. Let's see what they can do. Likewise, Team USA, no, they've just got to hold out for eight, seven seconds on the shot clock. Bahio, he's open. Well, for a moment he was. Pulls up that screen. They're up by four. Didn't oh, feel comfortable word. risking with the three-pointer. Instead, goes for those high percentage plays. And right now, 
Dominican Republic are in the lead by yeah. four points here. USA down by four. A minute still remaining here. And Ria is left wide open. Oh, oh my God! And with one. an and one on top. What is that play even? Out of nowhere, he shows an amazing dunk. And now the, the most clutch free throw of his young career, no doubt. Does he have it? Of course he does. We've got a one-point game. Grand final game number two. 58 seconds left. This is a good timeout from Dominican Republic. Going to move the ball up the court here. Get into the attacking third. And now inbound. Now Team USA. No. One stop and they're right back in this. Exactly. So obviously Dominican Republic are going to be maximizing the time spent here in offensive play. First reach and foul drawn here. And of course... For Dominican Republic, it's great news because you are getting closer to that bonus as well with every single foul drawn. Bahio running down the clock, 10 seconds to shoot here. Oh, my word. We know Bahio can drop it in from a phone booth. That's a miss, though. Rhea comes down with the board. JBM, he's got to be so calm. 16 seconds difference between a, a game clock, shot clock, which means that no matter what, there's going to be one more possession. They need a bucket Kenny here to take the open. lead. Kenny got green. That's going to be a two-point lead for Team USA. Oh, my God. Another smart time out here. I, I don't know if I can watch. The, I don't know if I can watch Let's this. Let's see if Dominican right Republic decides to answer with the same and do the exact same play, but instead it's going to be Rando to put up the three. Here we go. Bahio trying to work his magic here. Are we going to overtime? Are we going to see a go-ahead? It's 16 seconds. Is that going to be a jump ball? Oh, my word. The defense. They are getting sticky, icky, icky out there, Team USA. I'm going to lose my mind here. It's a two-point <laughs> lead for USA. 14 seconds to play in the, what could be the final USA quarter. The oh, my God. They won the tip. Amazing. Quick timeout. This is this is phenomenal stuff right here. The name of the game here is run down the clock and take a shot if you need to, but you're in the lead by two, so running down the clock might just be enough here. Dominican Republic, you can see three players posted up, ready to go for that steal. Long pass over to Ria. Kenny is in pain to take the shot but a personal foul drawn here from tactic and Rhea we're in the free bonus. throw opportunity I oh do not envy it but he's automatic I love it this to make it a two possession game and pretty much the win team USA are 9.4 seconds away from glory here at the FIBA eSport open two in the inaugural North and Central American Conference this is massive Renaz long pass Bahio Needs to take a shot. Rando on the three-point line. It's IGL to pump fake. No time. Takes the shot. It's USA to take it home in such a close game. And they're going to be your North and Central America grand final winners. And taking the championship title home. Fighting against seven different, excuse me, six different countries yep. within their own conference and putting up USA on the big stage as number one and as number one in e-basketball when it comes to that part of the world. Amazing work going all the way back to their first game and that loss against Puerto Rico, which kind of shocked the 2K community globally to the core. And now on day two, they end up being crown champions. I just want to give a shout out to a name. I've nearly put a hole through my paper here. Rhea. Oh my God, it isn't how many points you score, it's when you score them. And in the fourth quarter, a, a trio of free throws, the and off. Oh, th that was absolutely phenomenal work. You I know, was on the edge of my seat, blown away. If there was a game where Kank could have gone down to free throws, this was the one. <laughs> Obviously, you know, every single time he sinks the bucket, just you get that sinking feeling in your stomach when you're on yeah. the side of Dominican Republic and looking like, why, why? And, and, and look, uh, Bahio was phenomenal there for the Dominican Republic. Commiserations to them. They played a brilliant grand final, but our champions, Team USA. I want to see the USA chants uh, in the chat. And now you're going to tell us, Renaz, who's the MVP? Look, we followed him so closely throughout the whole, all of the games here, shining through as well in the grand finals. It's none other than... JB to take the MVP <laughs> name to himself. Really an amazing performance coming out from him, but still a huge play coming out from Team USA. And give one more shout out here to everyone, Oh, Chris. come on. JBM, Kenny got work who got going early on in that game as well. Had about, had about uh, eight, eight, 
the first eight points for Team USA in the game. There we go, original Malik doing brilliant. Crash Wrath, Real Aramo, who had some clutch shots in the corner that didn't drop, and I was feeling terrible for him, but he's a champion now. Who cares? And then Rhea, who was clutch in the end, and of course, the first ever female participant as well, a little lady, 87. So Team USA not only making history as the inaugural champs of the North and Central American Conference at the FIBA Esport Open 2, but also the first female contestant as we have a look here at your champions. And look, I mean, look at the overall standings and look, look at the grand finals there. There have been insanely high scoring games yep. here. Just look at the point differentials all around the board. Yep. This is the second time I'm casting FIBA Esports Open 2. And trust oh. me, like I've never seen point differentials like this here. Which just goes to show what caliber teams are out there when it comes to North and Central America. And of I course... Of course, it's United States and, to take it home. And just working from the table, uh, from bottom to top there, I just want to give a couple of individual shout-outs yep. here. Well, and, and team shout-outs. Uh, Costa Rica... Uh, in particular, had a player called Bandit who was just automatic from beyond the arc. Honduras and Guatemala, uh, who were absolutely kind of phenomenal uh, team efforts there and, and participating in their first global tournaments. Team Canada dropped in 151 points. They even had a player who actually scored 100 points individually as well. That was on a game you were casting on. Puerto Rico came out. Look at the table. It's unfair. It doesn't seem fair. Maybe we maybe we expand it to a semifinals next time because there was some great basketball played by them as well. They got the original win against Team USA. It went through on point differential uh, to Team USA and in the Dominican Republic in the final. Look, and it was amazing and final. U USA said it themselves as well. They'll they'll take a loss here, but they're going to take the win in every single game after that. And they stuck to their word they absolutely did. here on the big stage, predicting really the future in what seemed to be in a very close group. And they, at the end of the day, it was USA to come out on top. Of course, we're going to see if we can get someone on the line here from yeah, USA. As, Just as, soon as, as soon as they're done celebrating, done okay. Screaming, really. I don't know, I, I, I'm not quite sure if they are all playing in, in the same location. I don't know if there's a, a gate rate shower going on over there in the USA, but I hope that the entire country is behind them and chanting now because that was literally a performance for the ages. And to quote Jeff once again, narratives are now being constructed. Rivalries and battle lines are being drawn with the Dominican Republic and USA. As far as I'm concerned, they're arch rivals now, which means look out at FIBA Esport Open number three when it gets here because everything will be on the line. Look, so, of course, the trophy is going to find its way home now. The MVP award as well on top of it. And, I mean, what more, what, what a bigger prize to get than that trophy for, for, for that national and pride. I, I think we, may, and, and maybe FIBA can do this, we need to come up with a, a name for the trophy as well. Every single trophy does need a nickname. So maybe, maybe it falls upon one of the winning conferences to actually kind of come up with the name. There it is. I mean, the obelisk sounds a little dull, you know. Um, I want to, a bit, a bit. Um, yeah, yeah. Just, I want to throw. Too I wanna, serious. But I want to throw a fun one out there. Um, what about Woody, the the team mascot for the Venezuelan team, the dog uh, who who lives with their captain? Chris, you, you have two dogs at home. It's how, true. Like how everybody many loves do you dogs. Need? I mean, calling the trophy Woody would not be the worst thing in the world as well. And and it's kind of got an American ring to it. There we go. So maybe yeah. the, maybe the trophy can have like a, a different name depending on the conference as hey, well. That's for the champions to decide. It is. Though. You get to pick the name. All right, so we're going to see if we can get JB on the line here. Uh, as soon as we do get the connection, of course, JB got the MVP award here oh, yeah. as well. And I mean, look, it was it was well deserved, in my opinion. It was, it was, and we have both uh, serious as well as funny questions lined up for our team captain and our MVP. Um, I was singing his praises the entire tournament. Every single time he took the rock, it was as though he was taking the reins. All right, so. I think the myth, the legend, the man himself, John, is on the screens. John, hey, can you hear us? I can hear you guys great. All right. Well, John, first of all, one more time, a huge congratulations on that very important win. And now putting up USA on the big stage for the first time internationally in e-basketball as well. Take it away. What does it mean for your country and you, you too? There's, there's not really a word to put on it. It's, it's crazy, though, because, you know, this year has been such a roller coaster year. Um, 
you know, I think like for our country as a whole, like it's crazy, and, yeah. you know, to leave, to carry this, to carry USA's basketball's reputation and to win and, you know, to, to win those nail biters and to fight after losing the first game. Like these guys really have my back. I was super demoralized that first game, game one. And, you know, all, all six of those guys, you know, they brought an energy that I didn't have after that. And we, we, we were able to carry it on. And, you know, this is, this is awesome. This is what it's about. This is what we practice for. You know, there's a, so a whole month that went into this, you know, preparing the team, getting close with each other, just to be able to be resilient like that. So, you know, it was all worth it. It's nice to see things like that come through. Yeah, I mean, USA has a huge historical legacy when it comes to basketball here, and you guys yep. are just able to continuously put that up for show for everyone. Now, trying to break down a bit uh, what was happening during those games, what really think was the key to your success uh, in this grand final against Dominican Republic? Um, you know, I think I think we played a little tentative on offense, especially game one. And, yeah. you know, I told these guys, like, the whole game, like, fight, fight, fight. And I think that just came down to taking every possession super seriously and not, um, you know, not taking a playoff because that's really what it's about. Yeah. I believe, you know, we had the five best players in the tournament on our team. So if we had, if we were, uh, you know, if we were all focused, it was, I felt like we, it was in our hands and, you know, all these guys, you know, they kept me composed and, you know, we really worked as a unit to really stay focused every single possession. I think that's what it came down to, especially both games, honestly. I mean, we were down late in both games and especially game one where you started down 13-0 and it was just you know fight 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 focus here like because any possession is taking a possession off is just selfish to the other four people and you know that that's the people you're playing for right at the end of the day it's the people exactly. around you and the, and the brand you're representing which is which supersedes any of us so um you know i think that's what it just comes down to is just being able to fight like that well, I love the fact that nobody lost their faith in that game and yeah. really dug deep and found their way back into it. I mean, Chris, I'm going to give it the wall over Absolutely. to you. Absolutely. Well, look, that, no, that sounds fantastic. It, sound, it sounds like we got a little bit of the TB12 mentality there, that laser focus. I love that as well. And, uh, you know, Notre Dame are my uh, my college team there in the States, so I like that fighting Irish mentality right. as well. It was a tough game last night, but they, they're all right. Absolutely. No, but look, um, like phenomenal stuff there. I'm going to ask the fun question, though, okay? And I really wanted to bring up a little lady 87 okay i don't know if you know this about your team but you said you got a month together bonding did you know that she she majored in music and she has written scores so tell me this tell me that you've at least got her in charge of the playlist now for the celebratory music <laughs> and tell me this what song are you going to be celebrating to you know it's funny we haven't we, we don't really have a song like during the league we had a song that we played for played every game it was called protect the brand my the the wizards and it was kind of our go-to and we didn't really have one but what's funny about lady is every time lady dunks she says dunk it on him we, <laughs> we kind of rallied around dunk it on him so um you know that's that's her song in a sense that's um, absolutely phenomenal so it's really I love funny because it kind of it kind of brings light to you know sometimes it gets you know there's long hours and you know you you know how competition yep. is it gets it's tough sometimes so ladies dunking on them is always brings light to our team and that's really funny you know it's we i never knew she wrote music like that that's pretty well, well, well there you go there you go now yeah. i'm glad i'm glad like we want to thank our research department for digging and doing the work right there but now you know and look i want to just give you just one more opportunity the second time we've interviewed but again now you are up on the podium you're the champion um inspirational inspirational message for younger e-athletes that are watching i love i love the um uh, the age representation there for team usa but as well some of the the younger players globally that we're seeing who maybe have aspirations to be become e-athletes and represent their country what what do you have to say to that young audience so about 12 months ago at this time, I left school and I was like, all right, I'm going all in. So I'm, I'm, I was going to go for the league. And then obviously this was never in my in my sights because nobody knew this was possible. But I left school. I came back home and I was like, all right, I'm going to really I'm going to really buy into this. I'm going to really focus on this. And I put these last 12 months, I really invested in myself and I put a lot of time into this game and just, you know, trying to become a better person, a better teammate. And I think like, you know, f from the beginning of you know, especially from December, but from the beginning of the league season to now, it's, you know, just, I think I put a lot of time into myself and that really paid off. So I think that, you know, that speaks for a lot of people, like any, anyone, anyone can do it, man. You just believe in yourself and, you know, the people are willing to help reach out to people and um, just, just, just persevere, man. There's, there's, it's tough, it's tough sometimes, but if you, if you, um, if you want something, go and get it. It's like anything, especially Absolutely. with this. 
I like that. I like that message. Believe in yourself, and then when you're believing in yourself, dunking on them. How's that? Let's put those okay. two together. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I'll leave you guys with that. Dunking on them. Absolutely. All right. I mean, wise words coming out from the MVP player of uh, the United States. And again, John, huge congratulations. I mean, what a better way than, than that how to win here, right? Yeah. And, and one of our questions that we normally ask the captain is, uh, you know, do you agree with our selection of the MVP? Well, in this case, the MVP is you. <laughs> I, and I, I know you, you seem like a very humble young man, and I commend you on that. But it was phenomenal to watch well you take deserved. control of the games. Well deserved. So I hope you agree with our selection of you as MVP. I really appreciate it. I think you can make All a right. case for a lot of people. I really do appreciate yeah. it, though. You guys did a fantastic job. I was just telling um the gentleman I spoke to before, I know it's tough. It's like half the games don't go as planned. And, you know, commentating a 100-point blowout definitely isn't easy. So Well, we had I only really just, you know, you 90, 93 games to comment during three weekends. So just... Yeah, 93 games. games Amazing, though. I, I look, wouldn't, awesome. No, seriously. Wouldn't like, trade guys, it for anything. Make it, yeah, it's awesome. It's it's nice because like I can tell my friends, you know, I'm doing this and it's super formal and you guys do such a such a great job. Well, So I really appreciate it. Well, thank and you. I know the rest of I know our, our whole USA does as well. Well, we, Seriously, we appreciate, appreciate the comments. I literally words. have tears in my eyes. I don't know why, but <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's no, an emotional it's a moment. It's really no, a conclusion. A yeah, hundred percent. It's a lot of time you guys put into it, and it really paid off. It oh. makes it makes the whole experience a hundred times better. Well, look at this. This is phenomenal. I, we, can we just stay chatting with, with John for a couple <laughs> yes. of hours here? I'm getting inspired here as well. Uh, but look, that that's absolutely brilliant. Um, enjoy. Okay, that trophy is going to be coming to you. By the way, I don't know if you heard us going on a little bit of banter there. Someone needs to come up with a name for the trophy and let FIBA know, okay? So, uh, and, and maybe it pulls... Let's, let's, call it, let's call it a gold medal. There we go. Oh, oh, I like that. A gold medal. I love it. That that works for me. Um, brilliant. Look, thank you so much for being here with us, John. It's been, oh, it's been fantastic. And go and enjoy and celebrate with the team. All right, guys. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks. All right. Take care. Bye. Well, oh, look, mate. As 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 we said, you know, it was ninety three games in total cast Amazing. here. I Incredible. think that's the right. Might be ninety four. I don't know. Way too many to count. But look, we started back in the way way olden days of the fourteenth uh, no, November fourteenth November, 15th, which is over a month ago. It feels like yesterday. Uh, phenomenal. Who who isn't here to say goodbye to you? Obviously, is the entire crew. The entire production team, everybody, the analyst, director. There's a, uh, there's an army of people behind the cameras and lights. Eleven there. people in the studio behind the scenes that making all of this possible. And and our co-host uh, Ignis as well, uh, uh, back in Lithuania now, and Artis as well is back there somewhere. The, um, the so two the two biggest names in the building, of course, NBA 2K, FIBA coming together for a second time around. Jeff, our man with the info from a from beyond the seas yep. really and look jeff has such valuable insight into the scene here as yep. well really building up the scene for us and, and giving us a deeper understanding what might be happening be behind the scenes as well not only what is uh, uh out in the open for everyone to judge yeah. as i said we started off back in the 14th and 15th november and we had three conferences played out there those were some very interesting games we have this time around had 36 countries participating here six different conferences from all over the world every continent every absolutely continent absolutely every continent covered absolutely every continent is going to have at least one of these going home and hopefully next time around a few a more medal. if possible then afterwards last weekend that was the 13th and 14th That's of right. December right we we saw Europe which had 17 countries this time around. Exactly the same amount of countries we had in the whole first FIBA Esports opened uh, tournament. And, and, and there, Turkey made an amazing showing being the yep. first time on the international stage. And then we came to this weekend where now 19th, this being the 20th December already, North and South, North and Central America Conference, as well as the South America Conference, got their moment of brilliance in light 
And of course, I mean, we have so... Our two champions. Our two champions have been crowned yet again. Argentina. Six in total. Let's just give it another shout out for all of yep. them, right? Absolutely. So from Africa, we have Ivory Coast, their current um, Africa Conference champion. Then you had the Middle East Conference. Saudi Arabia. That's the Saudi Arabia, the two-time champions over there. Then you had the merged conference this time around, the Southeast Asia and Oceania conference. And there, the Aussies. Austra Australia technically also two-time champ back back. in FIBA Esports Open 1. They got the win in the Oceania conference and they got the win here in the merged one as well. Then we went over to Europe, as mentioned before, Turkey in, in a crazy playoff stage with insane upsets and eventually a very close grand final yep. got the win over there. And that was last weekend. This weekend, <laughs> South America Conference, Argentina, the two-time champs back now as well. I love to say the two-time bit. Look, yep. it, it really puts a serious note on the tone there. It does. And of course, USA on the Northern and Central America Conference to take it home. And, you know, dunk it on them. Look, just <laughs> as I said before, I really feel like that word fits so well it here. It does. Just continuing the legacy for USA when it comes to basketball and when it comes to big plays here. FIBA Esports Open 2 is done, ladies and gentlemen, this time around. I hope we get to see you again. I hope we get to see even more countries participate. Let's see if we can come up with more conferences. Oh, we yeah. can't make new continents, but we can at least <laughs> get new conferences if we want to or if, if that's can. a possibility. Obviously, we just need a few more countries there to participate and to really make it nail biters and then... Who knows what the future will show, right, Chris? Absolutely. Olympic Committee, I'm just saying, watch this space, okay? Within a decade, we could be seeing esports at the Olympics. It's been an absolutely honor, an honor right here to be on the desk with you, Renard. Thank you, Chris. Thank you to you. Thank you to FIBA, 2K, the entire team behind the scenes making it work. It's been great. It's been great. My name's Renard. This has been Chris. And Chris, let's take this home for one last time. We always do this off screen. <laughs> But you get to see it this time around. See you next time. Lessons that I lived in. Maybe I just need a minute for my methods. Make a minute. Center battles with my shit and going back and forth like cannons. Like, boy, I need my tips. Yeah. Maybe just repeat why I rap a level up. You gotta go and act like this. Just because I got the victory don't mean you don't exist. Living water in your job that can go ahead and take a sip. I was satisfied till I saw the Twitter verify. Why the other side probably searching for the paradise? What I realized, numbers be a never in the vibe. But if I chase my purpose, boy, I'll never be denied. Yeah. Pressing towards the mark, steady moving for the prize. Yeah. Keep my eyes on the truth while I'm ducking all the lies. Yeah. Keep my head low, staying focused. Worse for the wise, uh, killing off the villain whenever I hit on cry. Nobody better make a sound. I need everything. Somewhere I fell and lost my crown.